Welcome to Terran Diamond 2, guys. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to Masters and inevitably working our way towards GM. We're getting up there. Uh, yeah, man. It's, it's, it's getting pretty... The game's getting a little bit more difficult. This, la this push right here is going to take us from the mid, the mid 3K range to the 4K range. So... I will tell you right now, once you get to around 4K, the game starts going up in skill quite a bit. Uh, so yeah, anyways, as we do always before, I'm going to be walking you through how to play in Diamond League. Uh, giving you ideas on how to give yourselves better chances to win the game. Continuing on the concepts and all that jazz. Uh, yeah, really just trying to help you get better at StarCraft. So, without further ado, welcome to Terran Diamond 2. And our first game is a TVT. And what are we going to do for our first game? Uh, let's play pretty standard. Let's do a very interesting build that is uh, more common at high level TVT. And what that build is, is you actually go for a gas before your barracks. Believe it or not. How crazy is that, right? So you go for a gas and then you take your barracks. We still have a supply or a SCV in production. And we're going to be going for a build that is along the lines of Reaper Hellion early into Siege Tanks. Okay. So we're going to saturate our first gas, have the SCV out of our command center pop out and fill it in. And, uh, you know, pull an SCV off the middle line. There we go. 3 out of 3. Pretty early after it's done. Once the barracks is like 75% of the way done, we'll throw down our second gas. Okay, we're doing a mineral... We're, we're, we're doing a priority of, of our resources. We're trying not to dip too hard into the gas. We're trying to just get some gas so that we can manage to do what we're trying to do here, but it's not the priority uh, of like taking double gas like right off the bat before we take a barracks. We're gradually taking gas. Okay, now we're gonna take a depot behind this. We're gonna take a, a, uh, <clears throat> oh, yeah. a orbital command now. And now we're gonna quickly follow this up with a factory. Now here's a, here's a tricky thing about this build, okay? This is where the build gets kind of tricky. So we get a factory really early, and now we're going to mine 50 gas for a Reaper. Children of Vibe, thank you very much for the sub. As soon as we hit about 50, we take two SCVs off of one of our gas and one SCV off the other gas. And the reason why that is, you can take all three off of one gas if you wanted to as well. It's not that big of a deal. But what we just did is we just went back to 16 SCVs. Okay? We just went back to 16 SCVs here. And what this is going to allow us to do now is we can periodically, slowly fill in our gases again. But we're now going to be able to expand super fast. And did you have to build the expansion here? No, we could have built it there too. It's not a big deal. But what we're doing is we're doing a build of Reaper Hellion. And the way we set up the gas allows us to maintain production of Reapers for a little bit in the start of the game. <clears throat> get our factory super fast. Okay, he's attacking our base, right? Let's go get him. Stutter step towards him. Stutter. Stutter. Use our SCV to help here for one second. Nice. Okay. Now we can start a starport. So he lost two Reapers. I lost one Reaper. Let's grab an SCV and build our uh, depot over here. We want we want another depot, but we also want to see vision of this. Okay. And now after our third Reaper, we would have had three, but now... Okay, he's going for more Reapers again. So let's push him with more units right here. There you go. That's a great trade for us, right? Super nice. Continue building that depot again. So here's two things we're going to do. I'm going to get double tech labs right now. I'm going to go tech lab on the factory, tech lab on the starport. Still making SCVs. Notice how I've had a, I've maintained a mineral priority on my... Uh, I've maintained that mineral priority the whole time with 16 ever since I hit it. I have not tried to rip off at all. Let's go ahead right now and make a second barracks next to our... Uh, our, uh, what's it called? Our starport. Let's make a couple more marines now. Get ready to float over our command center at here to our natural. So we're going to float that bad boy over. We can make a depot up here as well just so we don't supply block. And again, it just gives us more vision of our base. And now we can get ready here really soon to make a raven with our build. Um, in just a second. Okay. Make our raven. And now our opponent's just making mass reapers, it looks like. 
which is it's fine. I mean, it is what it is, right? Uh, he, the, we can clearly see he's going Mass Reapers. And the, the one thing we can tell because he's going Mass Reapers is this dude does not give a shit about teching the other units. He's basically cheesing us with Mass Reapers. Do we care about that? Not so much. It's whatever at this point. Okay, so as soon as the Raven's done, what we're going to do... or so Now also, the, the Cyclone's done, so we're going to go into tanks. This Cyclone is huge at being able to deal with lots of things that your Terran opponent can throw at you. Like, for instance... Uh, a Banshee with Cloak, a Battlecruiser, a Medivac drop, whatever really. Now the... it's done, so let's swap off the Starport. Put the put the Barracks on the Tech Lab. And now we're going to be going into Starport, Double Racks, and a... Uh, okay, he's attacking our main base. Let's go defend that. We're going into Stimpak, and we're going into uh, Starport with a Reactor, and we're just going to go into, you know, the rest of our build here of Tank Marine Medivac. Super macro style. Now our third base is getting fully saturated. Let's go ahead and throw down another command center. And let's also throw down double gases. And what do we do when we do this? Similar to what we do in Beta GM series. Let's go ahead and throw down double NG bays because now I'm gonna start getting a lot more gas. <coughs> okay, he's attacking the main base again. We can run our SCVs away from the servitor. What's going on here? He's attacking this base too. Let's grab some of our units. Okay, never mind. Just get everything together. Get everything together. And let's he's all in right now. This is super aggressive. Run our SCVs away from him. And A move everything together. All at this army right now. We can throw down an auto turret to help just tank some damage here. Put the SCVs back on the mineral line. Put these guys back on the mineral line. And we just steamroll his ass right there. Super nice. Okay, let's put our dudes back on the gas. Uh put our guys back on the gas as well and we're still making SCVs guys but we need uh, we need gas to be able to maintain production here so because again we're trying to get upgrades now we're trying to get our units that cost gas now this dude's being super aggressive so he disrupted our build a little bit right there but not the hugest of deals because we just steamrolled him right there okay, let's go ahead and get an orbital command for our third command center we're about to be fully saturated on everything again now let's go ahead and start our upgrades here one one Okay, and keep maintaining production. Let's go ahead and get medevacs now. Not enough minerals. <clears throat> keep maintaining production of all my things. Get another tank sieged in our base. And now we have a third base that's ready to go. So let's go ahead and take that third. And now we're going to be fully saturated on the main and the natural. So things are looking wonderful for us. Things are looking super fucking good. Super duper nice. Let's get an armory because we want to start 2-2 upgrades here in a second. And now, let's do what we did similar to before. And let's not feel the need to push our opponent. But instead, harass our opponent. So let's take our marines. And let's say, hey marines, you guys now go attack. You guys are control one right here. All this army right here. Let's use our, our drop right here, and let's go attack our opponent with this drop right there and see what we can do with that. Behind this, let's get combat shield. Let's keep making units. And let's also realize right now that we are getting a lot more money than we can spend again. So let's get a couple more barracks so we can actually spend our money properly. And we're looking around for bases right now. What is the Terran doing? Okay, he's got an army attacking our base over here. Let's go defend that. Or, no, or it's more of a scout, to be fair. But it's not a big deal. So what's going on over here? Do you have a base here, Terran? Nope. Okay. We can make a depot over in the front of our base. We can make a depot in the front of our base on the high ground. And we can make a depot in front of our base on this side. The reason why this is an easy, cheap investment, but it's also really good, is because it warns us if our opponent's going to attack us. Very, 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 very nice to do this. Okay. Now we have a few medevacs. We're looking good on medevacs. Let's go and start making Vikings. Let's also make some more depots in our main base. Let's go ahead and drop his mineral line over here. Okay, let's uh, make sure we're making SCVs, get gases, what about, what's going on over here? Okay, let's go ahead and pressure his command center and we'll lift off and leave the second he comes over to defend. In the meantime, let's make sure we keep doing upgrades, get weapon upgrades for bio, get VLOOK upgrades for mech, and stutter step down this command center. I might literally just kill it. If we kill this, this is humongous. And it's dead. That's huge. And now he's going for a doom drop. Okay, get my army together, all of it right now. Go, all armies, select all of me, hit one. Grab this, hit Alt 2, boost in, drop his main base, and now group, use Control 1 to hit his fucking army here. 
So, our our Raven just died. It's okay though. We're just stimming to win here. Keep making units in the whole time. And this guy just went all in his fuck. Now look what's going on with group two over here. We're killing another mineral line right now, right? Stutter step the area. We can start killing the command center. And at this point now, we could also start making a uh, fourth command center because we have a lot of money. We could fix our add-ons as well. Fix all these add-ons. And start saturating our main base again because SCV's died there. His main command center just died, so now he's literally dead. He's also got 0-0 zero, zero upgrades fighting against Marines that are currently 1-1. One, one. There's a tank right there, so let's run away from the tank. It just shot us. Run away from the SCVs. Get to a corner so he can't really surround us. And all the SCVs are dying. And there we go. We could always lift up and leave if we wanted to. And we could use this again as a scout. So let's go check more bases. Does this guy have a third base anywhere else? Let's find out in, in just a second. <laughs> yep, he's got a base right there. Drop right there. Okay, keep making our units. SCVs are dead again. And notice how, notice how I have not actually attacked him once this entire game, right? I have not actually attacked him once. I have just defended myself with our main army, and this is just a harassment. But do you see how this army literally did more damage to his base than his entire army did to mine? Like, we've already recovered from the damage we took, and the reason why that works like that is because our opponent has no defense. So if we, har if we harass his base and he has no defense, we're going to fucking crush him, really. But if we have defense and he does, like, an all-in on our base... There's a good chance we're going to be able to still defend ourselves, which is totally fine. And a big reason why we knew we could defend ourselves this game is because our Terran opponent went for mass fucking Reapers this game, which is uh, super expensive in the early game. Okay, and now I would say this guy looks like he's pretty dead. So here's a cool thing we can do. We can either straight up attack him or we can play safe still and go like this. Let's just assume, let's assume this guy could still do more. Let's grab two more medevacs and hit shift two. To add them into our current control group of two. And then boost like over here and get, get my army grouped up. Get all of it grouped up. Get it all grouped up. He's got four proxy racks on my base right now. Okay, get a couple more depots. And now let's boost into his base and let's go drop him again. And then does he have anything or is he just kind of dead? Looks like he's kind of just AFK now. He like wants me to kill his base. So now it looks like the Terran opponent has no way to defend themselves. Guess what? This right here, what we're doing does not put the game at a risk it's more or less just a way to give us a good chance to win the game because if our Terran opponent pushed us we actually have a big army to defend ourselves still but if we know for a fact that his army is dead and there's no way he can make any more now it makes sense to go really commit and you can go for it a lot of times you can actually kill your opponent because they just panic and they don't know how to actually you know not all in you all the time so anyways, now he's he's dead though, but yeah, we just he's gonna make us kill his base, it seems like, so that's fine. So we'll just go ahead and keep doing that. Stim pack everything down to death. Kill that depot. Go kill that depot. Oh, yeah. Less than three. Kill that depot. Yo, thank you very much, Flame! Appreciate you, man. Yeah, this is his last building because he is being revealed. So, there you go, there's a game. Wait, what? The fucking tech lab count or something? What the hell? This is the tech lab count? What the fuck? Add-ons aren't supposed to count. I'm so confused. What the hell? Wait, did I kill the barracks later? Then I realized? I just want to, I, I'm so confused by what I just saw. Yeah, no, I killed the barracks first and he's not dead. I guess the add-on, I guess, uh, that's so awkward. Add-ons are not supposed to count for a building uh, when there's no main building to it. I, I, I mean, this, I'm learning something right now myself here. I guess uh, they do count for a base trade because these buildings don't give vision, by the way. Like, if you lift off a building from an add-on, it doesn't give vision. Like, the add-on itself just becomes, like, it's still yours, but it's disabled, more or less. And now it's a disabled add-on. And he doesn't actually lose until it dies. That's so weird. Okay. Interesting. But alright. 
Um, okay. Well, whatever. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. Yo, Duo, thank you very much for the four. And uh, Hawaiian pizza's okay. Don't love it, but Do I don't hate like it. Do you like Hawaiian pizza? It's okay. Not my favorite, but it's not bad. Uh, I wouldn't prefer it. I wouldn't order it myself. But if someone else ordered it and I had to eat it, I could do it. Uh, I'm not someone who is, like, a stickler about pineapple on pizza. Like, I won't ever order it myself, but I don't hate it so much that I just would be like, I refuse to eat that. Okay, so let's talk about this game, okay? Let's talk about this game. Let's talk about the concepts again, right? So check this out. So once again, this is going to be, by the way, guys, this is going to be our macro build. Whenever we do macro TVT, this is going to be what we do a lot now in uh, Diamond 2, okay? This build is solid. I just want you guys to know that. it's It's got harass potential and it has uh, defensive potential. Do you have to use this build? Uh, no, you don't have. There's not only one build that you have to use every game. I'm just picking this one because it's a it has nice versatility. And now that we're getting higher through diamond, I really feel like you guys could probably handle this kind of a build. Uh, it does require a bit more aggression from you if your opponent oh, is not crazy all in yeah. like ours was this game. Wrathbomb, thank you very much for the three, 33 month three sub. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, so. We are getting our gas. We are getting our Reaper in a second here. We're going to get our second gas when the barracks is almost done because we want to have more gas so that I can make a faster factory. Otherwise, it's going to fuck everything up. We start our depot so we can make Reapers and SCVs and not get supply blocked. We do start Noble Command as a party, though, as soon as the barracks is done. Oh, now we make a factory. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to just address something really fast. Yo, Terracrons, thank you for the Prime. What? Welcome back for the two. I want to address something really fast with this build. And that is, with this build, scouting with your SCV is still good. I don't want you to think that you can't scout with your SCV with this build, okay? You totally can. It's totally fine. But I want you to know that it's less intimidating if you don't scout with your SCV with this build. It is still doable. You, I will say this. You still should scout with your SCV because there's one build that comes to mind that could probably kill you. But more often than not, because you're going to be going for an aggressive build, even if you don't scout, you're mostly going to be fine if your opponent attacks you. The only build I feel like that would be a problem for you to deal with if you don't have a bunker down would be if your opponent actually goes proxy marauder. So I don't want you guys to think that you just shouldn't scout with this build. I just want you to know that more often of the time, if you end up not scouting with this build, you'll be just fine. And as you can see, my opponent went from the end of the replay last game, our opponent went proxy four racks. He proxy four racks reapered me. I uh, didn't feel like it, I'm not gonna lie, but that's what he made because he was only making two at a time. And it's just, that it means he had a problem with his economy. Uh, but proxy for Rax Reaper still did not break us with this build. So, and we're not even realizing we're getting proxied. It's just, oh, he's attacking us. Cool. <coughs> so, yeah, don't feel super intimidated. Uh, and we'll, again, we'll talk more about that as we go, right? So we make our first Reaper, and then we make our second Reaper. So we make first Reaper, then a factory, and then we get enough gas on our gas geysers with six on our gas to make the second reaper after the first reaper. So in total, that means we've mined 200 gas because it's 50 per reaper and it's 100 per factory. One factory, two reaper. Okay, so we we literally don't take our SCVs off gas until we have mined 200 gas in total. Two re the second reaper is started and the factory is already started. Okay, that's important to know that. And then why do we take off gas now? Here's why. What do we want with our build? What is the priority of our build? This is the, this is the con again, what I'm showing you guys right now, it ties in really well <clears throat> into what we talk about all the time in Bronze to Plat, which is build efficiency and priority of resource of your build, right? So what is our what is our build supposed to do? What what is our build's focus? If you have three SCVs, if you have three SCVs mining gas. You have enough gas income to continue to build reapers constantly out of one barracks. That is very doable, okay? It's very doable to build SCVs out of, or sorry, to build a reaper out of a fucking barracks with three SCVs mining gas. So what do, we, what do I want to do? What do I want to do with this barracks? 
I want to go to a total of three Reapers. So if I go down to three SCVs on gas right now, I can still afford to make my third Reaper and it won't delay it at all. What am I going to do out of my factory? I'm going to make Hellions out of my factory and Hellions cost 100%. <coughs> God damn, my voice is... I'm like losing my voice, dude. Hellions cost like 100% minerals. 100% minerals. That's it. And what else am I going to do behind this? I want to eventually take more tech. I also want to quickly expand behind this. So if I go back to having a 16 out of 16 on the mineral line, that gives us a mineral advantage. And if my build was to say, make the fastest starport possible, let's go for battle cruisers. I'd be like, this doesn't make any fucking sense. If we're going to go for extremely fast battle cruisers, if that's what, if we're going to go for a one base battle cruiser build, taking off the gas again makes no sense. But if our build is to go for a command center behind this and a Hellions behind this, we could that we should go back to 16 on the mineral line now. It makes sense for that because that is a mineral investment and a mineral investment. Mineral priority. Now, does that mean we're going to mine no gas? No, it does not mean that. It just means we're going to prioritize our minerals first and then we're going to prioritize our gas after. So now I'm still making SCVs and those SCVs are going to go into the gases now. They are going to fill up the rest of the gas geysers. So now I go through, uh, you know, now I put another SCV in the gas, but I took one off to build a command center. Notice how I don't take it off the mineral line as well. We're prioritizing our minerals because we're doing a mineral focused build behind this build. We still need gas as a supporting unit to it because we need to make tanks. We need to make medevacs. We need to make Vikings. We need to make upgrades, all those kinds of things. But as a focus, we're going to be going from Reaper Hellion into Marines, SCVs, supply depots, command centers, mineral costing buildings a lot, more barracks with one factory and one starport. Minimal gas with major mineral investment. So that is why we do we balance our resources like this. It's important to know that. Okay, and then now we start making Hellions. Again, pure mineral costing unit. We continue making Reapers, which are easy as fuck to afford with three SCVs on the gas. And then look what happens. The second my second Reaper shows up, here's, here's how we can indirectly scout our opponent. Indirect scouting of our opponent, okay? This is something, this is a technique you can use yourself where this happens to me a lot on stream where I will see something attack me and my, my stream will be like, how the fuck did you know your opponent had that vibe? How, how did you know that your opponent's doing what, what you think he's doing even though you haven't scouted a single thing in his base? Are you map hacking? Are you cheating, bro? Think about this for a second. Watch this. Let's go right back to when my Reaper spawned out of the barracks. So my Reaper, think about this. Just think about it. My Reaper, my second Reaper. Okay, so let, let's say it like this first. We got to start from the beginning. My barracks was as early as a barracks could be in the start of the game. I did not delay my barracks at all. Okay? This was not like a 45 second delayed barracks. So you have to realize if this barracks is ASAP, if I make a depot with my first SCV, and then I make a barracks right when it's done, that is the fastest barracks you can make because you cannot make a barracks before a depot. So this is the fastest barracks possible. Now, if we understand that, and I also made Reapers the second the barracks was done, and there was no downtime on my build, this is how we can calculate what our opponent's doing as long as we know how to play efficient. This is exactly why so many times previously in the series where I said if you don't know how to play efficient, you're not actually playing the real game of StarCraft. This is why I haven't talked about this kind of concept that much entirely, like scouting-wise, until we get to Diamond League, because ideally in Diamond League, you're going to be playing at least somewhat efficient, right? Like, so you're going to be in the realm of efficiency. So if I know for a fact my barracks is as fast as possible, and I know for a fact that I haven't wasted a bunch of time not making Reapers, it's been fully utilized up to this point in the game. That is important to know that. My Reaper pops out of my barracks at 2.36. He just spawned at 2.36. Remember that. Because... My opponent attacks us in my base at 2.38. At 2.38, he's already attacking us with two Reapers in my base. This is important to know what this means. So how can I tell what this means? Like, How does this make sense? If my opponent did the same build as me, think about this for a second. If my opponent did the same build as me, do you, you don't know what that would mean? You want to know what that would mean? Jesus, my nose is so itchy, dude. I'm so sorry. Ugh. Okay, I don't know. That's fucking so irritated when I talk. But think about it like this for a second. If my opponent 
did the same exact build as me. Do you want to know where his Reapers would be if he had two Reapers? They would be about right, either right there, or they would be like right there. And how do I know that? Because my Reapers are only about fucking like, an, you know, a very minor bit of screen length away from the barracks right now. My first Reaper could be around the map more, more than it is. Sure, this Reaper could be way the fuck over here for all he knows. Because it's my first Reaper. But if I have my second Reaper just spawning, I cannot be across the map with that second Reaper. So you know what that means? I can guarantee, confirm, this dude has either opened up two barracks defensively right off the bat at his base, or he's proxied barracks one or two or more at my base. We don't know fully yet because we just saw the Reapers. This is not confirmed how many racks there are so far. There could be more than this, but we know for a fact there are two barracks in the game. Um, uh, or like, or there would be a first SCV made maybe the first barracks like right there. But even then, think about this for a second though. Let's think about this for a second. Was there enough of a, of a time discrepancy, okay? To think, think about this. There ha now, that if we think about this really in detail, there has to be two racks because let me tell you something. The only way this could be, the only fucking way that this could actually be one racks, the only way it could be one racks would be if he actually pulled one of his first 12 SCVs off the mineral line and ran across the map into my fucking base and built a barracks right there. And I, I somehow didn't notice that. And then while his SCV, his, his first SCV right at the start of the game, he grabs one and sends it across the map. His first SCV he builds, builds a depot. And then by the time the depot's done, he starts a barracks right here. And then suddenly, the amount of distance my second Reaper has gone from the barracks is about that much, right? Barely anything. So if there was a barracks like right there, that could potentially be two Reapers popping out right there. Potentially. That's the only way that could fucking make sense. Because you have to realize, if your build is efficient, his build doesn't suddenly magically be more efficient than yours. He can't have two Reapers go that fucking distance right there when mine only goes that distance when I have not missed a second. He doesn't have Chrono Boost. He can't fucking Chrono Boost out Reapers. Like, he doesn't get fast Reapers for no reason. His barracks doesn't go on overdrive. He can't have three SCVs build a barracks and it makes it faster. There's nothing about this that makes it different. So if you understand that concept, you know for a fact... And also, the, the, uh, here's an important thing to know, too. I know for a fact that there's no barracks there either because he didn't run an SCV past my depot when I was building a depot up here at the start of the game. I would have saw that with my first depot because I, bu I build a depot here before his SCV could arrive. That's impossible for him to get there before my depot is started. So I will be there before he gets there. Okay. And now, secondly, if someone was like, well, what if he built a barracks there, lifted it off, and then landed it? That is now, once again, the same thing I was talking about earlier, where it's inefficiency. You can't fucking load or lift the barracks off and then land it and spend the next 20 seconds flying through a slow zone and then land it and get two reapers at the same time that I get two reapers when I haven't lifted my barracks off. It's fucking impossible. So I know for a fact there's no barracks there. I know for a fact there has to be at least, at least two barracks there at least okay at least now think about this watch this so our reapers kind of trade out here a little bit it's all good his reapers die it's important to remember that they died okay don't forget that they died that's important to know that our third reaper is on its way and our uh, hellion it just popped out of the factory which is nice we're starting to make a depot And right as my second Reaper spawns, two more Reapers are coming through the slow, the slow zone and jumping in my base again. So once again, now if we had any doubt before, guaranteed it's two Rex proxy. So we already know what his build is. His build is majorly invested into doing damage to us. And if we can understand the situation now, that goes, okay, our opponent is basically fucking all inning us. He's being ultra aggressive. And what am I doing as a response to that? I'm expanding. I am taking my natural. I have made a command center. What this tells us is that if I don't lose SCVs right now, and by, by losing SCVs, I don't mean like one SCV. I mean like if I don't lose like five or six or seven SCVs. Losing one SCV on the side of the base is not that huge of a deal. It, the, every SCV does count, obviously, but one SCV is not going to make the difference here. Like for this to be worth it for him, he needs to kill quite a few. He needs to kill at least like five. 
but now that we know there's two more coming in again after the first two just died, it's guaranteed. And he's still invested to it. He's committed to this. This is getting expensive for the Terran. And, you know, there, there you go. That's all. That's more. This is now his fourth, third, and fourth Reaper. This is fucking expensive. He just killed my SCV. But look what's happened. Look what happens to the Reapers again. They all die. So now he's killed one Reaper and one SCV. And that's it. I've killed four Reapers. That is an amazing trade for us, cost efficiency-wise. I have killed so much more than he's killed. Now, if I look at the income tab, I should know for a fact that even if we're tied right now, which could possibly happen, I'm not telling you right now that you... I'm not going to say right now. Th 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 I want you to think about this for a second. I want you to use your brain. If I look at the income tab, and we have the same economy right now, don't be like, well, Vibe, you said you'd have an economy lead. Because it's not based off of just the main base. Because he can easily make SCVs while he makes Reapers to saturate his main base. However, we have a natural and we can guarantee he does not have a natural like this. Because he proxy racks me with extra gas investment with multiple barracks. So we know for a fact he could not afford this as early as we did. We could have afforded this even faster if we didn't do a build that was more gas focused as we as we did. It could have been even more extreme for us to have an even faster natural. But like I said before, this build is super nice at dealing with pressure just be, just because it is. The fucking Hellions and the Reapers are super nice because it also allows you to apply pressure to your opponent if you want to. And it's all good. So we know we're ahead in economy and we're going to definitely pull ahead in economy oh, because of this command yeah. center. Yo, Zach Room, thank you for the 11 months. Looking forward to learning more from TB2GM. Hell yeah. Thank you, dude. Appreciate the 11 month resub. Much love, dude. So we know we're ahead, and that is, that is what it is. So if I look, yeah, again, if I look at the income tab, we might be tied right now, like I said. But look at this. My command center is only a few seconds from being done. Where's his command center? Where is that? Where's his at? Nope. It doesn't exist. So even though we're tied right now with economy, it's not going to be tied for long. I'm about to start exploding beyond what he has. Okay. And now we're going for a tech lab on a factory and a tech lab on a starport. What this is going to do for us is it's going to be able to make a cyclone and a raven. And why this is good, again, is because it deals really well with Terrans who do anything air pressure. It deals with liberators. It deals with fucking banshees, especially with cloak. It deals with battlecruisers that hit your base. If, any battle, if, if, if you've ever played a Terran player, that's super awkward. And you just teleport to BC in your base. If you have a cyclone and a uh, raven... You can disable the BC with your Raven, and you can just fucking lock onto it with your Cyclone and chase it around. And your Bio can also help attack it. Um, yeah. Uh, it's just universal. Cyclone and Raven deals really well with any type of harass your opponent can do to you through the air. It helps a lot. It helps with drops. You can disable a Medivac because it flies in your base, and the Cyclone can lock onto it and kill us at the Medivac. It is really, really effective. It's super nice to have it. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, you don't have to also worry about always building missile turrets every game because of the possibility of a banshee that ha could have cloak on you. And then we're getting a react. So we're getting like all of our add-ons at the same time. And this is why three Reaper, two Hellion makes sense because it's, it's a nice, solid, sturdy amount of units early. And again, we would have the Reaper if the first one didn't die, which is okay. And the reason why it's okay that we didn't build a third Reaper again is because we killed all of his Reapers. So it's fine. So we're going into a reactor on the barracks for more marines. We're going into a tech lab on the factory for a cyclone and do tanks afterwards. And then we're going into a tech lab on the starport to only make a raven. And then we're going to lift it off and rotate this over with a barracks. And the cyclone will then become a reactor for medevac and viking production. Okay. But now again, we already know our opponent's aggressive. So we know we have the advantage as long as we stay defensive. Doesn't make any sense for us to feel the need to attack. And I want I want to explain something to you really fast. Someone like for people out there that are like, well, vibe. You have a unit. You have units that could attack him, though, don't you? You could attack. Yes, we could attack. But we've already confirmed we're being proxy raxed this game. We already know we're being proxy raxed. And if our opponent literally has more reapers, and let's say he has depots at the at the ramp here, <clears throat> which is what most turns will do. If I run out of position, and I run over here across the map, what if my opponent? runs into our base at the same time while we're out of position. Like, what if I'm, like, right here and he runs in my base with, like, another five Reapers or four Reapers or something like that? It could happen, right? 
And then I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm out of position now and all my SCVs are dying. Now I have to make a choice. Do I want to commit to a base trade? Or do I want to turn around and go try and save my SCVs as they're dying? And what if I go, you know what, let's commit to a base trade. Well, if I have Hellion Cycle, you know what happens? My Reapers get into his base and I only have two Reapers. I'm not fully invested into them. But all my Hellions get stuck outside the base because they get locked out by the depots. So my Hellions don't get the help at all. And then what if he brings his... So like, what if he sends a couple of his Reapers back? And while I'm losing a bunch of my SCVs to, like... Let's say he has four or five Reapers in my base now because he's proxy raxing me. And he's not teching like we are. He's not expanding like we are. And my SCVs are dying to a, still a chunk of his Reapers. Only, like, two of his Reapers come back. And they jump up the cliff and get in the base to help his SCVs kill my Reapers. So it's two Reaper versus two Reaper plus his SCV. And then I lose all my Reapers in his base. And he just doesn't really lose the depots because Hellions are going to take forever to kill depots. And that would suck, right? That's not a great situation for us. And we could potentially throw the game. However, if I leave this army defensive because we know our opponent's aggressive, if he attacks me, I maintain economy lead so I'm getting ahead of him every second that goes by in the game, like economically. But also, I have a less chance to lose my units because I'm already defensive so I can defend my base if he attacks me with a random-ass army. And then he shows up again with another... Four Reapers right here. So, like, that could have counterattacked me. If I was, like, right fucking here, right? In the middle of the map. And then he shows up here at my base. That could be scary. If I just turn around, all I'm going to do is lose my mules, lose SCVs. Uh, it's going to be a lot of free damage for him. Because depots don't stop Reapers, guys. He could literally jump up the cliff and get my other SCVs. And then jump down the cliff and leave. So, not great. That's why we should not be attacking right now in this position. But we end up killing one Reaper and we lose one Hellion. It's not a big deal. That's that's a bit of a, a bit of a wash, I would say. Honestly, that's even I would say a little bit better for the re the help the player who loses the Hellion, because gas is so precious here. Gas is very important because now every time he makes more Reapers, it means he's going to have a slower transition to things like tanks and medevacs and Vikings and whatever, which are stronger units. And now our opponent starts attacking us with a unit in the main base. He sends a Reaper into the main. We go and kill it. Not a big deal. We come back down. He's just more or less scouting us. But again, he's just, it's another Reaper that died, right? We're sitting here with our our, our good economy, just making uh, all of our stuff like we're talking about before. And we're still defensive. Now comes another harass unit. Now he's got a Liberator. So now I at least know. Here's the thing. You, you want to know what that Liberator tells me? You want to know what that Liberator tells me? This is what the Liberator tells me. There is no fucking way his natural, if he has one, even remotely looks like that at all. No way. How do I know that? Because how many Reapers have died this game, guys? We killed four in the main earlier. We killed one that ran up the ramp and down the ramp over there. And then we killed one Reaper in the main over here that ran in and scouted again. So we've killed... We should have killed six Reapers this game. Seven Reapers have died. I don't remember where the seventh one died. Maybe I missed one somewhere. But the point I'm trying to make here is... Is we've killed a lot of Reapers. And Reapers are gas expensive. And we also know he proxy racks this. So now if my opponent behind proxy racking me with that many Reapers... Now has a Liberator in my base. Do you want to know what that means? I have not made any more units other than a Raven out of my starport. And he already has a Liberator in my base. So, that means that his starport is not much further behind than mine. It's not. And you want to know the only way this dude could afford that many Reapers? And still have more Reapers? And also have this fucking starport unit? Remember how I said I took off my gas to make my command center? He never did that. He literally never took off the gas. It tells us that he kept mining gas the whole time to be able to make this many Reapers and this many Reapers up on the top of the screen here with the units lost. 7 plus 5 is 12. This is 12 Reapers so far. Plus, on top of that, he has teched to a factory and then to a starport and then made a liberator. This is so fucking expensive. He cannot have a natural even remotely close to what we have. So I know for a f I don't I don't know for a fact that if he does or doesn't have a natural yet, it's, we can't say that he just doesn't have a natural. But if he does have a natural, you want to know what it would mean? It's either in the in the building process of not even being finished yet, or if it's done, if this guy is playing efficient as fuck with his economy, but he's mostly focusing on gas, that his economy at the mineral line probably has like three SCVs on it max, like just starting. We have eighteen SCVs in this area. 19, actually. Or, uh, sorry, this is actually 17. What the fuck is... Uh, we have 14 plus 2 plus 2 on the gas. So, I guess I just... I'm going to click one. I don't know. I got, I'm so confused. I know there's one... Oh, sorry. There's one probably like... 
coming. Oh, there it is. It's, it's right there. It's that sphere there. It's coming down the ramp. That's why. It's in the army. Uh, but yeah, you get the point. We have a lot of SCVs at our natural. We even have an SCV over here building a command center. Another one, a third command center. So again, we know for a fact, if we look at our opponent's natural, his natural is either still being built, or if it is done, it just finished recently. It just recently finished. So if we look at it, his command center is not done yet. And it makes sense because if we back this game up, there's another way. We don't have to back this game up, but look at this. How can I know? How do I know for a fact his command center is behind mine? How do I know? Because if he made a fucking liberator and that many reapers this fast, he never got off gas. So I know for a fact that if I have one of my gases that says 1486 and another one of my gases says 1750, you want to know what I can guarantee right now? His gases are going to say less than that because he's mined more than I have, which means it's harder for him to do the mineral things like build a 400 mineral command center and build a bunch of SCVs in my natural that add up. This is 50 times SCV and this is uh, 19 SCVs right here. So that's, uh, what is that? It's 950 minerals. Right? That's a lot of fucking SCVs of worth of value of minerals. I know he can't afford that. So if I look at his gases... 1486. What is his lower gas? His lower gas is 1450. I'm 1486. What does that mean? He's mined 30 so far. 36 more gas than us on that one. And look at his second gas. 1582. We're at 1750 on our second gas. What's the difference there? That's like 120. Right? Roughly. Or... Is it? Wait. Uh, no. What am I talking about? What is that? For some reason, I, it's like 230. No. What am I... Well, why is it... 170. Jesus Christ. I don't know why that was so hard for me to do that. Holy fucking A, dude. That's so... That all the overall, all this means is he's mined about 200... Again, we don't have to... Uh, we, uh, you, you might be like me just now and have a fucking major brain fart and be like, I don't know how to do math anymore. Uh, but overall, did I, did I have to know that he's mined like a roughly about 200 more gas than I have? Exactly. No. I can just guarantee though based on his tech of his units and based off of his investment of his units that he has mined more gas than me. And how did I come to this conclusion? How do I know this by... How the fuck do I understand what I'm talking about? Because I know for a fact that a Reaper costs 50 minerals and 50 gas. You know what that... Do you know how expensive that fucking Reaper is, guys? A factory costs 100 gas. A starport costs 100 gas. This motherfucker is making mass reapers. Two reapers is a tech building. He's made 12 reapers. I did not make 12 reapers. I made three in the tech buildings. So this dude has definitely gone into a gas investment. That's how we know that. That's how I know for a fact he cannot have all these fucking SCVs. Because we know how much reaper costs. And we know what it's costing him to afford that. Which means if he's costing mining gas, he is not doing a mineral priority. He's doing a mineral secondary. And if you do a mineral secondary build, you don't have that. That's not what a mineral secondary build looks like. Again, you can. Uh, I just want, again, I'm going to say this one final time, and it's going to be fast. But you cannot have. This is why. At least, let me preface it like this: If we are comparing our build to our opponent's build, and we did a mineral priority with an expansion. Our opponent, who we can clearly see did a gas priority, can fucking not have a mineral investment that looks like that. It is impossible. It is not improbable. It is fucking impossible. Because you cannot say in StarCraft 2, okay, so I know that you mine five minerals per patch turn in on your SCVs, but I get ten. And I know it says you mine four gas per turn in on your gases, but I get eight. Like you don't have more economy for no reason. There is limitations in this game. So if we have invested our limited economy into an economy, which is mineral focused, how the fuck can our opponent have that while also doing a gas focus? It's two totally different builds. So we should understand our position in this game right now without even having to go scout as natural. Because he's given us all the information by how aggressive he's being. We should, we, this is how I want you to start thinking about the game. This is You need to start... And it, how, do, how do I know these things? Because I know what units cost. I know what buildings cost. And I understand what a focus of an economy is. I know what a gas-focused build looks like. And I know what a mineral-focused build looks like. 
It's three Reapers versus 12 Reapers. That's a big fucking difference there. He's made four times the amount of gas in Reapers that I did, and Reapers are expensive, as we just talked about. <coughs> Anyways, he attacks us. Do we have to send our whole army to kill Lurbiter? No. We could have literally sent just our Cyclone, and it would have been fine. Uh, it's not a big deal. Our tank gets killed because of this, because we kind of expose our tank, and if our Marines and our Hellions and our, and our other Reapers stayed to defend the tank, not only would our tank not have died, we also still could have killed Lurbiter with a Cyclone. Cyclone's super good at dealing with this kind of shit. Uh... But the tank, even though it dies, even though we fuck it up, is it a big deal? Nope. Because look at the look at the supply of the game right now. How come that makes sense? Mineral priority builds scale faster than gas priority builds. Gas priority builds are more aggressive, and they need to do damage to scale back the mineral focus build. So he needs to get damage done to balance the game out right now. Because remember how earlier in the game I said we're going to be tied on SCVs twenty-two to twenty-two. Like it's it's we're not going to have an advantage yet. Look at the economy now. We're losing SCVs right now. We just lost nine SCVs. Really, we lost eight because one SCV died to the Reaper earlier. We just lost eight SCVs, and I still have eight more SCVs than he does. So I had 16 more SCVs than him a second ago. Or I lost two earlier somehow, I guess. Whatever. When did the second... When the fuck did my second SCV die? I don't remember. Either way. Look at the... Look at like, but right as this Liberator shows up, look at the fucking economy. We are crushing his ass in economy. It's no longer tied. And that's what it looks like when you have a gas guy versus a mineral guy. Mineral guy is going to scale better. I have way more supply. So, yeah, he shows up. We defend. We kill this versus a priority. Okay, we didn't need to send everything. We could have sent the cyclone and that could have been fine. And then we come back and defend this. And all said and done when this is over. Look at the supply now. We're almost doubling him. We are almost doubling him in supply. This is brutal for our opponent. It's now going to be very hard for him to be able to have a chance in this game to actually win the game now. He's... Because look how... For instance, look how I have a third command center. Do you think he has a third command center right now? He doesn't even have a fucking natural yet. At the natural. We already have a third turning into an orbital before he even lands his natural. He doesn't even actually saturate the mineral line until his main mineral line patches are starting to disappear. Because he's done in it a very aggressive build. So we know for a fact we're super far ahead. But without even scouting him. Because we know he's being aggressive, he's losing his army, and he's not doing enough damage to justify it. <coughs> Versus us who are being economical. So patterns of players is another thing we need to learn here. If there's a pattern I've noticed out of my opponent, what is the, what is the pattern in this game? What pattern has this guy showed me that he's doing? He likes to attack. That's the that's what I would say the pattern is out of this guy. What did he do? He proxy racks me with re, with bar, with barracks and he made reapers. And what did he do with those reapers? He attacked and he lost them. And then he attacked again and he lost them. And then he attacked again over here and he lost a reaper. And then he attacked again with a liberator and also a fucking uh another marine reaper force over here and guess what happened? He lost all of those units. So if I can pay attention to that throughout the game, what do I think is going to happen again? I would not be surprised if 30 seconds from now, he attacks me again and loses his whole fucking army, right? I'm not going to be surprised if he attacks again. This guy is a fucking attacking kind of a player. He just attacks. It's a pattern. So he pokes my third, he scouts it. He scans me to see my army. I make some depots around my base to spot attacks before they get to my base. It allows, it, it allows me to relocate my army faster and easier. And now I'm, am I attacking him? Yes, but I'm not all inning him. This does not have to be my entire army. It is just a drop. It's just a medevac. And what happens? He attacks me with a fucking doom drop. He's going all in. So this medevac is going to end the game for him because he doesn't even try to defend his base. This dude is what you call an all inner. This guy is all aggression, no defense. All gas, no brakes. He does not know. He doesn't even con like have the concept in his mind about defending himself. His idea of defense is keeping you defensive and killing you. Like, if he, if this guy had a strategy, if this was, like, medieval times, like, if this was, like, um, you know, the day... Like, think of the movie Troy with, like, Achilles versus Hector, shit like that. Achilles is someone who can, like, play defensive, aggressive, defensive, aggressive. He, like, understands the tempo of a battle. He knows how to fight really well. And now his opponent, the, this guy, the way he's playing, 
would be like a guy who has two fucking swords in each one in each hand and his strategy is to literally charge and run full speed at the opponent and just do like a windmill effect of a sword slam in his face and try to like cut off his opponent's limbs and shit like there's no defense you can see openings all over the place where like what if you sidestep and stab him in the, in the gut what if you sidestep and trip him and then stab him in the back and all he's doing is like ah just fucking charging forward like slamming like his swords in your face that's it. His whole, his whole idea of combat is attacking you relentlessly. You cannot win doing that all the time. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to do that. So, as you can see right now, we understand the tempo of battle of how this game has gone so far, and we're super far ahead. And what happens here? We, re -look, we regroup our army together, and we come back to our main base, and we just fucking crush this attack. We absolutely crush it. We move in. We could have actually used this Raven, I'm not going to lie, to disable his tank and also Aura threw down some auto turrets. I could have disabled his tank and threw down one auto turret because together those are 175 energy. Or I could have thrown down four auto turrets. Turret, 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 turret. Because those are 50 energy each and I have 200 energy on this Raven. And how do we micro this thing? We literally let it die. I don't do a single fucking thing on that Raven. And again, I expect that to fully happen to you in Diamond League. That's totally fine. The Raven served its purpose early game. It gave us the ability to scout our base, and it's all good. Uh, in, in case this guy went for, like, Banshees or some shit. But in the future, we will micro that Raven a bit more. It's, oh, it's not a big deal. yeah. I just want to show you, in this position, not micro the Raven I was still fine. I think this is my third resub during this series, lol. Ty for putting in all this effort for the community, dude. Yo, e EMCG plays. They give it the nine. And yeah, the series is super long, I know. Uh, but thank you for the love, man. So we're understanding the tempo of battle, right? We understand the tempo of the battle, and now we're taking advantage of it because we know for a fact we're going to have a good economy here, a good amount of units here, and we're pushing into his army. And overall, what ends up happening is this guy ends up breaking, and he dies. We have enough to overpower him. And then he loses the whole fight over here, so now his attack is over, right? His attack is over. But let's look and see what happened at his base again. Remember this? This was just a drop, guys. This was a drop. And what I did was I killed a command center. I loaded up the medevac. I dropped in the main. And now I'm killing another SCV round and a command center. This is brutal. This guy just lost both his command centers. Like, right now, he's got a brand new command center that he made at the third base. But, like... This guy's economy is totally fucked up now. There's no way he's going to have a chance anymore in this, in this game. He's going to be so far behind. He already is behind, and he's only going to get even further behind from this point. Not to mention he's sending SCVs at Marines, and we're killing a lot more of his SCVs there. Then we load up, and now he's super dead, right? And we spot his third, and again, right now, I could go, I, I could go all in right now, all in aggressive. I know for a fact that this guy's pretty dead now. So I could totally attack, but if you wanted to play extra, extra, extra safe because this guy proxied you and you just want to not have, give yourself a chance to take any damage, you could literally just grab a couple medevacs like we did and drop him again with more units and just, like, bring a little bit more. We don't have to go all into his base. There's no need to go all into his base yet. We don't have to, we don't have to do that. There's nothing really forcing us to do that because we have the advantage and we're not... We're still growing the advantage. We're not actually there yet. We're not at full power yet. Like, I would never say hit 200 supply and sit there forever. But if we're still building up to 200 supply faster than he is, it makes more sense for us to grow our power in this kind of a game when we have absolute control. And now, he, obviously, we don't have to watch anymore. The game is over. He's dead, and he makes us kill all of his buildings. So. Yeah. Tempo of game. Tempo of the game is important to know. Tempo of the game. <laughs> Achilles was a demigod. What's the what's our advantage vibe? No, but it's re it's really true though. Like if if you have someone who does not understand how to fight. If you have someone who doesn't understand the tempo of battle, they're so easy to take advantage of. And anyone who just only understands attack, 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 attack. You want to know how you beat that? Defend a couple times and then counterattack. It's so fucking easy.
Okay, we're playing as a Zerg player now. And Jergy boy. Jerg. Yeah, beat to gym. Uh, uh. Okay, never mind. <sighs> never mind, sorry. If I'm a gold 3 Protoss and I want to switch to Zerg, when should I do it and how much will it cost? Everything. It'll cost everything. Uh, I don't know, it's up to you. I would say if you want to switch, just do it. Fuck it, dude. What's what's stopping you? You, you care about your MMR? So like you're going to play a race you don't like just because it currently has higher MMR? It'll have more fun if you just switch now and play a race you like more if that ends up being the case. All right, let's get our barracks going. This guy's random, by the way, so we're gonna go scout him right now with an SCV after the depot. We're gonna scout him like early, because we don't know what he is and we want to know what he is, because it, it changes the game a lot based on what race our opponent is or what build we could possibly do. So he is a Zerg player. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and do. Um, <clears throat> let's do an all in this game. We'll do a two base all in. What this build's going to be is this build is going to be crazy amounts of pressure non stop, essentially. It's going to never fucking stop. So we'll get our orbital, then take our expansion. Send our Reaper towards his base. Go ahead. Get another depot with this Brand SCV. And now let's go ahead and make What's going on? Command center upgrade complete. Marine, let's go attack with the Reaper and let's also start a second barracks. Additional supply depots required. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna make a reactor the second this uh, SCV is done, and we're gonna start a factory as well. Not enough minerals. Okay, so let's poke with our uh, Reaper Not for a little bit. Minerals. Cool, I killed the drone. All right, that's super nice. Back off a little bit. Let's get out of here. The queen's done. Let's not die to the queen. Start our next gas as well. Let's bring this SCV up to the top here. Start building depots up there. Once it's done, building command center. Okay, let's start a tech lab on that second Rax. Let's send our Reaper back into his base again. And we're still making, and uh, now we're gonna make a starport, and we're gonna. Oh shit! Okay, my reaper died. It's fine. If your reaper dies, it dies, right? It's okay. And now we're going into. Uh, we're going into a lot of marines. We're going to go into a stim pack, and we're going to go into a uh, reactor medevac, reactor starport, with a tech lab factory. Not enough minerals. Okay, so we're just building Not marines right now. Minerals. We're just chilling on marines, boys. Not enough minerals. So I'm gonna make my reactor on my factory. SCV ready. That was a bit late. It's fine. Um, we can just make a tech lab on the starport because it made after, and we'll just swap them over because again we want the tech lab on the factory and the reactor on the starport. Go, go, go. Not enough minerals. Still making SCVs? I'm gonna saturate two bases fully. 
And I'm still making depots and stuff. Okay, so let's swap these around. Keep making marines, keep making SCVs. Let's go ahead and make tanks as well as medevacs now with this. I get a couple more depots. Okay, there's an overlord in our base. We let's go kill it. Why not? Bring some bring some marines to go kill that thing. Just get rid of it. And now I'm no longer gonna have to make SCVs, guys. SCV SCV creation is now over, and the reason why is because I'm already fully saturated on two bases. I don't need to make more SCVs anymore. Yeah, whatever. Ah. And now what we can do as well is we can make like three more racks. And now let's take my army and let's go attack. Oh, I just attacked my own medevac. Uh, baller. So let's now, let's rally towards his base and we'll just grab our army and go push right now. We can build a couple more depots as we go here and there. And we're super fucking all in right now. This is a big fat all in. Stim pack our units right here. Because Zerg is right there. And Zerg has a base here, so let's set up tanks right now. Set up a tank like right there. Set up another tank right here. And move some only some of our Marines forward. We don't have to move our whole army. Just have my units kind of like spread out passively. And I'll take just some units, like 10 or 12 or something, and push forward. Meanwhile, go back to our base and just make more reactors. And keep making units, keep making tanks, keep making medevacs. Then we have combat shield started. We never started it. We definitely need combat shield. Okay, now let's unsiege one of our tanks and put it forward in the next area. So, let's put our next tank, like, right here. Okay, he's pushing us. Step back our units, and look how easy it is if I'm already spread out. See how fucking easy that was to defend that? Wasn't that bad. Okay, he ended up killing my whole army. However, that's not our whole army. It, like, that was our whole push initially, but we're all in him, so there's a parade push going on here. We're not stopping. It's Here comes wave number two. And now we can scan and kill some of the creep. Let's go ahead and siege this tank. Keep grabbing my army. And now we're pushing into the next area of his base. Make sure we're making a priority of tank marine first, and then any excess goes into the into the medevacs. Because our medevac count's gonna start getting really high really fast. And we don't wanna have medevacs as a priority and then not have enough marines and shit like that. Okay, we can scan this creep over here too. Just go ahead and kill that so there's no creep in this area. And then take our next tank and siege it further forward. Siege it like on the cliff here. And now do the same thing. Only use like 10 marines. Only use like 10 marines. Look how easy this shit is, dude. Okay, back up a little bit. He's attacking us. Let's stim pack one more time. And A, move the area. It's very hard for Zerg to deal with this kind of an attack. Because it just doesn't fucking stop. And then your next tank could do the same thing again. Let's siege the next tank even deeper into his base. And then if the Zerg attacks you and loses his whole army, you're more than able to, uh, you know, actually now push through your whole army and capitalize on as much damage as possible. But when you know the Zerg has an army that's waiting to engage you, do not fucking engage with everything at once. You have to have insane micro, like insane marine splits to make that work effectively. And is that impossible to do that? No. It's not impossible to set that up, but it's going to be hard. It'll definitely be hard. Uh, and that's something we'll do more, again, uh, down the road a little bit. Like, maybe towards the end of this video, we'll start doing more marine splits. But for now, I just want to, again, I want you to, like, see, as long as you understand the concept of, like, a pre-spread, it's so much easier to deal with a Zerg like that, for instance.
And that was a very aggressive build. There was no third base there. There was no SCVs made after the two base. All we did was we just made more barracks and made fuckloads of Marines. And then kept tank pressure going as well. So we were pushing Zerg before Zerg could really handle it. <laughs> Is it worth getting 1-1 one, one upgrades when you're two base parade pushing like that? You can. But you have to realize, if you do, it's going to delay your push. It's not free. It is not free. So it makes it less all-in if you do that. The longer you wait to attack, the less all-in your build is. So, although, yes, you can do it, it changes the build a little bit. It's 200 gas and 200 minerals just for the upgrades, and then it's 250 minerals for the buildings themselves, and then you also have to have two SUVs building the buildings for a matter of 25 seconds. And that's it adds up to a lot of fucking money. You're overall missing out on like 625 minerals or so, and 200 gas. Like somewhere around there. And that's you know that's not free. Think about how much 600 600 minerals ish and 200 gas could buy you. That could buy you two medevacs and like eight marines. Depends on how you want to play it. What are we playing against? Another Terran? Okay. Not enough minerals. Let's go for... Let's do another round of the defensive build. And because I took my first gas at the same time as I took my barracks, that's okay. You can still do that. But if you do that... Now, remember how I waited until about 75% with my second gas? Let's do it about 50% 50, 50 this time. Because... I need to make up the difference. I'm still going to be able to make my first Reaper either way, but you need to have a decent amount of gas early so that you can afford a factory really fast. If you don't build your factory fast, this build doesn't make sense. Because again, it's Reaper Hillion, and Hillions are really good because they don't cost gas. So you don't need to keep mining the gas, you just need to initially mine it. And they give you so much control. So put a couple of SCVs on that gas geyser. Let's make our Reaper. Let's get a Orbital. And now, as soon as we get 150 gas on top of what we are, we have already spent, I will take three of my SUVs off gas because uh, we're able to afford Reapers still with, uh, with that. And uh, yeah. So now I'll take another two SUVs off gas. One, two. On? And we make another Reaper. And now we're good to go. And there you go. Now I have a Reaper. And this time, let's go ahead and scout him with the Reaper. Let's not be fully committed to attacking him. Like, we should have scouted with an SCV. I didn't do that again, so that's kind of silly. But it's whatever. Okay, let's go ahead and make another command center. Let's scout him with the Reaper. If we see another Reaper, let's get the fuck out of there. Because, again, we're not trying to attack with one Reaper. We just want to get a read on what his build is. Okay, he's got a Reaper. He's got a build just like ours. Just like ours. He's got a fucking Reaper, and he also has a uh, factory. Super similar build to us. Let's go ahead now and take a Starport. Again, we're getting a gas priority after the mineral priority. Because, again, our build is all about expanding. So I know there's going to also be someone out there that's going to be like, Vibe, you're not doing the build right. You're not putting the guys on the gas exactly how you should be at top level. And we will do actual pro builds in Masters League. We'll like really look at a build and really break it down exactly in Masters. But again, I want you to know that even if you don't do a build exactly the way that it's supposed to be done, that as long as you understand what efficiency means, you fucking are fine. You are totally fine. I know someone out there is going to say that, which is fine. I just want you guys to understand that the concept is literally to understand how to make a build. Okay, we got... Uh, here comes our opponent. We're defending. Cool. We're chilling. So notice how we did the same thing as us. We did the same build. Let's push him again. Throw a grenade at his Reapers. Throw another grenade at him. Okay, run around our own grenade and chase him a little bit. Chasing him now is super important. The reason why is because Hellions are faster than Reapers. So I can kill his Reapers on the way home. If he, you know, because of this. So I'm still making SCVs as a process in the, in the process as well behind this. So we have our Raven. We have our uh, 
We have our Raven and our Cyclone being made. We're making Marines. We can lift off this command center and take our natural. We'll, we'll talk about the micro there a little bit more when this is over. When this game is over, that is. Take our natural. Keep making SCVs. And now we're going right back into the same thing we did last time. And now that we also killed his army, and we know our opponent's not being all in as fuck, now we totally could go into uh, a bit of an attack. We could totally attack him right now. That's very fine. We could definitely set up an attack. Let's maybe put our Hillian that's weak in the back. Put both of our Hillians in the back. They will ex eventually move to the front though because they're faster units, but yeah. Let's lift off our barracks and put it on the tech lab to get Stimpak. Get Stimpak. Here we go. And now we're good to go on that. Poke his base here, see what we can do. No natural. Oh, okay. Oh my god. Look at that. So much SCV damage here. Okay, let's go ahead and get out of there now. We definitely killed like maybe four or five SCVs there. That's oh. Disable that BC. Disable that motherfucker right now. This is why the the Raven is fucking nice. Okay. Let's get our third command center. Let's fall back for a second. Away from the BC because uh, we don't have enough units to deal with this yet. Just run away from it for a second. And now that he's going BCs, let's make a fucking Viking. And now we can attack towards the BC again. Get him away from our mineral line and back up. Again, we're not trying to we're not trying to chase him down all day. We just want to get him away from our SCVs. Go attack towards him, get him away from our SCVs. We can back up. Our cyclone's about ready to help. Do it again, attack towards him. Now our cyclone's in the mix. Cyclone might straight up just kill this fucking BC. And there you go. So although that seems expensive for us, so what we just lost, that BC is not cheap. Not cheap. Now let's take our let's take our double NG bay in our main or something. Because we're about to take double gas at our, our natural. And we're chilling. We are chilling. Let's go ahead and siege a tank in the front of our base. Let's leave like one Reaper in front of our base too, in case this guy decides he wants to be aggressive now and push me. Which could very well happen. Okay. Get combat shield. Get three three. Get uh, not three three. Sorry. Get a uh, two. Get one one. Jesus. Start one one upgrades right now. Waiting for a tiny bit more gas. And there we go. He's pushing me. Okay. Get our units ready to go. Go defend ourselves. What's he got? He's got another battle cruiser. Okay. Let's go ahead and back up for a second. Don't don't get killed by him right now. Just take a second. Scan him. All right, let's just move our commander over there just for a second so we can see what we're dealing with. This commander's not going to die anytime soon. And it's two tanks, three tanks, and a BC. So let's do this. Move our Raven forward. Attack towards him. Let's drop two turrets right now. Turret, turret. Stim our Marines. Stutter step the Marines forward. Stutter set the Marines forward. And fucking handled. Those turrets they, those turrets actually tank damage. Just so you guys know. They actually like draw the fire of his siege tanks. And that was the easiest fight of our life, right? Not, not, not that hard. Okay, now we're getting a lot of money. We need to get definitely some more barracks right now. Get like four more racks. It's all good. Keep making units. He still is making BCs as well, so let's keep making Vikings. Vikings are just good in general to give you air control overall. Let's get an armory so we can go into uh, better upgrades. Okay. And now let's go ahead and send like one Marine on the right side of the map. Again, we're not going crazy medevac, so maybe we shouldn't drop here. We're going lots more Vikings now because he's going BCs. Let's get our gases. Let's get our next command center as well while we're at it. Keep making SCVs. Make some depots as well. Okay, keep making units. Okay, 
Make all of our reactors on these racks we just made. Transfer a bunch of SCVs that are oversaturated. To a different base. Okay, he's pushing me again. Oh good, it's whatever, it's not that big of a deal. Make sure our marines go scout over here. Okay, he's got a, he's got a battle cruiser in my main base now, so let's do this. Make my whole army. Go. My whole army's right here, right? Group one. Now let's just take our Vikings and go deal with this annoying shit in our main. We can kite backwards against the BC. Attack, back up. Attack, back up. Attack, back up. Attack. And now the BC's dead, or it's about to die, so we don't gotta back up anymore. Attack, back up. And we're good to go. Move our SCVs back to the middle line. And you can kite BCs because BCs are slow as shit. Now let's go take our next base right here. SCV count right now is looking really good for us. Making more tanks, making more Vikings. We're looking pretty good. This guy has four bases. And now that he lost another army, he also likes to teleport battlecruisers around our base. Let's start making turrets. Just like a turret per middle line in case he does BC attack again. And let's go ahead and get ready to push. Not enough minerals. Drop some mules here. Not enough energy. Now let's go. Let's go push. It makes sense to push because, again, he's playing greedy now. And he just fucking threw another army away in the trash. And he's playing aggressive again. So uh, this is another player who's just really aggressive. It's all good. A lot of Terran players are going to play like this. They're going to always be fucking aggro as shit. Okay, we, fought, we see an army. What's going on over here? He just rallied to where his units were going towards. Let's go ahead and stim pack the area. Disable a couple of tanks. Siege our tanks. Ourselves. And we can stutter step. Okay, there's a planetary there. It's not stutter stepping to the planetary. That's fucking death right there. Just don't stop making units. Notice how I made another army behind that? Don't stop making units, guys. It's important. Let's group my army up on the left side now. Let's maybe make a few more racks as well while we're at it. Racks, racks, racks. Let's make another factory too. Because we want to be able to make more tanks. We want to be able to make just constant unit production. Let's move up the left side. Let's maybe make a couple more depots. And push the left side. 3-3 three, three is about ready to start as well. So let's push this base, stim pack it, get our tank, oh, I just loaded a tank in the medevac, siege our tanks up right here, and get, get on top of this economy. And now that's huge. That's so much damage right there. Get a couple more depots at this base. Start 3-3. Three, three. Alameo West. Oh, whatever. What do you mean? Get. I, oh, I'll say this. Maybe he's Australian or something, and he's upset about playing the U.S. West. But I mean, this is the American server, so um, what can you do, right? Maybe if uh, maybe if other regions of the world that had to play on NA wanted to have better ping, maybe they should have uh, had more babies that played Starcraft there, because then they could have actually had their own servers. <laughs> I'm sorry, people from Australia, and people from Brazil and Singapore and all those other regions of the world. But I feel like, honestly, it's, uh, yeah. Complaining about U.S. West, North America, on the North American server is, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So, oh, let's, yeah. let's talk about this game, boy. Uh, Skelly Quilt, thank you very much for the Prime. What does is, what is West XD mean? It means he's talking about the fact that he's laggy because he has to play in U.S. West. That's all he's talking about. And it's US West is like one of the most fucking uh, foundational NA servers. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, lag. Yeah, lag is not fun to play with, no matter what. And I feel I do feel bad for people from like Australia or something that have to play on US West because their server literally got deleted. I, I'm not. I'm not gonna say I don't feel bad for those people. I definitely do. It's annoying, but it is what it is, dude. I feel like it's the American server. It's kind of expected, though. Like, it would be like me going to Korea and complaining about lag. Uh, when I, you know, it's, their, it's the Korean server. 
Like, what? Korea? Fuck that shit. Uh, anyway, it's whatever. It's not a big deal. It's kind of a, it's a, I feel like it's just one of those things where it's just like someone was just salty. It's not that big of a deal, though. Okay, so we'll talk about the, the way the game plays out again really fast. So everything's going the same as what we talked about before. The concept of the build is all the same. And we're making our Reaper. We're making our factory. Command center. Um, we decided to scout him with our first reaper. We, you can totally do this, by the way. It's not like you can't do this. Again, we, we should, we should SCV scout though. The fact that we didn't SCV scout either one of these games is not good. I should do that. But I just want to show you as well that you have the option to reaper scout as well. But just know that by the time my second reaper spawns out of the barracks, just know this is a fact, okay? If this dude had two proxy racks like right here, or like right there. And he jumped in my base, similar to last game, when like my second reaper spawns out, his first two reapers out of his first two proxy racks jump in my base. That would be a situation where I would have to micro my SCVs, grab like four or five or six of them or something, and tell them to go attack the reapers while also telling my reaper to attack his reapers and try to micro that because... Uh, this Reaper was going to be literally, by the time this Reaper spawns, the second Reaper, that first Reaper is going to be like at my opponent's base. So it's going to be as far as way away as possible. So SCV scouting is still better. We should be doing it because it would allow us to know, oh, we're getting proxied. Let's play defensive. But if, it, if you don't SCV scout, you still can scout. This is still not a terrible alternative. It's just you're kind of playing risky to proxy. And we scout and we go, oh, cool. Reaper, Reaper. Barracks factory. Double depot. Reaper, Reaper. Barracks factory, double depot. Uh, you know, we, we see uh, we see the same build, right? We see the exact same build. However, look at this. I want you guys to know, uh, can, can you notice a subtle difference though? We have a very similar build order, but do you notice a very subtle difference? It's right here. Look at the factory on his base. It's done. There is not even SCV nearby. There is no SCV nearby this factory. Look at our factory. It's not done yet. So this is a subtle difference. And do you want to know what this means? What this means is, remember how I said, what is our build doing? We're going for a barracks uh, with a gas. And we're also getting our second gas, like halfway through the barracks. Or if we go gas before barracks, we're going to get our second gas when we're like 75% of the way done with the barracks. The reason why we want to do this is because we want to pair the second gas with the barracks in a way and the first gas of the barracks in a way that we're going to have enough gas early to make a factory, but we're not doing a major gas priority a lot of the time here. The fact that his factory is already done and mine is still under construction, if we're paying attention to the small details, tells us, as long as we're not playing inefficient, that, that which can tell us real answers here, and so it's not just because one of us was AFK, essentially, if we can go, okay, his factory's done and mine's not, that means that our opponent has more of a gas priority than I do. So do you know what that means? Anyone who is more gas focused than the other is most likely going to be more aggressive than the other and has more options than the other. Okay, this is what that means. So it's not it, like for now though, it's not the end of the world. It's not like, oh my God, all hell's breaking loose. But if we pay attention to something like this little detail like that, where he rushed gas even faster than I did, him going into a battlecruiser follow-up is not that surprising. Because he's rushing gas faster than I am. He's focusing more on the gas. So we start a starport. We have our second command center started. And right now, again, if we didn't pay attention to that detail and we just went, oh, he's going Reaper Hellion just like us. It's all good. If you know he's one basing, why not scan his main? Our, Terran, our opponent, Terran opponent, his build was very similar to our build up to this point right now. It's very similar. So if I scanned his main, do you want to know what I would see right now? I would see a starport that is under construction. I would see Hellions and Reapers being made. And I would see SCVs mining resources out of the minerals and the gas. Just because I see that he's mining more gas than I am doesn't mean... I can see exactly what his choice is going to be 
if we scan him right now. Okay. And if you remember what I said, let me, let, let me answer this in a different way now and give you an easier answer to understand. How about instead of wasting our economy to overreact to a scout, what we could do instead is we could have a versatile defense and get our defense faster by investing in our own economy faster. So instead of dropping a scan in his base to, to look for that starport that we know exists right now, which tells us, oh yeah, he definitely didn't take off gas. That's all it tells us if I scan this. Oh, Twisted yeah. Courage, thank you for the nine months. I appreciate it, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Vibu heart, vibu heart, vibu heart. Yeah. How, and how did I know, without even seeing his base yet, how did I know that that starport was still going to be under construction? Because his build is similar to ours still. I still went for a faster factory myself. I just didn't do a gas focus the entire time. My opponent has done a gas focus the entire time, which means he has a little bit of a faster factory and he has a bit of a faster starport. But it's still too early to know exactly what he's doing. And that was a very subtle difference that even if you don't pick up on it right away, it's not a big deal. The factory thing is what I mean. Where you could go, his is barely faster than ours. It's subtle. It's just one of those things that you need to start thinking about it if you notice a detail like that. But if we're having a defense that is versatile, mean, what versatility means is it can deal with a lot of different things. It, ha it can deal with Battlecruiser. It can deal with Banshee. It can deal with fucking Liberator. It can deal with a lot of range of builds Terran can do. Why do we need to scan his base to overreact and slow ourselves down? Because if we scan his base and slow our build down, it means that even if we scout what it is, if I have less money to get myself towards the way to defend it, it puts more pressure on having more of a perfect defense through scouting, and it gives me less versatility because I get there slower, if that makes sense. Like if it takes me longer to get my defense set up because I have less income, it means I have to make every choice perfectly. However, if I defend myself with a versatile defense that is more economical because I don't scan and I use a mule instead at this point, and I have a well-rounded idea what he's doing. If a battlecruiser shows up, and for a second I was like, oh, I'm not really prepared for that BC yet. And it kills a couple marines, three marines or something like that. And my mule mined more than what three marines were worth. It's still good for us. It's not bad. So am I telling you that scan is awful? No, we should definitely scan sometimes. But I am telling you that right now a scan is overkill. All a scan would do at this point in the game is reconfirm what we already know. We should know what he's doing already. We should already understand that this is what he has in his base. Because it's what we're doing. And we're comparing his build to our build. And he's doing the same fucking build as us from what we've seen so far for the most part. Very similar builds. It's not exactly the same as we've already explained. But even if you didn't notice the subtle difference of the factory, it's very similar build. Additional supply depots to go. <sighs> So we have two Hellions and three Reapers. And then we're making our tech labs on our factory and our starport. We can get ready to attack him now with these if we wanted to. But if we don't attack him, guess what? We already know he's doing the same thing as us, right? There was no add-on on the factory when we went there. It was building a Hellion and there was no add-on on the barracks either. And he was building Reapers. So here's a cool thing we can do as well. If we know for a fact our opponent's doing the same build as us... If we both travel randomly around the side of the map, it means that this game is going to get chaotic and hectic and it's going to be hard to deal with because Reapers can jump in the base. Even though Hillions get stuck at the wall, Reapers can jump in the base. Okay? Reapers can jump in the base. And if Reapers can jump in the base, it, it compromises your SCVs, which is scary. And if we are going for a command center, Again, we're doing the economical follow-up, which means we should probably be less aggressive. And if our opponent's doing the same build as us, if we just wait till it gets to our base, the chances of us having a better fight are higher because we have some city that will help us. Like, what if his Reapers or his Hellion accidentally auto-attack a fucking depot? Because it just, the range of the unit, it attacks a building. That's less damage he does to my units. What if he runs up a ramp and I get advantage because I have already in my terrain, the, the terrain advantage, and he doesn't know where I am and he runs up the ramp and takes free hits. Advantage for me again. Which is, that's exactly what happens. So he shows up at our base in a second here and we have the high ground and we get free hits right off the bat. So my Reapers are all shooting his Hellions and my Hellions are shooting his Hellions 
and his Hellions are shooting my Hellions, but my, like he is taking more damage than I am right off the bat. Complete. As you can see, if we look at his army, look, uh, this, the rocks don't count. Look at his Hellions, look at his Reapers, all full health. Look at his Hellions, 66, 38. He took a lot of fucking damage. Look at my Hellions and my Reapers. All Reapers, full health. My One of my Hellions is full health and one of my Hellions is 54. So one of my Hellions is this, similar to one of his Hellions. They're both yellow health. And one of his Hellions is in the orange now, almost red. And my Hellion compared to that is green. So I can now have a much easier time winning this fight. Now I actually get aggressive because I know I have the advantage here. And he actually chooses to stay. He doesn't run home. He chooses to stay. So how do we micro this? The best thing you can do for yourself is try to line up in a line that is not going to be in a direct line going into the Hellion's attack. So, for instance, if a Hellion's attack is... Let's get paint out for this bad boy. If a Hellion's attack is like this, if this is the Hellion right here, and its attack looks like this right here, like that right there, the last thing we want to do is run at the Hellion in a line that looks like this. That's fucking stupid to run in a line that looks like that. Because if we do that, we just get AoE'd like crazy by the Hellion's attack. That makes no fucking sense. However, if we extend our line like this, rotate it like that, and now I engage the Hellion like this, suddenly only one of our units gets hit, and the rest of our units on the sides don't get hit at all on the other sides. So what we want to do against the Hellion attack, again, is we want to go in a line that is not directly into the Hellion, but instead in a line that avoids most of the AoE hit. So notice how I engage that? Like it's, we're engaging in a concave already. Like, it's, it's not that hard, but imagine if my line was instead of how it is now. What if my Hellion was here? My Reaper, 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 Hellion. That would make no sense to do it like that. Because I would just be getting AoE'd on every fucking unit. Because, again, a Hellion's attack does do splash damage. AoE's everything in a line. It doesn't make any sense to gauge that way. Secondly, the second we engage, the second we engage, do not throw all your grenades. Throw one grenade. Because the damage of a grenade is fucking garbage. It's terrible. But the stun of a grenade is amazing because what the stun of the grenade does, which it launches units in the air, like this right here, right there, his entire army is launched in the air. Now that grenade is doing no damage. It's doing fucking no damage. I'm not even kidding. It does barely anything. However, it stunned all of his units. Every unit he has is not attacking in the air. Every unit he has is launched in the air. So we ended up killing one of his Hellions and one of his Reapers just now. In the process of this. And now I'm getting... And here's the thing. Even though he can't attack, even though he's in the air, it does not count as a flying unit when he's in the air like that. And I still get to auto-attack him the entire time with my Hellion and my Reaper. So by the time he lands, I will do more damage to him with another full round of auto-attack. Of my Reapers at least. Maybe my Hellions not so much. Because Hellions attack speed is a bit slower. But Reaper attack speed is much faster. We could definitely get a free auto attack off. So notice, my units are green, 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 red, yellow. His units are green, green, yellow. By the time he lands, he'll be probably yellow, yellow, green. Because I'll probably do a lot of damage to that one Reaper. So if I play it, I and then we pause it, he finally now is actually able to control his units again. And he, he, like, he ended up shooting one time as he landed, but we shot right as he landed as well with another free shot. And his other Hellion and his Reaper haven't attacked yet. And then we just did a fuckload of damage to his army right there. So again, we just massacred his army. And Reaper Hellion versus Reaper Hellion goes... It, it literally kills each other super fast. And it's all about avoiding... It's really all about avoiding the AoE of a Hellion. And it's also, even furthermore, when you get really advanced at it, it's about trying to... We didn't do it this game, though. But it's also about trying to pull back your units that are closer to dying so they don't get initially targeted on. And then, and then re-engaging them right after to still maximize their DPS as much as you can while trying to keep them safe. It's really what it's all about. But this one was just all about, we threw a grenade right as it started. That's more than enough. Don't stand in his grenade. But if he stands in ours, that's amazing. And now, if we still have Hellions alive and we have the advantage and he runs away, Complete. we fucking chase him the entire time. I will not stop chasing him because the Hellions move speed is 5.95. A Reaper's move speed is 5.25. So a Hellion moves 0.7 faster, so we can easily chase him down and kill his Reapers. I can't kill that Hellion, but I definitely can kill these oh, Reapers. Lots of damage. Yeah. So I go up and I get more Hellion or I get more Reaper kills. I keep chasing, keep chasing, keep chasing. There's one Hellion, or there's one kill on the Reaper, and there comes the second one. 
The Hillian moves faster, and then it dies. That's huge. That was huge damage right there. That gives us so much advantage right now. We could definitely go pressure his natural and things like that. <clears throat> and then, like we said before, now here's another sign, right? Here's another sign as to that our opponent was going for a gas investment. So look what happens. We get to his natural and we go, hmm, there's no natural here. Oh, I'm scratching my chin right now. Uh, no natural, boy. Okay. And look at ours. Mineral focus versus gas focus. So again, for the person that says, why didn't you scan? We could scan. I could scan. Right now, yes, I could. And see, what he, why the fuck does he not have a natural? Am I saying that it's the worst idea ever? No. I'm not like, At this point in the game now, when I have more economy, it's not the worst idea ever to scan his base one time. We could do it, but I want you to know that if we have Cyclone Raven, again, this is versatile defense. This is defense that is suited to deal with lots of different sorts of things. It's, it's very decent at dealing with a lot of shit. This is, why I, this is why I think this is a good build for you guys to use. Overall, it's safe. And then we get over there and we finally... Oh, we go, oh, okay, well, he is expanding. It's just a lot later than ours. And then suddenly, think about this for a second. What if I scanned right now, right? Think, think about this for a second. What if I scan right now and I go, like right here, and I go, all right, he's making a third command center and he's got a fusion core and a, a starport with a tech lab. And I go, oh, he's going BCs. And I'm like, oh, wait, no, yeah, he's going BCs. I know. I, I, I see it in my base as well. Right? Like, it's it's one of those things where once this has happened now as well, like, I would say the moment for us to want to have scanned him would have made sense right there when we wanted to confirm, why the fuck is his natural so late? What are you doing? But within literally, like, a second of that, he fucking teleported into my base. So it doesn't matter. Like, at this point now, we don't even care. Now we already know what he's doing. This is not like, oh, you make Battlecruiser and everything else under the sun. No, Battlecruiser is fucking expensive. This unit is not cheap. Just getting one BC is like a thousand fucking uh, resources. Into, like for the fusion core and the BC itself. It's fucking expensive. It's so expensive. This is not cheap. This is not like a marine. This is equivalent to the cost of 20 marines in terms of resources. But it also costs gas, which slows your minerals down. So this tells us, again, if he can already afford a battlecruiser... This dude has a gas focus just like the last Terran we played. Because a BC is, again, like I said before, it requires a, uh, a starport just like we have. It requires a tech lab just like we did for the Raven. It also requires a fusion core. And it also requires 300 gas to make the BC. How do I know that? I know unit costs. So I memorize these things and so should you. So you know how to read builds by seeing them in the game. You can calculate, that's fucking expensive. Not only that, but when I was at his base, if you guys noticed, I got shot by a siege tank. I literally got shot by a siege tank. And I ran away from it while I was killing SCVs. Now you know what a siege tank is? It's more expensive than a cyclone. So this dude made a siege tank that costs 135 gas, or 125 gas. My cyclone cost 100. That's 25 more gas for him right there. And then he made a battlecruiser, and I made a raven. And that is 100 more gas than a raven for the BC by itself, because it's 200 gas for a raven, 300 gas for a BC. And he also made a fusion core to make a BC, which is 150 gas. So in total, that dude has made a lot more gas than I have. And do I have all the gas discrepancy in the bank right now? No, I don't. I don't have 300 gas just sitting there for doing chilling, doing nothing. So that tells us that our opponent has invested heavier into gas, and we already assumed that is what the case was because his natural was late for that split second before he teleported the BC in our base. The natural is still floating for him, and ours has 13 SCVs already mining on it. So we knew for a fact he was gas-focused. And then it ended up surprising us. We lost the fucking cyclone, right? It was just like, oh, we didn't micro perfectly, and it just so happened that the right fucking, the exact place he teleported on was directly on my cyclone, that is just a bit of unluckiness, because if he teleported over here, if he teleported over here, if he teleported back here, the Cyclone would not have died like that while we disabled the BC. But he teleported directly on the Cyclone, and we were looking at our Reapers, and we didn't notice until the fucking Cyclone died. Again, this is Diamond League. It, I don't expect perfect play. It's totally okay to if that shit happens to you. If this was Masters, though, what we would have done, 
is we would have heard there's a cool thing you can hear as well i'll teach you guys this really fast but you can hear the bc by the way you can actually hear the unit uh when it teleports as long as it teleports into your vision and if we would have heard that sound effect we could have immediately went oh bc in my base and then we could have pulled the cyclone away because there's a dead time before the bc starts attacking while it's teleporting check this out listen for the click listen for the click tell me when you hear it listen for the it's like dink listen oh, listen for it yeah. after this sub thank you only den for the nine months you woo vibe you why boo happy baby nine months jk jk keep up the good content love you thank you man appreciate the baby sub much love listen to the dink from the vc tell me when you hear it Tell me when you hear it. Raise your hand when you hear it. Did you hear it? It's subtle. And now, if, you, if you're someone who tries really hard to hear it, maybe you could turn the music off. But listen again. Tell me if you hear the dink. I'll turn the music off this time for just a second. Listen to it again. Did you hear it again? It's very... It's like... Dink. I can't... I wish I could make that sound effect with my mouth. But I can tell it teleported my base. So without even looking at it, I can go oh, one more time. I could be like this. All right, I'm looking uh, right here with my screen, right over here, right? I'm looking right here. Listen for the dink. Did you hear that again? Dink. The second you hear that fucking sound effect, you know a battle cruiser is going to appear in your vision because that's what the dink represents. So a battle cruiser is going to teleport in my base somewhere. And I have time to react now because it's going to be about locked. It's going to be locked out of combat for about two seconds. The sound effect cues the BC teleporting in your base. It's similar to a Nidus screaming when it pops in your base. There is a sound effect attached to a BC. So I know that I heard that one more time. Listen for it. Listen for it right now. I'll do it one more time. Listen for the dink. Did you hear it again? We know a battle cruiser is going to teleport in the area. And there it is. That sound effect signifies a BC teleport. So if I would have heard that, like, you know, if I if we're rep if we actually acknowledge that that sound effect makes sense of something, if we're like, "Oh, fuck. That means a battle cruiser is teleporting in our base right now." Cuz again, you here's the thing. You would not hear that if it was teleported out here. You don't hear that sound effect if it's teleported outside of your vision. You only hear it if it's teleported into your vision, you only hear it when it's in your vision. Okay. I cannot hear that. You didn't hear it? Are you serious? Listen to it again. Listen. I'll, I'll make the sound effect really fucking loud for a second, okay? Let me go to like 50% volume. It's very obvious when you know what you're listening for. Listen. I'll raise my hand when I, when I hear it. Heard it. That sound effect of the dink. That sound effect is the BC jump noise. If you need to turn your sound effects up when you play this game, that's totally fine. Sound does actually... There is actually multiple things in this game that sound effect does actually change the gameplay. It's not just our workers are under attack. You want to know another thing? You can actually hear Nidus's based off of the direction of where they're coming from. It's fucking crazy, right? If a Nidus is on your left side, a Nidus is on the left side of the map. If a Nidus is on your right side, it's on the right side of the map. Uh, based on where your camera is right now. So, yeah, you can hear sound effects uh, around you and shit. But I heard that dink from the BC, and now I know BC is teleporting in our base. I'm going to turn my sound effect down again a little bit more. I think 15 was higher than I had before. And now I know it's going to come on my base, and I could deal with it, uh, you know, before it gets on my base. See how much time it sat there not attacking me? And then finally we react to it, and now my cyclone's already dead. We could have easily walked away from that fucking thing and then disabled it and then fucking killed it. I legit can't hear the sound effect vibe. I don't know what to tell you then. Some people uh, get get a better fucking headset maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Because if you still can't hear it, I feel like it means you have, you're wearing probably like earbuds or some shit and they just... You can't really... You're probably also the kind of... This is what I would say. If you still can't hear it, you're probably the kind of person that plays like FPS with earbuds and you have zero fucking sound directional awareness. You're probably the kind of person that plays a game like PUBG or something. And then you go, 
shots and your teammate might say they're at 240 and you go where are they i don't know i don't know because sound directional hearing is actually something you learn when you play fps a lot more than rts i learned a lot of sound directional i actually learned how to be aware of sound direction while playing a video game really hard because i grew up playing counter-strike 1.6 so i could literally i got so good at hearing people through sound effect that i could actually have a situation where i would be in a game where let's say there's a wall right here, okay? There's a big fucking wall. This is a wall that has no fucking vision. You cannot see through the wall, but you hear a person on the other side of the wall behind it running there, 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 there. And you're standing right here, okay? You're standing right there. And you hear them. You're like, ooh, I hear that. And you hear them as they take this step right here. And you fucking spray the wall with bullets right there. And you fucking tag them. Sound directional hearing is something I, like I used to do that shit all the time in Counter Strike, where you would you would pre-fire walls before you saw people because you could hear where they are. It's like hearing someone through the other side of the wall, essentially, and you know exactly where their footsteps are, based off of where you're looking. And if it's a little bit more to the left, you know that you're, they're going to be like right there. And if it's a little bit more to the right, you know they're going to be like over there. Or if it's directly in front of you, you know, you know they're directly in front of you. It's 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 I would I would I don't know how to describe that other than that that skill comes from experience. But you can literally hear the dink from a BC, and now you know that uh, a BC is in your base, right? And if we would have pulled the Cyclone back, and if we would have then disabled the BC, this would have been fucking ri like easy, ridiculously easy. Vibe, let's see it. Um, I, I mean, I'm not going to go play Counter-Strike right now, but I would say if you, if you aren't sure if I actually know how to I recognize what sound awareness is, go to my YouTube channel and watch me play PUBG. I... Call where people are before the before I see them all the time. Uh, when I play PUBG, I don't play PUBG much nowadays anymore. I used to play it, so I have recorded videos here and there. I don't know. Some of my videos as well are when I started playing PUBG. I didn't really stream PUBG after I got really good at it that much, so maybe that's kind of a bad example. But it, what I'm saying is very real. Anyone who's like an actual FPS player knows exactly what I'm saying. It's not even cheating. It's literally understanding where sound effects are. It's sound awareness. Like there are plenty of people. Like if you have you ever watched fucking Shroud play FPS. And someone can shoot a gun at him from 500 meters down the fucking way behind a tree or behind a bush. And Shroud gets shot at and immediately goes, there you are. I fucking see you within a split second. And why is that? Because he has sound awareness. He can literally, in his mind, calculate like on a clock. Oh, I'm getting shot from like 530 right now. Because I hear it coming from that direction of my ear and the fucking headset. Like I just hear it right there. Blah, blah, blah. I'm getting shot from 7.30. Blah, you know what I mean? Like, it's just how it is. And if you play FPS games, you, you honestly will develop this skill level, like this skill set for yourself. It's not something you'll develop in RTS. Um, that's one of the, honestly, that's one of the only skill sets I feel like I've ever developed that was not through an RTS game uh, by playing FPS games instead. Um, like accuracy, mouse accuracy, though, I feel like it develops better in, R in FPS than it does in RTS, but it still develops in RTS. Stuff like that. Uh, but yeah. Anyways... Anyways, we'll move on now. So again, we can hear the BC. So it's very easy to fucking deal with if we can hear the sound effect. Uh, and now that we let our cyclone die and, you know, all shit went terrible here. This is about worst case scenario, dealing with the BC. Even though it shouldn't have been worst case scenario because it would have been very easily dealt with if my cyclone didn't fucking die. But check this out, right? Eventually we make our second cyclone. We push the BC away. We kill it. Now let's look at resources lost when it's all said and done. Terran still lost more than we did. Let's look at workers. We're still ahead by three. Would you believe that? This is why I say this build is very versatile. And even though we lost fucking 23 units, 22 of those just died to the BC. That BC got 22 fucking kills before it died. Because we only lost one unit up to... Or we, uh, what the fuck? What else died? Okay, there we go. More units are dying now. Did we lose two Hellions? Earlier or some shit? I can't remember now. Oh, the tank killed the Hellion. That's right. So anyway, the BC killed 21 units. That fucking thing killed 21 units, guys. And we're still ahead. Not only in resources lost. Or no, we're not. We actually lost more than he did. I lost barely more than he did. I'm sorry. I'm red. I'm not blue. I lost barely more resources than he did. So he's ahead there by a little bit. But I am ahead in SCVs. And I just lost 10. And it's because he did a gas focus build, we did a mineral focus build, and we focused on the versatility of this build with focusing on economy. And if we actually paid attention to how we could defend that BC way easier, 
That would have been a fucking joke. If our first cyclone didn't just die to that thing, that would have been an absolute joke of a defense for us. It literally teleported onto it and killed it, and we didn't move our cyclone because we... Again, I'm trying to show you guys examples of what makes sense, right? I'm trying to teach you the game as we go. So it's not full tryhard from the, from the very get-go. But you can hear the BC. It's insane. Anyways, from this point on, what happens is, is our opponent once again follows up his last attack with another attack. This guy loves attacking. This is what a lot of players will do. We're just making, we leave our Reaper in front of our base, and why do we do that? It's similar to the concept of how we make depots in front of our base against like Zerg and Protoss, because it gives our tank more vision to be able to spot further out, and then it also just allows us to know if the Terran opponent is going to try to set up tanks in front of our face. We want to know if Terran's going to set up tanks on us. So leaving one unit in front of your base is very nice. He scans. And that scan, a lot of times, will usually signify... Like, notice... Th th think about this for a second. If that scan was more like right there, you know, that would probably signify... Probably signify that he just wants to scout my expansion, mineral line, and he also wants to scout, like, my tech. If the scan was directly, like, right here, you know what that would probably signify? He might be dropping my main base. You know, if he scans right here, you know what that probably signifies? He's ready to push my natural with his army, and he wants to know that if he walks in this area, if he's going to get fucking owned from it. So you can also kind of predict what your opponent's going to do based off of where they scan. And our opponent is pushing us, and clearly it makes sense because he's not scanning inside of our base at all. He's scanning the outside of my natural to know that if this push makes sense or not. Like, is he going to set up here and just die? Or is this scan going to show him? Yeah, you can siege there. You're totally fine to siege there. You can start sieging the command center and stuff like that. So now he scans again for vision, and it's whatever. Okay. And now we just used our CC for a second here. The CC is super tanky, and all he has to attack it is two Marines and a Battlecruiser. It's not going to die very fast. Uh, like, none of the tanks can attack the BC at all. So we actually look at our Raven and go, okay, what can we do here? I can disable one tank, or I can th drop down two auto turrets. Those are our choices. An auto turret, in my opinion, is the better choice here because... One tank disable is nice, but here's the thing. If I drop down an auto turret, an auto turret it eats more than one tank's auto attack. It eats more than two auto attacks. One auto turret eats three auto attacks of a tank. And if he has no coverage of his tanks, like nothing's in front of them, it's just tanks. It's very easily going to happen if we throw down a couple turrets to absorb some damage, and then we just push into the tanks because we can pick them off really easily. And we can actually absorb six shots of tanks rather than disabling one of his tanks. And again, I feel like this makes sense again because if you really, if, if we understand attack speed of a tank, which is 2.14, and we understand move speed of a marine and stutter stepping concept, I really feel like the tanks on the front here are probably only going to shoot about two times each. And the tank in the back is going to probably shoot three times because it's further back and it's going to be shooting while the front tanks die. So if we really think about it, it would make sense if I can get rid of... What if I can get rid of two shots? What if I can get rid of two shots? What if I can get rid of three shots? From one disable, I can pick one of those three tanks. Or what if I can get rid of six shots with double turret? The turret made more sense, I feel like. Not only that, but the turret also peppers in a little bit of extra damage onto whatever is here too. It adds damage so we kill the tanks even faster just by a little bit. Uh... I could have also disabled the BC, but I feel like that doesn't make any sense. And the reason why is because the BC literally can die to my Vikings. I could kill the BC with my Vikings and not even lose a single Viking. It's not that it's... it's I have Marine, Viking, and Cyclone. The BC is not the threat right now. The threat is the tanks. Because against tanks, I have Marines and a Cyclone. My tank is sieged already in the back. But it, if it's out of range, it's whatever. I'd have to unsiege it and move it forward. But tanks can fucking obliterate Marines. In siege mode. So that's really bad for us. That, those tanks are actually what's scary here. So what we should do is we should prioritize killing the tanks. And then worry about the BC after. Because also the last the last part about this is that makes sense. Is the BC has like almost triple the health of a tank. It's 175 compared to 550. So if we went for the BC. And, our, and the tanks the whole time we were attacking the BC. Just pounded all my marines and my cyclone. I guarantee we would lose all of our Marines and our Cyclone before the BC died. Guaranteed. And then, what if he just teleported? What if I almost killed the BC with my Vikings afterwards because the tanks can't hit Viking? And then he just teleports defensively with go home with his BC. And then we're like, well, fuck. That sucked. That was a bad fight for us. So 
Prioritizing the BC here makes no fucking sense. Prioritizing the tanks definitely does. <laughs> and then we're going back to just making units again like all like always and then our opponent once again teleports back into our base again with another bc and we run our scvs away we use our vikings and this is what i'm talking about with the vikings like look at vikings versus the bc it's not scary at all guys so he's got three viking and a bc and we have seven viking and we just go, all right, attack back up, attack back up, attack back up, attack back up. It's kiting. And you can actually fly faster than a BC can, and you have more range than a BC has. So you can inde indefinitely shoot the BC and never get hit if you micro properly. BC is not scary for Viking at all. And then we go back into more macro game situation here. It's all good. We can see with our Marine Scouts that he now has four bases. And then finally, this is the last piece of the game we'll talk about, then we'll move on from this. We can predict movement of opponent. Think about this for a second. If my opponent is walking his units like that, think about this. That is so fucking random, right? Who the fuck is going to walk one tank and two marines that direction? Who's going to do that? Nobody is going to do that. I'm just going to warn you right now. No Terran is going to go, you know what? I feel like setting up an outpost of two marines and a tank right there. Because that sounds like a good idea to me. Because if he did that, you know what I would do? I could drop on it with a medevac and lose nothing. I could disable the tank and then kill it with marines and lose nothing. I could literally spread my units out and lose maybe one Marine and kill it, which is still a great trade for us. I could use a Liberator and kill it. I could fucking land Vikings on it and lose nothing. There's so many things I could do to kill that. So that is clearly not what he's attacking us with. But look at its direction of movement. His main army is probably in that direction right there. Okay? Because it's close to this. It's not obviously at our base yet, but it's probably in the between of our base somewhere. So it's either here 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 somewhere in this area somewhere in this area so if we scan it we can predict he's already here and look where he is now we see what his army actually is he has two tanks now we just saw the second one coming down right there there's his second tank there's his first tank and now look at his movement look at these units he's going up so you know what that means it means he's retreating now he's either trying to regroup his army to fight me or he's going to try to retreat so he doesn't run into me and die and now this is a perfect opportunity for me to push forward because his army is split across. This is now hard for him to deal with this. A lot harder than normal. So we stim. Also at this point in time, what we do is we grab our raven. And now I could drop down auto turrets, but I actually don't think you can drop an auto turret on this terrain right here. Can you? I'm not sure. I actually don't play enough terrain to do that, but we choose to disable tanks this time. I actually choose this time, let's just disable tanks. Now I have enough energy to disable two of his tanks, or I could drop down three turrets. That's the current amount of energy we have, because two disables is 150, three turrets is 150. Okay, because it's 75 versus 25. Or, uh, sorry, 75 versus 50. So if I disable, here's the thing, if I disable two of his tanks, I'm still getting rid of a bunch of fucking tank shots. And now that his bio is stimming forward, Unless I physically micro my units to get on top of those tanks, I might not kill them super fast. So if I, if this tank, which is already in the front, which is dying, is going to die really easily, if I then disable these two tanks, you know what that means? It means I can focus on his bio with my entire army while these tanks are disabled and can't do a single fucking thing. So in this type of situation, I feel like it made more sense to drop down uh, Interference Matrix on the tanks instead. And it has no cooldown, so I can literally go C-click, C-click, because the hockey for it is C. Super fucking fast, super easy, disable both tanks at the same time. And then it's a bunch of Stimpak Marines with Medivacs with tanks versus just Marines and Vikings. And no Medivacs and no tank support. The, oh, there are Medivacs on the top. So we disable both of his tanks. And now we're taking a great fight with our Marines and our setup here. Because he had no tanks and we, and we have tanks. And obviously we also had a good amount of Marines there. Now pushing into those tanks makes no sense because we're just running into a planetary. And that planetary already just in two shots killed seven Marines. This thing does AOE fucking damage. So that's legit scary. So we just back up. We regroup our new army that we made during the whole fight. Like we were macroing the whole time. We don't, it's not like we're not macroing. So we then move up to with another army. And we go push the next base. We know he has a base there too. So let's go there. It's also not a planetary. So easy to kill. And then the game's now over. It is now over. Because he, uh, you know, he just doesn't have enough economy. He can't keep up with us anymore. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that game made sense. Hopefully you learned some things that game. 
Hell yeah. Nice. Doisa, doisa, doisa. We don't have any numbers first a Voider Tempest Rush with a Tempest on top of four batteries. Eh? Oh, my eyes are sore. Sorry, I, I don't know. I just read something random in chat. It has no context, what I just said. I was reading Twitch chat. For people that are listening to this video being like, what the fuck does that mean, vibe? Yeah, don't worry about, don't worry about it. It doesn't mean anything. Okay, uh, this game, let's go ahead and play a more aggressive style ourselves. Let's play something super aggressive. I'm going to show you guys a build that is super, super fucking lame. But it's very aggressive and very powerful. Grab two SCVs right now, off of our deep, or off of our mineral line. I let let them mine one mineral patch and then grab them. <coughs> Make a depot. This is very all in, very fucking lame build. I'm not gonna lie, this build's super lame. Uh, this is why you need to scout in TVT. This build's so easy. Okay. Now let's stop making SCVs. For, uh, make one more SCV after this for a second. And then stop until we make two racks. What's going on? In the rear with the gear. <laughs> and now, don't make, a, don't make an SCV yet. Let's make a gas. And now let's make an SCV. Not enough minerals. Not enough minerals. Well, let's go make another depot over here. Not enough minerals. Keep making SCVs again. Now that we have our gas started and our double rack started, let's grab two SCVs and put them on the gas. This is the last SCV we'll make, and then we'll go into uh, 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 Orbital Command. Let's make one barracks have a tech lab, and our second barracks will also have a tech lab. Double tech labs. SCVs are coming back right now. Okay, let's make a Marauder. Let's also make another Marauder. Let's make another depot, because again, we're going to start getting supplies super fast. Because Marauders are expensive as fuck. Let's go ahead and make... Uh, yeah, keep making SCVs for a second here. It's all good. We can make another Marauder. And now that we have excess mineral line here, let's make another gas. Keep making Marauder. Keep making Depots. And now when we have four Marauders, let's just go for it. So we now have four uh, in about the next five seconds. Let's go ahead and start Concussive Shells. Start Concussive Shells and let's go for it now. Um, so you could do this even more all in with getting Concussive Shells even faster. But at least if we do it this way, it gives you some option to like rotate out of Marauder. But notice how we're still making Marauders. We're pushing his base of Marauder, and Concussive Shell is on its way really soon. And then he dies. So I just want you to know, there's two ways. I feel like there's two ways you can really do this build. Number one is you get Concussive Shell during the push, which is going to not take too long to kick on. And then behind it, because you made more economical investments with less gas for long, for longer, you can make faster follow-up of Command Center, stuff like that. But... If you want to take this build in a really, 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 really fucking aggressive way, in a super aggressive way, you know what you could do instead? When you go back here, let's talk about this really fast. We'll do this We'll do this other version in a future game, okay? We'll do this build again at some point. So notice how we're taking our first cast right now. When we take our, uh, when we take our double racks and then we build our gas and then we build our depot, another way you can do it is as soon as you build your first gas, you can build an SCV and then you can build immediately another gas. And you just mine like 50 gas out of that gas geyser. Just like 50. You don't have to mine the whole time. You do not want to mine the whole time. You just mine like 50 gas out of that gas geyser and then do the same thing like we do 
with the fucking uh, the Reaper Hellion, where you take off a couple and take off a, take off one or two SCVs on both gases to go to a total of three mining instead of six. And then you get concussive shells really early. It's going to slow down your expansion, but it's going to give you a faster fucking uh, concussive. And it's going to increase the power of your push because it's going to he's not going to be able to kite you. He's, you're going to be snaring him every time you shoot him. So it, one way is uh, really all in. The other way is still very aggressive, but at least can somewhat rotate into economy. They're both very fucking annoying, though. It's both basically it's a two base or it's a two racks marauder proxy. It's a fucking super strong build. This, there's nothing really to this build, honestly. There's nothing really to it. What if they scotch you with an SCV? Well, that's what I mean. The only way the only way you defend Marauder Proxy, I'm telling you right now, is if you build a bunker. If he doesn't build a bunker, I can kite him if he pulls SCVs and take good trades because I can never stop making Marauder because I'm not losing my mineral line. Or if he doesn't pull SCVs, I can pressure him by running over his fucking uh, units with Concussive Shell. It's very hard to deal with. You have to fucking make a bunker to not die here as the other Terran. We talked about this before. I literally said this in the previous game, which is why we need SCV scout. And we, if we know we're getting proxied, proxy marauder is a serious build, guys. This build will fucking ruin your life if you don't have a bunker. The only way you don't die to this is with a bunker, realistically. Like, Or the Terran just plays it horribly bad. Who goes marauder? So, anyways, yeah, we'll, we'll go to the point where we attack. So, we, we do we attack with our first one Marauder? No. We attack with, like, four Marauders at once because we want to have the surprise attack of a decent amount of Marauders. We do not want to attack with one Marauder. It makes no sense. Because then it just warns him, oh, Marauders. Okay. Because look at this. What if I attacked him at, like, what if I walked my first Marauder across over there? And by the time my Marauder walked from here to here, it was, like, two, two minutes and, like, 26 seconds, right? Look at this. My Marauder spawns right here at 220. So from like right here to right here, that's about six seconds, I would say, for a Marauder. About six seconds. And what if I started showing him Marauders right there six seconds from now? And then he has from 226 until, uh, sorry, 226 until 29 seconds later, which would be uh, 255. He could then have a bunker at his base, potentially. So let's see. Uh, 250, does he have a, could he have a bunker down by 255? Yep, easily. I'm not actually approaching his ramp until like my hefty bulk of my marauders come over here until much later. So if I revealed I had one marauder, there's a very good chance he could pull a couple SCVs with the Reapers and he could actually push back like one marauder or like two marauder. But once you get to like four, four is like the minimum of now it's kind of fucking scary. Four is like, all right, you have enough marauders now to like two shot my units with the, all of your marauders regardless of if it's an scv or a reaper and it's actually getting to a very high amount of damage and then also if i'm kiting backwards if i'm able to kill scvs at a faster pace i can thin out the scv surrounding me more of the time so it's less likely as scvs are actually going to surround my marauder it makes no sense to fucking attack with the first marauder and reveal our build so Again, we wait till about four Marauder, and the difference of this build is, did you go for a faster gas and have Concussive with it immediately, or did you go for a little bit of a late gas and have a Concussive started while you do the attack, which is still going to happen either way over the fight, but you're going to have a faster natural. If you're doing this build, honestly, I would say this is kind of the half-assed way to do it, if you really want my honest opinion. This is a bit more of the half-assed way to do it, because Concussive will actually win you more games, because his units can't run away properly, and it means that you have a higher chance to win the game when you surprise him like this. Uh, but yeah, it's harder to follow up, uh, follow up into an expansion with, <clears throat> but it just increases the chances you'll actually kill him with this. Uh, but yeah, either one works. Either one does work uh, as you saw. So it's just, the Marauders just like run over here and they're just like, hi. And not only that, but they own the shit out of armored in general and every single building is armored. So you know what I could do right now? I could fucking supply block him. I could, what if I killed two depots guys? Two depots is 16 supply. And what is 16 off of 39? It's 23. And what is his current supply value? It's 26 out of 23. So if I killed these depots, they would die ridiculously fast because eight, uh, four Marauders would be doing 80 damage a shot every one second. 80 damage a shot every one second. 
It only needs about five seconds and a depot's dead. Five seconds and a depot's dead. And you want to know what five seconds is a lot less than? The build time of most units in this game. 32, 32 seconds on a Reaper. Fucking uh, 18 seconds on a Marine. Um, he doesn't even have any add-ons, so he can't make anything else. 21 seconds on a fucking Hellion. Eight, 21 seconds on a Widowmine. Like these things, I could block his ass with supply, and then he's he's like, oh, okay, well, now I can't make any units, and now he's got to make more depots somewhere else. And then I could start killing his production and make him have to lift his building off, buildings off, or I could just constantly run into his base and attack his SCVs. And then kite back every time he tries to engage us with SCV, we just kite backwards towards more Marauder. Because again, it's not just four Marauders. We're still making more. Every time we can afford another Marauder, 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 Marauder. This goes to a total of like eventually like 12 Marauders. And if we want to get really crazy with it, we could even pull our SCVs. Like literally pull maybe like, don't pull all of them though. You could literally pull uh, maybe like two thirds of your mineral line. And then only one of your only leave like one mineral line, one gas mining, so three on gas and like maybe like six on the mineral line or something like that, or like five on the mineral line. And you pull like two thirds of the mineral line, and then uh, you you pull like ten SCVs off the mineral line essentially. And you have, if you have like ten SCVs with marauders barreling down on your opponent, who is now also going to supply block and shit like that, it's so fucking hard to stop that build. It's so hard to stop that build if you don't have a bunker. That build is very easy to do. It's very cheesy. Okay. I forgot to turn my music back on ever since the battle cruiser thing. Alright, this game, um, let's do a build that is um, more stable against Protoss. This build can be an all-in if we want it to be, or it can, or it, that can turn into like a two-base all-in, or it can be a macro build. Like, if you can turn it, if you want to turn it into an all-in, you totally can, but, like, by pulling SCVs again. Uh, but you don't have to do that. It's not required. This is, uh, honestly, if you want a macro build versus Protoss, uh, I would recommend this build that I'm about to show you. Okay, he's got a probe attacking me. Let's pull two SCVs off. Have one SCV go get the probe and have the other SCV replace the other SCV that gets pulled off the barracks. Get him away from our base for a second here. Okay, let's just go ahead and scout now because he left, which is totally fine. Let's go ahead and build our command center. And we're going to be starting our orbital. We should be uh, honestly starting an orbital before you expand, but it's okay. If you do it the other way around, it's not the end of the world. Just as long as you understand, you should go orbital first. But either way, if you don't, get it as fast as you fucking can. Orbital energy is very important. Hey, what's going on over here? He's got pretty normal looking base for Protoss. He's got a fucking Zealot as well, so that's interesting. Let's go ahead and run home with this SCV. Run a Reaper down there to go poke him. Drop a mule. And now behind this, we're gonna behind the depot when it's done, we're gonna make two oh he's actually proxying me. He's proxying me. That's what he's doing. So if he proxies me, guys, let's make a bunker right now. Make a bunker right now. We literally see a proxy stargate. Okay. So we're not doing the build I was gonna show you anymore. We'll show you show this build to you again against a different Protoss at a different time. But it doesn't make any sense right now to show you at this point in time anymore. I'm sorry. I'll show you what we're gonna do instead. So proxy shield battery void race, right? Annoying. Kite around in a circle for a little while here against the Zealot. Keep trying to make your Marines and shit. Get in your get in the bunker, load up. Okay, let's go ahead and make a reactor now on our uh, on our thingy thingy on our barracks. Let's get our second gas saturated and let's immediately start 
a bunker in our main base as well. So we have a bunker at the natural, and now we're making a bunker in the main. Let's immediately start a starport with a reactor on it. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to make marine defense with bunkers to defend ourselves against the Voidaries initially, and we're just going to make Vikings. Okay, so he's already here. He's trying to kill my uh, reactor. It's it's all good. It's annoying. We can try and repair it if possible. And now unload this bunker in the low ground and come up to the high ground. Keep trying to build a bunker. Get in that bunker. Get in the bunker. There we go. Now we're in the bunker. Now he can't stay here anymore. Now run two more marines to the natural bunker. Now swap over your factory and your... Uh, Still make SCVs the whole time. I know it's annoying. We can't save that depot, so we need to make more depots. Put two Marines in that bunker. SCVs repair that bunker right there. And here's a cool thing we can do. Hey, Reaper, I want you to go across the map and go to the guy's base, like right there. Forget about the Reaper for now. Okay. And now once the Vikings pop out, guys, I just want you to know that we're going to win the game. Like the Vikings, are they counter this build. So we can try and heal this bunker if we can. But now Vikings are coming. Or the, the, the barracks, sorry. Now Vikings are out. Now what do we do? We attack him from superior range and we never engage the Void Ray. We always fall back behind bunkers. Just like we fight Battlecruiser. Go repair this bunker right now. With some SUVs. Run away. Repair that bunker. Okay. Just hold your ground. Hold your ground. It's fine. Start making SUVs for the natural. Reaper died. It's okay. Load up that bunker with more marines. And now we have four vikings. Now let's make a siege tank on our tech lab. On our factory. And let's... Okay, he's attacking me again. So, once again, kite with void rays. Kite the void rays with vikings. Kite. He runs away. We go forward. What's up, void rays? How you doing, dude? It's me, Mr. Terran, the, the viking guy. Okay, keep making SCVs for the natural. Let's make some more depots. Because, again, he killed my depots, which is annoying. And now we can make tanks. We can go into two ba two barracks with tanks and uh, marines with Stimpak. And we're just going to a standard game now. Kind of like how we play TVT. Okay, he's coming again. Kite the Void Rays. Notice how when we get more Vikings, it starts getting really insane and how fast I can kill these Void Rays. Like the Void Rays just die now because we overpower the shields. The shield batteries, that is. Like they can't heal through this damage anymore. It's too high. Let's go ahead and get a tech lab on our barracks. Let's get one SCV to come repair this command center. He's attacking again. What's up? Vikings, go get him. And there's a lot of dead Void Rays. Every Void Ray just died. So now we can go into Medivac. Because we just we just killed all the fucking Voids. So now let's go Medivac. Because we now know we have the air superiority. So if he keeps making Voids, guys, he's going to keep fucking dying. So now let's make Medivacs to support our Marines. Let's get Stimpak. Let's get Tanks. And let's get uh, Medivacs. So let's just push now with Tanks like this. Cover the Tank. We can make a new uh, depot. Or, thanks, thanks, kind of in the way, but whatever. Now he's pushing this side, so let's go over here. And you know what we can do as an option here? We can always, if we need to, we can land our Vikings if we have to. Otherwise, we can deal with this with tank marine. The fact that the bunker died is not the biggest deal, guys. It's really not. It doesn't matter. Because okay, if you, are you gonna fight this, or are you gonna back up? What are you doing? Make another tank. Let's make another command center as well while we're at it because we have plenty of money to do it. <laughs> He's pushing again. Let's go ahead and land our Vikings. There's no more voids anymore. It doesn't seem like it at least. So hey, stutter step. Stutter. 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 And you want to know something crazy about Vikings? They fucking annihilate ground units like stalkers because a stalker is two armor tags it is armored and it's mechanical now armored is good versus the vikings anti-air which is also what a void ray is if we look at what a void ray is where's a void where's a, i gotta go back to when a void ray was alive a void ray where the fuck is this? your is dead for so long what the fuck there we go a Void Ray is armored mechanical as well, okay? These are robotic units that are armored. So a Viking shooting an air unit does bonus damage to armored, and it does two attacks. So a Viking does 14 versus armored times two. So it does 28 damage per 
shot. And now here's the math on doing damage to a Void Ray. You cannot heal actual HP of a Void Ray, which is why Vikings fucking own this build. So what that means is, is even if this guy makes a shitload of batteries, even if this guy has seven batteries, eight batteries, whatever, whatever the fuck he wants to make, right? Tons of batteries. You want to know something? How many times does 28 have to be multiplied to break 100? The answer is four times. So if we, if we have four Vikings, you know what that 28 times four is? It's 112. So if we do 112 damage to a Viking... Or to a Void Ray, you know what that means? Every time we shoot it with just four Vikings, it's not going to take no damage. It's going to actually take 12 damage off of its actual HP, and then it's going to lose all of its shields. And before we shoot it again a second time, it's going to be full shields again. So the first time we shoot it, it's going to be at 138. The next time we shoot it, it's going to be at 126. The next time we shoot it, it's going to be at 114. The next time we shoot it, it's going to be at 102. Okay? But now, I'm making Vikings out of a fucking reactor. And now, what if I make two more Vikings to go to six? It's no longer going to be 12 damage a shot. It now is going to be 112 damage plus uh, 28 times two more, which is what? 100, it's 100. I, I don't know why this math started for me at the moment. So 28 times two is 56. And 56 on top of 112 is 168 so 168 now, guys. So if we do 168 damage a shot, you know what that means? He's taking 68 damage every time I shoot a fucking Void Ray. Because 100 gets nullified by the shield battery and the shields itself. It will always get healed back up because there's a lot of shield energy here. But 68 damage doesn't get healed. So you know what that means now? Multiply 68 times 3 and it surpasses 150. So 3 hits from a, from a stack of 6 Vikings kills a Void Ray. Get even more intense with it. Go to eight Vikings. Blah, blah, blah. You can see that the, the turning point in this defense was when we had six Vikings. And then we fucking demolished this build once we had eight Vikings. So this build, all you got to do against it is make a bunker and have Marines in a bunker that will stall while you rush to Viking with a reactor. And you, again, you don't make the reactor. You do not make the reactor off of... Uh, off of the starport itself. You make a reactor off of the factory because you don't want to waste any time. You want the reactor be, to be made on the factory. You, then you make the starport and then you immediately swap it over when they're done. So you immediately go to Vikings because time is of the essence with this kind of a defense. But if you get those Vikings up early, you can just see it looks like the Protoss has control early on in the build. It looks like he has control early on in the build. So we're making a bunker. He shows up, and I'm like, oh, okay, well. Uh, and also, the reason why, here's here's something. We'll actually go back to the beginning of this game. We'll talk about it more. Let's talk about this a bit more in detail. Uh, because there was some missing details here. So think about this for a second, okay? Think about this for a second. So Protoss is attacking me with a probe. Being annoying, right? You're like, oh my, get the fuck off me. I hate you. Leave me alone, probe. And you go scout his base. We're going to his base. Looking at our vision. Scouting his base. This is very normal so far. Very normal. Now look at what happens when we get to his base. What did we just see? It, it was very subtle, but did you notice that? Look at this. We just saw... I should have scouted a bit more thoroughly, and I should do this in the future. But look. Did you see that probe with the gas right there? There was a, two gases. Okay, guys? We literally just saw a probe with gas right there. And we should have. I should have been more thorough about how we scouted that. We should have. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. If a Protoss player does something along the lines of he makes double gas before he expands, that is a aggressive Protoss. And here's the big, the big, the big, 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 big deal as well. If our opponent not only makes double gas before he expands... If he also makes a zealot, which does not dip at all into gas, this thing does not cost gas. It does not cost gas. You know what that means? Is it, and look how the zealot doesn't even give a shit about the SCB either, right? He's literally running to my base. He's fucking like hauling ass to my base. This is a very high chance of a proxy. Super high chance of proxy. Now, do I know it's Stargate? No. 
I don't know that yet. It could be proxy gateway. It could be stalker proxy with a zealot out of his base. Now he's going to make stalkers with his second unit. Or uh, with his second uh, unit out of the gateway at his main base. It could be just a uh, gateway proxy. It could be fucking robo proxy. I don't know what kind of proxy it is. But this definitely looks like a proxy. Because he is not spending any of his gas. And he's going double gas. And he's going for a gas priority, right? And we know he's going for a gas priority. Because if he's mining double gas this early. There's no fucking way that we can do the same thing, right? The corner boost is not that good. We can't be like, all right, you have 22 probes already. Just mine in all your resources already. Easy. No, it doesn't work like that. At most, he only has corner boosted his base like one time so far, which only gives you like an extra probe, like not 10 probes. So, uh, or like eight probes or whatever you want to say. Uh, yeah, we know for a fact that double gas is humongously aggressive, and the fact that he made a zealot means he's not even touching that gas that he's investing into. So it looks very proxy-esque. And then our Reaper happens to run by right here. We go right by the proxy. We see that proxy right there. That happened to just be a bit of luck. Uh, we should have definitely scouted for it, I'm not going to lie, if we actually read the build properly. But um, we ended up pro pro uh, pro passing by some tech, and we went, oh, look at that, we're getting proxy, guys. And that, that zealot, again... Even though I didn't see it right away, that zealot was a, the zealot and the double gas was a sign telling us this dude motherfucker is being aggressive. He is being aggressive. So what do we do? We go back to our base and we go reconfirm what kind of aggression it is. If it is proxied, it's going to be either in this area, somewhere around here. It's going to be in this area, somewhere over here. Proxies are going to be like right in our base. Um, vibe, no second pylon. No, you see that's wrong because there is a second pylon. I should have scouted deeper into his base. The fact that I only scouted his base for a second, I, I will say this. I literally saw double gas and a zealot, and I went, you're fucking proxying me. And then I also saw the proxy afterwards. However, if we really want to have full understanding, yes, we should have scouted around his base a bit more thorough and saw, you know, looked for things like if there was a second pylon, that would be a big sign, and if he actually had double gas. Now, I did see this double gas because I saw probes taking gas into the Nexus. Even though I didn't see the actual gas geyser. That's, again, that's something you can, if you, once you get that good, you can do that. It probably was me, honestly, playing a bit more uh, higher than I should have right there. I should have literally just taken an extra, like, three seconds to go around his base and confirm. So I don't have to assume shit. But the Zealot, I'm just telling you guys right now. If someone does not expand and they make a fucking Zealot and they double gas, that motherfucker's up to something fishy. Oh, that's not a macro yeah. build. That does makes no sense in the macro build. Alex, thank you very much for the 45 months. So again, we, we scouted back to our to our base and we go, oh cool, proxy voids. Sick. Super cool, right? Oh, it's proxy void rays. So we've confirmed what it is through all those details. And now we know what we're up against. We know we're, now we know we saw it was a Stargate and we saw it's batteries. So we know this is battery void ray. Now here's a cool way you can, uh, now at this point in the game, what are we doing? I'm making a, uh, and here's also why Anyone out there that's like, Vibe, why don't you make a really quick reactor on your racks? Instead of just making... Um, marine, why'd you make Marines early? Why didn't you make the immediate reactor on your racks? Because wouldn't that help at giving you more Marines faster later on? Yes, it would. But the problem with that, though, is that if we make a reactor right away, and this guy's fucking sending ground units at us as well before my bunker's ready, having extra Marines now, even though we don't make them twice as fast, would mean it's easier to get the bunker up. And if this bunker doesn't go up, this is a fucking problem. Because it will mean it's going to... What if he denies my natural? What if he actually gets a stalker over here and every SCV that comes down the ramp dies? And if I, what if I have to pull five SCVs to get the command center done? Because while SCVs die, they just pile on top of each other and try to finish it. That's terrible. Finally made it to Platt from watching your B2GM. Thanks for the great content. Thank you, uh, Francis, for the... Uh, all right, sorry. That, uh, never mind. That was a question. Thank you, Glow, for the bits. Much love, man. I appreciate you, dude. And uh, Francis says, why did you not kill the Proxy Reaper with the probe? I killed it. It's got a kill. It literally killed the... the uh, as soon as I came back, I killed the probe. Right here. Right now. So, again, we make, Reaper, we make Marines first with our Reaper because we do not want this to break this by any chance i don't want this somehow i don't i do not want that fucking zealot to smash my scv building the bunker while my reaper is trying to kill the zealot and then buy enough time for like a like let's say a stalker to come up here and then i'm like oh fuck 
Well, now I can't get the bunker up at all because by the time the zealot dies to my reaper, what if a stalker's in the area? And then now the stalker's denying my SCVs. Again, I don't want to lose SCVs here. That's the whole point. I do not want to lose SCVs. It would make it really hard to defend then if I do that. So making Marines just to guarantee we get our first bunker up is very important. Now, the only mistake I will honestly say that I made is I should have been starting a second bunker really fucking fast. We kind of delayed the second bunker a little bit, and that made this a little bit more dicey of a defense. That second bunker should have been a lot faster. Like, we should already have it underway right now. But we, we were kind of micro against a zealot, so he was wasting our time, right? And then we load up, and then we finally start the bunker afterwards. We, we should have started it during. Like, we should have started the bunker at the same time, almost. That bunker's so late. So that's why the Void Ray was kind of a problem. In the future, we should definitely make that bunker a lot fucking faster. Uh, and now, again, we have the factory making reactor, starport making the starport. And we'll swap these over. Starport build time is 36 seconds. Reactor build time is 36 seconds. So if you start them at the exact same time, second factory is done. Boom, immediate starport, immediate reactor. You can instantly swap when they're both done. So it's very, 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 very nice pacing here for the reactor defense of Vikings. And then the uh, we made the reactor after we had a couple Marines out to help us guard against the front of our base with the fucking uh, uh, the Zealot. Now, to be fair, you know what we should have done now? This is the other mistake I would say we made. The second we killed the Zealot, and we know there's a possibility of other units to come into our natural, we should have left the Reaper in the bunker for now, and we should have unloaded these Marines and put them into this bunker. If this bunker was, in theory, if it was done. Because this bunker is crucial... Because it guards our production. It guards our production. This bunker is fucking so... This bunker was important first to make sure we don't get fucked up on our income. And then this bunker is so important to make sure our production doesn't get fucked over. Okay. One Cyclone beats this, doesn't it? Not necessarily. A Cyclone without an upgrade of Magfield Accelerator is not nearly as intense. And a Cyclone is easily snapped off by void rays and here's why a cyclone doesn't start with full lock on range a cyclone has to get in range to lock onto something so he can be in range to attack my cyclone and if he just keeps attacking my cyclone a cyclone dies fucking fast to void ray is a cyclone terrible here no it's not terrible here but is a cyclone the easiest option fuck no a cyclone is much harder than vikings dude trust me cyclone is way harder to use here than vikings and one cyclone isn't going to do fucking anything to shield battery energy. Remember how I talked about how we pierce through the, the shields? Cyclone doesn't do that. Even if you have one cyclone. Like with Magfield, it still doesn't do it. You have to have like three cyclones to be able to do that. And you want to know the really hard thing about getting three cyclones? It's really hard to do that if every time I engage void rays with my cyclones, he can also engage my cyclones with his void rays. You want to know the beautiful thing about a, a Viking? We can shoot him out of range. Because a cyclone or a, a void ray only has six range, and a Viking has nine, so we can easily shoot him out of range and then back up to a bunker, and be like, "You want to chase me over a bunker, motherfucker?" And then keep shooting him as we kite backwards, just like how we fight battle cruisers. It's so much easier to use Vikings here. Anyone who thinks that cyclone is the way to go here, dude, you're making your life harder for yourself. It's uh, it's not bad. It's definitely a stylistic thing. Some turns I, that are really good, I imagine, would use a cyclone here, and that's fine. But it's harder. It requires more finesse from you. It's way more fragile. So we're just trying to repair our buildings and, you know, build it. We pull off more SCVs, just make sure they go up. Then now look what happens as soon as the bunker's done. This is why I said we should have built the bunker faster. As soon as the bunker's done, look what this void ray was doing before. Killing SCVs, killing SCVs, killing SCVs, being fucking annoying, almost killing my reactor. Bunker's done. Oh, Immediately, Void Ray's like, yeah. ah, fuck. Well, now I have to back up to my battery because now I'm just going to. Five getting... months, wahoo. Yo, thank you very much, Libertalia. Come back. Welcome back for the five months. As soon as the bunker's done, immediately, Vi the Void Ray has to leave. Doesn't Cyclone's lock on have like 11 range? Okay, let me explain this again. So. A cyclone is... Let me just show it to you like this, guys. Here's a void ray, right? Let me, let me get a fucking circle here. Here's a void ray. And here is the attack range of a void ray. Right here. Okay? That's the attack radius of a void ray. Here is a cyclone. Right here. Here is a cyclone for Terran. And here is the attack range of the Terran's 
uh, cyc the cyclones lock on, or the, the, the sorry, the, the cyclones, whatever it's called, the, the fucking auto attack of the cyclones lock on. Okay. Now, until the edge of the circle right here, until the edges of the circles right there intersect with the circle in the middle, nothing dies. Okay. Until this area intersects over one of these circles, nothing gets attacked. Nothing gets attacked. Now, as soon as the cyclone locks on, once it locks on, once the cyclone is no longer where it is now, once it is right here, okay? Once it's right here, a little bit smaller, once it's right there, then yes, now its lock-on radius is like this big. It, like, it can lock onto the void ray, and now its lock-on radius turns into this, okay? Here's what its lock-on radius becomes after that. It becomes like that big. Okay? I want you to understand that that's how big it gets. Oh, Glow, thank you very much for the five minute yeah. subs. But you want to know the problem with this? You want to know the problem with this? A void ray and a cyclone have the same attack range. They have the same range of attack before lock on is initiated. Oh, yeah. Lock on does not start at max range. And what happens is, is a void ray can shoot you while it moves towards you. And a void ray is also a very fucking fast unit. So what's going to happen is, is you're going to go, all oh, right, yeah. I got my lock on. Let's start kiting backwards. And you know what's going to happen? The voider is going to go with you for three fucking seconds. And then your cyclone's dead. <laughs> it's very subtle, oh, very, very yeah. subtle to be able to squeeze out a lock on against a void rate and not fucking die. It's super subtle. It's the harder option to do here. Again, it's not impossible. I'm not saying it's bad. It definitely is doable, but it is oh, fucking harder. Yeah. Now, I, you can make arguments though and say, okay, well, vibe. Your this is this is this is the only. I'm telling you guys right now, okay? I'm gonna tell you right now. Also, thank you very much, Sal, for the uh, fat raid. Welcome, guys. I'm doing beta jam for Terran, actually, of all things. Welcome, guys. Uh, let me tell you guys something really fast. Also, glow. Give a vibe a gift in the chat for glow because I appreciate the five gifted subs, man. Uh, and sorry about stream delay, guys. I do it to avoid getting stream sniped. Well, I'm making this series. Uh, but check this out, okay? If you were to ask a really good Terran player, hey, Terran player, Vibe says go Vikings against Void Ray defense. Do you agree or disagree? I strongly approve of the fact that if the Terran player says I disagree, you want to know why they probably disagree? They disagree not because Cyclones are easier than Vikings. They would only probably disagree because Vikings are more expensive and they keep you on a situation where you're stuck on Vikings longer and only going for a couple of Cyclones is a much cheaper option, which is more risky and requires more finesse. So if you go Cyclone, you can transition out of this faster and go, once you defend the attack, you can transition to something quicker afterwards. Whereas if you go Viking, it's harder to transition out of it because you're more committed to Vikings. That's all it is. That is literally all it is. Vikings are better in this particular situation versus void rays, but yes, they are more expensive. Okay? They're more expensive. That is the only... I, 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 I highly think the only... Like, again, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to claim to be a pro-Terran. I never have been. I never will be. And I never want to be. Fuck that race. <laughs> but if you asked a really high-level Terran, hey, do you like Vibe's void ray defense proxy? When he goes for Cyclone Vikings, if you ask a high-level Terran that is confident in their Cyclone usage, if that's how they want to go, that person would probably say, I'm not the biggest fan of that because it's expensive. That's not honestly it. But you know what we're doing right now? We're in fucking Diamond League, guys. This is not 7K MMR. This is not 6.6K MMR. This is fucking Diamond League. And you're, you don't have the finesse of a pro gamer Terran. You have to realize that. So if a pro gamer Terran tells you, now I like this way better, which is harder, but I can handle it. You might not be able to handle that. There's a good chance that that's not going to go well for you if you try to emulate what they do. And if you want to try going Cyclones against it, I'm not going to say that's the worst thing in the world for you. You can totally do that if you want to. Go for it. But I guarantee you're going to you're gonna run into a situation where you're going to be like, ah, oh, fuck, he locked on. I locked on him and he's attacking me. And then by the time you get like over here, <laughs> Cyclone's dead. And then he runs back to a shield battery, and then he now he comes back with two void rays versus one cyclone. Does it again? Now he's got three fucking void rays versus one cyclone, and you're like, I'm dead now. 
There's no way I can win anymore. Now he's killing my factory as well. So that's literally what you're going to... I guarantee that's what you're going to have happen to you. It's so much... It's so very like knife's fucking edge about losing your cyclones or not losing your cyclones when you commit to locking onto a void ray. It is scary as fuck if you overcommit your cyclone even for a millisecond. You're like, whoops, a little too far and it's dead now because a cyclone will get shot while it runs away from a void ray because a void ray will keep up with it for a while and it will fucking attack while it moves. It's fucking crazy. It will just lock, it will keep shooting it as it runs away. And a, and a, a cyclone is made of paper. A unit dies so fast. Okay, guys, I'm going to answer one more question, but you guys are... This is what Twitch chat does to me whenever I do this series. Is you guys ask me all these questions where... You drive me crazy. Let me, answer, let me answer one more. Vibe, shouldn't you skip the reactor on the racks to get more gas for Vikings? Okay, I'll say this. Yes, if I had a gas problem. I don't have a gas problem because there is a build time of buildings and there's a tech path in the game. So if you understand how much a Viking costs, I teched to a factory and a starport very fast after realizing what Buildy was doing. This is very fast teched Vikings. Thank you for the 52 Viba coins. coins at rally.io. Thank you for buying 52 Viba coins worth of uh, $50 worth of Viba coins. Rugby rat. Thanks, man. I teched to a factory and a starport. ASAP, as soon as we identified what build it was. And a Viking cost 75 gas. And I already have 187. And I haven't even finished the starport yet. While having a reactor on the barracks. So, that's irrelevant. I have more than enough to afford it. Because again, I think you're also miss. Okay, let me say it like let me let me go back and show you one more time, just to make sure you really understand. Just so you know as well, we talked about this already, right? We talked about this versus the zealot and the bunker. I did not make a reactor on the barracks to delay the factory. I made the factory before I made a reactor, and I did that for. The reason of getting Voidrays fa for getting Vikings fast, and also because he was attacking me with a fucking zealot, and I I don't want to explain this twice. I already did. Watch the fucking vod <laughs> if you want that explanation again. Right? Uh, this is what Twitch chat does: is they literally ask me questions that I've explained five minutes ago repeatedly. So I try. This is why I try to keep the series on track. I try to pick questions that are good, but then sometimes I just get repetitive questions where it feels like someone just joined the stream five seconds ago, and that's usually what they always say. I just got here. <laughs> All right. Well, if you just got here, maybe don't assume you saw the whole game then. So we load up the bunker, and then this is kind of what we talked about before. Again, all we do is we make Vikings, and we push the voids away. We don't ever engage the voids. I never fucking chase the voids. I always shoot them at max range. Always. And notice how we can't really go here. Because we have a bunker of marines here. And he can't really go here because we have a bunker of marines here. And then what if he goes way the fuck in the back? Why is the Protoss... You're like, Vibe, why doesn't the Protoss run over there with his void rays, huh? Please explain. Because if he did that, he goes really fucking far away from his batteries and he can't heal himself. And if he did that, I would have Vikings shoot his ass. And I could always, once again, fall back to a bunker. And I could zone him out from where he goes to back to his batteries. The only way he could save his void rays then is if he like flew right there and recalled. And then you know what happens if he recalls? I could just go fucking kill his pylons and shit. Oh, yeah. Like, I could literally go potentially overpower this. Starcraft. Or it just buys me time to not get attacked the whole time. And just make more Vikings. So you can see when I have Vikings, notice how I never, I try to never let them shoot me. I stay max range. As soon as he goes towards me, I back up every single time. And I repair the bunker. I shoot the voids. Do I chase him all the way into the batteries? Nope. I don't ever leave my bunker either. This is like my shield battery right here. I don't want to get shot at. Ew, Rust Bucket. Thank you very much for the 15 months. I chill. I just chill. Fun fact, vibe lol backwards is lullabiv. I know. I was actually my ID on StarCraft for a while. I uh, I played ladder on lullabiv for like a year or two years. And now we have four voids. Or four vikings. And now we're beating the shit out of these void rays. Notice how I'm actually doing real damage to his voids now. He's getting peppered. 
We're actually breaking shields now a little bit. But he goes back to the shields, and now we can't break it as much anymore. And now, finally, look at when six, six Vikings come out. This is when it turns really into our favor. We haven't killed a single Vi We have not killed a single Voidra yet. We have not killed a single Void yet. Prioritizing Vikings first with SCVs, and then Marines, and then Siege Tanks. Because now that we have six Vikings, now, now look at this next fight. Look at how this next fight goes. It's going to be fucking insane. We just instantly pop the void. Instantly pop the void. Instantly pop the void. Easy as fuck. Easiest fights of my life. I just sit near the bunker and I just defend my base. And you know what's happening right now? Again, this is why people, again, don't need to... This is why I think Viking is good with this defense. And this is why I would say for a diamond player, you don't need to take a pro... Like a, for If you had a pro Terran that tells you, No, bro. You go Cyclones here. Again, if, they, if you got a Pro Terran, wonderful. That guy's going to probably know what he's talking about. I'm not going to argue with that guy. He's he's better at Terran than I am. But he might not realize the situation of what fucking Diamond League is. And you want to know what Diamond League is? I want to show you guys something really fast. Look at the main base. Look at the main base. Very similar. Look at the natural. And look at the natural. This is our transition. This, even though we're going into Vikings which is expensive, but it's really easy to stop this build with. This is our lead. We are mining more than our opponent. We have so much more fucking income thank than our opponent right streaming. now. Thank you streaming. Much love. Yo, Cliff Build, thank you very much for the thousand bits. And I'm not even, like, guys, by the way, I'm not even assuming a pro gamer, a pro gaming Terran even told, talked shit about this build. Uh, again, I, I'm, I don't ever claim to be the best Terran in the world. Terran is my weakest off race, okay? But I'm using logic here for diamond. It's all it is. And this is our advantage. And this is easy as fuck to maintain it. It's all it is. Oh, thank you very much for the bits, Cliff Blue. Much love, man. And now look, these are full. These, the, one of these voyagers is full HP because it's brand new. And the other one's yellow, right? So now check this out. He, he tries to engage again. What happens? Almost instantly. He instantly loses a void ray. The second he engages. Oh, fuck. Void ray's dead. Here comes the next one. The next one almost dies again. And then it comes before it again and engages my Vikings one more time, and now it dies. Like, these Vikings fucking annihilate these Void Rays. And by the way, even if this guy goes Tempest, I just want you guys to know something. You guys are now talking about Tempest. Guys, Tempest are squishy. Tempests are almost as squishy as a Void Ray. By the time the Protoss has Tempest, you'll easily have six, maybe eight Vikings. And do you want to know what fucking, like, eight Vikings do to a Tempest? You fucking pound his ass. And you want to know what the difference of a Tempest to a Viking is? A Viking, although it has less range than a Tempest does, a Viking has more move speed. A Viking has more move speed than a Tempest. And a Tempest is also somewhat made of paper. It dies really easy. And if you have eight Vikings and the Tempest is over shield batteries, I genuinely think you shoot it two times and it dies. Tempest aren't even scary here. Because you guys gotta realize, Tempest also fall into the same rule set of a siege tank. They cannot shoot that far unless they have a spotter because they can actually shoot farther than they can see. And if this dude doesn't have a fucking Oracle as well revelating me constantly, he can't see my Vikings at max range. So you know what that means? His Tempest can actually see my Vikings at about the same range that my Vikings can see the Tempest. And if I engage him with eight Vikings and his one Tempest, he's going to fucking die. Tempest isn't even scary here either. I want you... I, yeah, yeah, I think you guys overestimate what is capable here. So then now we have Siege Tanks behind Marines. We have our second uh, met barracks, our second barracks with the tech lab on it. And now we're just setting up tanks to push his base away, to push his proxy away. And now we're going into medevacs. And why are we going medevacs now, not Vikings anymore? Because we have clear air advantage. Eight Vikings, <laughs> Void Ray just dies. Like, look at this last Void Ray that he's made, that he made. This is the last Void Ray he used right here. Right here. This is the last Void. This is this is the, the movie called The Last Void Ray. And what's, what is his life based around? I'M COMING IN GUYS! COMING IN HOT! Ah, I'M DEAD! 
I, I shot my beam for half a second. Because eight Vikings just pop my ass like a fucking balloon and balloon CD. Not a camo kind. More like the, the tier one balloon. Like, easiest balloon to pop. Hopefully that makes sense. And now again, if we push back this guy's shit with tanks. Uh, so like we talked about before, I, I, exp I explained the whole armored attack versus uh, void rays, which is good, right? But now it's mechanical on the ground for, for no longer armored here. Now it's mechanical for stalkers. It, uh, void rays are also mechanical, but, vo but Viking shooting air don't have a mechanical attack. They have an armored attack, which is also good versus Viking because they're also armored. Multiple armor tags. But now, when Vikings land, look what they get for damage instead. They get 20 fucking damage versus mechanical. So, I can land these Vikings and go, hey, stalkers. Bye, stalkers. <laughs> I can beat the shit out of those stalkers because they're mechanical and Vikings do really fast attack speed. As fast as, like, a Marine, basically. Like, look at this. 0 0.71 for a Viking. A Marine's 0.61. It's fucking insane. They're doing 20 damage a shot at almost a Marine's attack speed. Barely off. It's 0.1 of a second difference. So Vikings obliterated those stalkers in seconds. Like it was not even close. Not even one Viking has died in this game. And then from this, what, do we, what can we do now? I can go into a third command center. I can go back into the build like we were doing before where we go tank Marine medevac. And I can push this guy with bio medevac with tanks. Because I'm, I'm making tanks still. I can unload my bunker. I can grab more marines with this. I'm getting stim pack. We can go into engineering base with a combat shield after this. Blah, blah, blah. Take my third base with actual SCVs. It goes back to a bit of a normal game for us. And our opponent just failed a one base all in. So if we look at efficiency of our build here, massively efficient, even though we expanded versus proxy void ray. Now... I want to just tell you really fast. This is what I'll tell you. Because I, I don't want to... I don't want you guys to think that there's only one... I don't want you guys to think that there's only one way to play StarCraft. And I will tell you this right now. This is, a, this, is a, this is a truth of the game, okay? Just because I say something doesn't mean that's the only way you can do something. So if you're someone that goes, I don't like what Vibe says. I don't like it. It's not for me. This Viking defense sucked cock. It wasn't good. That's okay. I don't mind. Literally go ask another Terran player how to deal with it, and that's totally fine. It's not It's not the wrong thing to do. If If you look at someone's play style and you go, I don't like that, you can look at someone else's. And, that's, and, I, and I will 100% tell you right now, there are better Terrans than me out there. There are. I'm not the best Terran. I will clearly say that right now as a disclaimer. My Terran is going to struggle to get to GM. But I'm telling you something from logical point of view on StarCraft, the game itself. That that defense is fucking easy. It's not that hard. And it's something that you'll you'll probably have a success with yourself against proxy void rays in Diamond. So yeah, it's really up to you what you want to do. You can take or leave the what I'm telling you, right? You can take it or leave it. I don't mind. The only race I would honestly truly say I have the best a really good information to give you would be Zerg. Because I'm a, I was a Zerg pro gamer for a long time, and I know my shit with Zerg really well. Protoss, I know my shit relatively well. Terran, I know my shit relatively well, and it's because I just know StarCraft. Oh my God. Oh, Christ. We're still on Terran? When are we going to go back to Zerg? Uh, I don't know. Maybe in a couple days. I'm definitely not finishing Terran today. I am no longer going to allow myself to be pressured by people who t say things like that to me. Where they all they want me to do is live on Beta GM series. Fuck that shit, dude. I'll get to Zerg when I get to Zerg. Be patient, please. I, I appreciate that you're watching the stream. But I'm not going to kill myself to make this series. And make 12-hour videos every day. It's, uh, it's about how long it takes as well. It's fucking a grind. So I'm sorry, boys. I know I just I know it's displeasing, but I'll be there eventually. Promise.
Okay, let's go ahead and make a Reaper and a Reactor. Okay, we see our opponent's expanded. He's also getting a Reaper wall. Cool, let's make our Command Center. He's got one gas, starting a second gas. Guy is playing very standard right now. Now, here's something you can do with a Protoss. You play standard. It's really annoying for Protoss to deal with this. And I'll go into the build I was going to do last game. I'll actually do it this game. Let's make sure we get a depot as well. So now what this does, what this depot does, is it slows down our opponent's economy at his natural. Because he can't saturate properly anymore. He cannot saturate properly. Properly. Let's make a reactor on that barracks. Let's poke into his main base. Let's try not to lose the Reaper. Let's maybe poke like one probe. Okay, run up. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, try not to lose the Reaper. Oh fuck, I'm gonna lose. Oh, we lost the Reaper. Okay, so that was a mistake. So now we can't do any of it. We gotta salvage the bunker. And now that we lost the Reaper, we got a little bit too bold there. Now let's just make a bunker defensively. That's definitely not the way we want to start this game. <laughs> it's okay. Shit happens. I already know 100%. There are going to be plenty of time players out there that are going to do exactly that. And they're going to be like, ah, fuck! I pushed my Reaper too far! Ah, oh, dang it! Because if we just put the Reaper in the bunker, he can't actually saturate the base properly. Because probes will die repeatedly because it's within range to be attacked by the bunker. But now that we don't have an aggressive bunker, we have to immediately make a defensive bunker. Because if we don't make a bunker, and if we're not rushing a factory, we can't deal with stalkers if they poke us. Like, we would just take damage repeatedly if that happened now. Okay, so we're going to be going into plus one weapons. We're going to get a second gas now that our main gas is done being saturated. We're going to get double tech labs here on the uh, on the three racks. Okay, uh, we have enough SCVs for the main base. Let's put two SCVs on that gas. Let's get Stimpak. Let's make Marauders. Let's make Marines. Load up Marines in that bunker. <laughs> How do I get in touch with Pig Vibe? Oh, go to a stream. Go talk to him. Do whatever you want. Okay, make more Marines and Marauders. Let's go ahead now and also get either a combat shield or a concussive shell. You can literally get either one. We'll just do combat shield because it makes the push a bit stronger because the Marines all have more HP. Concussive shell makes the push more deadly because it can snare units and we can focus fire them down easier. But uh, combat shield just makes your units have more health so it lasts longer. It increases like durability. It's just like it's the only difference really. Okay, let's go ahead and keep making units right now. Keep making Marines and Marauders. And... We are almost at plus one. We're getting closer and closer. Let's now go ahead and start a factory behind this. Start another depot. Okay, we have one in the way. Good, good, good. Make more marauders. Make more marines. Make more CVs. Okay. And now let's go ahead and move out. You can see that there is an observer above my, uh, my bunker, which means that this dude has a robo. So there's something you need to know about a robo build, guys. And that is, we don't want to fucking push it. We do not want to push the robo build. That is scary as fuck. There's a good chance we could die, okay? So what we're going to do instead of pushing the robo build... Also, take our gas because we're fully saturated on the natural. What we're going to do instead of pushing the robo build is we're going to push his third base only. We're not going to try to kill him right now. This is not... That's not the move we want to make. So we're still making marines. We're still making marauders. Let's get concussive shells now. Let's get a starport as well. And there's a third base. We can push the third. Third's exposed. Way easier to kill. What's up, third base? How you doing? And goodbye. Run away. We can kite away as well a little bit, but let's get out of there because we just literally killed the third base. That's super nice. Now, if his army was closer, it would have been harder to do that. Maybe we'd have to fight a little bit more of his army. But if you see a single fucking Colossus or Immortal there, do not take that fight with what we just did, okay? We can definitely take the fight against other things, like a, uh, um, what's it called? 
We could take the fight against other things like a Stargate or a Templar build, like a, a Council build, but not a Robo build. We gotta be super timid about a Robo build. Robo builds can run your ass over so fast with this style. Because they, a Colossus AoE or units, Disruptors can w hit one bomb on you and blow up your entire pack of units, and then Immortals just beat the shit out of your, marauder, your Marauder. So you gotta be super careful in f fighting against that kind of a build with this kind of an army. Okay, now we're making more SCVs. Let's go ahead and make our orbital. We should have made the orbital legit before we lifted it off, but it's whatever. Okay, and uh, let's go ahead and rotate our starport with our factory. Get level two weapons. Keep making our SCVs. Start making depots on this side. And let's get ready as well here really, really, really soon to make a uh, another base. Because we're getting fully saturated here. We need to expand again soon. Okay, mineral fields are depleting as well. Let's transfer some SCVs over. Okay, keep making Marauder Marine. And now let's make another base. And now let's go ahead and load up two medevacs. One can go on the left side of the map. One can go on the right side of the map. Okay, well, never mind. Our opponent's attacking us with a lot of shit right now. Let's go defend ourselves then. He's attacking us with a bunch of charge lots and shit like that. Let's lift off this command center. Cancel that command center. Deal with this in my main base. And now immediately run down. And go deal with the shit in my, uh, my other base over here. Okay. We can send a little bit of our units back up again. He's pushing us again here. What's up, Perdas? How you doing? Get level 2 armor. And this is... He's literally feeding units to us right now. This is really nice. Okay, we need to try not to lose that command center if possible. Get down there. ASAP. Try and repair this command center if we can. It's going to probably die. It died. It's okay. But now if our command center died... Again, we can just try to rebuild it. But now let's do this. We just killed a lot of his units and we killed his prism. Let's grab our medevacs and let's go, hey medevacs, you go group two by yourselves and go attack. Meanwhile, the rest of my units stay group one and defend. Okay. Fight, like his army could be in the area still. Let's try and make sure we can deal with this shit. Let's get a couple more engineering bays. All right, sorry, a couple more depots. Fix our mineral line because our mineral line's a bit fucked up in the main base. There we go, it's a bit better now. And now our drops can go over here and commit. So what's up? What's up, Perdos? Okay, he's super defensive. So now let's move out everything because he's defensive. Okay, let's go over here. Let's drop our Marine Marauder, or just our Marines rather because it's just Marines in this area. Run away with the Marine Medivacs because he's trying to focus fire the Medivacs. Okay, and let's kill stuff right here. Go for probes, right? Go for probes. This is supposed to, all we want to do is reset the economy a little bit right now. And the reason why is because we, if we're going to do this, it should change our play style to be non-committal, okay? So now we push here. Am I going to take the fight if I'm non-committal? Fuck no. I'm not going to take the fight. Let's start running down this way. What's up, Perdos? I'm going to pop your third command center right here. Again, just like last time. Okay, now let's kill that Colossus because it's on my way out. And let's get the fuck out of here. Non-committal. I'm not trying to take a fight. I'm just trying to slow him down because he just slowed us down. And we just take advantage of that because we went for his economy with our army. And we just went... We had a concept in mind there. Now, if I was killing his army, we could kill. We could try to kill his army. Army for army, worker for worker. Like, you're... Make sure you have a plan when you attack someone and it's not just fucking random. So, if my plan is to slow his economy down, I should not take the fight full on. And I should instead slow him down with killing his economy. And then go from there. If my plan is to kill his army, well, then I should have killed his stalkers and his zealots and his main more than killing the probes. But now we've recovered. We're back on a good economy on our third, so we've, we've fixed the situation. And now we're healing up all of our bio. We're making more racks as well while we speak. We're making a planetary over here in a second. Let's get a couple more tech labs and let's get a couple more reactors. We made three tech labs and two reactors to be exact. And the reason why is because marauders are super good here. We want to have a good balance of marauder marine. Okay. And now let's do it again. Let's do the same fucking thing. Let's load up two medevacs. 
You two go this way. Okay, you guys go to the right. My main army, you guys chill in the front of my base and we'll see what's going on. We'll play defensive until we see what's going on with his positioning. Get level three armor for our bio. And let's go ahead and start our next expansion while we're at it. Because we uh, we have the, the open mineral lines to do it. Let's make a bunker here too while we're at it, honestly. Okay, so a medevacs, go, go, go. Let's go. Let's check out what's going on. What's what's going on over here? Is there a base here? Do we have a base here for Protoss? No. Okay. So now, now, let's start moving our army a bit more forward, okay? Because he's not attacking us yet. So we have plenty of time now. Let's go Let's go ahead and move forward. There's, is that Protoss right there? Yes, that is Protoss right there. So he's out of position, guys. Go, right now. Drop into his fucking base. Okay, he's hitting us with DTs everywhere, so let's go ahead and make turrets now, because that's going to be annoying. These units over here can be annoying as well. There's a DT in this area. You can see by the, the movement of the DT. Push the probes, push the probes. Scan this, because there's DT in this area. Okay. He's got fucking DT in this area. Keep making SCVs, because he's killing a lot of my workers. And now he's back. So let's load up the medevacs and try to get the fuck out of there. Try to get out right now. Go ahead and make this a planetary. Make this a turret over here. And load up some marines into this uh, bunker. And we'll make a turret in the middle line. And we'll, we'll close this off with the depot right there. So it makes the space way more defensible. And now, yes, our opponent attacked us. But we also attacked him. And we kind of fucked each other up a little bit. Now I would say at this stage of the game, let's go ahead and start getting ship weapons. Let's get building armor and building range once we're 3-3 is fully done. And let's start going into, we, we can start going into something which is liberators, okay? And the reason why we can go to liberators is because it gives us the option to actually fight his army without having to feel like we're getting overwhelmed the entire time. By like, oh my god, Colossus, Storm, Colossus, Storm. Things like that. Repair this turret. Let's make another turret over here because he just tried to kill it with DTs. Okay, he's pushing us. Guys, he's pushing us. So now you know what you do? Step back, stutter. Stutter, stutter, take a second, boost into his natural. Stutter my army. Stutter, stutter. Cancel that command center because it's going to fuck us. Stutter, 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 stutter. Now we can go in. Be careful about storms though, right? Oh my god, storm is fucking insane. Hold on for a second. Remake units. Back up from the storms. Remake units, remake units, remake units. And these new units we're making, have them like, for instance, like a liberator, siege over the natural. Hey, what's this going on over here? We just killed a base over here. Awesome. Keep going. Hey, you guys. A move towards the main base. These guys. Let's do a bit of a pre-spread like this. Pre-spread. 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 And now go for it. And suddenly, one storm doesn't have everything anymore. Now it has to be like 10 storms. And how's this going? It's going pretty good. Okay. Oh, look. He's warping in a bunch of zealots. So if I don't feel confident and I have enough to beat that, load up the medevacs and go somewhere else. Boost to like right there. Drop right fucking there. Just the next base. Keep making SCVs. Fix our economy. Keep making Marines and Marauders. Fix our supply. What's going on over here? Pretty good. Let's go ahead and scan that. That's a lot of shit. Load up the medevacs. And drop right here. Just go somewhere else again. And let's go ahead and step back our medevacs, or our units again at the medevac. We can even target fire the pylons if we want to. And our supply is being... or Not our supply, sorry. Our economy is being fixed every second... Because we're still making S uh, SCVs for this. Cool. Let's kill that stalker. Kill that stalker. Whatever. And that was a good... Overall, that was great drops. Those were fucking fantastic drops. Okay. we uh, all our, So many SCVs are idle. Holy fuck. Let's fix that right now. Jesus. Okay. Transfer some SCVs to this base. <laughs> SCV count is looking really good again. We're back into the fucking 70 range. We're at 68 exactly right now, and it's about to pop into 70. And we're about to also max out again. So we're looking fantastic. We look like we're great. Let's do this again. Let's take two medevacs. Load, load. Two medevacs. Like, have all army, control one. These medevacs, alt two. Hey, medevacs, go boost around. This time, go left. This time, go left. We want to check the left side. Let's go to the other side, because we don't know if this ba these bases exist for Protoss. Because we're not going to check this one because it's not on the side of the map. Let's scan here. We can maybe scan right here for both this base and this base. If we're right here, base exists. Base is existing. So now we know that is where our main army should push. Because we just checked the right side earlier. There's no bases. So check this out. Move my main army right here. 
This makes a lot of sense if we do it like this. Medivax boost. Do not attack with my main army yet. It makes no sense to push yet, but it will soon. Okay? So watch. Kill these fucking Prylons. Kill, kill, or kill the rocks, I mean. Chill for a second. Just fucking chill for a second. Medivax. Let's go. Come on. Hey, Medivac. Come the fuck on. Let's go. Boost, uh, boost the back of the map. We're chilling. We can siege our liberators right here. Just for a second. Because we're about ready to take the fight. Medivax. Guess what? Drop in the main base. Why? Because it's the furthest away base from this base. So drop in the main. We want him to defend this. Hey, Protoss, come here. Protoss. Come defend your fucking main base, boy. You want to defend this shit? Huh? You want to fucking defend this base? Scan for DTs. There's DTs. Notice how I'm not moving my name. Notice how I don't give a shit, guys. If he doesn't react to this, I don't react to this. I won't move my main army if he doesn't move to defend this. I'm fucking chilling. I'll kill base after base after base all day. Okay, how's it going? Oh, we're killing more gateways? Fuck yeah. Let's kill his tech. Fuck this Templar tech. Nice, I love it. Let's reset all of his tech. This is a good. I'm loving every second of this. We can make some more barracks while we're waiting. Okay, how's it going? Oh, more damage, right? More DTs are here. Let's go ahead and stutter away from them, like kite them, because we can use concussive shells to our advantage. We can hear the swipe and also see them. They make a sound when they attack you. He's making more DTs again. Notice how he hasn't moved his main army. I'll scan again. DTs? What's up, DT? How you doing? Stay back again. I don't give a fuck, guys. I will stand here all day until he dies. Because I'm not the one taking damage right now. I'm happy with all of this base dying. Okay, he's pushing me now. Now pay attention to this. Stutter. Stutter. I kite backwards. Go away from him. Stutter. 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 Scan for those DTs. There they are. Keep making units. Keep making units. Keep making units out of my medevacs. Let's make a couple more medevacs and a couple more reactors. And... I'm okay with what just happened. I'm still killing his base at the same time. How about we do this? Now that his army's mostly dead... Okay, well, he's, he ran away now. Uh, it's okay, but I'm already maxed again, right? We're already maxed again. And why are we maxed again? Okay, he's pushing our main base. So now we defend. So we just say control, control our, select our army, control one, step back, go forward, go back here, alt two, you guys go back to the base here. And now let's try to split my units apart. Go back a little bit. How did I micro that? I literally just went like this. A moved, I A moved everything like this. I A moved everything like this. A move, go forward. And I said, hey, back part of my army, back up. You guys go up, you guys go back. It's always, it was two fucking clicks. Or really four clicks, because you select, click, select, click. And why did I do that? Because our army was bunched up. Our army was bunched up. So check it out. We'll go back to that exact last fight and show you exactly what it looked like. So he's all in his fuck, right? He's got Colossus. He's got Storm out the ass. He's like, I'm going to get you with fucking AoE. Come here, Terran. Ah. And what do we do? I know he's going to storm the fuck out of me. And I don't have to be AFK to deal with this. If you just get in the habit of going like this against Storm. Green box, move here. Green box, move here. Green box, move here. Green box, move there. So basically what we're doing, let me show you in paint. This is the goal of what we're doing, okay? This is the goal of what we're doing. If you have a blob of bio, all right? If that's your bio right there, what you want to do is you don't want to go like this. Hey, bio, go like this. Because <laughs> you know what's going to happen? You're going to get fucking stormed all day, and the chunk of your bio is going to go like th The chunk of your bio in the middle is going to go like this. Fucking storm. <laughs> And then it's suddenly fucking deleted. And then he's going to be like, all right, how's for a second round? Storm. Deleted. You're like, oh, fuck, that hurts a lot. That definitely sucks ass, right? You're like, ow, that is fucking painful, Storms. However, if you go like this, literally, all you got to do is do this. You go like this. Hey, select some bio. Go this way. Select some bio. Guys, go this way. Select some bio. Guys, go that way. Select some bio. Guys, go that way. And you know what you just did? You just literally made a situation where now Storm is nowhere near as effective. So if you notice, when I select the top left side of my bio, do I go like this? Hey, bio, go this way. No, I don't fucking do that. It stacks them even harder again. I tell edges of my bio 
to go opposite of where my army is. So I go, hey, you guys, go to the top left because up here is totally fine. That's all you got to do. It makes so much more fucking sense to deal with AoE in that way where everything is so easy to deal with. You just spread out a little bit. <laughs> and as you can see, is it that crazy? Uh, these units aren't A-move, by the way. I'm not even microing those. Let's just spawn out of the barracks. But the main army, all we do, again, is we run forward to his Templars that we know are going to storm us. And now let's look at this for a second. Look at my perspective. I know these Templars... Do th you see how they're moving? I'm watching their fucking mo the Templars. And look how they're moving. They're going this way. And they can only be for one thing, guys. It's because he wants to storm the shit out of my Marauders and my Marines over here. He wants to storm the fuck out of our army on this side of the map. So if this guy wants to storm the crap out of us on this side, you know, oh, you know what we can do? Yeah. I can literally go, hey, you guys, you're on the top of the map. You're on the top of the army. Should I run them directly into the fucking... Templar and get stormed even harder and like run them into the Colossus? No. Run them up a little bit. Run them up. It increases our concave because you know you want to know what happens if you run oh, these guys forward? Yeah. The other guys follow them because you're making a conga line of storm essentially at that point. So if we tell these guys to go up and then we tell the other guys behind them to go back, you know what we do? We dodge storms that would be right there if I ran directly into him. Oh, yeah. So much more value if you do it that way. Yo, Cheever, thank you very much for the 10 gifted subs. Oh, my fucking God. Welcome, guys. Cheever, much appreciated, dude. Much love. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then, yeah, we'll, let's go back now and talk about the drop really fast. So, like, look at this drop, guys. Look how long it was in his base for, right? We'll go to the Protoss's vision during this. Oh, yeah. So, this drop does whatever it's doing over here. It's, being, it's doing a good job being aggressive and annoying. Killing a lot of shit. Meanwhile, Protoss is trying to kill us right now with this army, and then it ends up failing. We end up having enough to overpower it. And then this is not the only drop. This drop eventually dies, like right now. It dies right here. But look how much damage we did to this Protoss. This Protoss is now starving. It's always about launching some type of a little bit of a counterattack. But now, he, check this out. We're ready to attack again right now with our next wave of drops, and look at the Protoss' perspective. Look at the Protoss' perspective. I want you to watch this. So Protoss is chilling, right? He's fucking chilling. He's macroing. He's setting observers around. And he's like, oh, fuck. Oh, Those rocks just yeah. died. And now what does he do? He knows the rocks just died. What does he do now? Observer, go check that out. Ah, fuck. There's Terran right there. All right. Terran's outside my base. It's a big blob of stuff. He's oh, setting up a Liberator attack. Yeah. Okay. Now I gotta get ready to defend myself, right? Every Lots of Protosses are gonna do this kind of shit. They're gonna react to your main army. And notice how I didn't give a shit about moving my main army. Now what's happening here? Oh, okay. How do I deal with this now? Shit. This is now like checkmate because if I move my main army, which is here, down to defend this, that kills me. But if I don't move away to defend that, this kills me slowly. So what do I do? I'm also fucking broke right now. And the reason why he's broke is because we've been dropping like this all game. The same logic has applied all game so far. Thank you very oh, much for the gifted subs. Yeah. Ian M7. Thank you so much, dude. Welcome, guys. This logic has applied all game. Okay. And as a result of this, it makes the Protoss have a harder and harder oh, time having yeah. money. And now let's go to our vision because we know what his reaction is. He just tries to make DTs because if I don't scan them, one DT could kill, in, in theory, all these units because it's invisible. But here's the thing, right? I want you guys to stare oh, at this yeah. pylon right here. I want you to stare at that pylon right there. Stare at it. Stare at that pylon. And then when it dies, I want you to stare at that position where the pylon was. Just for a second. Stare at that fucking pylon. Stare at it. Stare at it. Oh, Do you notice anything? Yeah. Have you, you might you might have noticed it. You might not have noticed it. But did you notice anything with your peripheral that was in the form of a DT? Because I'm going to tell you right now, it was there. Now, let's go further. Keep staring at the pylon. Keep staring at that pylon. Thanks. Keep staring at it. Do you notice anything again around that pylon? Peripheral-wise. 
and keep striking that pylon. And now finally we're going to scan and there's DTs there. So once again, this is this is I this is I movement on the screen. If your eyes are more static and less mo less mobile on the screen, your eyes are not looking everywhere crazy like crazy. I want you to now just just for the sake of it, I want to show you what we saw. Okay, I want to show you what we saw, and you don't have to look at the exact position to see it if your peripheral is good enough. Now I want you to stare right here. I want you to stare right fucking there. Okay, stare right there. Stare at that green box. Stare at this green box. Do not look away from where the mouse is. Stare at it. Stare at the mouse. Do you see something right there? Do you fucking see that? Complete. Now watch even further. Do you see that? You can fucking see DTs all the time. And, it, it, you know, now it's, it's, here's two parts about this. Number one, we saw the DTs, so we know it's DTs, obviously. Number two, our opponent isn't even trying to defend this. He's not even bringing any Stalkers, any Zealots, any Colossus, any High Templar, nothing. He's bringing nothing to defend this. So, in general, it's only common logic that if he tries to bring nothing to defend this, that he's probably going to use something like, for instance, a DT. That's probably what it means, too. It's, it's literally, there is physically seeing something, and there's assuming something's going to happen. So, it's easier to, it, here's the thing. It's easier to know that DTs are going to warp in here and for me to catch it happening if he's if I can understand the concept of, oh, if he doesn't try to defend his base at all with anything else, he can only be making DTs then because I can't see them, right? They're not fucking zealots walking at me very clear like as day. So, yeah, it makes sense that it would be DTs because we saw nothing else and then we physically saw the DTs to reconfirm that. So it makes it easy to know it's DTs. Also, here's another thing. You can actually hear the auto attack of a Dark Templar, even if you can't see the Dark Templar. That is a thing that exists in the game. Now, listen for what the auto attack of the Dark Templar sounds like. It literally is like a... Like it's like a swipe sound. It's kind of hard to hear with other sound effects, but yeah, I, I can hear it, but I know a lot of people are going to be like, I can't fucking hear it! People who couldn't hear the Battlecruiser teleport, the dink sound... Uh, I'm going to have a hard time hearing that, too. But listen to it again. He warps in more DTs. Listen to it. You haven't heard it yet? Haven't heard it yet? Oh, yeah. Have not heard it yet? Still haven't heard it yet? Here it comes. Can you hear that? Again, it's very subtle. It's like... That's what it sounds like. I'm doing my best impression, but it's it, I can't make it sound exactly like it does because I didn't make that sound effect. So yeah, but you can you can not only go are you under under attack? You hear the swiping and you also can oh, see it. There's so yeah. many things about it. My units are physically taking damage. Uh, yeah, lots of it. Thank you very much though, Ian, for the gifted subs again, dude. Valuable gift in the chat for Ian and Cheever. Ian Cheever. Oh, Thank you guys for the yeah. 9 and the 10 gifted subs, guys. Much love. Vibu fucking gift in the chat. Thank you. Uh, and also, uh, celebrating yo Glow. I, I put one more Vibu gift in the chat for Glow, too. He was an hour ago, but I'll celebrate his ass one more time because I appreciate that. He also gifted 5 subs earlier, too. Much love, guys. But yeah, you can see the, uh, the swipey, swipey. <laughs> and yeah okay so again well let's no longer let's not talk about dt's anymore let's fuck that let's go back to the protoss's perspective throughout this fight one more time so here's the protoss's perspective this is the position we're putting him in he sees we're here he knows we're here he's freaking out that we're here and then we pressure him harder by going into his main base and now the protoss has choices to make right and he's like well fuck me what do i do here i'll make dt's and hope for the best Notice how he's not moving his army. He knows the second he moves his army, he'll die. Because if this base dies, he's dead either way. Oh, Yo, Crone Dance, yeah. thank you again also for five gifted subs. What the fuck, guys? So many gifted subs. You guys are way too fucking generous, dude. More dead DTs. And now Protoss is like, all right, well, shit, dude. All my oh, gateways are getting underpowered. Yeah. He's literally killing my important tech right now. My base is getting gutted from inside out. But again, I, a lot of people in chat were like, lol, 
Those medevacs are being so efficient. Protoss is not doing anything about it. This is pretty crazy. Because he can't. Oh, yeah. Because we're right there. And if he fucking moves, he's dead. We knew. We scanned this base before. So we knew that if we put our army here, it's checkmate. I scouted where his expansions were before we attacked him. Oh, yeah. I just checked the right side of the map. I also just killed the right expansion on the natural. And then I checked the left side of the map. And the only base I wasn't able to check on the sides of the map was the middle base, which I scanned and saw a base at. So if I position myself to kill oh, this expansion, which is a yeah. big, important mineral line that he has, because this is the only real mining base he has that is at full power right now, or mostly, this becomes a problem because he, he actually can't stop it now. If he moves away, he dies. So it's it's really hard for the Protoss. We forced him into that position to be it fucked, essentially. Yo, Glow, thank you for the 500 biddies as well, and 25 at the lip, thank you for the 100 bits. Much love, guys. Thank you. Well, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Terran B2GM, hell yeah. Yeah. We're just forcing reactions out of our opponent with our drops, and our the way we position our army. We make him react. Notice how I'm not even microing this army that crazy? Now, if you had, like, fucking TY, Maru, Innovation, Klim, whoever the hell you want to put there that's a really good Terran player, those players would be multitasking this army and this army, and they would actually be like, I don't give a fuck if you're sitting here. I'm going to push you with Liberators, and I'm going to, like, multitask this, and I'm going to break you over here, and I'm also going to break you over here at the same time. That is good Terran. That is pro-Terran stuff right there, but it's you can see clearly it's not required in Diamond. I could sit there and force it just by being in the area. And now he's just dead. Like, these Marauders killed the entire main. And all those Dark Templars with it. So that was brutal. Anyways, hopefully that makes sense, guys. Hopefully you guys are uh, enjoying that. And, uh, liking the droppies. But a lot of that game was literally about breaking his economy. Just killing his economy. We killed the third base. We killed probes. We killed the natural. Oh, we killed more yeah. probes. And the main base eventually killed the probes. Yo, Ian, thank you for the uh, five gifted subs, man. Much love. So many gifted subs. Vibu gift in the chat again now for Ian again. Holy God, man. Also, we're playing another Protoss. Oh, Okay, this time? Yeah. Let's do another all-in. Let's do another all-in this game. We'll, we'll do the very all-in thing that we talked about with the, uh, the proxy... Two racks Marauder. Because this build is fucking so goddamn easy. Oh, yeah. This build is a joke. We'll actually get. We'll also, we'll also get the concussive shell this time. So this is the very heavy version of the all in. This is like really aggressive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ian, much love, man. This is the best resource to learn, no question. Very. Insightful. Hope you enjoy. Thank you, dude. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our barracks. Oh, I made that one in the bad spot. I'll have to lift it off and land it. It's okay. It's like going to waste my about like two seconds off my attack, but it's not the biggest of deals. Let's make our second barracks. Okay. And now let's get our gas. Start an SCV. Now, this guy is going to know, right? He's scouting. And now he's probably going to be like, hmm. Proxy oh, motherfucker, huh? Yeah. You proxy motherfucker, huh? Proxy boy. Not enough minerals. <laughs> so now he could very well run probes over here and kill my barracks if he finds it. That could happen. Is it guaranteed going to happen? Not necessarily, but it could. Oh, yeah. It totally could happen. So now we're going to mine 50 gas, just 50 gas out of our natural gas, or our second gas. And then we will stop mining gas out of that gas. Okay. Lift off this barracks and land it a little bit further over. Oh, Because we need to build an yeah. add-on. So build a tech lab. Build a tech lab. Mine 50 gas. We're almost there. Get a orbital command started in a second. Let's also go scout our base really quick to see if he's building something. And there's 50 gas right there. Stop mining out of that one gas. Yeah. All right. Go back to mining. Let's make a depot again. Or no. Not yet. Can't yet, actually. We need to make marauders. There's my first Marauder. Let's get Concussive Shell. Let's make our second Marauder. Oh, yeah. And Marauder. And now he knows what we're doing. But now we're going to have Concussive Shells super fucking fast. Oh, 
So we're chilling. Yeah. I don't want to push right now. It makes no sense to push right now. Even though he knows I'm doing this, it still makes no sense to push because one Marauder at a time can get overpowered, and that's not ideal. So we're waiting for our fourth Marauder, and then we'll go. Oh, yeah. At least three. I think four is the good number to go with because it's way, way safer. Okay, now we can build another depot over here in our main base. And now this is walled off in case he wants to run Stalkers or, or like yeah. Zealots to our base. And now we go. Now Concussive Shell's done. Now we go with four Marauder. And now we push. Okay, be careful about the ramp. There might be four shields. Oh, yeah. Focus fire that Stalker. He's got a shield battery. Let's go deeper into his base. Lure him away from the battery if we can. And start attacking the, the Stalkers again. Oh, yeah. Okay, so he defended it really, really well because he made fucking uh, a battery. So, again, this is why this build is should not be your go-to oh, every single game. Yeah. Because if your opponent understands how to, obviously, scout, it's not going to work every time. It really works the best if they don't know how to scout. Okay, well, he's exposing himself, so now we can actually kill some Stalkers. That's not ideal for Protoss. Behind this as well, we can make a factory. And we can turn this into a macro game. And I'm still making SCVs the entire time, guys. So it's not like we're like no, no workers. Okay, and let's run away. Let's actually just run away now. If he actually chases me all the way, we'll eventually kill that Stalker. Like this. Hey, Stalker, get the fuck back. And he backs up, we just run away. Just run the fuck away. Hey, Stalker, back the fuck up. Yeah, well, he's actually becoming a problem, right? This attack's actually maybe going to kill us. Okay, that's actually a bit of a problem right now. It's kind of scary. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Let's go ahead and make a couple more depots, and the reason why is because if we're if we know we're gonna break now in the front of the base, well, our depots are gonna die. So let's try and just start making units. I would say let's make a cyclone for now, just because it's mobile and it's easy to make really fast. Go and cancel that bunker. Let him break into my base, and we'll just try to use SCVs to overpower, because otherwise we're just gonna die. It's not really not a lot of not a lot of choices here, to be fair. Okay, so he's coming in hot. So now take the SCVs. Go, go, go. SCVs, go right now. Get on top of his army. And now we have a Cyclone. That's going to help a lot. And he's trying to recall his units out, right? And now the game has a bit of a reset. So we managed to still hold on. That was... Pretty scary though, because the Protoss has a lot of momentum there when he killed all my fucking Marauders. So that was that was a little bit scary. Behind this now, let's go ahead and go to a starport. We can go into tanks, get a reactor, get a tech lab. <clears throat> and we can do like tank marine medevac against Protoss or some shit. It's fine. And now let's go into uh, you know our natural. Get stim pack. Get like some Marauder and then Tank Marine. Okay, now he's killing my tech labs. They might have changed the way add-ons work. I feel like I shouldn't see these. I don't remember that being that way. It's whatever though. I don't really care. Okay, let's go ahead and also... Because this game's economy is now a bit fucked up. And the, the reason why I say that is because... Be, uh, we couldn't produce out of our units for such a long time. Because our barracks were floating across the entire map. Our money is higher than it should be. So let's go ahead and make a faster third command center than we normally would. Because I, I can't spend my money properly. I'm having a hard time spending the money. Okay. Make another tank. You can put another tank on the low ground over here. We need more SCVs building more depots, to be fair. Let's get a medevac. Okay. 
Okay, he's all hitting me. Go over there and defend that right now, if we can. Alright, maybe not. Maybe he's just poking me with the prism. Maybe he's going to go all in. We don't know yet. Now, if he's going to use a prism, let's make a viking. Just make a viking, because it'll help a lot if he actually decides to go full on with that viking. Or with, the, with that prism, rather. It'll help kill it. Let's go ahead and make a couple engineering bays, because now we're taking our gas at our natural. Let's get, let's get combat shield now. At our tech lab. Take the gas. And now we can make a couple extra racks. Let's go to like three more racks. And let's get ready to take our third base. We can take our third base like right there or some shit. Also, let's make like a turret over here. And the reason why is because if I'm going to expand here and I'm going to move my army down this way, we're exposed to two locations. There from a prism and like there from a prism because it's really far away from my, where my army will be standing. So let's go take our third. Move our tank maybe towards the middle a little bit more this way. So we can cover this base a bit better in case he pushes us on this side. Let's also take another command center while we're at it. Because we can. We have the money for it. Okay, he's pushing us entirely. So we can Stimpak Stutter if we, if we can. Let's see what we can do with this. Stimpak Stutter. Stimpak Stutter. 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 He's pushing the main. So run the SUVs away. This is that turret that he flew over. But I think the turret might not have been done. Okay, let's tell SUVs to go mine the minerals again. And now the Viking and the fucking turret will probably kill that med that prism. So if I get him, Viking. Oh, he, what the fuck? You can fly so far on the side of the map. I did not know that. <laughs> okay. No wonder why you got past my fucking turret. I did not know you could fly that far around it. Okay. I'm not used to this map pool yet really that much. So Because I haven't been able to play it at higher level at all since I made the series. Okay, so now we're going to make depots. And now we have control of the game. Now we actually have control of the game. So because we have control, I would say now is a great time for when we should start doing things like setting up drops. We should totally set up some drops. So, uh, medevac. Let's load up eight marines into it. Medevac, go over that way. So I just have my whole, my whole army is on control one. Medevac is on ult two because I remove it from group one that way. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Okay, we can get vehicle upgrades. Let's now get like a second factory. And the reason why we can do that is because we're going for a build of uh, tanks. So tank upgrades matter here. We're getting tank marine medevac with a little bit of marauder. Okay, did he kill my combat shield? No, he didn't kill my combat shield. Let's make maybe like two more racks in the main base so we can just get more production. And now again, we're scouting the sides of the map just like we always do before. Same shit as always. Where is the Protoss? No base there? Okay, let's go to the main base. Okay, never mind. This cannon's there. It's all good. We don't need to, we don't need to freak out. We don't need to rush things. We're all good. Hi, Vibe. Yo, what's up, dude? Hello. Our base is a little bit wonky, I'm not going to lie, in terms of how we sim city our buildings, but it's okay. Okay, let's go ahead and build a turret at this base, make a planetary at it. And now that we're making, now we're in the phase of making turrets, let's make a turret at every mineral line, just to be extra safe. Like, what if DTs show up or some shit like that? We don't want to deal with that, really. Let's also make a bunker there, and let's wrap depots around the bunker that we're making here. So we can load this up with a few marines. Not enough. Okay, we can load up a second medevac. Let's have this medevac go on alt three. So we have two and three. Medevac, you go on the right side. So again, similar to what we were always doing before in B2GM. Let's also throw a scan in his base and just see what tech he's going for. Okay, he's got DTs, he's got Robo, he's got double, ro uh, double forges. There's a Zealot there. Let's drop marines on it. Let's go ahead and kill that bad boy. Get rid of his on Naga Tower vision. Let's maybe do the same thing on this one, because I bet he probably has this one as well. If he has the other one, he probably has this one. Yep. 
Get rid of that Zanaga vision for him. Okay. Now let's go ahead and load up. Go ahead and load up. Go check more bases. Uh, transfer SCVs. Load up a few Marines into that bunker. What's going on over here? Keep checking for bases. And there we go. We found a base. Let's go ahead and drop here right now. Drop this base. Let's go ahead and also drop this base. Go around his base just like he did ours with that prism. Stint back some probes down. Probe. 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 Load up. Leave. Go here. What's going on this way? We got through. Sick. Let's go ahead and drop here in the middle line. And this one over here can just fucking chill because it's not doing much anyways. Kill some probes. Probe. 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 We can also kill stalkers if we need to or whatever. It's whatever. That's That drop definitely paid for itself. I'm not going to lie. Let's go ahead and take another command center. And now let's go ahead and get ready to attack. We actually want to attack now. Makes sense to attack now because we have a big fat army. He's pushing this base right now. Let's defend this really fast. What's up, Perdos? I see your DTs with that army. Let's go ahead and scan that. Stutter towards it. He's also pushing this base. Okay, let's go ahead and repair this and go up. Just go up right now. What's here? Siege our tanks. Stay our bio. Run away from those disruptor shots. Go forward. Run away from disruptor shot. Run away from disruptor shot. He's going to try and recall, and we're going to kill most of his army before he does it. Everything but one Ruptor died. So that was great. Let's go ahead and unseat our tanks. And let's go for it. Get a 3-3 three, three upgrade is about to start. Okay, this is fucking awkward here in our main base. We definitely built this base like crap. I was wondering why my tank count feels kind of low when I have double fucking factories. Uh, we'll lift and land this command center in a second. I'll just do it now. Tanks, get the fuck out of there. Okay, now land it again. Jesus Christ. Okay, now let's push his... Uh, Let's push his third base. So we're going to scan. Let's go ahead and siege up right in his face. Get 3-3. Upgrades going on engineering base. Siege our tanks. Stim our boys. And control the area. If he, if he shoots a disruptor shot at us, pull back. No need to engage it. Pull back right now. Okay, we're going to get uh, owned a little bit by the disruptors. Wait for a second. And now go forward. Siege up some more tanks. Scan that DT army because we can hear it attacking us. Okay, so we, we got fucked right there. But we still did a lot of damage. It, was not, it wasn't like we just lost the game right there. We still definitely did a lot of damage there. It was just the real thing is, is we definitely lost uh, the fight overall. Uh, because our army totally died. But we killed his army in the process. So that was still overall a good trade. Not Definitely not bad. Transfer SCVs, we need to fix our economy. This is where a lot you can't fall apart. This is why B to GM bronze to plat is so fucking important. Because if we just don't macro, we lose anyways, right? Let's go ahead and get in the command center started. This is from the fixing the damage he did to us earlier. And SCV counts looking pretty decent. Let's go get ready to attack again. 3-3 three is almost done. We got a lot of tanks. This depot is blocking that SCV from doing anything. Get out there, dude. Okay, let's go ahead and lift this command center one more time. Get those tanks the fuck out of there. And let's, if you're having a problem like this with your base, check this out. This is what you can do. Rally point everything like right there and take this one factory and go like this. You go down and then shift the rally over there. And now you've fixed your problem of your base being stupid. Okay. Now we can go ahead and push again. Let's send one Marine down. It could be a medevac or a Marine. It does not matter. We'll just have a scout go forward before we really commit to the fight. Let's have a scout go forward. So we're not actually going to compromise our entire army out of nowhere. We're waiting to scout and see where his bases are. Okay. Does he have a base there? Yep. He's got a base over here too. Let's push the left side then. We now know the Protoss is fucking committed. And what can we do now that we're pushing the left side? Take these units over here. Load up the medevacs. And now these medevacs can go down here. Shift, move, drop right there. So now we're setting up a drop on the right from group two. And we're setting up a main army push on the left. And because this army has tanks... We can actually siege him. So let's do that. Let's siege right in his fucking face. Get his attention. Hey, Protoss. Hey, motherfucking Protoss. Come here, boy. Come here, Protoss. And you know what this does? 
This gives me control of this area, which is going to give me control of this area with my drop. Right, ask come here. Let's pre-spread my bio so it makes it easier not to get blown up by disruptor shots. And look at this, guys. What's up, Protoss? What are you going to do about this? Do I care about this anymore? Nope. I just made Protoss react to that. But I do care about this. Yep. Let's go ahead and stutter back to a corner here. Kill his zealots. Kill his pylon. Kill his zealots again. Stim pack again. Am I moving my main army? No. But look, he's engaging now, so now I will. Okay, let's go ahead and stutter. St let's go ahead and aim move this. So as soon as he shoots the shots, run away. And then go back in again. What's this doing? It's owning still. What's this doing? Great. He's running away. Let's push his base now. Because we care about killing his economy more than chasing his army. Okay, he's coming back to fight my tanks. Go back and help my tanks. Okay, let's load up our medevacs because he's shooting disruptor shots at us. Let's go ahead and drop our medevacs again. And how did I do that? How did I do that? Literally have your army selected and go like this. Click, 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 click. Just right click all your medevacs. And now drop your medevacs. What's going on over here? Fucking great, right? That drop just won us the game, literally, because it killed another base by itself. Now we can push forward and finish this base off. We can stutter away from the Zealots, or if he runs away from us, we can stutter towards them. He goes towards us, so we go away from him. Now Zealots are gone, so we stutter towards Stalker. And now we kill the Pylon, we kill this another Nexus. We can load this up and go to the next base. And then we go over here, do the same thing. Stutter into the fucking mineral line. Nice. Nice, dude. Nice. Nice. You guys liking it? You guys enjoying this so far? <laughs> So this guy pylon scouted us. That's why he scouted it so fucking fast. He literally pylon scouted. That's really early to scout like that. That's almost like cannon rush esque mentality because again you're getting to the base before a minute. So, I mean, if you what if you would have cannon rushed us? You know what we could do then? Just fucking lift your command center and go somewhere else. Like let him make cannons. Here's the cool thing you could do. Okay, let me let me give you guys a, a cool trick. Let me tell you a cool trick about defending a cannon rush. Check this out. This is, this is, I guarantee this is something some Terrans don't know. If you get cannon rushed when you're proxying, it is really hard to defend that. Because you don't want to go home and defend it. You want to still attack him. But at the same time, you don't want to die, right? So here's a cool trick you can learn to defend cannon rush when, you get, when you're proxying your opponent. It's as simple as the command center... When it's just a command center, has a load oh, yeah. button. Yo, thank you very much, Ian, for another ten gifted subs. Jesus Christ, and another one gifted sub from earlier too. And RT Fufkin, thank you for the ten gifted subs. And Mixologist, thank you for the tier one. Welcome to the stream, dude. Guys, oh, Vibo gift in the chat yeah. again for these generous badasses. So many gifted subs today. My God, thank you very much, guys. Much appreciated. So. Think about this for a second. When a command center is a command center and oh, not a orbital yeah. command. Okay, we don't want to make a planetary here because we, we don't even have gas to afford it. We don't have an engineering bay. We cannot make a planetary. It takes an engineering bay as a requirement. And it's a lot of gas to make that building. So we're not making a fucking planetary when, in a cannon rush. Okay, that's not happening. Oh, yeah. Now, and even if we tried to make a planetary, the command center would die before it happened. Let's be real. Because, again, I'm investing into the proxy as well. So here's a cool way you could defend your cannon rush. You don't defend it. You let him oh, invest into it. Yeah. You literally let him build pylon, cannon, 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 cannon. You let him build multiple cannons, and you don't leave your base until cannons start shooting your mineral line. As soon oh, as the cannon is in range yeah. to shoot your mineral line, then you leave. And what you do is you lift off your command center, and you go away from the cannon. You don't fly directly over the cannons. You fly away from them like this way right here. And then you fly down, down here, and then you go back around left this oh, way. Yeah. And what you do, this is what you do. It's fucking ridiculously, it's, it's hilarious. 
If his cannons are all right here, killing your main... Because he's not going to build cannons down here, guys. He's not going to do that. Because he's cannon rushing your fucking main. There's no reason to build a cannon down here if he's going to do this. Okay? Because oh, it's, it's just more expensive. Yeah. It makes no sense. And he'll die before he... Because like, if he makes cannons here as well, and you're also killing his base with fucking marauders, he'll just die. But if you actually just lift your command center and go down and around like this, down this way, and then come around this way... If you run all your SCVs oh, as well the same way, yeah. and they all run down and around the edge of your base, and they're all standing right here, what you can do is you can fly your command center right here, load five, fly right here, land five, fly right here, load five, land five, oh, load five, yeah. land five. And it will take literally either three or four trips because you're going to have guaranteed less than 20 SCVs. You might have 16. You might have 17. You might have 14. It'll be somewhere between 3 and 4, because oh, it'll be either 15 to 20 yeah. uh, for your max. You literally lift 5, you land 5. You lift 5, you land 5. And you do it like 2 or 3 times, and your command center can go from here to here in about 2 seconds. And then from here to here in about 2 seconds. And you can evacuate all... You can literally transfer all your SVs from the main to the fucking low ground in a matter of about a total of 8 seconds or 6 seconds. And then you just fucking... You can either then land here and mine here, or you can go all the way down here if you want to because you think he's going to cannon you here or some shit. That is also possible. I would recommend just landing here and building there because if he builds more cannons there as well, you can once again lift up and go somewhere else. And then if you go somewhere else entirely at that point, by then the Protoss is fucking dead because if he keeps making cannons that much in your base, you can't stop that. It, no fucking way. You cannot stop Marauder Proxy while making fucking like 12 cannons in the Terran's main. You can't do that. It is impossible. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's very doable. You can totally fucking ferry your SCVs from one base to the other over a cliff. You just need to know if you make it an orbital command. If you make this an orbital command, it can still lift, but it loses the ability to load. So do not make an orbital command if you plan on doing that. Because it'll lose the loads, it'll lose the load ability, and then suddenly all your SCVs have to run through the cannons, and then they'll all die. So that sucks. So, anyways, we'll talk about this again for now. To Protoss scouts us, he does not cannon rush us. He just is crazy at scouting, at really fucking fast, and he's looking for our proxies. <coughs> and now we have double proxy Marauder. Protoss is coming over to scout it in a second, I think. There we go. He scouts it. What does he react with? He cancels his natural because now he's like, ah, shit. This was a... The double battery was definitely a good reaction to this. Double battery is a good reaction uh, to Proxy Marauder. I would say the only thing that was questionable is maybe didn't have to deny the natural like that. Um, but it, it is what it is, right? It's okay. It's whatever. Now he goes for a quick robo and he goes for a double gateway. He definitely picked a super safe way to defend this, which I can't fault him on that. He's playing super safe. Uh, but again, are we are we doing 100% all in with this? Here's the thing. If we were, if I actually was 100% all in with this, and let's say I pulled every SCV to attack with these Marauders, and I was just making periodically new SCVs. <coughs> if I was periodically making new SCVs behind this <coughs> to fill in my mineral line again, and I just left a couple of SCVs on the gas with mules mining minerals, I could still maintain production of my Marauder and I could actually pull a bunch of SCVs with this if I wanted to be extremely all-in. And if I surrounded his Stalker and Zealot with with SCVs, and uh, with their SCVs are attacking and my Marauders are attacking, it would be it'd be it would be very easy to kill his batteries and then oh, kill all of his units. Yeah. Because my Marauders can actually kill batteries and super fast if I'm not worried about his units. <clears throat> Thank you for the subs again, Ian. Much love, dude. Vibu gift in the chat for Ian. God damn. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, but do I have to pull SCVs here? No. You can see we didn't pull SCVs, but he definitely made a super safe defense, so he did a good job. And then he overpowers our proxy. This is a mistake by him, though. I mean, he overcommitted here, and now we just run him over with concussive shell. Oh, yeah. So that was definitely a mistake by, uh, by Protoss there. And then <clears throat> this was a mistake by us because we actually went all the way to his natural. We, we, oh, like, we know he's making units as well, and we know he doesn't have a natural, and we know we already know oh, he has a robo yeah. and two gateways. So we know we're about to run into an immortal. So we should have actually ran away right now, and our marauders probably could have made it back to the base without dying. Because he, we have a big lead on him already, like a full screen length of a lead. 
However, we run all the way to his fucking natural. And we kill a probe. We even dive deep in the natural. And now we're like, all right, now we got to run away. Now, it, now this is no longer a screen length. Now it's like right on my ass. And a stalker does run faster than a marauder by a bit. A, a mortal is the exact same move speed. And a zealot without speed is the exact same move speed. So in theory, the only unit that can attack me right here is the stalker. <clears throat> but yeah. A stalker as well will hit us really fucking hard. Stalkers hit immortals. Or sorry, stalkers hit marauders pretty fucking hard. So it's still a problem. We should definitely have not come this close. Because every time we try to fight the stalker, he's going to pull us into the immortal. <laughs> and then all of our units die trying to run home. They couldn't quite make it. He attacks us all the way across the map. And now he's got two zealots, a stalker, and two immortals coming to my base right now as he breaks into the depots. And he kills all my depots. And even a second stalker arrives. This is definitely kind of scary, right? You're definitely kind of shitting your pants this turn right now. And you're thinking to yourself, oh, fuck, are we going to die right now? But here's the thing. Even though I double racks proxied him, I actually have worker lead. And the reason why I have worker lead is because I made a command center faster than he made a nexus. So, it's all good. We, we, we can take some damage here. We can still come out of this in a decent spot. I just have to pull all my SCVs and get on top of him. So I try to get a surround with my SCVs. I get a decent surround. I make a Cyclone. And the reason why I make a Cyclone is because a Hellion would have done nothing here. A Widow Mine would have killed my own SCVs here. Because if I shoot a fucking Immortal and all my SCVs around it, that's fucking not good for us. So I don't want to make a Widow Mine either. So if I make a Tech Lab, I want to make a unit that's going to pop out quickly. A Tank can pop out the same speed as a Cyclone. But here's the thing about a Tank. A Tank is good. But again, I don't want to siege it because it's going to AOE my SCVs because I'm trying to do like a citizen's arrest here. I'm going to splash my own workers and that's really bad. So if I use a t if I have to compare the tank in auto attack mode versus a cyclone, I feel like a cyclone overall just gives more more merit. Um, because we can we can do like we talked about earlier. We can we can have a surrounded unit get locked on by a cyclone and we can back up away from it and not be getting attacked by his unit while, you know, we're shooting him. And a lock-on does more DPS than a tank in non-siege mode. So we like I figured Cyclone makes the most sense here. Just to give us something now to try and save our ass. <coughs> and then at the end of the rush, look at that. Would you believe it? We have a similar worker count. We're not great on the worker or sorry, on the on the total supply. We're definitely down by like 18 supply right now. That's not great. But we actually have a somewhat similar worker count, and this is very fine for Terran. Because Terran should be behind because you have mules and you actually delay SCVs because you don't have Corona Boost and you have to delay SCVs even longer by making orbitals. So this is actually not that bad. The game is like literally reset. And we're actually, it's like a normal game again. It's almost like a fresh game. So believe it or not, this game is actually pretty, uh, pretty, pretty normal looking here now. And then we make a third command center again because we just had extra money. So we're like, yeah, fuck it. Let's just throw our third command center down now faster than we're fully saturated here. And the reason why we had extra money is because these barracks had to fly across the entire fucking map, right? He actually lands else on a tank. That was actually a good trade for him. He's trying to bust me as well. And then he, he, I think he second guesses it, right? He's like, ah, maybe not. And it, to be fair, he would not bust me right now. Look how I'm actually in a supply lead now. I'm not afraid of this at the moment. We will not break through this. Not only does he have to break through a depot wall, we have more supply overall. And then he does that. This is where he does that counterattack along the side of the map that I didn't know that could happen. I did not know you could fly over there. It's fucking insane how you can fly all the way over there, away from that turret. The turret needs to be there at the very least, or there. But then there kind of opens up this area. So a turret there... That's, this, this is actually a fucking... I'm not going to lie, guys. This is a very hard map to defend on. This open airspace is kind of fucked. That's actually insane. I did not know it was that big. Uh, that makes this like multiple turrets. You need a turret there, a turret there, and like a turret there. Because if you have two turrets here and you defend there, well, he could just fucking warp prism right here. And it's still out of range of your third. So that's fucked. So how, you need to have like three turrets. That's kind of kind of insane. <clears throat> and now we start dropping him. It's all good. As well. And yeah. Or we, we try to and then we saw cannon, so we just abort. But now the game, again, it resets, right? We're going tanks versus a person going disruptors and shit. And stalkers and archons. It's 
And from here on out, we kind of explained it a little bit, but it's literally the same concept as always. We set up drops and we follow it with army pushes. We, we like, so and the, a big thing about pushing as well is the biggest thing you have to understand about pushing is this. If I have my opponent's attention on my main army, I do not need to push with my main army. I can if I'm really confident, but I don't need to push with my main army. I can instead let him push into me, which makes me defensively absorb him with tanks, with liberators, with a spread of bio, whatever the fuck I want to do. Okay? You make him come through a choke point away from his base, whatever, to come to you, but he knows you're there, so <clears throat> that's, you know, that's a problem for him. Meanwhile, while you have his attention with your main army, you drop him with medevacs. Or vice versa, you do the complete opposite. You drop him with medevacs. You see that his army comes over to the medevac. You try to load it up and fly away, but you know he's out of position. <clears throat> and then you use the opportunity of him being out of position because he's currently focused on your medevac to then launch an attack on his other actual base. So that's really how it goes. And notice that right there too. I was trying to kill whatever I could, but it was all getting repaired by the battery. And I just started killing probes. Why am I killing probes? Why does pr killing probes make sense right now? Why does killing probes here make sense right now? Why should? Why did I not just kill all of his zealots and all of his, uh, his stalker? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, I would probably not have killed all of these units. And even, even if I did kill, like, let's say I killed all these units, I probably would have traded, like, he's got more units in my face over here, too. I probably would have traded, like, I would have killed maybe, like, three or four of these units, and then he would have started killing my units. And then I would have had to have leave, or my medevac would have died. And it would make sense if I killed the units more, if I'm going to push right now, and I'm trying to get his army out of position, and I'm trying to thin his army out. But I'm not pushing right now. I'm playing defensive at the moment. And I'm just scouting where his bases are so I can eventually set my push up. So killing probes right now makes more sense because I slow his economy down then. And it makes, him, it makes it harder for him to keep up with me going forward for the rest of the game as time goes on. Because we're fucking over his money. Uh, now, at the end of the day, I killed as many probes as I could. And I was kind of fucking path blocked here. I couldn't really kill much more because there's not much room in the area. There's pylon, dark shrine, council. This is a fucking wall. I can't get around that. And he's got units in my way here, too. <coughs> so if I can't kill any more probes, because I already killed what was in my face on this side, you can make the argument that damage is damage, and just do damage. Just do fucking damage. So I do kill a couple probes, but yeah. I start killing some stalkers, because just killing anything is still better than killing nothing. Even though killing probes was the better thing here, and I did kill, like, five of his probes on the mineral line just now. So that was nice. That was not a bad drop at all. Losing a medevac and eight marines to kill two stalkers, a zealot, and five probes is fucking really good. That's not bad at all. Especially when I'm already ahead as well. And now my opponent does a similar concept. He pushes me with DT zealot at the same time. He pushes me with templar, or uh, sorry, dark templar, archon, zealot, stalker, and disruptor. I'm going to start, I think I'm going to start, what I'm going to start doing, guys, I just want you, I want you to know that I'm probably going to, here pretty soon, I'm going to start actually microing against Disruptors. And what we do is, what you, what you do to micro against a Disruptor is you don't always just run away from it, okay? That's not actually a micro against Disruptors. Like, that's how you can micro against it when you're not comfortable with it yet. But the way you micro against Disruptors is you have to be good with your mouse. And you see a Disruptor shot coming forward, okay? It comes forward like this. And what do you do? You say, hey, a whole army, A move this way or move command this way. And then you make the calculation in your mind to go, okay, it's right there. So I need to green box that chunk and go that way. You literally just make, you part the fucking C as the shot's coming. Uh, that's all you do against it. And you'll see me do it a lot more as we go. Because I'm going to fight this shit a lot more probably as well. But yeah, all you do is you try to calculate. It's, it's a judgment call. You go, okay, that's the middle. Spread, 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 spread. You literally just spread your bio left and right around shots repeatedly. You don't always have to just run away and take a shot to the face like that when your units punch up. See, like this fight right here, honestly, I think we could have won the game right here. I'm not going to lie. I actually think we would have won the game right here. But the reason why we did not win the game right here is because I didn't really micro against disruptors. I just ran away and look at what this disruptor kills. Look at my supply, 184 and 165. 
That fucking thing just killed 19 supply. So, that's huge. That's a lot of fucking things that just died right there. To that disruptor shot. And if I would have just told my units to go up and down instead, if I spread against it, I would have lost a lot less than that. <laughs> also, another reason why we lost this fight is because we didn't scan fast enough either. Those DTs are attacking us for like three or four seconds before we scan. <coughs> well, yeah, I mean, good defense by the t by the Protoss, right? But the rest, the rest of this game, we kind of went over it already. We talked about it. It's just literally bullying the Protoss on one side and dropping him on another. It's really all it's about. So, like right now, a quick example, one more time, would be we see our bases and look how we drop over here, right? Or we don't drop. Sorry, we uh we set up right here. Notice how I don't push. I don't push. Why push? Why why push? Just sit back. Spread my pre-spread my bio a little bit. Sit back and relax. You wanna know why I can do that? Cause look at Protoss right now. This is Protoss's this is Protoss's perspective right now. Look at the problem he's having. He's like, alright, I know fuck I know Terran's up there. Ah fuck, Terran's down here too. Uh oh. What am I gonna do? If I defend this, he just pushes this base. If I don't defend this, then this base hopefully doesn't die, but these drops are being, like, they're not dying. The drops are still going. Fuck. All right, I guess we just attack. And do you see what just happened? What we just said was, it's the best case scenario. If you, if you know your opponent's army is missing, if they push into you rather than you pushing into them, you know what's happening now? Every one of my fucking tanks is getting shots off before he engages. I'm not, oh, he, oh I'm, I'm not like rolling in right here and he's engaging me at the same time. And as we're attacking each other, I'm starting to siege my tanks. That's not what's happening. What's happening is, is he's engaging me as I'm already sieged. So look what happens to his army when he engages this fight. It's not pretty. Look at his army as he tries to take the fight right now. This is, this is what it looks like when you have a fight that is defen defender's advantage. We have a already set up defensive position. I'm already somewhat spread and I have every tank fucking sieged. So, what happens to Protoss as he engages? Zealot's dead. Zealot's dead. Archon's dead. Zealot's gonna die right there. We've already killed an Archon and three Zealots before anything's even happened. That right there is ten supply already out of his army. That's just pff, deleted. And why? what was the difference of that? We were sieged before the fight started. Now... He's, he's Now he's starting to close the distance. Now he's closing the distance and he's going to take an actual fight. Now he's already here going to take a fight. But again, that was just my first volley of tanks. Here comes volley number two of tanks. And another two zealots die. Two archons are about to fucking die. Another second archon dies right there. And then he, he like runs away because he's like, God damn, my army's fucking disappearing. And he tries to take a bunch of fucking... Uh, Disruptor shots, which is fine. And we try to micro against it. We run away from it. It's all good. And he comes back again. He's eating tank shots like crazy. Now, imagine if he engaged me. Imagine if he engaged me. And all the, like, the, the, like six or seven zealots or so that died before they really made melee contact. Imagine if he was making melee contact while my tanks were starting to siege up. And by the time my tanks started firing, they were shooting zealots that were touching my bio already. And my marines were getting pummeled by fucking tank splash damage. That would suck. That'd be a lot harder to deal with. My army would not be as big as it is. I would have lost more, and then he might have had enough to overpower me and run over my army, just kind of like down here. <coughs> and then he comes in again, right? I'm still sieged. Look at that. All his Archons fucking die before making contact. And now it's just Zealot Disruptor. And this is when we just load up our medevacs. Like we literally just go, army selected, right-click, 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 right-click. All my medevacs. And now I dodge all the shots. And I just re-unload right here. I go, what's up? Now we're unloading again. Meanwhile, look at this. This drop is still going. He chose not to fully focus on this. So what's the result of that? It fucking killed the base. This is how you pressure Protoss. This is how you need to pressure Protoss. A lot of Terrans that think killing Protoss means always fighting one fight at a time. And let's say all you have is Marine Marauder and you think to yourself, you know what sounds like a good idea? I'm going to run Marine Marauder in one location at Colossus and Disruptors, and Psionic Storm, and Archon, and Charge Lots. Charge Lots get in my way and block me, while every fucking form of AoE Protoss has, which is four of them, 
Templar, Archon, Disruptor, Colossus, just th fucking become like a like a field day of AOE all over my army and all my Marines and Marauders die. And then you're like, God damn, Protoss is hard to beat. And they are if you fight like that. But if you multi-prong them like this, look at the guy, look at his economy. It's starting to crumble because we just killed this base. We're about to kill this base. And as soon as that dies, this Protoss is not going to have a good economy, guys, because look at this. This base is still good. That's one of his three bases that would be remaining. This base sucks. This base is literally nothing now. I have the same problem. Nothing. Not looking great. And looking uh, pretty meh. But this base is looking good. This base is starting up right now, which is going to transfer a bunch of SVs over to here. So we're taking the economy lead right now over our Protoss opponent. Because we're breaking him with drops and making him have to multi-prong. It's really hard for Protoss to multi-prong. <clears throat> Alright. Um, I think we'll do one more game, and then we'll probably wrap up for today's session of B2G Imola. And then we'll maybe try to finish it tomorrow. But we just pushed about 200 MMR today, which is good. Uh, roughly, like 180 or something. And if we win one more, that'll be like 200. And then we have to push 200 more again next time. So that's not bad. Dun, 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 dun. My life for alley oop. Ire. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> All right, we haven't done any mech games. Let's let's finish today off with a mech game. Oh, we'll do a mech game. Yeah. I'll do a battle cruiser build again. Battle cruiser good. Actually, you know what? No, let's not go battle cruiser. Let's do a battle mech game that is very aggressive. No battle cruiser. So what's gonna happen this game, guys? What's gonna happen this game is we're gonna just do oh, what yeah. the the best way to describe it is relentless aggression. That's all it is. Fucking relentless aggression. Thank you very much for the five gifted subs again, Ian. Goddamn boy, got oh, gas journey. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, dude. Relentless aggression, guys. That's what we're doing right now. Additional supply depots required. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to be going Hellion Cyclone, and we're going to periodically grow our Hellion Cyclone numbers as the game progresses more and more and more. And the, the game plan here is going to be conservative oh, play. yeah. Because we're never going to push the Zerg to kill the Zerg. We're just going to push the Zerg to starve the Zerg. We're just going to kill creep and expansions. So we're gonna we're not fucking going right into the main base going time to die, Zerg. No, that's really bad. We're not doing that. <coughs> we're gonna starve him. Starve him. Okay. Let's get our next SCV to go to the natural, get ready to expand. First SCV goes out and scouts the Zerg's main base. Get a Reaper. <coughs> Autobots. Transform and roll out. That's right. That's what we're doing. Optimus Prime build. Not enough minerals. <laughs> uh, I actually never really watched the last couple for Transformers movies. I think I saw like the second one, and I never really watched like the third or the fourth. I don't even know how many there are to be honest. Okay, he's got four drones transferring right now. Very interesting. I'm not sure about that. I'm confused. He's not fully saturated there, so it's whatever. I don't care. Uh, I'm not too worried about it. But yeah, interesting. <clears throat> okay, let's make a factory. Let's make a marine. Now let's make a second gas as we start the factory, because again, this build's super aggressive. And it's also around the time we have a fully saturated mineral line. Let's go ahead and kite Zerglings and kill them. Push towards them, stutter step towards them if he turns around. Okay, if he turns around, we just kill drones instead. Don't freak out though, or like don't focus too much on the Reaper. We definitely don't want to fuck our build up. Let's make sure we don't miss the depots and the uh, don't miss your depots and don't miss your uh, 
<coughs> your production of your base. Okay, so let's run our Reaper into his main. See what's going on. Keep making SCVs. There's another Ling there. What's up, Ling? How you doing? Killed the Zergling. Cool. Killed another Ling. Uh, we didn't see too much. We'll come back in again in a second and check again. Let's make another factory right now. While we regenerate our Reaper. Let's get ready to swap our reactor add-on with our barracks and our factory. This base is fully saturated. Fix that economy up there. And now we're perfect. Up oh, That base is now perfect. Transfer SCVs down to the natural now with our new rally point. Rotate this over. And put now a tech lab barracks next to the factory. The second factory. And we're going to be going for one reactor, one tech lab factory. Which is going to initiate our Hellion Cyclone to start the game off with. Now let's poke his base. Let's see if he's going to all in us. Still mining gas. Do you have a rich one? You have a Baneling Nest, so I'm not that worried. Baneling Nest is less, way less intimidating than a Roach Warren. Uh, also, he has a pretty decent drum count, so I'm not worried at all. Hellions, the reason why I'm not worried is because Hellions can handle Banelings like crazy and Zerglings like crazy. Like, if it was Roaches, it, I need maybe tanks right now. So that's an important scout we just did right there. I would make a one siege tank if this was a Roach Warren. See, watch, now he's attacking me, right? Oh no, he's attacking me, but I got Hellions, guys. Hellions don't give a fuck about Zerglings. What's up, Lings? How you doing? I got Hellions. As you can see, don't give a shit. He did kill a couple of my SCVs, but not that big of a deal. Let's go ahead and make another command center. <clears throat> and keep making Hellions and Cyclones. And let's get a uh, Magfield Accelerator first to upgrade our, uh, our uh, Cyclones. Okay, let's get our wall walled off here. Now let's go ahead and move out. Get the Marine out of here. Marine doesn't need to be in this army. Marine, get the fuck out of here. Raise the depot wall. Repair these depots in case he tries to push us while we're not in our base anymore. And keep making Hellions and Cyclones. Keep making Hellions and Cyclones. Okay, he's, he's actually all inning us. He's busting us right now. Let's go kill him right now. Kill these fucking Banelings. Cool. Okay, let's repair our Hellions again because they just took a bunch of damage. So grab a couple SCVs. Put them in the area, hit auto repair, and let them just do do their do their business. Hey, SCVs, come repair me, please. Thank you. Yeah, let's go ahead and build another factory. Let's transfer a couple more SCVs down to the natural. And let's build another tech lab on the second barracks, which is going to transfer. Like, our barracks right now, all game, is literally made the Reaper and a Marine, and then it's all fucking add-ons for the factories. We can go ahead and kill that Overlord. Lock onto it. with Manually lock onto it with both Cyclones cause, so we can stack our lock-on. And now let's push with our Hellion Cyclone. Let's go ahead and attack across the map right now. Let's also go ahead and... Uh, <clears throat> let's go ahead and get the next upgrade too. Let's get Blue Flame Hellions. And now let's go check for the third bases of Zerg. Now that we're fully saturated, let's get gas. Transfer uh, that factory. Right, so we found them. Take a second for really quickly. Transfer this factory to, this, to the reactor or to the tech lab. And get our command center orbitaled up. Keep making units. Let's start an armory, a couple more depots so we don't supply block, so we can also start upgrades, and now let's go back to attacking. Stack a couple lock-ons on the queen. Stack a lock-on on the queen. Back up, play conservative. Do not fucking overcommit. Let him commit to you. Now, should we, what should we do here? Scan and kill the creep. Do not let him have a base. Do not overcommit. Every time I attack this hatchery, we back up. He's not here, so is he going here? Yep. We play defensive. Now, here, check this out. Move cyclones only, lock onto the hatchery. Notice how I'm not moving my Hellions in harm's way. They cover my Cyclones. Okay, and we're killing the Hatchery. Now back up the, the Cyclones to my Hellions. Kill a bunch of Zerg stuff. Back up. Keep making units while we back up. And kill shit as we run away. Scan ahead on the high ground so we can still see high ground. That way we're not blind. And keep going. It's just conservative harassment. It's fucking annoying for Zerg to deal with. Okay, back up again. Attack and back up again. Go forward. Keep making Hellions and Cyclones. Now look at my money. It's getting kind of high, right? Go ahead and kill this hatchery because we're about to kill it. Now back off for a second. Fix our gas on our natural. Let's take another command center because we have a lot of money. And now let's throw down like another two factories right now. Now once you get to this stage of the game where you're no longer on the early, early, early stage of the game, you don't need to necessarily be super crazy on your... Uh, you don't need to be crazy, crazy, crazy on your barracks making every add-on. It's kind of irrelevant now. It's, it's kind of past that phase of the game. We can make even another factory right now because we have enough gas for it and start our armor upgrade on our Hellion Cyclone. Now let's go check this base. Does he have a base up here? Nope. Okay, let's check the bottom of the map now. Check its creep in this area. Do you have creep, Zerg? Creep? Yes, you do. A little bit. You have a base here too. Let's kill it again. 
Okay, conservative play. Back up, attack. Back up, attack. Scan ahead so we don't lose vision of the cliff. And move forward, poke him a little bit. Back up, attack. Back up. It's a, literally a dance. Now lock onto that hatchery. It's gonna die. Back up. Keep making units. And let's go ahead and make new add-ons on these buildings. Let's get two more tech labs and let's get one more reactor. Let's scan creep while we're at it over here. Okay, look at all this creep. Let's also get a bunch of uh, depots. Okay, he's pushing us really hard. So when he pushes you on creep, that's kind of fucking scary. That's kind of scary when he pushes you on creep. That's why we're working on containing Zerg and crushing the creep. Okay, kill that overlord. We can kill this overlord as well. Let's scan the creep. Keep making units. Keep making hellions. Keep making cyclones. Okay, he's pushing us, so let's back up. Go ahead and attack and back up. Okay, now we see he's going mutas. So if he's going to go mutas, guys, now we have a couple options. We can make some turrets. We can also make some thors. We can actually, we, we could still stay cyclones. You still 100% could stay cyclones. Just to prove it, I will stay cyclones. Just to prove it. You still can. I will 100% tell you if you make a couple thors right now, it fucks the mutas even harder. But <coughs> you don't have to make thors. <coughs> it depends how much control you have at this point in the game. If you have a lot of control, Thors aren't necessarily required. Let's make three turrets for a middle line. Because the mutas are kind of fucking threatening. Okay, let's go ahead and lock on with all my cyclones to these mutas. What's up, mutas? I have a lot of cyclones. And all the mutas are dead. Cyclones are pretty good if you have a lot of them. Keep making cyclones. Now I'll make three more turrets here. Okay, we'll make a planetary over here. We'll drop some mules at this base. We're just kind of recovering really fast and giving ourselves base defense in case this guy continues to push us. <clears throat> Let's keep making SCVs. Transfer a couple more SCVs off this base and make three turrets for this base. And now finally behind this, let's get level two armor because it fucking owns Zerg. And then it also gives us, well, we also want to get building armor so it makes our turrets really hard to kill with the mutas. And now behind this again, let's make another base. Let's make another base. Another fucking base, boys. And now let's push again. Now let's take one Hellion. Let's just do this. One Hellion, go to the bottom. One Hellion, go to the top. I'm going to stay defensive until I see where the Zerg is. Make Cyclones. Make Hellions. And make another reactor in that last factory. Now, how am, I, am I able to spend my money for now? Yeah, it's doing pretty well. I'm, I'm like not really stacking money very hard right now. So doing a great job spending that money right now. Okay, Zerg's got no bases up there. He's got an Overlord up there, which is why there's creep randomly there. And he's got a bunch of creep in this area. So we should probably fucking kill that. Let's go kill this Overlord. Because it's in the middle of nowhere. And we see Zerg has no bases on the bottom either. So does he, he, he did rebuild this base, I think, though. All right, yeah, he did. So he's got that base. Let's go ahead and scan creep up here and reset creep for Zerg all over again. So this is huge. We can lock onto that hatchery with a rapid fire. And now we just starve the Zerg again. Do I need to push into his natural? Fuck no, because he has creep there. I need to wait for the creep to recede. This build is all about control, not about ramming the fucking Zerg down the throat with your attack. Okay, let's go ahead and make another command center. Get more control. Let's take another CC right now. And let's take three SCVs off and go build three turrets. And then pair that with a planetary. Meanwhile, let's push creep in this area. The Zerg fucking hates life right now if you play like this because he can't maintain his base. If the, if the game turns into a position where Terran has a lead at all, it becomes really hard for Zerg to just have a, a, like a foothold in the game. Let's push forward again. Let's kill the next area of creep. Get rid of all this shit. Let's go ahead and scan in this area, see if there's a tumor. There is. Kill it. Is there creep in this area? Is it receding? No, there's no tumor. You can tell because it's constantly receding. There's probably a creep tumor there, though. And the reason why... Oh, there's a fake banelings there. Holy shit. Uh, the reason why we knew that is because the creep isn't receding fast enough. And now that all the creep's dead, now it's going to recede super fucking fast. See how fast it recedes when there's no creep in the area? No tumor in the area? It disappears like crazy. Let's go ahead and scan here and kill another creep tumor. Okay, let's back up right now. Back up. Like, every time he engages, we A-move, back up. A-move, back up. A-move, back up. A-move, back up. And when he backs up enough to where when we have control, you literally can do things like this. You can be like, all right, I'm ready to kill that that uh, that, that hatchery. The hatchery's full health right now. I haven't even touched it. 
And I, I literally can do this. Walk in, rapid fire it, walk away, scan it, and it fucking dies. And the reason why you have to scan is because you lose vision, which means you lose the lock on if you do that so fast like that. But you see how fucking crazy that is? Once you get to this stage, it literally is about starving Zerg. So if we go to the replay now, if we go to the replay, Zerg has a couple creep timbers in this area, a couple creep timbers in this area, and he's got two bases that are mostly mined out right now. So he's got a base. It's mostly mined out. Looking pretty shitty. He's got a base. It's mining out at the moment. Some of these patches are literally 45. 100, uh, 200, 500. The, like the, some of these patches are disappearing right now, right? This base just died. This creep is fucking owned again over here. He's trying to cut, recover it as much as he can, but it's annoying, right? He doesn't even have this base done again yet. This base just died, and a lot of his creep, uh, once again, in this whole area, died again. Notice how we won the game without once pushing into his natural. Not once did we push into that natural. The only time... The only time we pushed into his natural is if we actually killed his entire army and all of his creep up to the natural, and now we can just push the natural. It is so fucking stupid when people have bases and a creep on the outside of the map for Zerg, and they just go, you know what? I'm going to dive the natural, even though I just killed that base, and Zerg might have this base and might have that base, and a fuckload of creep in this area, and you just go, time to push the natural. And then Zerg surrounds you with an army and kills your army because you, do you dove way too deep on creep, and you cannot kite properly with this army on creep. This army is all about kiting. So then you lose your army. And you're like, ah, oh, shit. Well, now I lost my army, which is expensive to replace as well. Because cyclones are ridiculously expensive. And you have to restart all over again from no cyclones and make them slowly out of your factories again. And then you give Zerg all this control of the game again. And Zerg actually has a foothold in the game to, to now fight you again. So <clears throat> if you just don't overcommit and you just literally skirt the edge, skirt the edge, skirt the edge, skirt the edges over and over. And like you literally, you literally play Cyclone Hillian like this. If this is the map right here, and if this is Zerg on the map right here, okay? If this is Zerg on the map right now. Okay, if that's Zerg, we do not fucking play Terran like this. How do you get a big eraser on this shit? I can't remember. Is it a big brush or something? I don't I don't remember how to get a big eraser. Whatever though. Like we don't we don't we don't want to kill creep like this. We don't want to push into Zerg like this. Alright, Zerg, I'm coming for you. And then go like this. Alright, here we go. And now I, I've pushed this part. Now I'm gonna go like this. Alright, fuck your main, Zerg. Let's go all the way into the main base. And really try to get rid of the main now. No, that's fucking horribly stupid to push like that with Hellion Cyclone. You do not play like that with Hellion Cyclone. Makes no fucking sense. Because you have all this fucking area that you dive into his base that you're risking, you're risking your army to die. Because all these units over here could run into you on creep and fucking kill you. So you don't want to fight like that. You literally fight creep like this with Hellion Cyclone. You go like this. Hey, Zerg, what's up? Hey, Zerg, how you doing? Hey, what's up, Zerg? Fuck you, Zerg. Fuck your creep, Zerg. Yeah, yeah hell yeah. You like creep? Why well, I like killing creep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh-huh. That's what I do. I'm Terran, and I kill creep with Hellion Cyclone. I literally semicircle your base to death over and over and over and over and over and over until you have nothing left. And as soon as you have nothing left, you have no map control, and all this open area that was there before, this area that was there before, this area that was there before, that is now the red zone for Zerg, is now territory that you can control with off of creep, and you can just run Zerg to fucking death by kiting properly. So... You need to play that way if you uh, are playing Hellion Cyclone. The thing people fuck up in Hellion Cyclone all the time is that they just push to death. Like right in the fucking base. <coughs> oh yeah. Hopefully that makes sense. We never once push the natural. Not once this whole game. Which indirectly means I also never push the main base. I just starved the Zerg out on the sides of the map. And look at resources lost in this game right now. It's fucking crazy efficient because I never fight on creep. The only time I ever fight on creep is if I'm on the edge of creep and I'm always ready to run off of it. I never fight on creep. <clears throat> so hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. But I am going to wrap it up today for, uh, for the Terran video today. 
I will be uh, back again tomorrow. To tomorrow is Sunday, right? No, sat. What? It's Friday today? Okay, tomorrow's Saturday. So tomorrow, Saturday, I'll be back again for sure. Um, I thought tomorrow was Sunday. But uh, well, I'll say for sure. But I can't always say for sure. There's a chance I might not stream. There's always a little chance. But I will see you guys the next stream I do, which is probably going to be tomorrow. Very high chance of it. I have no intentions of taking it off. But I've been feeling really shitty a lot of the time lately. So who fucking knows? Uh, but uh, the next stream we do, probably tomorrow, I will finish off Terran Diamond 2. We definitely made a lot of progress today. And we'll continue on that progress tomorrow. So thanks for watching, everyone on YouTube. And... Uh, and Twitch, with Twitch people, I'll talk to you in a minute though. But people on YouTube, don't worry. This video is not going to end for you. It's going to continue for you because I'm not going to upload it until it's all done anyways. You're like a Netflix series on YouTube. So again, you guys wait like literally two seconds and we're fucking back. And we're going right to the end of Diamond 2 to Diamond 1. All right. See you guys in a couple seconds. See ya. I mean, see you in a second. Not really see ya, but hey. <laughs> hey, welcome back. Told you it would only be a couple seconds. How you doing, guys? Uh... Part two, continuation of Diamond 2 continues right now. And we're starting with an opponent, TVT, name opponent. Oh my god. He's got the Battlecruiser icon. Let's do this. Oh yeah. Um, Alright, just to jump back into it on a fresh slate here for, you know, with Twitch with another day. I know it's, a, you know, you won't need to video, but yeah. Let's, let's just, uh, let's do a macro build. Let's do a macro build this game. Uh, I uh, somehow fucked my SCV up a little bit. I didn't make it right away. So, yeah. I, I just wanted to build it when I have 100 minerals. It's all good. Okay, let's go ahead and stack our close patches. Now they are stacked properly. Hell yeah. Okay, let's get our gas with our Barrack Sola. Let's take this next SCV and run it across the map because we want to scout. Uh, if this guy's going for a proxy, is he going for a standard build? Is he going really greedy? What's he doing? Okay, and then we'll make one more SCV before this barracks is done. What's going on? He's scouting me with an SCV as well. It's all good. Get a Reaper, get ready to take our natural. And we're all looking great. So, natural, or uh, orbital command, Reaper's on the way. And at his base, we see a depot and a, a second depot already, which means there's probably double gas really fast, which is fine. To be fair, I don't know why I'm doing the build that I'm doing. It's okay. I actually should be doing what he's doing as well. I, I, I fucking forgot what I'm doing for a second. It's okay. We'll just do a one racks expand this game. It's not a big deal. If you go for a one, so uh, I'll show you guys how to play this out, right? So I should have actually been going for double gas. I don't know why I didn't do that. It's my bad. Sorry. Because I wanted to go for Reapers and Hillians and that whole build with a Raven and a Cyclone. That build's super good. It's very standard, very easy to use. I want that to be your standard. And we would have done it if I was paying attention. But since we kind of messed it up, what we need to do is we need to make a bunker. And the reason why you want to make a bunker is because we're still going to go Cyclone Raven. We are still going to go Cyclone Raven and to like tank Marine Medevac. But now we're going to play defensive and we're going to make a bunker because if we don't make a bunker, our opponent has a big opportunity to fucking own us now. Because uh, he'll have Hellion Reaper and we won't if he, go if he goes for that build. And if we don't have Hellion Reaper and he does, Marines don't beat that. Marines lose there because Hellion Reaper scales better than Marine does early game like this when you have no Simpack and no combat shield and stuff like that. But now if we have a bunker, things are different. We can now actually deal with it. And now we're going to fully fill up our bunker to the fourth unit and then we're going to make a reactor at this Rex. Behind this, let's go ahead and get our starport. Let's get a reactor. And then we'll make a tech lab with our next little bit of gas as soon as we get it right now. Okay, let's go ahead and make an orbital command at our natural because the natural is now done. 
So we're still getting Cyclones, and we're still getting the Raven about as early as we normally would. The only difference is, is we're opening up with a Bunker and a Command Center rather than Hellion Reaper. So we're still getting a Cyclone right now. <laughs> okay, start making Marines again. Let's get it. And there you go, right? There's the Hellions and the Reaper. So now let's get out of the bunker and let's go towards them. Okay, so we, we won that fight only because we had a bunker. It's the only reason why we won that fight. We can stutter step towards the Hellion, try and kill it. Nice. If we didn't, the reason why that made sense is because he ran past the bunker and took a bunch of free damage to us. He took a bunch of damage while running past the bunker. So, uh, all that means for us is that we get we, we get to start the fight off by weakening his army before the fight really has to start. Because by the time we jump out of the bunker to chase him in the back of our base, his army already only has like 50% hit points or like 60% hit points because they took a bunch of damage running past the bunker. That's why that makes such a big difference there. And if I, if again, if I just had those units standing in the open, if he shows up and attacks them and grenades them and shoots them with Hellions and shit, I'm gonna, all my units are gonna die and he's gonna have Reaper Hellion left over, that'll kill all my SCVs. So you have to make a bunker if you skip Hellion Reaper. It's, uh, it'll never work otherwise. Okay, let's go ahead and make a, uh, barracks at this Raven spot. Make a barracks to replace it. Have the starport make a reactor. And now, we don't know what his follow-up is. We just know he went for an aggressive Hellion Reaper uh, poke into my base. So let's go ahead and scan him now and just see what he's doing. Because th now we, don't, we have no idea. We're not really scouting very well because our Reaper is also dead and we never really scouted the map. Okay, he's going, it looks like, Tank Marine. Same build as us. He's literally doing the exact same thing as us. So now we don't have to question what's going on anymore. He's got a natural. Uh, and yeah, our builds are very, 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 very similar. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, uh, keep making our stuff. And now, we can, our natural is getting really well saturated, so let's go ahead and take our gas. We have more SCVs coming back to the middle line after they make a depot. And more SCVs popping out of the command centers. More SCVs coming off the base over here after they build these things. So we're really looking really good on economy. Now we can go ahead and get our engineering base so that we can go into upgrades. And we can start making starport units as well as our tanks and stuff like that. <laughs> Just spread some tanks out a little bit around our base. He might even drop us, which is, it could happen. It's all good. Let's get our third base going to our third. Let's get upgrades at the engineering base. And now that we're getting a third base and we're getting really well saturated here, let's go ahead and also uh, grab our uh, extra racks here because we're going to have way too much money if we don't do this. We can literally go up to like an extra like three or four racks. Let's just make four racks. We're going to get a lot of money if we don't do this and just going to sit there in our bank account that we can't spend. Okay. Keep making units, and now that we have, uh, now that we have our third base is just landed. We can land some mules at it. We can transfer SCVs to it. Uh, we need one more to go up there. Let's have one more build an armory first, and then it'll go up. Shift click the middle line afterwards. And yeah, uh, we're just chilling for a moment. Nothing too crazy. Go and make some more depots because we don't want a supply block. Keep making marines, keep making tanks, and then we're making vikings. And we're making vikings because we're, we're not going to try and drop this guy. We're just going to have enough medevacs to heal the stim pack. I'll talk about that a bit more when this game's over, but the logic behind what it is, is if you make only a couple medevacs and you start making viking, is it gives you air control with the viking to kill his medevacs if he just goes mass medevacs. But obviously if we don't have a lot of medevacs, we can't really drop properly anymore. But if we have control with viking tank it actually allows us to push really heavily in the front of his base because we can use our vikings to control the air because tanks can shoot further than they, than they can see so the vikings give the tanks vision to see further than they can normally by just having your tank itself so it maximizes your tank usage like crazy okay let's grab like a marine and let's go attack towards the the middle of the map a little bit let's give ourselves a bit of a warning if he attacks us because we don't know where he is, right? We have no idea where he's located right now. Let's go and get combat shield as well. Get ready to start 2-2 in a second here. 
So we should probably prioritize that really quickly. That's an important upgrade to use. Keep making SCVs though. Do not stop making SCVs because we're not done yet. There we go. We got two two upgrades on the way. We got level one tank weapons on the way. Keep making tanks. Keep making bio as much as we can. And you can see now we're actually spending our money a lot better uh, because we're actually, um, you know, we have enough money to spend it properly. Okay, SCV count's currently 73. We're looking pretty good. Let's make a couple more depots. And we're, right now we're running out with a Marine and we're checking the map a little bit. We're trying to see where his bases are. He has a sensor tower there, so it's very likely that he's got a base there, which is all good. Make a couple more depots again. Okay. Do you have any bases up here? Let's go ahead and scan once right here. Just to get an idea what he looks like, right? So he's got tanks, he's got Raven, he's got Cyclone, he's got Marines. He's got very similar army to us. Uh, he's just, I don't see any medevac here, but he might have more units on the other side. Okay, and uh, yeah, there's no base there. So we know for a fact he's on at least three bases. Uh, he might have a fourth command center like we do somewhere else uh, waiting to be made. But yeah, so far so good for us. At this point now, our money's getting a bit higher. I would say now let's make another factory. Let's make a couple more barracks. And the reason why we're doing this is because now we can make even more tanks with uh, a second factory so we can replace tanks really fast. And we you know, we want to increase our barracks count a little bit because we have a fuckload of money. Transfer a bunch of SCVs off this base down to the new base we just took. We can now make this a planetary and we're done making SCVs. And now that we're maxed, I would say now would be a great time to go attack. Let's start level two weapons and three threes on the way. But let's go ahead and throw one more scan at him. And so here's one interesting thing to do, okay? I highly recommend you take your Raven and you either hit like Alt-2, Alt-3, whatever. Get it out of your fucking main army because what happens is if you don't do that, it will overwrite your army's command card with your uh, your stim pack. So it makes micring harder. We'll talk about, we'll break that down more in the game. And we'll talk about what I'm going to do. I'm going to go like this. Three, move, make some turrets. One, move, stim pack, tab, siege. Okay, so three, move. One, attack, move. Three, make turret, turret, turret. Turret, one stim pack, tab, siege my tanks. And now we just took an amazing fight. That was a super good fucking fight for us. We can back up to our tanks really fast. Make any units that would have died, possibly. We can add all these add-ons into these buildings we just uh, made. Get our 3-3 upgrade started. And now we can scan forward and we can progress forward again. Now I don't have any more... I have no more Raven energy. That's okay. Let's go ahead and just... Um, Split our bio up a little bit. Scan him one more time so I can see where he is. One, A move, stim pack. As soon as I get close, tab siege. Now we can stutter step towards him because we just took a great fight. Now back up a little bit because we're getting really far away from our tanks. Let's do it again. So get my army together. We can scan one more time, get his army and get revealed. Spread my army out a little bit. And one, A move, stim. Tab Siege. <laughs> yeah, then we have a new army over here as well, just rebuilding with all of our new production that we have, right? We can transfer SCVs as well that need to be transferred. Put them on a new base up here. Make another command center. Just make it out the gold, whatever. Make it while we have it. Transfer some SCVs around that need to be transferred to any new base. And now our army is kind of mostly dead here. Uh, there's really nothing left. Um, you know, like marine-wise, they're all dead. But that's okay. We have a brand new army coming in to reinforce right now. We can just sit here for a second. With tanks that are sieged. It's all good. If they, if they end up dying, it's still a decent trade for us because they're doing a great job. Let's see. We, we end up still not dying there. Now our new army's arriving. We're still maxed out again. Okay, so now... We know where he is. We know his army is in the high ground here. I have two options to deal with this. I can either zone him with tanks or I can break this with tanks. Let's pick the zoning option just because, again, you can do either side. Let's back up a little bit and seize your tanks. Now, notice how if he comes down the ramp, my tanks are going to fucking obliterate his army. Now, let's go ahead and kill these rocks really fast. And the, re the only reason why I say that is because if I run, these tanks kind of block the ramp there. And if I run around, we see he just siege tanks as well. And I don't want to walk into that, right? I do not want to walk into that. So now let's go around this way. Let's spread my bio out. And let's fucking 
Stim pack down this command center right now. Stim go. A move, A move, A move, A move, A move. Stutter step. And now look what he comes out to fight. My tanks are still sieged, zoning him out. Now we can A move down there to assist our tanks. Stim pack a second time. And we're good to go. Now again, what I could have done, what I could have done is I could have also instead of sieging my tanks like I did right here, we didn't have to do that. Okay, what I could have done as well is I could have either sieged my tanks like right here, a little bit further away from the ramp. Instead of like right here, I could have done it like right here in this area. And I could have started sieging his planetary. But the thing about that though is, is it's a little bit, you need to be aware of that. Because if you, if you siege like this and you use your tanks on the planetary, if your opponent sieges his tanks at the, at the edge of your tank's range, and he just repairs his command center, there's a chance he might be able to repair long enough while his army engages your army. And if your tanks are not shooting his army, and instead they're just focused on killing the command center, because they will do that unless you re-command them to kill his army, like, they'll just stay on the command center and shoot the planetary the whole time while they're dying to marines charging forward and shooting them and tanks sieging on you. That's kind of scary. So, if we don't if we don't micro our tanks, we could lose oh, all of our tanks. That would yeah. suck. Uh, uh, Giyami, thank you for the, the six-month resub. Thanks, dude. Uh, so, yeah, that is something that you, um, you need to be uh, aware of, right? You want to make sure that your tanks don't all just die while you're trying to kill a planetary. Because the thing is, is even though we could kill, we could do more damage to a planetary faster if our tanks and our marines are shooting it, you can still repair it with all the SCVs here. And if my army is dying as I'm attacking it because I'm only attacking the planetary and he's currently killing my entire army, best case scenario for him, the command center barely doesn't die. And because he kills my DPS off of the command center, he's able to actually repair through it. And I lose my entire army for nothing. Or, uh, still uh, good for the Terran, but like okay for us, but still overall, or it's still bad for us. But think about it like this what if my army ends up focusing the command center the whole time because I sieged on that? Because this is why I didn't do this, because this is the harder option that you need to be more aware of. But now let's say, instead of just dying while trying to kill the planetary and the planetary doesn't even die, what if I actually kill the planetary? But in the time it takes me to kill the fucking planetary being repaired by all these SCVs, what if he does enough damage to my army with his army that he actually wins the fight? So he loses the command center, but overall his army kills mine at the end of, the, at the end of all of it. Like he has enough units left over by the time the planetary is dead to win the fight in the end. That's still bad for us. So it's something you have to realize that it, it would be great to attack a planetary without losing any marines, right? That's nice. However, the only way that works properly is if the second he engages us and comes within range, we immediately tell tanks, hey tanks, relocate your attack, go to his fucking army, stop shooting the planetary. The planetary does not need to even be engaged right now. So what we could do then is we could use this as a bait mechanic to go, hey, come attack me. I'm killing your planetary. And the second he engages, I'm not currently in fully engaged on the planetary. I'm just slowly whittling the planetary down. And when he engages, I relocate all my tanks to attack his army. And then I, re I, I now engage his army with my army. So I force him to engage us. That would be appropriate to do it that way. It makes no fucking sense, though, to ignore his army and just attack the planetary. So, again, you have a couple options oh, like we talked. I just told you the two yeah. options there. Thank you, Tonster, for the three months. Great series. Love it, man. Yeah, thank you, dude. The two options are you siege out of range of the planetary, so your tanks are just ready at a moment's notice to attack his fucking tanks and bio, which is going to give you good trades. While I can then kill his planetary with my marines, that's okay. Uh, it's Because I'm, I'm, again, getting good trades there regardless. Or... I siege in range of the planetary and do not commit my marines to anything and just wait and guard my tanks with my marines until he tries to attack my army with his army. That's what we should be doing either way to play really safe. You should not fully commit to a planetary with everything and then not relook at your army to attack his army because all seriously, there's so many games that you'll see. I've already, by the way, I've already done it to a couple players as well in the series, if you've noticed before, where they will fully commit to a planetary, I will repair it, and they lose their whole army while I kill them off my planetary. And this is like a, this is like a big fucking tank. Like for instance, think about it like this. Think about it like this. Imagine. Think about it like this. Imagine if you have a big ass meat shield 
Think about like a traditional game, like that's like a you have a tank, a healer, and a fucking uh, like a tank, a healer, and like DPS. Like it's like an MMO or like an ARPG or some shit like that. Think about it like this: What if I have a big ass tank in the front that's just like get, eat, gonna eat all the damage, and then behind it, I have a lot of like really squishy damage units that could die really easy, super easy. And then let's say behind that, I have a lot of squishy healers that could also die really easy. Okay. And now my opponent has an army that is similar to my army over here behind my tank. And if my opponent, let's just say my opponent were to go, you know what? What if I kill your squishy stuff with my squishy stuff? And like suddenly we can have a way better trade here where we can both lose a lot of supply. Which is a better choice. Or what if my opponent focuses all of his little units just like what we have uh, right here. Just like what we have right here. He has the same thing on the other side over here. And what if he decides, you know what, I'm just going to fucking focus everything I have into your tank. Everything I have is going to attack your tank. Meanwhile, everything we have is going to attack his DPS behind it. Like, it makes no fucking sense. Because all this is, the big black circle in the middle, it's going to absorb the damage like crazy. And then the guy is going to lose army while he focuses on killing a big fucking blob that just absorbs damage like crazy. You don't want to do that. It makes no sense. Like, you don't sit there and attack a tank in the front of the of the base here. Like, if, if this tank... So, let's just... Uh, we'll do this one more time. Like, let me, like just, I'll give you one more quick explanation. It'll probably make more sense. If I have a lot of damage behind this tank... And let's say my damage of my army over here does 2,000 DPS. Okay? It has 2,000 DPS. And each unit... Each unit... 55 HP. Overall, they do 2,000 DPS, and each each unit does has 55 HP. So every time one of them dies, which is super easy, because they have low HP, you take some of the DPS off because that unit's no longer doing DPS. And now let's say this big thing in the middle has uh, 40, or 50, let's say there's 55 DPS, and it has 2,000 HP. You know what that means? This thing is not a threat. This thing is a fucking meat shield. It means it shouldn't be our focus. This, all these little units that do way more fucking damage should be our fucking focus. So that's that's exactly what I'm telling you here. When we should not be prioritizing the planetary, we should be thinking of a way to prioritize his army. But if he doesn't want to attack us, we could then still kill the planetary because getting some damage is better than no damage. But let's not throw our army away in a stupid way, right? It makes no sense. So this is where a lot of people get, don't understand how to set up a fight. And like I said before, if we want to use the tanks, we bait the command center with the tanks and wait for him to engage and then fuck him up. And then once we win the fight, then we go forward. Or if we don't want to bait the uh, if we um, if we don't want to bait the fight by shooting him with the planetary, we could bait the we, we could uh, we we could you know have the marines engage the planetary by themselves. And get them on the planetary to, to kill the planetary. But we have the tank siege in a way where we're shooting the edge of his choke point. So when he runs down the ramp, we're getting already sieged shots onto his army super effectively. Like, we're just giving ourselves the better advantage both ways. We're not over committing to killing a fucking tank while our army dies to all of his DPS in a stupid way. Because our army is really squishy, right? Makes no fucking sense to do that. I hope that makes sense. But yeah, see, notice how, I, again, I siege. And look at my tank's radius. And as soon as he comes down the ramp, he's going to get pounded by the fucking tank. So watch what happens when he when he engages us. Look at what happens when he engages us. He tries to come down. He's like, okay, well, he's killing my planetary now. So what does he do? He unseages. And he's like, time to engage. And now look at his army as the fight starts. Look at his army when the fight starts. He just lost all of his fucking marines except for three that took the initial engage. And his tanks, one of his tanks also already died. This is amazing. Like, our tanks are fucking destroying his army as he tries to engage this. This is already good for us. Because we already killed his base with our marines, which is nice. But we're also fucking his army up at the same time because we didn't overcommit to this. This is going to die either way. I don't need to worry. This is not the focus. This is the focus. Because when this is dead, I could then kill this and this and this with no retention. But he's had time to still make an army because I haven't killed... I killed some of his army over here, but he fell back to more army. And he's like sieging... Like he has like seven tanks, guys. Or six tanks or some shit. 
He had one, four tanks here, one one there. So he has six tanks. That's a lot of fucking tanks. That's not a pushover army. But we're, we're fucking him over like crazy right here. And suddenly, we have a much better fight because our tanks are just pounding his army like crazy. So again, we bait the tanks. Or we, we, we baited the marines to get our tanks to get engagements there. Uh, the way better initiation of that fight. And now our tanks have way more damage onto his army. Uh, rather than having my tank shoot a planetary while he shoots me in the back and then my tanks just explode and die. And I don't do any damage to his army, right? Makes no fucking sense to do that. So, I hope that makes sense. I hope it makes sense. And the rest of this game, it was super passive. This is probably one of the most standard games you'll ever play. I guess the last thing we'll talk about is the opener of this game because we haven't talked too much about that. Uh... I was gonna, I, I think I was gonna, I was talking about the engagements too, right? Like I kind of, I, I kind of did walk you through the engagements though, which was uh, uh, the Raven thing. I'll talk about that one more time really fast. Uh, so I will remember to talk about the Raven once I have my full army, because it's 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 got something called unit priority. Okay, so we put four units into a bunker. Okay, this is what we call like command center fast build. This our command center is gonna be faster than his because we didn't double gas opener like he did. But now he's got faster gas than we do, so he's going to have faster Reapers. He's going to have Hellions. He's doing the traditional Terran build, okay? This is very standard what for what Terrans do. We did Bunker into reactors, or into Marines, Cyclone, Raven, and then into Marine Tank Medivac, Viking. So look at what happens when he runs by the Bunker. Look what happens when he runs by the Bunker. This is why you have to make a Bunker. If I didn't have a Bunker here, think about this for a second. I have three Marines and a Reaper. Okay, think about this for a second. Watch this. We have three Marines. Each Marine has 45 HP. So 45 times 3 is uh, 135. And then... Now we also plus 60 to that because we have a Reaper. So let's just talk about HP alone, okay? So our army overall has 195 HP. Inside this bunker, if they were not in the bunker, they have less than half of what a bunker gives them. This is fucking huge. This is humongous. Okay. Now, look at our opponent's army. 90, 180, plus 180 again. Our opponent's army, so because you have 90 per Hellion, and then you have a 60 per Reaper, and he's got three Reapers, so it's 180 plus 180, which is 360. So we have an army that is 195 value versus 360 value. He's going to beat our ass. Not only that, but Marines do less DPS than a Reaper, and they do less DPS than a Hellion. So if we're not even... We're already, we already know we're way lower in HP than his army is right now. But also, if we if we also think about the amount of damage the units would do, Reapers do faster DPS than Marines do when Stimpak does not exist. And then Hellions have the ability to splash damage as well, which could, in theory, make Hellions do way more fucking DPS than Marines. So this is a losing fight if we have no bunker here. But how do we fix that? Simply make a bunker and want, again, watch what happens when he runs past the bunker. And now, if he engages that bunker, these units will never break that bunker before they die. These units will DPS fast enough to, to kill these uh, red units before my bunker dies easily. Fucking easily. And now, as he runs past the bunker, what happens? He loses a fucking Hellion. He straight up lost a Hellion as he runs past the bunker. And then one of the Reapers also takes a bunch of damage. And another Reaper almost dies. So, you see what I mean? Like, see how the effective this bunker is? If he runs up the ramp and goes, oh, there's a bunker, let's run away. It protects our base. And if he runs past the bunker, he gets fucking owned. And he can't do anything about my units in the bunker right now. And now, remember how we said that it was 195 HP for us versus 360 for him? Well, we still have 195. But now, remember how I said he has 360? Let's do it now. Let's look at it now. What does he have? He's got 90 plus 60, which is 150, plus 2, which is 152, plus 28, which is 180, uh, right? Yeah. He's got 180 now. So guess what? He run, he ran past the bunker, and now I have HP lead. And not only that, not only do I have HP lead, he still has DPS lead right now because three, three Reapers and a Hellion are more DPS than one Reaper and three Marines without stim pack and without combat shield. He still has more DPS than me, but here's the problem. These fucking units in the front are about to die, so his DPS is going to get snapped off really easy. So this is a super fucking easy win for us. Because as soon as we pop out of that bunker, his units are going to die insanely fast. Dead, dead, dead. And now we still have... We, in the time it took us to kill three Reapers, all we lost was one Reaper. 
because his units were on the verge of death, so their DPS just disappears. Now it's one Hellion versus three Marines. Now this is no longer at all advantageous for the Hellion. He'll definitely die here. So this is a super good fight for us. So you, again, if you go for a build that is one Reaper into Marines and Reactor, you have to do two things. Number one, make a bunker. And number two, make enough Marines to fill up the bunker before you make a Reactor. You have to do that. Hey Vibe, why don't you build the bunker to hug the CC if you want to keep the SCV safe? Good question, what you doing? The reason why we don't build a bunker near the command center is because if I build a bunker near the command center, think, I want you to think about this for a second, okay? A how, what is a bunker's attack radius? Is it like this big? No, it's not that big, right? It's only like this big. Uh, about like this big. That's about the size of a bunker. Uh, it's hard to get a perfect box in every angle. That's about the size. If you rounded off the corners and they weren't diagonal, that's about the size of a bunker's attack radius right there. Okay. Now, what if I put the bunker, like, right here? Or what if I put the bunker, like, right there? Or what if I put the bunker, like, right here? Or what if I put the bunker, like, right there? Every time I move the bunker, it creates an opening in my base. And if I put the bunker away from the ramp and I put it closer towards my SCVs, you know what he could do with his Hellions then? He could go like this. All right, I'll go in here now. Now, obviously, I have a depot that could be raised, but what he could do if I ha what if I have to get out of my bunker to get him off of my depot? He could actually kill my depot, and he could kill SCVs that come to repair it. And if I get out of the bunker, to like if I'm over here, if I'm over here, whatever. If I get out of the bunker to come get off, get him off my fucking depot, guess what happens again? I'm going to lose my fucking units that get out of the bunker because I don't have a bunker anymore. I can't initiate with a bunker now. And I don't get that damage when he goes up the ramp. So he has full fucking HP units that are attacking my depot. If I go closer to the SCVs. And then if I just sit there and let him do it, he could break this depot and then break into my main and kill SCVs before I actually have more units. Because there's not a... There's not a... Like... There is not a lot of time that he has before I have more units, but at the same time, it's not going to take a ton of time either to go through a fucking depot, especially if it can't be repaired. Uh, <clears throat> the point is, the, that's the first reason. It just exposes more of our base, okay? It exposes more of our base. And is it, it, does it, am I saying that you can't make a bunker? No, you can make a bunker over here if you want to. You just have to realize that this fucking depot needs to be raised the second he goes in there, and you're going to have to hope to God that your units spawn before the fucking Italians break the bunker and the Reapers break the bunker, or break the, the depot. So that more units can greet them on the other side, and then you can actually now have more units than he does before he breaks through this, and then you defend it. Or, uh, again, it, it, the, the last thing we'll say about this is the reason why we have the bunker on the ramp is because it gives me engagement before the engagement really starts. Okay? So, if my opponent decides he wants to go to my base, look what happens to his army. Notice how? He's getting shot the second he go approaches the ramp. He's he's committing now to damage. He didn't know that my bunker's here. He had no idea. I mean, he can assume my bunker's here if he knows I'm not going to make multiple Reapers, but he has no fucking idea where my bunker is. So, in the process of him just wanting to scout my natural and see if this is going to be a bad or good idea... He's already taking damage. And this puts a lot of pressure on your opponent to now go, fuck. Do I want to commit to this or do I not want to commit to this? Like, what do I want to do? Do I, do I want to commit or not commit? It guarantees we're going to get damage on his army. Okay. So we have guaranteed damage here. And if he wants to turn around, he's going to have weaker units. But if he wants to commit to it, Yo, fly he's going to lose units. For the 25. Much love. That's right. You'll fire. Thank you for the 25. Much love, dude. You forgot to say dude. <laughs> Thanks for the 25, man. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, it, it just guarantees we're going to get damage done. Because I think you're looking at it the wrong way again. You're looking at it the wrong way. Where, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, guys. Most Terrans, most Terrans, okay, who would see this, <coughs> would probably not commit to this. If they're... I feel like some Terrans that are YOLO as fuck will, but most Terrans will not commit to this bunker and run past the bunker. And the reason why is because it's... Why, why Vibe? Why does that make any sense? Because the amount of damage that he's going to do to me right now is less than the amount of damage he's going to take. And it, how am I making this... Am I pulling this out of my ass? 
How am I making sure you understand this? These units are not free. As a result of him making these units, I have not only more SCVs currently, which is very normal at this point in the game. It should be a little bit, and it should only get bigger because... I have a fucking orbital down at my natural that is pumping SCVs right now, and he has a building command center at his natural. This is not free. This takes gas. I went for the non-gas version of this, of faster command center. So I'm already pumping SCVs, and he's got another 20-ish seconds to go, like 19 exactly, on the command center, and he's got 25 to go on making an orbital. Okay? So he's got a lot of room oh, to catch up with the SCVs. Yeah. Now, if this guy does not kill, like, three or four... Thank you for training me to be a cheeky random player. Hell yeah, good job, dude. Thank you for the sub, uh, Pedereta. Thank you. Good job on the randoms. If he doesn't kill, like, four SCVs here to make up the difference of time discrepancy here compared to my command center here, he is straight up behind going in the rest of the game now if he engages the bunker. However, if this was a Terran player who was maybe more conservative with their playstyle, they could do something like this. Oh, fuck, there's a bunker there. You know what I could do then? Think about this. This is a higher level Terran response. What if he scouts the bunker and he takes guaranteed damage from walking into the bunker and then immediately goes, turn around. All that means is I get free damage on one of the Hellions. He turns around. And then think about this for a second. What if he sends these Reapers into my main base? And then I have to now have make a choice. Do I want three Reapers to be in my base just doing chaotic damage to me? Or do I want to unload some of my bunker? What if what if my response was to unload my bunker to go deal with those Reapers in my base now? And then what if these Hellions, once, my, once, the, once he saw my Marines in my base coming down to deal with the Reaper, he then drives the Hellions again with an unloaded bunker back into the natural? That could happen if I unload my bunker. Or what if he runs these Reapers into my base... And then I'm waiting for my units to spawn. And what if I have to stall for a second for like my cycle and my next Marines to pop out? And I'm starting to take a little bit of damage, but let's say I don't unload my bunker, which still zones at the Hellions, but now the Reapers are a bit fucking annoying in the main base. That could totally happen. There are options here still for the fucking Terran player who's going Reaper Hellion. He does not have to engage the bunker, but the thing is, is if it's on the ramp, it means he has to get shot by it to see if this is a good or bad idea. If he wants to push the ramp. Now, the reason why as well, why if someone out there might be like, well, why doesn't he just do that from the beginning then? Why doesn't he just go Reapers in the main and Hillions in natural? Because he doesn't know I'm doing this build. He has no fucking idea. Like, he has not fully seen... The, all he knows is that we both scouted a Reaper opener, which could turn into... Uh, actually, what did he... Did he, he never saw... Yeah, he never saw... He never scouted shit, right? He literally didn't give himself enough information. If he would have watched my gas better, he would have had a better idea. Like, for instance, my, my vision, I saw he went double gas early, right? I know he was going double gas. He had no idea I was going double gas. So for all he knows, what if I have Reaper Hellion on the ramp, and he sends just Hellions into the, into the natural, and they die to Reaper Hellion, and then he sends just Reapers into the main, and then those die to Reaper Hellion of mine. You have to, this is why scouting is so important, right? But again, the reason, the, the final reason why, oh, uh, to re yeah. repeat myself one more time, why the bunker on the ramp is a good idea is because it puts pressure on your opponent to make them take damage to then also make them make a split second decision as to what the fuck they want to go for. And let's see how much damage we absorb. Let's just watch this for a second. How much damage do I actually take here? Go forward. Get the Reapers in my base. He goes right by it. The fucking uh, a mule dies. A second mule dies. And he kills one SCV. He killed one SCV there. Thank you for the gifted sub, Flyrev. Much love. He killed one SCV. Now, if you're if someone who says, oh, man, that was uh, worth it for the other guy and because he killed one SCV, I would say, fuck no, that was not worth it. But now, if you're someone who says that was worth it because he killed two mules, I'd say, yeah, losing two mules definitely is not great for us. It's not great for us. But I still overall would say that was overall good for us because, and here's why, even though we lost two mules, I, th I still think it's better for us. The reason why I think it's better for us is because as a result of all of this, I have more supply. I have more workers. 
and I have more energy on my command centers faster to replace mules that died because he still doesn't have a fucking second orbital. So even though I lost two mules, I'm generating mules at twice the pace that he is right now because he does not have two orbitals, generating double energy. So it's so, the fact that we just lost two mules is not the biggest deal. It's annoying a little bit. But what if I would have saved those mules and just didn't drop them right away? What if I would have dropped those mules initially in my main base because I would have known he was going Reaper Hellion because we knew that and I didn't have to drop them right away? You have plenty of options to not get fucked like that. And there's not a middle line to really protect anyways. Like there was one SCV on the middle line when he first showed up and two mules. And now it's going up really fast because we're making two SCVs at a time, right? So yeah, that's bunker on the ramp. Way better. I hope that ex ex uh, answers your question. Bunker back behind here makes no fucking sense because you let him control all your natural then in other places, which is horrible. What if your bunker's here and he just goes like this? What if, like, think about this for a second. What if my bunker's here and he goes like this? Right there, he goes down, and he doesn't even go here. What if he goes like this? Oh, there's a bunker right there. I'm going to go like this. Now he's here in the back behind my middle line, out of range of my bunker. What if I put my bunker here and he goes like this? He goes at my base and he goes, oh, there's a bunker down there. And he goes like this. And now he's up here. Again, you have to understand the radius of a bunker is not literally the whole fucking screen, right? It's like that big. So if I put it somewhere else and it exposes the ramp because now it's over here, that's going to be a fucking problem because now we can go around it in other places. So yeah, again, I hope that answers your question. It's a good question. It's one of the uh, honestly, I'm gonna, I'm just, the reason why I talked about it so much is that's that's one of those questions where my first initial thought process was honestly like don't ever fucking put your bunker anywhere but here. But, and then trying to calmly explain why <laughs> without getting frustrated, because <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's just one of those things where people just don't realize how much shit can go wrong if you just don't put your bunker there. Okay, now let's talk about our unit selection really fast. So notice how I just selected my my uh, Raven, my Marines, and my tank. Notice that, right? Now here's the problem with this. Is that a Raven's always going to be priority. Because it's a spellcaster, and it has the since it has the most spells to cast, it always has the most priority. So a Raven's always going to be prioritized over your Marines. And your Marines are always going to be prioritized over your tanks. Because one ability is... Or three abilities more important than one ability. And one ability more important than one mode change. That's just how the game... The AI, like this, You just know a Raven has more priority than a Marine. And a, Ra a Marine has more priority than a tank. Okay? Starcraft, thank you for the five. Thanks for B2GM. You are the best. Thank you, dude. Much love. Uh, so we know... If we know that this is how the priority works, an easy way we could fix this is we could put... Uh, our Raven in its own control group, okay? Because what happens if we do that is we don't want to use the Raven the entire fight. The only time we want to use the Raven is to initiate a fight. We just want to initiate the fight with a Raven. It does not need, need to be microed the whole fight. So here's the thing. If we leave it in our control group of our main army, every single time, let's say this is on group one right now, every time we want to actually control our Marines, which actually need to be microed, throughout the fight i need to impact multiple times in a fight because it only lasts 10 seconds and what if the fight lasts for 40 seconds in total i don't impact once and never do it again right we're gonna need to do it multiple times but now if i have the raven in the control group i'm gonna have to always hit one tab stimpack one tab stimpack one tab stimpack every time i want to fucking stimpack which is going to be fucking annoying it's going to suck ass and if you don't hit one tab stimpack all that's going to happen is if you hit one stimpack it's going to go, all right, let's say it's stim pack and your, your auto turret and your stim pack are the same hockey, which mine are. It's going to go, all right, turret. It's going to put a fucking turret in your hand when you're trying to stim pack because it's saying, they're telling your raven to make a turret. So you're going to have a big green turret in your hand that I can't select because it's a replay. And you're going to be like, get the fuck off my mouse. Like, okay, this is annoying. And then let's say you don't have enough energy to make a turret. It doesn't just have smart AI that's going to go, okay, let's stim pack now. It's going to go, er, er, not enough energy, er, not enough energy, er, not enough energy. Because you don't have enough energy to make a fucking auto turret. So if we don't need to micro this thing throughout the fight, it should not be in our main army. It should be in its other in a different control group because all we want to do with this is initiate the fight with it. It literally drops turrets to start the fight off. 
or it drops disables to start on, on vehicles to start the fight off, or it throws an anti-armor missile at the army of our opponent to start the fight off. That's all it does. It initiates, and then it just goes away. It could just fucking AFK for the, the rest of the fight, and we're fine. Because we're worried about our tanks and our marines then. And with our tanks and our marines, it always prioritizes our marines, which is good because it's, well, that's what we need to micro the most of the time. It continuously micros most of the time with the marines. And now, let's say we want to siege our tanks. All we're going to do one time and one time only is go one tab siege tank because siege tanks will be second in the control group. So we can literally hit one tab siege. And then that never needs to be... The, the tanks never need to be... Uh, in terms of sieging and unsieging them, it never needs to happen again until that part of the fight is over. Because the only time we're going to unsiege our tanks is literally when the fight is completed in this location. And now we want to siege our tanks again another time forward after. Uh, so, yeah. There's other things you can do with your tanks as well, which we'll talk about as time goes on. Like, for instance, there will be games against, like, let's say we're playing against Zerg, where I have Tank Marine. I could actually have tanks in group number one and also tanks by themselves in group number two. It's the same tanks that are in group one. It's not new tanks. It's not different tanks. Let's say I have 30 Marines and five tanks in total. Well, group one's going to have 35 units because it's got 30 Marines and five tanks in it. So it's 35. Group two is only going to have five tanks in it. It's the same tanks in group one. And now what I can do with Terran in that situation is I can go one a move stim pack and then green box my my marines to spread them around against like ling bane or whatever and periodically once every two seconds hit two and i can a click or right click a baneling pack so two click those banelings you just instead of shooting a zergling or something like that that's kind of in the front near your marines which is what zerg wants you to do he wants your tanks to shoot the closer unit to your tanks which are going to be zerglings on your marines instead you actually focus fire his fucking banes with your tanks only and this doesn't tell your marines to focus fire the banes because it's really easy to micro it too because you're bouncing from two a move uh or a click the banes or right click the banes one stim pack run around a little bit two right click the banes one run around a little bit two right click the banes one run around a little bit two right click the banes one stim pack run around a little bit you're not telling the tanks to run around a little bit even though they're in group one because they're fucking sieged and you're not telling the marines to attack the banelings because they're not you're not having marines in second control group so things like that are great ways as well to like manipulate control groups to your advantage and we'll talk about that more when we actually fight zerg and do that kind of stuff to us but you get the point right i'm just trying to make you understand like uh how this kind of goes control group priorities so raven should not be in your control group because it makes no fucking sense because it's a fight initiator and then it never it's over it's all it does so if, what if you're like well vibe i want it to follow my units though so it can uh it's give me detection, like to kill creep tumors or D DTs. Fucking have it right click a medevac. Like tell Raven, right click a medevac. Or Ra Raven, right click a marine. Right click a tank. And it will literally follow your army for detection. It'll follow whatever you need it's told to follow. And it does not need to prioritize over your marines in the fight. It will just make your life annoying if you do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got another turn. Let's actually do the build appropriately this time. Let's do the actual gas build like we did before. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. Oh baby. Oh, Let's do it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thanks for the sub, Coach D Ward. Welcome back for the five. Thank you, man. Not enough minerals. Glad you're enjoying the series and all that shit. Thanks, dude. Okay. Whoops. Okay, make our barracks, make our gas. Stack our close patches. Send one SCV to his base right now. The first SCV we build after we start the barracks and go to his base. That way we can get in and out of his base and see his gas investment and also not die to a Reaper. Most turns will make a Reaper. Let's make our second gas around 50% of the barracks completion because we made our first gas when the barracks was started. Let's get our SCVs on gas. This SCV you can like right click his mineral line or something. Uh, 
Da, da, da. Okay, let's get an SV on that gas. Let's have our next rallied SV go on the gas. Build our Reaper, build our Orbital, get ready to expand. And now what do we see? We see one gas from our opponent. So you know what that means? It's a complete reverse of the game we just played. Now I'm the double gasser going Reaper Hellion. He's the bunker guy. If he doesn't build a bunker, he's going to get fucking owned. This is perfect. I'm glad this guy's playing this way because you're going to get a good example. Uh, I shouldn't be, sorry, I shouldn't be expanding. I don't know why I'm also trying to expand right now. I should be making our factory and our second depot. I don't know why I'm doing that. I'm uh, fucking build up again. I'm like not paying attention. Okay, so I'll make our second Reaper and now take three SCVs off of gas. Because uh, we started our second Reaper. And now that we know he's also only making one gas, immediately run, away, run across the map with our first Reaper. This makes sense because here's the thing. What if he attacks me with his Reaper? Well, guess what? If he attacks me with his Reaper, I'll have my second Reaper in time to defend my base. And it means that if he leaves with his first Reaper and doesn't make a second Reaper, I'll be able to kill his SCVs. Or, what if he stays at home to defend his base? Well, now I'm just going to get another scout off and it's all good. He makes a bunker. He's making a marine. Let's make a throw a grenade at it. And now I'll run away from that and I'll start killing SCVs. So you can just run away from a bunker and be fucking annoying. Stutter step, stutter step, stutter step. Make Hellions and Reapers. Stutter step. Okay, he's got a Reaper now, so let's run away. Just run away. Uh, group up my units. I'm still making SCVs in the meantime. I'm not skipping SCVs. Notice how there's no bunker here. Guys, that's a big deal. Let's take advantage of that, right? That's an important thing to, to, to witness and understand. So get my Reapers together. Bring over our Hellion. Uh, and then we're going to be going into a reactor on our uh, barracks now that we have three Reapers. And we're making our second Hellion right now. And look at this, right? We're about to kill a Reaper, guys. This is amazing for us. He should not be aggressive when he's the one with less. You have to be defensive if you're the macro guy. Okay, so look, there's no bunker. Oh, God. Now you know what this does to him? We can literally guard his natural. We can also, if we want to... Oh, shit. Okay, don't jump up there. That's a bad idea. Come over this way. Let's make a tech lab on the starport and a tech lab on the, uh, the factory. Let's go ahead and start a second barracks here to get ready to go for two on, uh, for the second barracks. He's pushing. Let's go ahead and attack him and throw grenades at him and back up while we throw grenades at him. There we go. We're just attacking and backing up if we can. Try to pull back a Reaper if we can. Overall, still a good fight for us, guys. We can pull that one Hellion back because it's almost dead. Still a good fight for us. Notice how our opponent... who our, Think about this for a second, okay? Our opponent's the one who went for an expansion first, and we just looked at his base, and there was zero SCVs at it. We already have six SCVs at ours, so even though we went for the aggressive side, he went for the macro side, we have the economical lead right now. It's because if you make a bunker in the wrong spot, you get fucking owned. If he would have made a bunker on the ramp, it's way easier to guard other places with uh, units just standing there, because it only has to fight Reapers then. It doesn't have to fight Reapers and fucking Hillions. So yeah, there's a there's a huge blunder by our opponent. Now now we're going into the mid game with a fat eco lead because we just stalled him out right there like crazy. Are you ready for this? And now we're, and now what if he goes into fucking battle cruisers? What if he goes into a banshee? What what if he does blah 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 blah? It doesn't matter because we have cyclones and we have a raven or we have a cyclone and raven now so we can deal with all sorts of pressure. And we're going into stimpack. We're going into tanks. We're going to reactor and starport with extra bio production. And now our natural is getting really well saturated. Let's take our gases. And what do we always do when we take our gases? We're going to take our energy base because now we're going to have more gas. So you, I'm actually really happy that this guy just did what he did because we just got to see the complete opposite build two times to see how to do it properly and how not to do it properly. Okay, let's try let's saturate these gases. Keep making SCVs. Keep making depots. Let's get our upgrades for one one. Stimpak's halfway done right now. Start making medevacs. Uh right now. There we go. Let's get an orbital. Get another depot over here. Get another tank in front of our base. Let's move one Marine in front of our base too. Just to be sure that he's not going to set up tanks on us before we're ready for it, right? This, is, this just gives us vision. If he's like, I'm setting tanks up on you now. So we can see it happening before it happens. Because again, tanks can shoot further than they can see. So this will help us get more damage onto his army. 
uh, faster. Okay, let's go ahead and now take our third base because our command center is done. And now what can we do? Let's go ahead and start more barracks. And the reason why that makes sense is because look at our natural mineral line. That's oversaturated as fuck, right? Well, if it's oversaturated as hell, you know what that means? We're going to get a lot of money that goes immediately on our third right away. So let's make barracks, 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 barracks. So we get three or four racks. We can drop some mules on the third. Keep making SCVs for the third. Transfer the excess as well over to the third. And that third's going to be saturated super fast. And our money's going to be able to afford maintaining production off of current buildings while adding on production off of new buildings. Transfer more SCVs because we're mining out in the main a little bit. And now instantly saturated, right? Super fucking saturated, super fast. Let's get one more Marine and let's go over here. Again, we want to just know if we're going to get pushed. We can also take like one more, like take our Hellion even. And let's go check and see if he's got a third. Oh, he's pushing us. Okay, let's go engage that. Army, control one, Raven, alt three. Okay, so let's use the Raven and let's disable his tanks. Raven, go initiate. Disable, disable. Army, step back in there. Tanks, siege. Stutter step, stutter step, stutter step, stutter step, stutter step. Focus fire medevac. And guess what just happened? He killed my third. Sure. Let's just rebuild it. Keep making SCVs for it. Keep making units out of my barracks and stuff like that. But he just lost his whole army, guys. So this is a moment where you should clearly counterattack because your opponent just lost everything. Okay, transfer SCVs that are excess again towards the third base. <laughs> Do you have a third? And it, I, really, I would say we lost that third base as well because we didn't have a marine fast enough in front of our third base. We could, if we would have saw that faster, we could have definitely saved the base. Much more likely to save the base if we were to react it a little bit quicker. Make some more depots so we don't supply block. Okay, he's right there. Let's go ahead and stim pack. Siege our tanks. Okay, he's backing off. What's he doing? Why is he backing off? And why are SVs going to his third? It's probably because he has a third base. So let's do this. Let's unseize our tanks. Let's get our army together. And let's go up. Right now, let's go up. Get our army together. Go, go, go. And let's siege him from a safe area right here, okay? Let's not be stupid about this and throw our army away. Let's get our army up here. Oh, go to a safe location. Yeah. And now, okay, there's no third. So he actually... Uh, Tie for the knowledge, Daddy Viper. He didn't uh, commit to Five it. Five SD. Yo, thank you very much. Appreciate you. So he decided not to commit to it. Okay, that's fine. Okay, he's, he's attacking us again. Siege our tanks. Stim pack our marines. And there he's committing to it once again. We can stutter step a little bit in front of our tank. Okay, all of our tanks actually died, so let's just get out of here now. Just leave. But it, does that mean I'm dead now? No. You want to know what happened? Look at my third base again, guys. This is what macro does for you. If you actually macro while you fight, because all we're doing is 4 5, 4 5, 4 5 during the fights, we are macroing during the fights, and we actually have a fallback to still go on here. Let's go ahead and make 2 2 upgrades. Let's get tank upgrades as well. And now this the game has reset. It's third base versus third base. We're fully saturated. We can take our fourth base. And now it really is up to us. Do we want to push or do we want to play defensive? And I would say, let's fucking play defensive. It's not a big deal, right? Let's go for a fourth base. Let's put one Marine out in the front. Let's put one Marine over here in the front. Let's put one Marine over here in the front. And why did I just do that? Because I just put Marines at every possible entrance to all my new expansions I have. So a Marine goes over here. A Marine goes over here so I can spot these entrances to my base. And a Marine goes over here so I can spot if he goes around this way to this base. So now I will see where he is before he is there. Like, I'll see where he's going before he gets to my base, essentially. Okay, we can throw down a couple more mules on this base. Let's also maybe throw one Marine out and uh, go to, like, his potential fourth base. Just to see if he's taking a fourth. Take a couple more depots. Transfer a couple more SCVs off. Transfer a couple of SCVs off. Put them over here on the new base we're making. We can also start another factory because we can make more tanks at this point. Drop a couple more mules here. Just a couple, not a, not a bunch, like two or three. Because we have a lot of energy on our command centers for mules. Okay, there's no base here, guys. No base. Okay, let's ha how about this? Let's send one Marine to the top left of the map. See, notice how even without scouting his base, I'm getting a read on how my position is in the game right now. Okay, my Marine just died over there, which is fine. Let's tell one more Marine to go to the right side over here. Go that way. And then have this new marine go down and check bottom right. Is there a base in bottom right? Do I need to worry about that? Is this a thing that I need to think about? Nope, no base in bottom right. 
How about the top left? No base. How about the middle left? Is there a fourth base on this side of the map? Are you starting one over here right now? We're getting a read on his economy. And now, oh, he's pushing us. Unseed our shit. Go right now. Scan ahead so we can see where he is. And there he is, guys. Now I'm zoning him. Now he's not killing my base anymore. Now he's in the area. But he's sieging his tanks. Guess what? I'm gonna fucking siege my tanks. Not a big deal, right? We're chilling for a second. Yeah, we can scan again. And the reason why we scan again is because he's trying to walk in the dead time of vision. We could also use our Vikings. We don't even have to scan. We have a lot of Vikings, guys. Let's use our Vikings. And now let's not overcommit. Tell our army to hold position right now. And just have the Vikings in the area poke him. Be like, hey, what are you doing? And we back up. He comes forward. We go back. And now he's turning around. Let's go ahead and select all army. Unsiege my tanks. And let's get all my shit together. Let's actually go. Let's scan ahead one more time. Now he's backing up. Now we can take the fight to him. And we're like maxed out. I mean, we're not actually fucking fully supplied here, but you get the point, right? We have a good army. Now let's go for it. Let's go ahead and scan one more time because he's here now. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's get our army to the right side because this is an open. He's not zoning me properly. There's an opening on his command center on the left side here. He's on the right side. So let's siege right here. Now hold position my army and wait for him to engage us. Because what this does is this gives us opportunity, opportune damage here. Let's get another tank over here and siege it. Are you going to push me? What are you doing? Let's go and poke some medevacs while we're waiting. Poke some Vikings while we're waiting. I'm just chilling. I can also macro while we're waiting. I can make more units. And look at his command center. It is slowly dying. I don't feel rushed. Now he lifts it. Now I can kill it with, with Viking. And now I just took a big fucking win there for us because we not only did we kill his command center, we also killed a lot of his army. And now he might panic take an engagement. What's he look like? That army? He's unseaging his tanks. Let's do the same thing. Unseage our tanks and now Stimpak and go right now. Unseage, Stimpak, go right now. Stutter, 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 stutter. Notice how he's leaving his units in the back. His tanks in the back. Now we're taking a fight. Let's Stimpak one more time. Siege our tanks in the back. Make new units during the fight. And now he's fucking dead. So, we have no rush there. There is nothing pushing us to go, We gotta fucking stim immediately. Because in TVT, a lot of times, what it is... In TVT, a lot of times what it is, is it's, Where the fuck are you putting your tanks? Where are you putting your tanks? Not only that, not only that... Not only... The, here's two, there's two reasons why we, have, we, feel, we feel no rush. Number one, we have better positioning than he does. Number two... We have more bases than he does. And we just confirmed that earlier by realizing we already had a planetary at our fourth base that was already mining actively. And he still had nothing here. This is fresh, guys. This is like brand new, not that long so far. We scouted this earlier after we were already making our fourth. We have a fifth base done by the time... Like, this is active now, obviously. But realistically, our fifth base was going up probably when he was taking his fourth base. Like, he probably made his... He's probably, probably like two-thirds of the way done or something like that at this base when ours was just starting over here. And then what did he do? He transferred all the SCVs off this base and ran away over here to this base and he dropped mules on it. So he rotated, which is fine. Not a big deal. But we scouted earlier that we knew he didn't have a fourth when we did. And then we had a better tank engagement where those are the two reasons why we don't have to rush a fight. We do not have to rush a fight. Now, what if my opponent would have dropped my main base at the same time? And what if he has like 30 supply or 40 supply in my main base? And we're like, oh, fuck, he's doing a counter doom drop. Well, you know what? Now we have to micro army. New reinforcements at our base need to deal with that. But guess what? If he's got 30 or 40 less supply in his army that's defending his base because he's counter dropping our main base, you know what we can do then? Now we can fucking push because now there's less army to defend himself. Stuff like that is how we're trying to read the game, right? We're trying to give ourselves the best options possible. I love, I love, there's always somebody. Now it's time to over-explain everything for 15 minutes. Yeah, it, uh, well, it, hey, do you know what this is? Welcome to the guide to learning how to play StarCraft. And if having information to learn how to play the game bothers you, if it's, if you don't like that, well, maybe you shouldn't be watching a fucking guide. <laughs> have you tried, have you tried using your brain? works great if you think about things sometimes. 
So now we have a situation where his army was too far right, right? It was too far right, oh, and we're on the left. Yeah. And why? Why does this? Why is this positioning relevant? What does this do for us? Again, it allows us to siege his base, actually kill the command center over time, while also controlling this area, because if he were to come into this area with his army, we can ha our tanks can relocate their shots to his tanks, and suddenly he loses a lot of units. Meanwhile, while we're waiting with all of our army on hold position for the moment, we can just only control our Vikings and go, hey, Vikings, go poke a medevac here and there. Go poke a Viking here and there. This is why Vikings are really good when they pair with tanks, because they allow tanks to shoot max distance. And you can also poke away his medevacs and his, uh, and his Vikings. Super fucking nice. Uh, and then if he lifts the command center, because like he did, where he's like, oh, fuck, the tanks are killing me over time. We just kill the fucking command center with our Vikings. It, 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 it's like a superior siege, siege position. It's superior siege. So it, it makes us have like a super good uh, efficiency here in the in our fight. But yeah, that's really all it is, right? It's just positioning ourselves correctly. But I, mean, I love the explanations. I know. I think most people do. Because uh, again, guys, it's a, it's a guide, right? It would, be, it would literally be like someone going, it's like it's like your friend is like, hey, do you want to go to a, a amusement park called Waterworld? The name is fucking Waterworld, right? And you're like, yeah, I'll go to Waterworld, sure, whatever. And then you get there and you complain that there's too much water. And you're like, oh my god, does there really have to be this much water at Waterworld? It's in the fucking name, bro. It's a goddamn guide. So of course there's going to be a lot of explanation. People just, I, it's so funny that I feel like the, there's so many people nowadays that just complain for the sake of complaining. It's just like how you function as a person nowadays. I just complain because that's what justifies my opinion. Vibe gets trolled a bit too easy. Bro, you have no idea how many times I get trolled throughout the day. Sometimes you have to you have to look at someone's chat and make an uh, make an example out of that person. <laughs> okay, we're against a Zerg player. Let's go for a Marine tank style. Marine tankola. Is it risky to open up without gases, Taren? Not uh, yeah, it's kind of risky. Yes, sir. If you don't take gases, Taren, there's a lot of shit that... Like, Taren is a race that functions better, by the way, if you attack your opponent. Taren is a race that functions well off of harass and control. So if you go gasless Taren, not, not ideal. I'll tell you right now, if I was playing against a Gasless Terran, you want to know the one way I would kill them? I would just expand a lot because they can't harass me now. And Terran is the race that scales the slowest with economy. Terran is a race that has the strongest potential economy late game because of how lots of command centers with lots of mules can scale at the end of the game. So it has the highest, like, the highest potential at the end. But you can't develop Terran economy as fast as you can develop Protoss and Zerg. So if a Terran's gasless and it means they're not going to do any attacks at all, zero aggression from Terran, you're just going to get out expanded and you're going to just lose control of the game and you're going to die. Okay. <sighs> Vibe is patient. I could not handle the constant complaining. That's that's what I mean, right? That's what I'm, that's why sometimes you just get tired of 50 fucking people complaining about everything, and you just pick one out, and then one person complains that you're complaining about people complaining, and you're like, okay, if only you knew, dude. <laughs> if only you fucking knew. 
Okay, our Reaper is catching some lings in mid map. That's super nice for us. Let's go ahead and make a. Uh, let's go ahead and make a reactor on our Marines. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and run away. Let's go check for a third base. Again, our Reaper. Our Reaper right now, guys. So we're doing a build. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna tell you what we're doing. We're doing a build that is a uh, factory opener, quickly, and we're gonna eventually go into a starport as well. This is kind of a one-one-one opener, and our Reaper needs to not die for that exact reason right there. Our Reaper needs to not die, so we can know if this guy is going to open roaches or not. And now that we know he's going roaches, you know what we're gonna do? We're going to make a tech lab on the factory, and we're not gonna make a starport really fast anymore. So we're not going to go Hellions right away, essentially. We're going to make Marines instead now. And we're going to try and load up our bunker. Let's pull some SCVs from the main to go help that bunker go up. Let's get our Marines into the bunker right now that are popping out. And let's make our tank. Load into that bunker right now and repair that fucking bunker. If he attacks it. If he doesn't attack it, it's all good. And now our tank is almost done and we have more Marines on the way. Run away from the Roaches. Just guard the bunker. This guy is being very aggressive. At this point now as well, he's, he's not even trying to break the depot or anything like that. Let's send six SCVs back to the main base. Six SCVs go back to the main to, fin to fix our economy. And now we can also have one SCV build a starport. And let's take our tank over here. And let's, uh, let's siege it up in an aggressive position that can push the roaches away. Like right here. Hey roaches, get the fuck out of my base. We can stutter step some of these roaches and kill one more. Oh, he doesn't want to leave with all the riches. Okay, let's just set her set the last one. Nice. And now we're back to good. We're, we're back. We're feeling great. So now we can go. Uh, because, I will say this, because he opened roaches, let's just not bother doing Hellions anymore. We were going to go Liberator and Hellion to start into Marine Tank Medivac. But now that he went roaches right off the bat, let's instead just go for Medivac. Uh, let's just instead go straight Medivac into... Uh, Tank Marine Medivac and not worry about Liberator Hellion Harass. Because, again, what if he sends more roaches at me and I'm currently making Hellions again and fucking Liberators? Or one Liberator and Hellions and then he attacks me right when I go to his base. I could die. So this way we don't die to roach all-ins. Like roach pressures. Let's go ahead and make our third command center behind this as well while we're at it. Okay. And let's just take a group of Marines here and load up into the medevac and just go draw. Like, we don't have step pack. We don't have combat shield right now with this. We're just going to scout with this and we're going to be annoying with this. And this is not my whole army. It's just some of my units. Let's go ahead and get a combat or uh, not combat shield. Uh, tech lab there on that base. Oh, there's an overlord. Go kill that thing right now. Kill every 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 time you see an overlord, go kill that fucking thing. So worth it. Fully saturated on the natural. Let's take our gases. Let's also take our upgrades. Overlord's dead. Load up on the medevac. Go back into his base again. Get stim pack. Boost into the main, and let's see what we can do. There's a spy. Okay, there's a spire. So now we know there's mutas on the way, and we were getting chased by queens. We probably can't drop these marines. But now we know there's mutas, guys. So now there are fucking mutalisk in play here. We still can't drop there either. There's roaches. Let's just get out. We're, again, we're scouting his bases. That's the biggest thing we're doing. Cool, he's got three base roach into muta now. Awesome. So what we can do now is we can get a couple turrets in our mineral line. Just to be extra safe against the potential of muta here. Let's also get an armory so we can, we can start mixing in some thors into our build. Because Mutas would not do very well against Thors. Let's go ahead and start a turret as well at our third base. Not we'll take this as our third. And let's start spreading out some of our tanks. So the medevac came back. I wanted to attack him with that, obviously, but we couldn't because he had Mutas and shit. But now we can go to our third base. And now it's going into the main base. He's attacking my main middle line. Let's run the SCVs away from those Mutas for a second. All good. And now let's transfer my third base to my third base. base is under attack. 
Okay, and now we can siege our tanks over here. Kill that overlord. We can make a Thor. We already have a good amount of tanks. We have like four tanks, which is nice. But I mean, he's going Spire too, right? So we got to be careful about that. Does it mean he's only going to go Spire? Not necessarily. We should drop him again. Not right this second, but in a minute when our third base kicks online and we actually have more money to work with, we'll actually drop his third base and or we'll, see, we'll drop his bases again and we'll see, is he still going fucking Mutas? What if, because he's not attacking us with Mutas anymore. What if he's going Lurkers right now? What if he's going fucking Hydras and Roaches? And we need to actually only make like one or two Thors and then go back into making units again. So, we're going to make a few more racks. Let's grab some Marines and let's go get rid of these Mutas in our main base because they're still fucking there. Have our, have our Thor help as well here. Okay. Upgrade Let's go ahead and start another command center while we're at it. And notice how I've spread my army around my base, right? I spread oh, my tanks around my base. I spread yeah. my, my bio around my base. I'm not just stacking, stacking one spot. <coughs> because this guy's playing a highly uh, harassing style. <coughs> Fly rep, thank you very much, dude, for the uh, gifted sub. <coughs> Jesus Christ, my fucking Gifting throat. Gifting a replay analysis to nobody underscore knows. Okay. <coughs> thank you, dude. Th thanks. So now let's go ahead and drop. Mineral field depleted. Okay, he found us. So let's drop our marines out of the medevacs and try to get away. Like he's, he's he's doing a good job of catching us. Now he's attacking over here. So if we can't get a good scout off on him, okay, now he's looking like he's going to poke us. This is a big army. He's going roaches and banelings. So let's just make, he's going, it looks like he's going back to the ground, right? He's going for a bit of a hybrid army. Let's go for a, a bit more turrets. <coughs> Jesus, dude. I can't breathe. Let's go for a, a bit more turrets in the side of our base. And um, I feel like I'm losing my voice doing this fucking series, dude. Jesus Christ. A bit more turrets inside of our base, and we'll go into get ready to attack him soon-ish. Not right this second, but soon-ish. And we're also expanding our base even wider, which is why we're going to add in some more turrets. I'm giving everything for you guys in the series. But my body is decaying. <laughs> and people still bitch all the time. <laughs> it's not everybody. I'm just joking. It just has some people. It makes me laugh. <coughs> uh, uh, Jesus. Yeah, uh, no, we're, I think we're good here. We don't need to add more. Okay. And now he's attacking us, so let's get my army over there. Let's go over there. Run our, or our Marines away a little bit. Group up more units. We can siege more tanks over here. We can lift off our command center. Try to repair it. And we're stim packing our Marines, and we can stutter backwards towards our tanks. Back to the tanks. Back to go back to the tanks. Back to the safety of our tanks. And see how like that's why we need to pay attention to the fact that he's not going mass mutas. So tanks are gonna be really good again. And also now that he's going for a lot of roaches and shit like that, we could also start adding in some marauder. I wouldn't Marauder are kind of optional though. It's it is it's like it, you could add them, you could not add them. It's not the hugest deal if you do or don't. But Marauders will help add some concussive shell to our army, which will slow down his engagement. And also, what it'll do is it'll just add some more meat shield to our army when he tries to engage us. Okay, keep making tanks. Again, we have one Thor and a lot of Marines to deal with the possibility of more Mitas. So, that's already a lot. You don't need to make fucking 10 Thors to fight 10 Mutas. Okay, and now... Oh, he's doing another attack. So, let's stim pack and run away from his units again. His Banelings, specifically. We're, cut, we're kiting backwards into all of our tanks. Okay, kite backwards again. There's more Banelings coming in. And now he just lost another Zerg army. This is nice. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Take some gases at our third base. Let's take one turret here to guard our SCVs. Transfer some SCVs from the main to that base right there. And we're still pumping units like crazy. Also, we have a lot of medevacs. I would say probably fucking... Ch if you realize your medevac count's getting really big like this, probably chill the fuck out on your medevacs. You could also take two medevacs like this. Like, take your only control one, 
take some Marine Marauder, and it, go fly to his base with, like, Alt 2 on this or something like that. So now we're going to go drop his base while still making bio, and we'll see what we can do. Let's go ahead and make some depots over here. And the reason why this makes sense is because it will help guard our SCVs if this guy pushes this side of our base with Banelings and Zerglings and stuff. It just means our SCVs have more time to not die. Medivacs can go along the right side of the map. Three, three upgrades almost done. Level three weapons on Thor's being started. We need to start, honestly, another base right now. Let's get ready to do that. And we found a base, right? There's a base, guys. Let's drop Medivacs here. And now he's pushing us. Go ahead and kite backwards towards our tanks. Kite backwards to tanks. Backwards to tanks. Backwards to tanks. Backwards to the tanks. Notice how these bandlings don't get any fucking engagements when you do that? It's insane how effective that can be. Load up these medevacs and fly away. So we just killed a base and we defended a base. And look at those depots. Depots died, but our SCVs are all still alive. Super good depot placement. Okay, take another command center. And... Now we're getting to that point to where it looks like we can really start actually getting aggressive and taking more of a fight in his into his territory because we're getting close to maxing out and uh, we're 3-3 three, three upgrades now. So This time, let's go ahead and load up two more medevacs just like we did last time. Do the same thing as like Alt-2 with this. And now let's take the rest of our army and let's go to the left side of the map. Let's grab our tanks as well. Let's leave like one tank defensive. Just take this army out of your control, like literally hit one, shift click it out, and then rebind one. And the reason why we can leave like one tank defensive is because this guy likes counterattacking us all the fucking time. So having a tank defensive, just in case he counterattacks us, is going to be super nice. Okay, grab these new units that just got made and bring them. Let's clear some creep out on this side. And he's attacking us again. So yeah, this guy is all aggression. So let's drop him. Let's just, let's just sack the third, raise the depots at the natural. And try to, like, guard our base now while he's pushing us. Let's just push him. This guy only fucking attacks. He does not defend himself at all. Okay, he's turning around. Now he's turning around. So land this again. And we're going still, right? We're still going. What's going on over here? We're doing that. Siege our tanks. And now back up to the behind my tank area. And the reason why is because, again, we want to back away from the Banelings. While our tanks initiate the fight, right? What's going on over here? Let's load these guys up and go to the main base. Drop over there. Keep making units the whole time. Keep making SCVs the whole time. We can rotate our next command center down to this base right here. And now we just killed two bases again. And now we can work on a third base in the main with this next drop. And now we can back up our army. And we can... We, oh, okay. Oh, he's pushing us like crazy. So let's just impact stutter step away back to our base. If he chases us, he chases us. And now we have a whole brand new army to work with here. Okay, load up the medevacs and get out of there. So this guy's trying to play a super aggressive game, right? He's trying to play a super aggressive fucking game. Constantly attacking. It is what it is. It's manageable. Now we can go back to having Horror Man Control 1. Hit 2, Alt 2. And now look, he's trying to be aggressive again. Let's drop the right side again with the same drop over here. Hey, drops. Go over here and kill that fucking gas. Transfer a few SCVs over to this base right here. We can take another command center while we're at it in the bottom right. And now he's pushing this base right here. Stimpak away from the Banes. Stutter away from the Banes. Why is this not happening? Why are you not helping? Oh, I have my wall, wall like walled up. Okay, so that was fucking silly by me. Now let's go help. Try and get over there and fight this shit with the rest of our army. I was, I was like, these units should have been there, but they weren't. So that kind of sucked. Now we can stutter step towards him. And now he's out of money. Now he is out of money. So we just basically... Played a game where, again, we recognized the pattern, which was this guy was fucking aggressive. Roaches. Three roaches in the start of the game. Aggressive. Muta follow-up. Aggressive. Roach Bane follow-up. Aggressive. Like three times in a row. Aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. All this shit was just fucking aggressive. So, if we know our opponent's being aggressive, do we have to constantly attack with our main army? No. No. We did it. We eventually did once we maxed out and we had a super big army, but we weren't, even though we weren't attacking with our main army, what were we doing? We were attempting drops throughout the game and we were still slowing his economy down. We attempted to drop against the mutas. It didn't quite work. We attempted to drop against the roach phase. It worked great. Twice. 
over here. And we killed this base literally two times. So it doesn't have to be your whole army that drops. It's just a little bit. Because you, you want basically... If your opponent's highly fucking aggressive, you want to be able to poke them in the back every time they move out to attack you. And if you just have your tank sieged and you, st you step back, back towards your tanks, you have such a good chance for your tanks to break his banes as they engage forward as you just impact back to your tanks. It's all it is. You literally always just uh, set your fight up to go, you know, lure him deeper into your base as you go. Never, never be the guy that's like, all right, I'm at my base defensively. I'm going to fucking stand here and then I'm going to go, I'm going to split forward and forward and then backward and then backward and then left and then right. Do not fucking stand your ground like that. And, and uh, um, what's it called? Do not think splitting like that makes a lot of sense. If you can just back up, you can like spread as you back up a little bit. You can back up, back up, back up, back up. And every time he chases you deeper and deeper in your base, he's running into tanks and tanks and more tanks and tanks that were over here before. Like he's running deeper into tank lines, which just means his army is going to be, you know, more susceptible to dying the entire time. Uh, and yeah, this guy also, you know, if you, another thing you got to realize too is that this guy never really went for uh, good tech. Like we fought no hive tech units. Uh, I guess we fought a Viper, but yeah, it was like two Vipers, but that, it's whatever. But like there was no Lurkers. There was no Ultras. There was no Broodlords. It was just Roach, Ravager, Baneling, Zergling repeatedly over and over and over and over. So what this guy is doing to you is he's trying to basically make you feel defensive the entire game, which is why dro counter drops are so fucking important because we can break his economy apart. And he's, he's trying to make you feel defensive, defensive the entire game. And he's trying to basically hit you over the head with like a hammer and kill you. Because the thing is, is when the medevac count gets really high and when the tank count gets relatively high, like we're talking like 10 medevacs and like 8 tanks. Once you get to those kinds of numbers with a, with a bio army that just supplements it all the way to 200 supply, it is so hard for that kind of an army from Zerg to break you. The only way you break then is if you literally are walk move commanding your entire army in the middle of the creep and he surrounds you in three different locations and you're like, oh, fuck. But then I would have to ask you, why the fuck did you walk your entire army by itself in the middle of nowhere with no indication of like even trying to kill creep? Like it makes no sense, right? So like look how we pushed the left side. What did I do when I pushed the left side? I killed all of his fucking creep on the left side as I pushed that base. Really cool how you can play and talk us through the game the whole time. Yo, the yellow hat. Thank you for the five. Thank you, man. I'm glad you like it. Hell yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, you know. And the thing is, too, is like the Zergs, if we can actually, if we get to a point in the late game where our drops can actually deny new expansions, look at the Zerg's main base. It's mining out. The natural, mining out. Third base, mining out. So if we kill this base, and then if we, if we then kill this base, and then let's say we killed this base, this base is also mining out. Like he's going to run out of money really fast, and it's harder for Zerg to defend these new bases because they're so exposed. And if I also kill creep and I kill overlords or whatever, I kill vision of what Zerg has on these sides of the map, it's going to be hard for, for the Zerg to even see that we're doing it in the first place. So uh, playing a game of counterattack and defensively, defensively absorbing Zerg with counterattacks is a great way to play against Zerg. It's not bad. So, for instance, like if we, if we actually go back to the point right here, this is something we also could have done, by the way. We did not have to actually attack with our army on the left side of the map like we did. I want to show you something. This attack did not have to happen, by the way. We did, though, because we killed Creep, and then we just killed a left base. Meanwhile, at the same time, we killed a base on the right. Overall, that was a good attack for us. But you know what we could have done? You know what we could have done? We could have, instead of doing that attack like that, we could have gone right back to this decision right here, where we decided to move out right now. We could have stayed defensive. We could have still stayed defensive and just loaded up another two medevacs. Load up, like, two more medevacs. And then uh, have those two medevacs go to the left side and drop this base. And then drop that base. And you know what happens if we do that? It's still a very good amount of tanks defending our base. Because tanks are the primary focus here to not die. Uh, it's it being assisted by bio. Bio definitely helps. But we're not over-investing our bio to be like, oh, we're definitely going to die now. And we're, it's a very high chance that we're going to thin his army out as long as we always run our bio back to more tanks. Because tanks are the big focus here. So having tank placement is really important. Tank there. Tank there. Tank there. Tanks in the front now. These, tank, th like, these tanks are getting fucking crazy amounts of kills throughout the game. Uh, especially, like, this tank is amazingly placed. It could be even a little bit further to the right. And that would be so goddamn good. Because it's shooting everything all over the right side here. And it has no way to be attacked because it's behind a depot wall. 
as long as I raise the depots. Uh, so yeah, I, like I did not have to attack him with my whole army here. I didn't have to do that. I could have just dropped him with more units with like more medevacs. You could totally do that too. And it would keep you safe. Because notice how the second I leave my base, what does he do again? Another fucking round of maxed out Roach Baneling Ravager. Right? Five, can you show the economy? Yeah, the Zerg is going to mine more than us. And the reason why Zerg is mining more than us is because he's playing a low tech style with high base count. And he's literally maxing out on cheap ass units repeatedly and trying to run us over. But these units suck ass against siege tanks as we've been saying before so he's gonna have more money than us how do you defend this with zerg do you just make static defense i always get these kinds of questions and i'm, I'm i will give you an answer that's very brief but i will say i'm not going to go into thorough detail about how does zerg fight against this because here's my answer that's really thorough for that watch zerg beat a gym series i fight lots of things just like this and many others and i will very thoroughly break down everything you do with zerg just like i'm doing with terran right now for the terran series but I don't want to make I don't want to break down multiple races in multiple series like oh I'll break down Protoss games in a Terran series and I'll break down Terran games in a Protoss series. Doesn't make any sense. But for Zerg, I just want you to know that it's hard for Zerg to deal with drops now because he has all of his investment into fucking ground all in armies. This army sucks cock. What if he had Hydras? What if he had Mutas? What if he had other anti air units that could actually deal with medevacs? Much easier to now deal with medevacs. But his entire army attacks ground only. And he's in only investing into Ravagers and Banelings and Roaches as a primary. And then he's adding on some Zerglings as an excess. This army sucks ass against drops. Because the only way you deal with drops against, against this realistic of a Zerg is you catch them with all units all over the place. Like units here, units here, units here. Catch them. And if you catch drops, you want to know what that means? It means you can't attack. So the fact that he's attacking means he can't catch drops because he would have to leave a bunch more supply than what this costs because he can't kill the medevacs. And that would mean he could never attack me. It would mean I'm only attacking him. So when he attacks me, his base is very vulnerable. That's all it really is. Uh, and yeah, if he makes Spire units again. Guys, he's spending fuckloads of gas on Ravagers and Banes and Roaches. He can't also make a bunch of Mutas. Like, he, you have to make choices in this game. Again, this is where something where you guys need to go all the way back to Bronze to Plat to go, what is an economy and how do you develop that? Right? I can't just go, okay, well, I'm going to just make everything. I'm going to not only be a Terran player, and I'm going to make mass battlecruisers while also making mass Thors, and I feel like also making mass Marine Marauder Medivac, and then to top it all off, let's go ahead and get mass Liberators. Like, no, you can't do all of that. It's You cannot fucking do everything at once. You have to pick and choose your paths that you go down because you don't have infinity money and it also infinity production. You have to pick and choose. So if he makes mutas, it's going to reduce his fucking ling counts and his ravager counts and his roach counts. It's going to reduce his army count or his ground army because it's a lot of gas. Like it'll increase his ling count and it'll decrease his roach ravager main ling count, which will make it even easier for my tanks to clean it up. <laughs> so let's let's do uh additional let's do it an all in this game we'll do a we'll do a very weird all in this game we'll do like a two base all in okay again do you have to play like this no but it, this is you could do things like this, okay? This is another option. So let's get a fast second gas. We'll still take our natural eventually. We could do a build that is similar to the Reaper Hellion opener because this build transitions well into early early builds in general. But what we can do is we'll go Reaper Hellion to start, and then let's just go into like a starport with like cloaked banshees into like battle cruisers or some shit. We'll play a really awkward fucking style. And the only reason why I'm doing this. Is because, again, it's another, it's going to be a different perspective on the game to understand how to play from your position. The reason why I'm switching builds around so much is to give you guys perspective of build. Okay, we need to actually make a depot, not a fucking command center. Depot. Perspective of build. Huh? 
Let's make a factory. And now this game, I'm not going to rip off my gas. So we're going to take a much later natural than normal. Command center upgrade. We're not ripping off the gas. We normally rip off the gas, like right about now, honestly. But we're not ripping off gas this time. Let's go ahead and poke him with a reaper and just see what's going on. And we're making another reaper behind this. And we're going to be very non-committal with this reaper. So we're not trying to all in him with that. We're going to immediately back up if we see any type of retention. We're not going to throw the reaper away. We're going to wait till we have more units. So there's a reaper. So let's not even try to micro that. Do you have a natural? Yes, you do. That's all I wanted. I just wanted to scout. And now that I know he has an expansion, now I can go back with two reapers. And I'm probably going to fight one reaper. How do I know this? Because anyone who goes for an expansion that fast is probably doing the pull-off gas build. The bunker build that we talked about before. Okay, whoops. Uh, so he actually has two Reapers. It's okay. Not a big deal, guys. He actually chose to make two Reapers. Is that that means now his factories later? Do we have to freak out about that? Definitely not. It's not a big deal. Let's go ahead and now make us command center. So command even though I now. only play toss, I still learn something new even watching this Terran B2GM. Oh yeah. Good shit. Thank you very much, uh, Mon Capitan. Thank you, dude. Yeah, I mean, well, a lot of this stuff can apply, right? To multiple things. Okay, let's go ahead and make a fusion core. Let's also now go ahead and poke him. He's actually doing somewhat of a Reaper Hellion build, just like we are. But we have more because we went gas heavier than he did at the moment. Okay, there's a high ground advantage there for him. We probably shouldn't take that fight because that would just make us take damage for nothing. Let's go ahead and make a... Ra uh, not a Raven, sorry. Uh, a Banshee. Okay, he's, got, he's actually going... Even though he's expanding, he's still mining a lot of gas. Uh, so this guy's economy, he probably, here's the thing. How can he make a command center just like that so fast and also have as many Reaper Hellion as I do? How does that make any sense? He's probably not fully utilizing his, his, uh, SCV count. I bet, honestly, even though he's expanded, I probably have just as many SCVs, if not more than he does, even though he expanded first. Because that, there's some problems with his builds in some way right now. Like, you cannot have that much gas in that fast of an expansion. Or his tech, or either that, or he, if he does have his, like, let's say he has the proper amount of SCVs of this build, it means that he probably didn't focus crazy on gas to go all the way to a starport. He probably instead did something like, for instance, uh, okay, let's go into a uh, tech lab. Let's, I'll tell you in a second, okay? Let me just explain what we're doing really quick, because there's so much going on right now. We're going now behind this with a two base tank marine all in. We're just going to open up with Banshee and then a battle cruiser and be fucking annoying. And this is meant to slow him down, and we're going to go into a timing attack of an all-in with, with Marines, tanks, and, uh, and medevacs. Okay, so back to what we were saying. Our opponent probably has no starport. He probably has no starport. So now I can poke him with a Banshee, and it has more likely chance to not be dealing with a Liberator. Or a Ra uh, Viking, rather. So we're poking Marines. Okay, there's a, a Raven. It's all good. Just kind of flying around his base with the with our fucking banshee. Let's get over here and see how there's no cyclone as well. There's like there's like less defense in his base with things that should exist that don't exist right now. We're stutter stepping away from his army with our raven or our, our fucking banshee. And now we can engage this over here. He's got a tank. Okay, let's go and back up. He's got a lot of defense. It's all good, but we're still doing damage, right? Let's go ahead and swap this over. Make that a reactor. Do some damage to his mineral line if we can. Behind this, let's go into more reactor marines. Let's get a stim pack. Let's get siege tank. Let's make marines. And now there's finally a Viking. And what did, what did some, what's something important we saw just now while we did that? Let's fix our SCVs as well while we're at it because that's pretty fucking terrible. What's something important we saw while we were doing that? We saw he has only a tank at the natural. We just killed a bunch of his marines. So let's try to get into his main base and see if we can kill more SCVs. These reapers don't really mean shit anymore at this point in the game. Let's see what we can do here. Look at that. His tank set is natural. We killed all the Marines with our Banshee. So we're killing oh, more SCVs right now. Yeah. Again, we're playing an all-in right now. We're being super aggressive. It's amazing how you are able to read every situation in real time. Does that just come with experience? Yes, it does, honestly. It's because I used to be a pro gamer, and playing ladder is not that hard. Like I used to be, I used to play way more intense games than just random ladder games. So, it's it's not. It, it, I don't feel overwhelmed right now. I got my 
Okay, we actually didn't make a battle cruiser somehow. I don't know how that happened, but we didn't make a battle cruiser, so we fucked up our build. It's okay. Thank you very much for the sub, though, uh, Atlian. Thank you for the 10, man. Either way, it's fine. We're still going for the same all-in we were going for before. We're doing a two-base all-in. Two-base all-in. Okay, so are we going to push right now? No. All we're doing with the initial harassment is we're trying to slow him down. That's all we're doing. And now he's pushing us. Okay, so he's pushing us now. So that it is what it is. Let's just go ahead and pull our SVs back for a second. Group up my shit. Again, we don't want to fight tanks. Let's put our Banshee in his mineral line. And uh, don't try not to run into his tanks. Try not to run into his tanks. Put another tank over here. Cover it. Back up. We're just trying to cover our mineral line. Okay, pull our, pull our SVs back again. Let's move our tank as well while we're at it. Move our tank up. Okay, let's go ahead and scan and see what he's got. He's got literally a tank. Let's just go. And now we have Stimpak as well. Let's Stimpak this shit down. Stutter step Stimpak right now. Stim, stutter, 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 stim again. Stutter, stutter, stutter. And now let's heal up our units and get ready to go get ready to go attack. So if you remember, I've said this multiple times, and I've also I've said this in multiple videos as well for Terran Protoss and Zerg, but I want you guys to know that all ins make the game way more chaotic. So if you look at this game and you go, Jesus Christ, this game looks like it's fucking hard to follow. Yeah, it, it's it's because he's also playing aggressive versus us playing aggressive. So it's chaos. It's just fucking chaotic. It's literally shit going on constantly everywhere. And you have to play like this when you both play aggressive. There is no way around that. This is how you play aggressive versus aggressive. But now let's go ahead and attack him. If we have to, we can follow this up with a third base. But now we're, we are now in a position where we need to do damage to him. So let's scan his third base. What has he got? He's got a lot of economy, but not much army. So let's uh, go punish that. Let's get in there and go fucking do some damage. Run right in there right now and start stimming his ass down. Let's siege that tank. Let's siege another tank. Stim our marines again because we lost our stim pack. Fall back to our tanks because he's pushing us with a bunch of his workers now. Keep making units the whole time. And we just killed a bunch of economy. So that, that worked out. Why did that work out the way it did? How come this game worked? What, what happened here? The reason why this game worked out, again, is because if we're in the early part of the game and we're going for double gas really fucking hardcore and we're going into Reapers, we're going into Fast Factory, we're going to get Hellions with it, which are also going to lead us into a starport. Ideally, I wanted to make a battle cruiser this game, but we fucking uh, messed it up, right? We didn't go, but we made two Banshees somehow. I don't know how I did that, but it's, it's whatever. So we're poking him. Uh... Again, we're just trying to get a scout off on his base, and we saw, oh, you expanded. Okay, that's going to definitely mean we have the aggressive lead in terms of gas and units. That's what it should mean, because that's you can't make an expansion and also make double gas like crazy like we did. So we should know. Like, for instance, what should I know here? Look at my command center, right? Look at my command center. Look at his command center. That looks pretty normal. He went command center early. That's, that's the trade-off. Okay, he's got a way faster command center than us. But you want to know the difference? Look at this starport. Look at that tech lab. He should not have the same looking starport. And if he does, it means he skipped making units somewhere along the line. Look at his starport. His starport doesn't have a tech lab, guys. His starport isn't even done right now. Our starport is done and it already has a tech lab on the way. So we're ahead in tech. He's ahead in economy. And whoever is ahead in economy should be the defender. And whoever is ahead in their aggressive side of things should be the aggressor, right? That's just how it should work. That makes sense. Makes no fucking sense to be aggressive and not attack, or it makes no sense to be um, defensive and then attack. So, for instance, the fact that he's attacking me right now doesn't make sense. And why does it not make sense that he's attacking me right now? Because I have more units than him, and that's only standard. Like it's only common sense here. Like, but again, here's the thing though: is he doesn't fully know what I'm doing because he didn't scout me at all, right? So he's playing this blind. He has no idea what I'm doing. I do know what he's doing. So I know that if he attacks me, he's playing uh, advantage to me. He's giving me the advantage if he attacks on my side of the map. 
because I have more fucking investment into aggression already. I should have faster units than he does because I am investing into units over economy. Okay? So that's how, that's why he should, this, the, the fact that he's here it makes no sense. He should be fucking defensive right now because he could, you know, all he's doing, he might not get punished for this. That's fair. That, that is a thing. But all he's doing by being here is he's risking a loss right now. He's risking the game by potentially losing these units and losing the game because he is playing defensive versus an aggressive player. So you notice we poke him a few times with, those, with our Hellion as he runs away and he has to take that damage because it does, you know, it would make, if he would have stayed there and fought me, he would have lost his units. And now we fall back because now we're on his side of the map. He now has defender's advantage uh, because this is what he should be doing as a defender, as an economy player, is defending his base, right? So we don't fully take the fight here. We just run away. And we're because we're setting up for more than just this. We have more Hellions coming. We have uh, Banshee coming. Blah, blah, blah. It makes no sense to throw these units away right now. We have more to it than just that. We're not going mass Reapers on three racks. Okay, and then now our Banshee comes out. And we start getting ready to go into Marine Tank Medivac. And again, this should have been a Battle Cruiser. Because I was making a Banshee during the time I made a Fusion Core. And the fact that I made a Fusion Core and made another Banshee means that th there's, it's fucking pointless that I did that. It's, literally, I made this building for nothing. This was a waste of a building. Because I didn't even make a BC. And the B all the BC was supposed to do, by the way, was slow his economy down even more, just like the Banshee did. So that I could have my timing have a higher chance to break him. And then kill units as well if they're in the area, because we can just be annoying. So we get into his base and we see, oh, there's some Marines. And we just, we literally engage them and we, we just kite micro against them. Because the thing about a Banshee is, let me explain Banshee micro against Marines, okay? Let me explain Banshee micro against Marines. We haven't really talked about that yet. So an air unit, guys, an air unit is a unit that has a glide feature. If you stutter step a ground unit... Let me show you on paint again. This will make more sense if I do it on paint. It always makes more sense when I do it on paint. This is what it looks like if you have a marine stutter step, a ground unit stutter step when you want to take a shot, okay? This is what it looks like. Legit. It goes like this. Move, attack. Move, attack. Move, attack. Move, attack. Move, attack. Notice how every time I say attack, it completely comes to a fucking stop. It comes to a 100% full stop, and then it attacks, and then when it starts moving, it moves. That's how ground units in this game work. Now, here's how air units work. Move, it moves like this, and then when it attacks, it does this. It does like, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to give you the exact, I don't know, it's hard to do it with the mouse and my, with my voice here. But the point I'm trying to make here is, <coughs> is when your air unit attacks, it glides at about half of its move speed or so while it's attacking, if you tell it to turn around. So if I tell it to move, and then if it's moving like that, and I say attack, it'll do this. It'll still move while it attacks, and then I say move again, and then I say attack. And then I say move again, and then it attacks. And move, and attack. It glides. It's because air units are not based off of like the full stop feature where like your units are planted on the, on the floor. It's like, imagine imagine that an airplane, or like a, a hel imagine a helicopter. Helicopter's a bit easier. Imagine if a helicopter goes like this. Okay, think about it like this. What if a helicopter lifts up, and then it starts going forward? And then you go, no, 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 helicopter, turn around. And what does it do? Does it immediately go, okay, going this way now? No, it goes like this. It goes, all right, and it glides a little bit forward, and then it slowly starts going back the other way. It's like this fucking, like, it's like physics, right? Like, it can't just immediately turn around. You have to like, it has to like slowly lose its momentum and then fucking gain momentum going the other way. So what happens when we tell our Banshee to attack is it still has the momentum of the dire direction it was going. It turns around, it shoots, and then it turns back around to continue moving where it was going. So air units never fully come to a stop. They decelerate a bit and then reaccelerate. That's what happens to air units. So you'll notice the Banshee, when I tell it to kite Marines, it never comes to a stop. And if a Banshee has a 6 range attack, and if a Marine has a 5 range attack, what we can do, in theory, is shoot Marines without letting Marines shoot us. We can actually take minimal shots from the Marine if we micro this properly. We want to get to max range from a Banshee to shoot a Marine, and then we want to accelerate away from the Marine, shoot it, which decelerates us a little bit, and then reaccelerate away from the Marine. 
Hey, we literally maintain the momentum going away from the Marine. That's all we do. Okay? And again, chat, once again, is complaining about everything that I'm saying, I feel like. <laughs> you guys are uh, awesome, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so notice how every time I take a shot, I'm always ready to run away. Take a shot, run away. Take a shot, run away. And you'll see every time there's there's like a subtle, like uh, glide feature that again the the banshee has. Every time it shoots, it literally just like floats a bit further in the direction it was going previously. <laughs> and as a result of that, we just ended up... We, we could actually be doing more damage, I'm not going to lie. It's because we mul we were trying to multi-prong Hellions into the base. But this is such opportunity right now for a Banshee to be killing SCVs. So we get back in there and we start killing some SCVs. He ends up dropping a turret. We just fly away from that because that turret... You don't want to kill it. It'll die by itself anyways. And we just keep killing SCVs. And now, overall... We definitely are behind. And why are we behind? Because our opponent's going three fucking command centers, right? And he's uh, playing a macro game. This is how it should be. This is why I usually recommend you play defensive macro. Because it gives you these, like... It doesn't put pressure on you to be aggressive. Uh, because you're already going to be in the lead if you just play defensive most of the time. But if your opponent plays aggressive, it puts pressure on them to do damage. So now we're the ones who are behind. Even though we just did a bunch of damage. That's like reverse of what I normally talk about, right? Now, suddenly, our opponent is able to actually macro to a decent degree. So even though he's lost three workers, and even though he's lost 10 units, he's actually still ahead by 19 supply. He's still ahead by 19 supply, right? He's still ahead by 19 supply. So we're definitely in the negative position right now of... Uh, you know, we're, we're, we need to get more fucking damage done or we're going to die. And then our reapers go into the base, and we do again. This this is what things we have to do. We have we have to do things like this if we're aggressive. So we saw there was a tank there. We killed all the marines in the main base, and we were just you know continuing aggression. Our reapers aren't doing anything now anymore. So we go into his base and try to do more damage again, and we end up killing more SCVs again. And now as a result of this, we have now killed a total of eleven SCVs. But Terran still now we we even ended up a little bit more with that attack. We were nineteen supply behind before. Now we're only 11 supply behind now. So we're evening it up a little bit. But again, this is that moment where I would say you're like right here, right now. I think our opponent right here threw the game right here. I literally think he threw the game with this attack. And the reason why is because he's doing this attack with zero information. This would make sense. This is a good example of concepts. This attack would make sense if my response... If, for instance, for in, like, think about this for a second. Think about this for a second. If I was a, as aggressive as I was, and then I threw away all of my units to try to kill his fucking SCVs, while he killed my units with his units, and let's say I had the same economy as him, or I had more economy than he did, because I actually, for some reason, thought it would be a smart idea to go for four fucking command centers right now. This would be intelligent then. This would actually make sense. Because if I have the same economy that he does, and I traded my army to kill his economy, it opens me up now to a counterattack because although I have more economy, I have no army to deal with his army because I threw it away. Okay? So if I throw 20 supply of units away to kill 20 supply of SCVs, and he has... So now he has 20 less SCVs and 20 more supply, he can attack me if we did the same kind of a build. If we both went three base versus three base. If I went four bases, I'm not even going to have as much uh, as much uh, army supply as he does because I'm playing even greedier than he is. So that would mean that I already have an SCV lead and I'm trying to kill more of his SCVs to throw my units away. So that would mean now I have like maybe five supply of army when he pushes me with like 20 supply of army, like a super small army. But now I already had an SCV lead and now it's even bigger. So now it's not like 20 SCVs lead before as it was before with three base or three base. Now it's like a 30 SCV supply lead because I went four fucking command centers. So again, I'm going to, this make, would make sense for him to attack like that. If I'm basing this game 
off of hoping he doesn't attack me because I have an economy lead. You guys need to understand this concept. This is so fucking important to know this. But if you fucking... If I attack his economy... Okay, if I attack his economy and I lose units to do it, and I'm trying to slow him down, and I am two base all inning him, and he goes for a third base macro build, if he attacks me, even though I lost units to kill a little bit of his units, but mostly kill his SCVs, by the time he gets to my base, if I'm two base all inning him, and he's three base macroing, and he crosses the map now, by the time he gets to my base, he'll have still a worker lead, which means he should be defending, and he'll have an army supply disadvantage because he'll have, let's say he has like 20 supply of army, and I have 30 supply of army because I have more production pumping units. I have five fucking racks already and a factory and a starport. He has uh, four racks, or sorry, no, sorry, he has three racks and a factory and a starport. So he's down by production against me by two barracks. He's got five, I've got seven. You don't want to take a fight against someone aggressively when they have more production than you. You want to extend the game longer because here's the thing. Look at the worker count. It's actually surprisingly close because I killed enough, I guess. Uh, but look at the third base. Even though our SCV count right now is similar, he has a third and a third command center that's already done that could be making SCVs at a faster pace than I can deal with. And it's also at orbital already. Where's my third? I do not have one. I'm all in, right? I'm aggressive. So why you need to realize you do not want to fucking attack an all-in player. So again, our opponent is the one, like we. I would say this right now. I do not think we won this game because we outplayed this guy like crazy or anything like that. I would not say that. I think we won this game because our opponent does not respect and identify the tempo of the game properly, and he attacked at the worst fucking time ever. And he gave me the game. He literally threw the game away because if he played defensive and sat there defensively. Again, it puts pressure on me that every single second that goes by, he's mining more than I am. And if I can't ever find a way to do damage, I'm getting further and further and further behind as time goes on. Which means that the longer the game takes to go on, and I just still haven't found a way to do damage yet, I'm getting even. it's becoming even harder to find ways to do damage because he's building army at a faster pace than I can build it. Because he has more economy at, later on. Like, I can, I can stay on five racks all game now. That's all I can maintain. As long Until I take a third base, I'm tapped out like this. Notice how I also have no engineering base. I have no armory. I have no upgrades with this. And I'm still tapping my economy like crazy. My opponent can make engineering base with this. He can now take upgrade leads against me. He can eventually go up to five racks like he is with, to match me. And then it's say he fully saturates his third base. And now he can take more racks again and then take a fourth base. That's why I say if you play defensive in this position, all you do is get further ahead over time. Because you will match this production and then you will surpass it if I can't find a way to do damage. And you want to know the easiest way to find a way to do damage? If you fucking push when you're not ready to push yet. When you're the one who should be defensive. So he, he's like, look at the supply right now. He's ahead by, still, like, he was ahead by like 20 a second ago. Now he's ahead by 10. I just made another round of units. He's still maintaining roughly a 10 supply lead. Now it's like 14 supply. He's maintaining a lead right now. This is good for him. But he's about to throw it all away. So remember that. He was about like 10 supply ahead roughly when this fight started. And it's almost over now. And suddenly the fight's over. And now we're even on supply. But you don't want to know the crazy thing? Remember what I just said? Where I said it's hard to find it. Like if my opponent can make units at the same pace that I can. Now look, he's got barracks 4 and 5 coming online. He's now making barracks 6 and 7. He just needs time and he can surpass me over time. But now look at the look at the worker count. He's got uh, 55. I've got 40. Look at the army supply. He's got 32. I've got 46. So now he just threw his army away. Which gives me an opportunity now to attack him. And I'm going to have an army advantage... Because even though I'm not going to be able to keep up with his future production later on, I now have a advantage in the current army size we have now. And I still, for a little bit longer in this game, for the next like maybe one minute, I'm still producing out of seven buildings. And he is still only producing out of five buildings. So that was, the, that was like an anti-timing right there. That was the worst time he could have attacked me. Because he still doesn't, even though he's finishing these buildings right now, roughly, he still has not had them activate yet. They're not actually making anything yet. They need more time to turn on. So that again, that was an anti-timing, and he threw the game because of that. We won this game not because we microed it like a god or we played the all-in like a badass. It's because our opponent did not recognize the position of the game as well as we do. And he's attacking again. 
Uh, they, they get, this, does, this is not the time to attack, right? This is, this is where people need to understand their position in the game, right? You should not be attacking someone who's two base all inning when you're going for a fourth command center. The only way you can attack someone when you expand like this is if your attack is a harassment. That is the only way that makes sense. Like if this was one medevac of Marines and it was designed to make me feel all in because you're going to kill my SCVs. That's the only time that makes sense. If you're moving your whole fucking army out to attack me, you're going to die. Because again, look at the army size. He's got 50. I've got 53. Not only that, I have now if he attacks me, I have defender's advantage where all my new units can pop into the fight right off the bat. Right when he shows up at my base. So this army size for him at my base right now is 23 marines, which is 23 supply, plus 2 medevacs, which is 27 supply, plus a viking, which is 29 supply, uh, plus a tank, which is 32 supply. 3, 2, 2, 2, and then 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. 32 supply army right here. What's the size of my army? My army right here is... Uh, that's 24 plus 8, which is... Uh, so remember that. 32 army supply for Terran at my base right now, right here. Okay? Because you had to walk across the map. Now, my army, again, that's already here right next to him. Again, marine-wise, is 24 plus 8 is 32 plus 4. Is 36 supply in marines only. Plus 2 tanks. Uh, what did I say? The marine, my, my marine was? Jesus Christ. I just forgot it for some reason. Sorry. I said it was 36, right? It's 24, 32, 36. Okay, yeah. 36 plus two tanks, which is six, is 42. Plus two medevacs is, uh, 46 supply. I have a 46 supply army right next to him with me here with a 32 supply army. And what is this going to do? It's going to fucking make him lose it. He's not going to beat that. That's a big, it's got like two thirds of what I have. I have a bigger army than he does by a lot. And I will run his ass over. And if I do that again, he throws the game away. So him attacking right now makes no sense. And then why is he attacking like that? It's because he doesn't scout enough and he doesn't realize that I'm just not fucking expanding. He, he would never, you would never want to attack a Terran who's two base all in when you're four basing it. It doesn't make sense. He threw, he literally threw the game away. So uh, sorry to pick on you, Sovereign. I, I know you were even gave me a love heart and shit uh, in, earlier in the game and stuff. I hope you don't find this offensive in any way. I'm just again trying to help you and everyone else that finds themselves in position like, like positions like this, which happen all the fucking time, because players don't understand the tempo of the game and they just always attack. This is not the time to attack if your opponent is not expanding and you are. So what happens is, is I get to his base, and even though I'm at a supply disadvantage, I win the game because now I have I he now gave me the opportunity to set up on his base. Which may be in the right reason why that happened is because he was out of position. So now I have a way better fight as a result of that. And he dies. I killed the fourth base. I killed all the SCVs at the third base. Even though I'm two base all in, now I have worker lead. And now I can actually, because our opponent, even if we don't kill our opponent right now, I could now start double NG bay and a third base. And then continue to contain him and kill all these depots in the front of his base. And again, I don't have to push all the way to his base. I just slowly annoy him, like maybe siege a tank right there. And fly a medevac over the area and just kill SCVs in the oh, natural. Oh, yeah. And I actually take a lead because of that. Uh, and then, the, you know, the other Terran falls apart and falls behind. And then I get a lead. And I can take this into a macro game from there with a lead. And now I'm the defender and he could be in an all-in position. Blah, blah, blah. Or I could just not take a third and just continue to pile on pressure until I try to kill him. Which is also fine. You could, do, you could play that way as well. Uh, like, if, for instance, I could load up these medevacs and, like, drop the main base now or some shit. I could be very aggressive if I, want, if I wanted to. But people just need to understand the the momentum and like the tempo of the game. Like you don't you don't fucking attack when you're being macro defensive, and you don't play defensive when uh, you're all inning someone. You need to. And you, how do you identify what you are? You compare your build to your opponent's build. So if I have four command centers and my opponent has two, the player who has two needs to attack, and the player who has four needs to defend. And if you break that rule and you do it the other way around, you're literally throwing the game in the garbage can. If I do, if I'm the one who has two bases. Versus four. So I have two. And if I go, I don't want to attack right now. I'm going to defend. All that's going to happen is by the time my opponent hits 200 supply, I'm going to be at like 130. And I'm going to be like, wow, your army is really big. Maybe I should have attacked earlier. V vice versa. If I'm the one who has four bases and I'm fighting oh, someone who has two, yeah. I'm going to throw my army away at his base and go, why did my army die right there? Maybe it's because he wasn't making four bases, right? And then I'm going to get counterattacked and I'm going to die. What you need to do is it's all about how well can the four base player defend himself versus how well can the two base player find an oh, opening to attack it. Yeah. That's what it really is. If you both if both of you know how the, to play the game from that point. 
Yo, Gamer Graham, thank you for the five gifted subs, dude. And the sub yourself for the 15 months. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Much appreciated, bro. Oh, thank you very much, dude. Yeah. So again, I hope this is making sense, guys. I hope you're uh, hope you're feeling good about it. Hope it makes a lot of sense for you. For you. Oh, hope it makes sense yeah. for you. Uh, yeah, it's starting again. Okay, I'll, I'll play. I don't want to. I don't really like all ins as much, by the way. Like the the proxy Marauder all ins probably a better one. The, the two base all in shit. I don't know. I feel like it's harder. It, it literally puts you into a harder position. Oh yeah. Like you know what it feels like. This is what it feels like. Okay, uh, the analogy I was gonna—I'm not gonna say it. The analogy I was gonna give you is really bad. I was—I'll I'll just give you an idea of what kind of analogy I was gonna say. I was gonna give you an analogy oh, about bench pressing, yeah. and I was gonna talk about how one guy just periodically adds weight to the Time bar. Time for the in-depth explanation, and, lol. And one guy I was your poor opponent from GGS. And one guy adds like he just dips his hands in butter and tries to hold the bar with a lot of weight on it. It, it, it made no sense. That analogy made no fucking sense, so I just kind of stopped it. But yeah, I just want you to... Th thank you for the sub, by the way. Up, down, uh, charm, keck. Thank you so much, man. I just want you guys to know, though, that if you play the aggressive style of, like, two-basing it, it is really hard, really fucking hard to be in advantageous positions with that style because it's all based off of how well you can attack somebody, which makes the game harder. It just makes the game harder. Okay, so look at our opponent this game, right? He's going for a one-gas expand, guys. So you know what? This dude is its back to the same thing as it was last time. He better make a fucking bunker. Otherwise, we are going to shit on him. My donation didn't show up. Yo, uh, Sean, thank you for the two. I have it set to five because I'm trying to avoid getting interrupted 500 times. If I leave it on $1 donos and one bit, 100 bits, uh, people just take it upon themselves to, to like ha play a mini game while I make beta game series, which is trying to interrupt me as many times as physically possible while I'm trying to explain a concept. <laughs> and... Uh, I do think a lot of people out there will find TTS, which means text to speech, annoying over time. If, if like, if it happens once or twice, people find it funny and they're like, "Oh, that's really funny vibe." But if it happens like over and over and over and over, people are like, "Okay, can this kind of stop?" Because it's getting kind of annoying. We're gonna talk about what just happened as well in the replay. This is huge. What's happening right now? We're doing so much damage to him, and it, again, it's the same thing. Our opponent's playing a macro build and he's being aggressive. You cannot play like that. So we're getting way more damage done than he did. We're killing like four SCVs for losing one SCV. You cannot do shit like this. And now if he attacks me again, we're going to meet up with our Reaper, with another Reaper, and he's going to lose his Reaper. So watch. If he chases me, if he's chasing me, guys, he's not respecting the game tempo properly. And we're gonna that Reaper is now dead because the second Reaper is going to be here, and now he's going to lose it. So, you can't play the game that way. You, you can, like, we'll talk about why that made sense in a minute when this game is over. You cannot play aggressive when you're defensive. You can't be like, I'm going to expand, and then I'm going to go aggressive and make a reactor. People do this shit all the time, and it's, this is why, if you've ever heard a really high-level player talk about things like, my opponent's a fucking coin flipper. My opponent's so, he does clueless. It's because of shit like this. It's because they don't respect the tempo of the game. That's all it is. It's it's because you have there's a there's a rhythm of the game that has to be respected. If you don't respect it, you are gonna have some problems. Now, did he make a bunker? If he didn't make a bunker, he's gonna take some serious damage right now. There's no bunker, so it means he can't actually. Okay, he's got a he's got a fucking cyclone though. That cyclone's pretty juicy. So let's go ahead and back up. Let's get uh, our other uh, hellion over here, and let's we'll try and reengage that cyclone in a second. Let's go ahead and make a raven and a barracks right there. Also, we also don't want to be walling our, our wall here. That doesn't make any sense. Because, again, it's tearing and There could be tank pushes and shit. Okay, now let's try Let's try and push again. Let's try and get one of our Hellions locked onto. Because Reapers will do more damage to a Cyclone than a Hellion would. Okay. Hello, hello. Hi, Mr. Cyclone. We're going to stutter step towards it. Okay, we killed the Cyclone. Let's jump into his main base now. Let's just scout him. So that attack overall... Was it terrible? No, it was, it was whatever. It was kind of mediocre. I got a nice scout of his base as well. So I oh there we go, third command center. So now I know exactly what's going on. This is going to become a macro, a standard macro game. Um, and our opponent does have a third command center faster than us, 
We, we can tell that based off of our scout. I do think I have more SCVs than him, but he has a third command center faster than us. So what should we do? We should play harass. We should be aggressive here because we're behind in terms of uh, uh, overall expansions. But if we harass his SCVs, nothing punishes us for doing that. Nothing punishes us. Like, this is a good choice right here, what we're doing. So if we fly into his base and we just simply do something like, for instance, I'm going to drop an auto turret right here. And now let's leave. Do I have to attack him anymore? Nope. But that's going to make a little bit of a difference in my advantage right now because it makes sense. And I just killed like five SCVs with that. Four SCVs with that. It's all good. Let's go ahead and go into a couple of engineering bays ourselves now. And now again, even though, even though my opponent's going to be able to make SCVs faster than us, we have the ability to have more SCVs currently because we just have, we killed more of his SCVs than we lost. That's all it is. And now we can play defensive. Now this game has been reset entirely. Like, we, we, I would say we actually have a little bit of a lead right now overall. A tiny bit of a lead. Because we've done decent damage in our opponent. Because we also did damage with the Reaper too. you got to realize that. Our Reaper early game did damage, which also adds to the effect of doing damage later as well. It, it piles on itself. Again, we'll break this game down again when this game is over. And now we have a third. And now we can take more of our racks. But if I had to guess, if I had to guess, I would say right now we have a worker lead of probably like six. And we have a supply lead of probably like ten. And the reason why I know that is because we've done damage that has been minor so far. But it sets the pace for the game that goes on after this as well. Which kind of fucks over our opponent a bit. Okay, let's take our third base. Let's take some uh, barracks as well behind this. Take another barracks right there. Let's go to like six racks or something. Cool. Tell a couple of SCVs to go back to the middle line. Tell a couple of SCVs to go up to this middle line. Rally some new SCVs to that middle line as well. Pull off eight and go to it. Let's send two back because I sent too many. Grab some depots. Make an armory so we can keep upgrades going. Get combat shield. Drop mules. And keep making units out of our, our out of our buildings. Now let's put... like, uh, Okay, he's, he's poking us over here. Let's try and guard that. Put our, get our army more centralized in the front of our base too. Like we're, we're kind of like in the middle of fucking nowhere right now. So that's kind of poor positioning by us. Let's get one marine, go there, shift it out. 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 And what we just did is we just guarded our base now. Let's get rid of these rocks while we're at it so we can defend our base even easier if he pushes in. Because what if he pushes from here and we're down here and I don't want to go through a choke point. Let's get some more depots. Okay, and let's have one Marine go check his third. Have another Marine go check his other potential third. And we're just chilling. Now he's pushing. Okay, guys, he's pushing me. So let's go ahead and scan and get ready for it. He's pushing in. We have a Raven, which we're going to take out of our control group. And now we can make turrets or we can make a, or we can make a disable. Either way works. But here's the thing. Do I have to push that right now? No, I don't. Wait until it gets to like the last second. Watch this shit. If I wait till like the last second, you know what that means? I get as many units as possible. Okay, now he's he's pushing. He's he's like la it's like right now he's here. Let's go ahead and scan one more time. Get my Raven to go first. Raven go first. Disable two tanks. Stim pack my Marines. Siege my tanks. Stutter step forward. And now the chances of us breaking this fight are going to be a lot higher. Okay, he actually dropped a lot of turrets there, so that was good by him. Legit, that was actually pretty good by him. So that was a bit of a wash. We both kind of like lost everything. Okay, let's try and repair our command center. And let's try and get rid of this over here. Keep making units. Don't overdo it. Don't freak out. Don't like, don't panic and stop building shit. Okay, we can try and repair our command center again. And now we can, we, the, because this is getting kind of intense, let's just pull the SCVs and let's go for it. Pull the SCVs, A move them, stim pack marines behind it, stutter down his tanks. Okay, that was overall a pretty good fight for him, honestly. He used Ravens really well there, so he took a good fight. No joke. So I mean, he, did, he did a good job. And now, again, we're just gonna, we're gonna fall back to the same thing we've been doing before. Take two, two upgrades, continue building our shit. And uh, we're, we're gonna have a little bit of a hiccup in our economy now because that was a bit of a heavy ass attack we just absorbed right there. So now we need to, uh, you know, just try to recover as best we can. Try to use our, try to maintain as much production out of our base as possible. But yeah, it's we definitely took a big fucking beating right there. 
the fight didn't go as well as we would have wanted to because he actually microed that pretty well. Like his Raven usage was really good there. Okay, let's go ahead and transfer SUVs. Take our uh, gases out our third. Keep making units. Keep making tanks. Keep making. Okay, now he's pushing this base. So he's being. He's this guy is once again another Terran that's playing super aggressive. It is what it is. Let's send out like one marine to the left, one marine to the front, one marine to this front over here, and then one more marine like over here to the front on the side. Let's also get a uh, second factory in a minute. What was that? We just literally walked over something on the side of the map. There's two marines. Okay, so let's send over a couple of marines to go kill those. It's all good. Marines go kill that. One marine stay over here. One marine stay over here. Again, we just want to know where he's pushing. And it looks like he's pushing from the front of our base. See how he's pushing marines as well all over the place? It's because positioning is everything in this matchup right now. If you get out of position and you let tanks siege up on you in the wrong time at the wrong place, you just get fucking owned. So one marine go up here. We're playing a defensive game. Now he's pushing the bottom side of the map. And that's that's just a lot of medevacs, guys. There's a lot of uh, I don't see anything else with those medevacs. Is there an army with that? I don't know. Okay, there is now an army going with it. Is that a whole army? No, it's not a whole army. So let's do this. Let's send down some units. Not all my units, just some units. Some units right now. Down to go help here at this base. Okay. And then we can guard the rest of the front of our base over here with another army. Okay, he's actually pushing my main leg right now pretty hard. Run these SUVs away. We can make new marines come in and try to defend this base. Just keep making SUVs. And we've defended it. Okay. Okay, we're fixing our base. And now we need to get a marine in the front again as well. Marine in the front, marine in the front, marine in the front. And there he is, it looks like. He's actually pushing the front of my base right now. Let's siege our tanks and get ready for it, just like last time. Let's get our 3-3 three, three upgrades going. And now he's going up and around. He's going up and around right now. Did you notice that? But he's scanning me, so he might not commit to it. It's all positioning. So he's backing up. And now here's what you can do in, this, in these types of positions, when you're like, oh my god, there's so much pressure here. Do what he did. Do the exact same thing. We'll reverse it. Let's send a medevac up and around. Let's just send a medevac up and around the fucking map. Let's make it like a turret over here. A couple turrets. Repair this PF. And now he's pushing the bottom side. So that's why you split marines around. Now I know I'm going to get attacked right here. Are you there? We can also make a couple sensor towers now. So we can save ourselves some scans. And he's not pushing. So we put another marine up there. And we go back to where we just were. Because now it looks like he's trying to relocate again. You have to, it's like a dance of playing back and forth with your opponent, of not allowing yourself to be caught with your fucking pants down, essentially. So let's put one more Marine up here, and we're chilling. We're just waiting for the, uh, the next fight to begin. So there he is. Yeah, let's go ahead and start another command center up here. And now he's pushing. Let's siege our tanks. Let's stim pack our Marines, and let's go for it. Get on top of those tanks if we can. That'd be huge. Keep making units the whole time. Okay. And now let's go reinforce our tanks with new units and grab our group two. And let's go drop his base. Okay, he's got a planetary right there. Let's go like this. How about we drop one medevac right here? Okay. Now we can be like, hey, Marines, stop. But you don't want to do too many because you can get in range of the planetary. Now let's go into his main. And let's drop you right here. Let's kill his upgrades. Do whatever we can. Meanwhile, look at what he's doing right here. We see him right there, right? He's being annoying. But now... He's having a panic attack because he's like, fuck, there's units in my base. And now this is a problem for him. Let's kill his armory. Let's kill his engineering base. Let's fucking kill his upgrades. It's super important to kill that. Look what he's doing. Same thing to me, right? He's trying to attack me too. So let's just select all army, attack the main base, go back to this army, stim pack it again, and kill another upgrade building. These units over here died to a fucking PF. It's all good. And now our units in the main base come over here and we just finish off cleaning off the rest of the shit. And there we go. Now we're good. And we can come right back now to our other base. So, we, again, this is where the TVT just gets chaotic as fuck, right? 
And now we just we let's select all army and say, hey, our whole army, go to the back to my fucking tanks in front of my base. And let's reset. Hit a fucking reset button here really fast. Notice how this guy's also dropped here like two times. Let's add a couple turrets here to fuck those over. And let's fix our economy. Put SCVs on new bases that need new, uh, new SCVs. And now I've relocated myself. I have a lot of boys ready to do shit. We're 3-3 three, three upgrades. Our 3-3 three, three upgrades are done. We can get level 3 vehicle weapons. Let's go and drop a couple mules up here. We can even make another sensor tower up here on this side. Get level 3 vehicle weapons. And uh, yeah, we're just chilling again. Our army is grouping up again. Transfer a couple of CVs down to this base. Let's just, uh, or uh, sorry, up to this base. Okay, go re repair this right now. Repair this base right now. It'll, it'll die otherwise, right? Get up there and save it too. Siege this tank. Stem our marines. He's engaging. This is when I said, remember how you don't want to engage a fucking planetary? You don't want to engage a planetary, guys. It's a fucking meat shield. We just talked about this five minutes ago, or like, like more like 50 minutes ago, or an hour ago. You don't want to fucking engage a planetary. When your opponent's army is also right there, you're just literally giving them the advantage by going, I'll attack a bunch of your planetary while a lot of the marines just don't die. It's not a good idea. Okay, let's go ahead and take another base. Why? Because our bases are getting really highly saturated again, and we need more SCVs to go to more bases. Bases are mining out. Okay. Keep making army, keep making army, keep making army. How about we send one marine on the south side? And we send one marine on the north side. Why are we doing this? I need to fucking read on the position of the game right now. I don't know. Is he is he gonna attack me again and be all in his fuck and just waste his units? Or is he does he actually literally own every fucking base and I need to have a fire under my ass to go attack faster than what I'm doing right now? We need to know the difference here. Okay, let's go ahead and make like maybe a couple turrets here as well while we're at it. Turret, turret, just to fuck over medevacs and shit. So no, top bases, no bases. Bottom bases, no bases, guys. You want to know what that means? There's a fire under his ass because I have more than he does. So let's do this now. Let's make a, another starport. Let's make like three more racks. And now I have better production than he does. And now I can set up an attack somewhere on his base. I have more production than he does because I have more bases than he does. Oh, there he, we just found him right now. Okay, so let's zone him for a second because this is a great way to take TVT. Hey, he's pushing up there with a marine. It's annoying. He's pushing into this area. Let's siege our tanks, step back our army, and they move the area. This is a big tank on tank fight right here. And do you want to know why that fight went so well for us? I can tell you right now. That fight went so well for us because we just killed his last army and then he decided to attack again. And why did he do that? It's because he's panicking. It's because he's getting overwhelmed. He's like, fuck, I got to do something. And it wasn't the time to do that. It just wasn't the time to make that attack. It didn't make any sense. So now we're, now we have no retention. Now I don't have to be as safe. There's going to be no army that defends his base anymore. Now I just push. Now I just fucking go for it because I'm like, cool. Well, you're going to have nothing to defend your base now. So this is a guaranteed dead base and a guaranteed dead amount of SCVs here. And this is a guaranteed GG in the next five seconds. Because now he has no money. Okay, he's trying to counterattack us with liberators and shit. It's whatever. It's uh, it's kind of annoying, but it's all good. Stimpak is natural. Let's set up tanks in the base over here. This base is going to be fine. Again, our opponent's just kept being kind of desperate now. He's, he's dead. Uh, but yeah. He's like... What is his what is his goal right now with the, with this little push right here and the, like things like this liberator right here and the fact that he's going liberators in the first place? His goal is he wants me to be overwhelmed because I don't understand my position in the game and I go, oh my god, liberator, kill it! Oh my god, liberator, kill it. tank, kill it! Oh my god, liberator again over here, kill it! He wants me to run around a lot because if I run around and chase liberators, I don't attack him then and then he's gonna be okay. But it doesn't fucking matter if we get attacked by a Liberator or two here or there. And if I have a little bit of units like this to defend my base, if I know for a fact that we're maxed out and we have a superior economy, and I can now also remax all day. So now when you're late game like this, so remember how early game, I want to make this sound not confusing. Let me not get ahead of myself here and say this really fast. Early game, when you're developing the 200 supply, if you invest into economy and your opponent invests into attacking you, you do not want to attack when you're the macro player. You do not want to attack. However, when you're in late game, when you're the one who has already invested into economy, past tense now, it's already done, 
And now you not only have a maxed out army, but you also have more money than your opponent, which means even if you take a even trade, you're winning the game because you have more money to replace with. You should attack then. So late game, when you're the macro player, yes, you should attack because you can overwhelm your opponent with your bank account. Early game, when you're macroing, you should not attack because you have not developed that bank account yet. You're in the process of developing it. So right now, late game, now that I know I have more bases than he does, and I am maxed out, and I have a lot of fucking production. I made extra racks, extra starport, and I have an extra factory. I have all these kinds of buildings right now. Look, like, look at the building t uh, total. We have a total of two starport to two starport, two factories for us versus zero for my opponent. I guess I killed it. What the fuck was this factory? Oh, it was right there probably. It was probably one factory. I think I just killed it. Yeah, I, it, was, it was one factory. So it's two factories for us versus one factory for our opponent. And then on the barrack side of things, it's nine racks for us versus seven for our opponent. So we're great. We're good to go. That's super good. We know, uh, we know that we have more production than our opponent. And even if we take an even trade where we both lose everything, I remax faster, which keeps him in defense all game. And that means that I'll keep him defensive while I take the map and make him starve out to death. Or unless he just dies to my pushes. I'll always remax faster, which means I can push faster. And I always have an advantage. Uh, five, how come you don't use scans uh, in the mid game or the late game more often? Because it's tempo of game. For instance, let me tell you an example, okay? Let me give you an example. Let's remember when I said we need to understand our position. Let's send a marine around the side. Let's send a marine around the side and let's start remaxing. We need to figure out if how greedy this guy is being or how not greedy he's being. Would you rather I just scan every fucking base at that point instead? You know what I mean? Like there's no need to fucking scan everything in the game. You don't need to do that. Because if you uh, this is it goes right back to bronze to platinum. If we can identify what an economy looks like throughout the game we understand the positioning of the game so here's an example if i go oh he doesn't have a base there okay well guess what i don't have that base either okay well he doesn't have a base there well guess what i do have that base so automatically by default by default think about this for a second by default if i scout that he doesn't have as many bases that I do. And we just had multiple fights in the middle of the game where all of our armies kept dying repeatedly. Like we literally traded, 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 traded. We kept remaking armies that died. And every time we fought, the second, the third, the fourth time, what was it? It was more Marine Tank Medevac Viking. More Marine Tank Medevac Viking. It was the same fucking army repeatedly. You want to know what that means? If I know I have more economy... And I have not been able to afford a full-on tech switch yet. Even though I have more money than he does. You know what that can guarantee? He doesn't have a tech switch. So people out there that are like, Well, what if he's going fucking Battlecruisers now or something like that? Well, guys, if he's going Battlecruisers, I want to tell you something right now. He's fucking dead. Because if I can't afford a maxed out Battlecruiser army right now, and I have more money than him, how can he? If I have $100 and he has 50 and we're both trying to buy something that costs 150 guess what neither one of us can afford it but i'm closer still you know what i mean like you can, you don't need to worry about his tech because you already know what it is because there's limitations in the game and why are there limitations in the game because we know how much fucking money he has we know this dude is not on fucking three more expansions than i have now for instance if i scouted holy fuck this guy has a base there and a base there and a base there he's on like eight bases and i'm on five yeah, that's, that's a problem. I should probably go kill those bases. And then I would probably want to scan his base and go, are you still going bio? Are you are you still going bio? Because you got a lot of money. Holy shit, you have a lot of money. You don't need to fucking scan everything to know everything. You can literally deduce it from what's happened already. This is the difference between actually understanding how to play the game and just like if you because the thing is, is if you know how to play the game, this is this is what I'm trying to teach you guys. If you know how the game works with economy, you know what the limitations are of an economy. And if you don't know how to play the game, then yes, 
Someone who panics and goes, scan, 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 scan. Where is his bases? Where is his fucking army? And what does it look like? Because you don't know how to read an economy. But if I know for a fact that this dude has fucking lost armies just like I have because we've been trading and trading and trading. And then now I scout bases and go, oh, I have more bases. All it means that is that if I don't have 10,000 fucking resources in the bank, so I could not have made like six starports and made like 20 fucking battlecruisers or something like that, which is expensive as hell, by the way. Uh, it's not like, oh, it's a thousand minerals to do a battlecruiser transition. <laughs> no, it's literally like probably 8K minerals to do that. Each BC is 400, and you're going to make uh, 20 of them, right? Or like 18 of them. Times that by 10 only. It's 4,000 minerals to make 10 battlecruisers. Not, not to mention, you're getting upgrades off of the armory. Not to mention, you're also getting lots of starports. You're going to spend roughly like eight to 10,000 fucking minerals to do a BC transition. I don't got that kind of money right now. So how, how the fuck does he, if he has less than me? I don't need to worry about a tech switch. Um, like at the most, it's like he could make a couple liberators like this, right? Which that's not a big deal because I have lots of Marines that can fight that. I have Vikings that can fight that. I don't give a shit about a couple liberators. That's not the end of the world, but I know for a fact he's limited because he has less money than me. So I can already rule out all of these possibilities. And the only thing I need to scan now is to find out where he is and sensor towers help with this and Marines that are staggered help with this. So, for instance, if I go back here right now, look at when I go back here right now, really fast. Go before the fight started. If I have staggered units around my base while I'm playing defensive, and I don't see them in my sensor towers, I know that we're okay, right? And this is before he took the fight. Now, look at this, right? Look at look at this for a second. Just look at this for a second. Now, if I were to tell you at this point in the game, what should I be doing? Should I be scanning everywhere to go? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? No, I shouldn't be scanning everywhere. That's fucking a waste of your money. Scans are good at giving you more income. They're giving you more bank. What I should be doing is I should be actually leaving a Marine just like he is, like this, around the map so that I have an idea where he goes. We didn't do it at this point in the game, so it's a little bit fucking risky, a little bit dicey. But by chance, once we maxed out and once we scouted the map and we went, okay, no bases there, no bases there, no bases there. I have more bases than you. I know I'm ahead of you in bases. I have more I have I have more command centers active than you do right now. If that's the case and I decide to push him, that's fine. I, I, I do actually have one marine on the top of the map though, and I, I do have one marine on the bottom of the map. So we are scouting a little bit. We do at least know he didn't go around the side of the map. So if we go through the middle of the map, there's a higher chance we're gonna run into him, which is only normal because we just scouted the sides and he's not there. And then what do we see? I see him pushing me. So should I rush into that right now and go attack him? Not necessarily. The reason why is because tank versus tank, you want to zone out your opponent more than just chase your opponent. If you chase them, you get zoned out. So if I go back and now defend my base, we now have the ability to defend the attack one more time, which can then open up a counterattack again. Uh, and we know for a fact... Loving the series vibe. Thanks so much again. I finally made Diamond 1 after being hard stuck Diamond 2 for almost a year. Yo, thank you very much, uh, Sword Set Zero, for the 10. And uh, congrats, dude. Hell yeah. Good shit. So, again, this is that point in the game, right, guys? Think about this for a second. Think about this for a second. My opponent and I... Like, so, you guys got to realize, this is, where, this is where a lot of players who don't know StarCraft don't know that this is a thing, okay? Let me explain this to you in, in paint. Look at this. Ready for this? This is a staircase. And you want to know what this represents? This is the first five minutes of the game. This is the next five minutes of the game. This is the next five minutes of the game. This is the next five minutes of the game. Or whatever you want to make the staircase as. It's parts of the game that tell us what's going on. And players that don't fucking think about this. And they go like this. Well, I'm here right now. This is all I'm going to think about. Those players are playing incorrectly. Because anyone out there that goes, 
well, vibe. What if he has mass fucking uh, banshees or mass battlecruisers or, uh, you know, what if he's got, uh, you know, an army that's just like something you're not ready for anymore? What if he just literally has mass BCs and you got marines, dude, and you got a lot of tanks? Well, then you're just going to die, right? Well, here's the thing. I know he doesn't have mass BCs here because I know here we did a uh, Reaper attack with each other and I killed SCVs. I know I slowed him down behind me, so my staircase was, a was ahead of his. I know I was ahead a little bit. Then, right here, I know that my staircase is, again, around what his is because even though I was ahead in economy here, what happened here? He did a tank push on my third base with his Ravens, and I was like, holy fuck, he microed that really well. Did I lose my third? No. Did I lose SCVs, though? Yes. But I was ahead earlier, so the game balances out a bit more there, and he also lost his whole army. I didn't lose my whole... I lost most of my army, but he lost most of his army, too. He got away with a couple of medevacs. It's whatever. It kind of was a reset right there. We both kind of, the game kind of stabilized right there, I would say. He might have a minor lead, but it, will, it mostly stabilized because you could say maybe I lost a little bit more SCVs than what the difference was. But overall, I feel like the game mostly stabilized. Then what happened here? The game stabilized again here multiple times with multiple waves of tank marine fighting tank marine in the middle of the map. No bases for either player died. Then what happened here? Now this is where we're at right now. So if I know things died, things died, things died, everyone's replacing things that died, and what does my money look like right now? It's 950 minerals and 2,000 gas. You know what that means? It means that I know I can't do a transition, and I just also confirmed my opponent doesn't have more bases than we do, which means if I can't afford a transition, he can't afford a transition. So we think about the whole fucking game leading up to the point that we're at. We don't just look at the last two minutes of the game and go, he could do anything. There could be anything going on right now. We don't even know what this is capable of. No, we know what he's fucking capable of because we're, we're literally playing the same game. We pay attention to the whole fucking game leading up to that point. Thanks. And now here's another reset. This is another reset right here. And now... We're fucking crushing face right here. And why is that happening? How come that's happening? Well, for one, it could be because maybe it's because we're out macroing him in terms of unit supply. Number two, it, be, it could be because he's engaging into fucking siege tanks before we do. And it's giving us big advantages, right? Like he's running into tanks like crazy and taking lots of shots from tanks. Like so before the fight's even started, he's already lost like a big chunk of his bio. And he's running into tanks again. He's getting owned by tanks like crazy. Now let's look at his upgrades. He's 2-2. We are 3-3. Three, three. Let's look at his tank upgrades. 0-0. Zero, zero. We are 2-0. Let's look at his Viking upgrades. 0-0. Zero, zero. Our Vikings are also 0-0. Zero, zero. Like, we have upgrade advantage. We have supply advantage. We have uh, engagement advantage by the fact that he runs into tanks like crazy. So he's he definitely is getting fucked here and there a few ways, uh, uh, you know, left and right, right? But that's why we're having wins here. That's why we're taking leads here. But if I'm taking leads, we know what he's fucking doing, guys. Again, this, is, this is the hardest thing to teach people in this game is people think that everyone is capable of everything at any point in time. Like, for all you know, this guy could have a mothership and carriers, right? You're like, fuck, I don't know. Maybe he's Protoss. <laughs> well, how, like, it's ridiculous. But people out there are like, oh, vibe, don't be ridiculous. We know he's Terran. Well, to me, you telling me that he's going mass battlecruisers is fucking ridiculous because you can't fucking afford that. It's just as ridiculous as saying he's Protoss. And once you get to understand the game like that, once you can actually think about throughout the game how you develop from beginning to end and you don't need to panic about what could happen and you know what is happening like it's no it's no longer possibilities and it's guarantees now because we establish control of what we know about his economy we know where his bases are and we know what we have and we compare and we compare our current investment to his possible investment we can have estimated good guesses very educated guesses as to what he's capable of which clearly means there's no fucking way he's got a transition army now. And then, yeah, since he loses that army, we should just push, right? Just pushing right now makes a lot of sense because he threw everything away and there's no way he can defend himself. And we're already still maxed out again. And then he goes for counters. So hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Because I, I really do think the biggest problem, the biggest problem, let me say it like this. 
The biggest problem of players in StarCraft 2 that are not confident, like their lower level players, like Diamond, Low Masters, maybe even like Low GM even has this problem sometimes. Not everyone, but some do. Players don't actually know what's going on until they see it. They have to see it to know because they don't know how to estimate what's going on. But players who are really good at StarCraft can literally estimate the, what's happening in the game before they see it. And then when they see it, they confirm it. They're like, yep, knew it. I knew you were doing that because I thought you were doing that because it looked like you were doing that. And then they confirm it when they see it. They don't just have to see it to believe it, right? They don't go, well, I don't know what you're doing until I physically see it with my eyes. That's a, that's a technique that takes a while to get good at. It's not hard. It's not, or it's not easy to do that. It's definitely hard to do that. But it's something that uh, is definitely great if you can manage to do that, though. All right, let's do... We'll do an all-in game again one more time. Again, I don't want to do this build that much. Just because it's fucking ridiculous. Uh, I'll, this will probably be the last time I do this in this video. Uh, but we haven't done it in a while. We haven't done it once today in the Twitch video. But for YouTube, we've done it because it's the same video for YouTube. But I'm going to do the Marauder Proxy. Let's do it one more time. We'll do the Concussive Shell Marauder Proxy. And then, yeah, yeah you guys will get to see an all-in that is fucking ridiculous. So we make a Barracks. We're now making uh, our second barracks. Stop making SCVs for a second now and make our second barracks. And then we'll take our gas right away, right after. Make our second barracks. Take our Don't make an SCV. Take a gas. Make an SCV after you take the gas. And then immediately make another gas while this SCV is in construction. Because otherwise we won't be able to afford concussive. Okay, make SCV. And now tell these SCVs to come home and mine minerals at the base. He's going to scout this, so he's going to have an idea what's going on. Okay, let's go ahead and make an orbital command. And let's go ahead and put another SCV on the other gas. We want to mine 50 gas in total out of gas number two. Just 50. Just 50. And now let's go ahead and make a depot as well so we don't supply block. So get that gas, or got tech up going. This is mined almost 50 gas. Once we get to 2200, it's 50 gas. So, and now there we are. Now we've mined 50 gas. Take them off. Return the cargo before they, don't don't waste your gas. Make sure you turn it in. And now we're going into Marauder Proxy with Concussive. So start our second Marauder and then start Concussive right away. Second Marauder and now make Concussive immediately. Now make another depot while we slowly make SCVs. We're going to wait till we have four Marauder. Okay, let's make another Marauder. There we go. Now, when this fourth Marauder spawns, we're going to go. And now we're going to make another depot when this SCV is done so we don't supply block. Let's make it like over here or something. That's all good so we can see for future prisms. Now. Now, right now, concussive's done. Fourth Marauder's out. Now we go. And now rally our barracks forward so we can actually bring more reinforcements faster. And now we can slowly start expanding our tech to higher values. Okay, there you go. GG. Like, this build, again, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. It's cheap tactics. It's, I, it's not, you're not going to learn a whole lot being like, ooh, fuck yeah. This is like learning how to have an orgasm, right? You're just like, I'm going to masturbate all day now. <laughs> Don't go blind by Marauder proxying people, okay, guys? Don't do it so much you literally go fucking blind, okay? There's not much to this build. It's literally just you show up. If they have not prepared properly and you have concussive Marauders, you just fucking win. It's a ridiculous all-in. It's very counterable. It's not like, oh, it wins every time no matter what. It just needs to be countered. That's all it is. And for Protoss players and Zerg players that are always, or Terran players that are like, how do you counter it? We've already fought. We've already talked about how to counter this build for Terran earlier. It's a, literally a bunker on your fucking ramp, and you beat it. And for Protoss and Zerg players, again, we'll talk about it in those in those series. How to like really thoroughly break it down and how to beat it. So uh, don't get ahead of yourselves and be like, "Tell me, I'm a Protoss. How do I stop that?" Go watch the Protoss beat a gym series. I guarantee you, I'll get Marauder proxied at some point, and I'll defend it, and that's how we'll deal with it. You're watching the wrong video if you want to learn. Like, So I know Twitch people are just watching it live. 
But if you're like, clearly, if this is a YouTube video and you're a Protoss player, you're not going to watch fucking Terry and B to Jam to learn how to play Protoss. Uh, like, you might watch it just to learn more about the game, which is totally fine. That's definitely great. If you want to learn more about the game as a whole and you want to learn about Terran, then yeah, watch the Terran video. But if you want to learn Protoss, you don't want to watch a Terran video for that. Go watch the Protoss video. There's lots of information in the Protoss video. It'll help you with lots of stuff. Why the fuck do I even macro? Because I'm telling you right now, if I played you, if I played you and you did a Marauder Proxy to me, I would bitch slap your ass under the floor and then you would be like, wow, this build sucks. The only reason why it works like that is because people just don't scout properly and they don't understand what they're up against and they don't think about what the, the possibilities are enough. Because again, if I saw somebody going for double fucking gas, no barracks in their base, I'd be thinking, yeah, we're getting proxied by either Reapers or Marauders right now. I would not be thinking, I'm going to make no defense with the Nexus. It's just the, the difference of scouting properly. Okay, this game. Uh, we just played a bio game against Zerg last time. This time, this game, this time, let's go mech. And let's do something similar to what we did last time. Um, actually, no, you know what? No, 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 no. I already showed you. I already showed you battle mech. I'm going to show you a different, a whole different kind of mech. I'm going to literally show you a completely different, like, 180 on the mech. We're going to go Hellion BC into just, like, Tank Thor. Let's do something completely different than I've already done. Let's not do battle mech. Battle mech is, uh, I already explained it thoroughly. Let's talk about traditional mech. The power mech. <laughs> get an orbital command get ourselves a reaper in just a second get ourselves a command center as well at the natural we're scouting with an SCV to find out what he's doing now again just like I talked about last time if you go for builds that go for fast hellions guys you have to be aware that your Reaper needs to not die until at least you confirm you're not getting Roach all in. If your Reaper dies because you're trying to kill a drone and you don't even care about scouting for Roaches, you're playing the game really risky because you don't know if your opponent's going to all in you or not. And if he does and you don't have defense against that, you fucking die. You will literally die with Hellions against Roach all ins if you don't scout properly. So what is our goal right now? Now that I know he's expanded, he can still two-base Roach all in me, and my goal is to go for Hellions... My overall goal should be, I'm going to take my gas, I'm going to take my reactor on my barracks after I make one marine so I can guard, like, pr like push away his overlords if they happen to be in the area. And I'm going to poke him and I'm going to scout him as in, where is your fucking gas invested going into? He's mining over 100. That's a lot of gas, guys. And I haven't seen any, any. Uh, okay, there we go. There's, uh, there's the fucking early pool, right? So now we're super annoyed. Now we're super duper annoyed. So now we got to go back home with the Reaper. So we should have paid attention to the fucking SCV scout and paid a little bit more attention to how that could have made more sense here. But now we're getting all in. Now we're getting all in. So what are we going to do against an all in? We're not going to fucking go for Hellions anymore. We're going to now defend an all in. Let's try and save this command center if we can. Our Reaper is going to arrive at the same time as our SCVs. Maybe we can save it. Looks like we can save it. Let's make a bunker now. And now he's backing off. So let's go ahead and pull our SCVs back. And start making marines and tanks. Oh, SCVs come forward again. He's got speed. That's fucking scary. Okay. Get up the high ground. It's okay. It's okay. Just lift the command center. Load up the SCVs if we can and anything. And it looks like this base is just going to be... Uh, it's it's going to be compromised. Right? So that, that's not great. So there's two ways now. I would say in this position, if you find yourself in this position... That was bad scouting by me, honestly. That was fucking bad reaction. If we find ourselves in this position, you have two options right now. You either do a mineral priority or a gas priority. If you go for a gas priority, you need to do something like get a fast battle cruiser or some shit like that and be aggressive and try to take the advantage that way. If you don't do that, okay, he's just going fully all in with Bane Links. Let's fall back to our SCVs. Run our SCVs around. Try and run them away from each other. Literally just grab SCVs and run them in circles and shit. Like run away from the Banes. We might straight up just die here. Get over to that tank, run that tank like to a choke point, and repair the shit out of it. Alright, looks like we're just gonna die. We're gonna die this game. 
So we we misread the, we misread this game like crazy. It's okay. Let's talk about it though. Let's break it down. Why did I misread this game? Why did I misread this game? <clears throat> so my barracks got made. Think about this for a second. Watch this. My barracks got made. Okay. And now I'm going across the map. And then I get, when I get across the map, what do I see? This is a very easy scout that I should have known. But I, we're fucking... Uh, again, sometimes, guys, I'm not going to lie. If I'm reading chat and I'm talking to you and I'm talking about all these other possibilities... This happens to players even at a higher level. You fucking miss a detail that you already know. And you will find yourself having to learn the same thing repeatedly all the time in this game. Because there's one million pieces of information... And then when I'm trying to spew out as many as possible, I kind of fucking just neglect something that's important here. So this is fucking huge information. How the fuck is his hatchery almost the same time as my command center? His hatchery is halfway done. They have the same build time, by the way. That we, we see it, We've done this a couple times already throughout the series where it's like, we should have scouted better. It'll happen to you as well. Guaranteed. And if it happens to you, don't beat yourself about it. Just try to remember, oh yeah, I should pay attention to that. It's important to know that. So if we saw a hatchery that's not done yet, and instead it's like halfway done, and we see a command center that's also like a fourth of the way done. It's on its way. It's not too much behind the hatchery. Do you know what that means? It means that we're getting fucking pool first. It means that we are definitely being pool firsted here. This is a first pool opener. And that is fucking aggressive. So... We should not move out with our Reaper until we have defense set up with something else, like more Marines and a bunker and shit like that. Then we can move out. But we do not want to move out with our Reaper first. And also, by default, it is not a bad idea to go into Tank Marine against uh, Pool First builds just overall in general. Oh, and this would have been a much yeah. easier defense if our bunker was already down and we could have actually uh, staged a bit more of a defense at the natural for longer. Yo, Stealth Shot, thank you very much to the 13. Much love. Thanks, man. So yeah, we got fucked because we, we moved the Reaper out and then suddenly this completely disrupts our economy like crazy by having to pull all these fucking SCVs off the middle line to try and save the command center because as soon as he arrives, I'm in the middle of his main base. So, uh, yeah, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Vibe should have cheesed. Cheese the GM. Vibe, can you ban this guy? He's an idiot. Uh, I, uh, I don't know. Uh, two people that I don't know are still telling me. One of them looks like he might be being annoying. One's, uh, asking to ban the other guy. Uh, put a guys, yo chat. Put a one in the chat if you think I should ban Lucky Chucky Norris, like permanently, because I think he was in here yesterday. And he was talking. He was in here the other day talking shit between uh, me and Barry. I actually think I remember you now. I think I don't. Th I think I remember you. I'll probably just ban you actually, <laughs> because you seem like you're this that kind of a person, which is fine. Uh, and by that kind of a person, I mean, um, I mean uh, a pleb. Okay, so our SCVs had to be pulled off. Uh. And, you know, that sucks. That just fucked up our economy like crazy. And now we're going to have a major problem here. And now we're going to die. So that made it way harder to defend. How did I micro my SCVs? All we did is we go, hey, SCVs, run away. Green box half them. Like, green box half my SCVs, run the other way. So when he busts in the base, I literally go, hey, SCVs, run over here. As they run over here, away from the banes, I green box some of them. And I say, come down here. I green box some of them, come up here. Green box some of them, go up there. Some of them, go over there. You literally just try to spread as many as you can out by telling the chunk you say to go somewhere. You then green box some of that chunk and tell it to go somewhere else. Green box some of that chunk, tell it to go somewhere else. Green box some of that chunk, tell it to go somewhere else. That is how you split. Uh, that is how you split. I like how uh, this stream delay and now everybody's saying one, 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 one. Yeah, don't worry guys, I already banned him. I, I actually recognized his name once I realized, I, once I read his name. I was like, oh, yeah, I remember this guy. He was spamming fucking twitch.tv slash Barry Crunch in my channel for, like, fucking 500 times when I was playing him 1v1. I was like, all right, dude. How about you uh, shut the fuck up and relax a little bit? <laughs> I only banned him for 10 minutes, and what does he do? The next day, he comes back, and he fucking does something similar all over again. So, yeah, no, fuck that guy. Okay, so we're against another Zerg. Let's do, let's do, again, I'm going to do the same thing I talked about before. I'm not going to take away your traditional mech game. We'll go back and do it again, and we'll just pay attention to scouting, right? We'll really pay attention to scouting. Make sure we don't misread something. Because if you play macro, the hardest thing you need to overcome is learning how to read a build from the start of the game and not getting fucking owned. Oh, 
That all looks really strong. This is another thing people that watch StarCraft tend to do a lot of times, which is uh, if you don't uh, if you don't hold something and you die to it because you misread the build or you just do the wrong things to it, it makes the build look stronger than it actually is. There are counters to everything in this game. There's no build in this game that's just like, unless it's Sky Toss. That's like, oh, well, you just can't beat that. You can beat everything in this game except for Sky Toss. <laughs> I'm just joking. You can beat Sky Toss as well. Hey, Sky Toss is fucking annoying, though. It is really strong. Like, full on, f like, full power Sky Toss is pretty good. But it, I'm just joking. But yeah, no, if, if, for instance, if I play more defensive, you wouldn't be like, wow, that build looks really strong, though. You'd be like, wow, that build looked like a joke. Because again, you can, you can counter builds in this game. So I'm telling you right like for, here's an example. CCing the low ground already makes that build stronger. If I CC high ground it, it makes that build weaker because it's easier to defend. Things like that, right? So let's pay attention to this guy's uh, fucking expansion timing. What are you taking your expansion at? It's almost done. So this is clearly not a fucking pool first. So now I can actually send my Reaper across the map and not have to feel like I'm going to fucking die. <laughs> I don't have to be afraid of going, oh shit, that's actually pool first. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Bada, Bo Bada Bada Boomer, for the, the 8 month resub. When you make mistakes, it makes me feel like there's still hope for me to get good at this game. Smile. Yeah, go for it. Good. So, again, I do want to kill a drone here and there, but remember what I said? Do not fucking lose the Reaper. I just focus fired that drone and I ran away. We can attack the Lings. We can throw. Oh, that grenade is way off. Uh. We can attack the lings and stuff and be annoying, but what we really want to see is the gas. Guess what, guys? He's going crazy on the gas. So you know what we should do? Check this out. Lure him down to the natural. Okay. Lure him down to the natural. Go down here. Or Okay, this is uh, not going well for us at the moment. Jesus Christ. I'm trying to explain this game and play it. Sometimes it gets fucking overwhelming. Hey, Zerg, come here. Try and go around him, and let's just see if he's got a roach horn. Do you have a roach horn? No, you don't. Okay, so now you know what we can do? Now we can make Hellions. I know for a fact I'm not going to die. That Reaper just scouted there is no Roach Warren in his base. So I, don't not, I do not need to make a bunker, and I do not need to make more uh, Marines to fill up a bunker. Because if this guy attacks me, it's going to be Zergling based now, not Roach based. And if it's a Zergling based attack, Hellions are more than enough to defend that. So we don't give a shit anymore. We're totally fine. If it was a Roach Warren, though, and I was like, oh, God, remember that the two-base Roach Warren I showed you guys in the Zerg vs. Zerg series? Or the Zerg series, rather? Or I showed you to go for, like, the eight Roaches and push? Well, if that was what he was doing, we would fucking die to that build if we just make Hellions. And now, look, it's, it's, a, it's a Zergling, right? Speedling. But I have Hellions, so we're fine. Okay, and what we're going to do as well, once again, is we're going to be going into a battle cruiser. We're also going to play defensive with Hellions as well for just a moment. Uh, let's see if we can spot an Overlord in the high ground. No, we can't. That's a cool trick, too. If you have a spot that's Overlord hiding spot right there, Hellions have bigger vision radius than Marines do. And if you put a Hellion here, your Marine can actually kill it there without having to lift a building. If you guys did not know that for Terran players out there. But now we're going to move out of our base as soon as we get a wall. Okay, so this SCP has been building wall the entire time. Now we have a wall. It'll probably happen around the time you have four Hellions. And now we can go into a battle cruiser. We can also... Oh, shit. Okay, so we didn't pay attention to our Hellions. we got to run back a little bit. Well, let's run to a choke point of minerals. So let's come here like this. Hey, Lurgs, come to the mineral line with me. Hey, hey, what do you think about that, boy? Okay, we can lower our depot. Go back with four Hellions again. Try again. Let's pay attention this time, right? Okay, let's make a, another command center while we're at it. And now we're making a one battle cruiser, a battle cruiser, and we're going to go into... Either tank or Thor Hellion after this. Tank Hellion to start and then go into Thor if we need to. Otherwise, go into, uh, uh, yeah. 
You get the point. Sorry, I'm not trying to focus as well as talking so much here. Okay, so we're fully saturated on the natural, so let's go into uh, gas on our natural. Let's go poke his third base if it exists. It does exist. Let's try and kill some drones if we can. Okay, we just killed one drone, two drones, three drones. Let's go ahead and get out of here. Three drones to lose one hillion is not bad. Okay, he's trying to cut me off with his lings. That's good by him. Let's run away from him now and just try to kill lings while we can. That's not, not a bad trade. We lost another hillion, but we just killed another round of lings. Now let's take our battle cruiser and go like this. Like lower the depot wall, grab my hellions, take my BC, and we can literally teleport to the side of his base right now while telling our hellions to go attack towards his base as well. Get over to his base hellions. While we're waiting for those things to set up for just a second, saturate my gas properly at my base. Throw down a couple more depots. Make a couple tech labs here on these factories so that I can actually make hellions or uh, tanks properly. Let's make two armories. And now let's go into his base and let's find out what tech he's going for while continuing to harass him. So what are you doing? Okay, he's back up there for a second. Battlecruiser flying in his mineral line. Hey, what's up, dude? We got a BC here. It's super annoying for, for Zerg. He's going fucking mutas. So we're not going tanks, guys. We're making like two tanks. And that's it. Why are we making two tanks? Because I can't make them yet. The Thors, that is. I cannot make Thors right now. We can also start an engineering bay. Let's take our hellions and try to roast more drones. Hey, drones. Hi, drones. Hi, drones. BC, keep going around his base. Take our hellions and try to kill more drones. Hi, drones. Kill more drones. Take Run our BC away a little bit. Go up here, try to kill more drones. Now our engineering base should be uh, done. So let's go ahead and go for a couple turrets in our base. Let's go for a couple turrets in our base. Let's keep making SCVs. And maybe even make one more turret for like the rally point of in front of my factories. And now, again, we lost all of our units. But guess what Hellions are in this kind of a situation? They're fucking worthless. They're, they're, they're not worthless, but they're they're good at launching counterattacks. So let's lift our wall up after we sent another round of Hellions out. Because you know what's going to happen? He's going to fly across the map right now with Mutas. And if we counterattack at the same time, if we counterattack his base at the same time with Hellions, you know what that means? That's fucking damage we get done there. So let's try and kill him. If he doesn't attack with mutas, you know what that means? We just get a free third base. It's all good. We can kill some creep right here. Let's kill that drone. Kill some creep in this area. Kill some creep in this area. His mutas aren't attacking me yet. It's okay. He's actually playing defensive. Let's run away then. Go back to my base. Not a big deal. Okay, let's go ahead and get ready to set up our third base right now. And the reason why that makes sense is because our Thors are about to pop out. So the Thor is popping out. It's going to be humongous for our power of our defense here. Transfer SVs to our third base. Make a couple turrets at this base. Let's make another command center as well. Like wherever I want to fucking make it, make it right there again. Whatever. whatever. And now we're chilling again defensively. Move this tank because it's kind of in the way. Let's move the tank up to the high ground here. Like near the turret. It's blocking my Thors actually. Get upgrades for our uh, mech units. And now take our gases at our third base because our third base is looking really well saturated. And let's get like building armor as well on our armory. Uh, on our engineering base, sorry. Take our gases and keep making SUVs. Keep making units out of our things. Out of our uh, out of our starports and, and our factories. We're just going to make one unit as well out of the starport. We're going to make like one raven. And the reason why is because it's going to make it really easy to kill creep. Let's make a, like three more tech labs now. And why are we going to do that? Because, or actually, sorry, make like two. Make, honestly, make two. I should have made three. We're going to make like two more tech labs, or two more uh, factories. And the reason why is because our money is starting to get a little bit higher. And now we need to just increase our production a little bit more. It's all good. Let's grab our Hellions again. Go like this. Hey, Thors, sit in my base defensively. Continue to make Thors and Hellions. Now, our Hellions can go across the map, and we can go like this. We'll literally do this. Control one. Green box half of them. Alt two. Hey, one, go left. Look, I don't even know he's attacking me, right? Oh, God. But well, guess what? Missile turrets and Thoris own this shit. Hey, Thoris, go A move to that area. Thor, one Thoris hit there, one Thoris hit here. Now it looks like he might want to go to the main. More Thoris can go to the main. We're just sitting here defensively with Thoris. One Thor go here, one Thor go here. This base is done. Let's go take it. And let's take a couple of CVs and go take it. Like some turrets over here. Thors are done. One Thor sit in the main. And another Thor can go to my third base. I can make one more tech up, one more reactor on these things. Now let's go back to our Hellions really fast. These Hellions are dying, so that's fine. But now these Hellions are not dying. This is why we split them up. Now I'm probably going to kill some drones with this Hellion. Let's drive all the way to a drone line. Make units at the same time. Make SCVs at the same time. Don't stop macroing while you do this. Drones are dying. Drones are dying. Drones are dying. Drones are dying. We're killing like half of a mineral line right there. Not a bad trade. You know why? I don't give a fuck about Hellions. Hellions suck. 
I'm not going to try and push the final fight with a bunch of Hellions in my army. What I'm going to do in the final fight when it finally happens is I'm going to ideally have mostly tank Thor or something like that, only with a little bit of Hellions. Very little investment in Hellions later on. Okay, transfer some SCVs that are oversaturated. Maybe like one more turret right there or some shit to push meters away. And now we have more Thors now at our third base. We're looking great. And now this guy can't do fucking anything with his mutas. Now look, oh, he's pushing my main base, right? But I got a Thor and missile turrets on my main, guys. I got a Thor and missile turrets. And like, what if he doesn't want to leave? You know what I can do? More Thors pop out. More Thors can come back and help defend. Look at this shit. We're just macroing, right? This is crazy for Zerg. This is like, oh, God. This is getting a little bit dicey. We can make a couple more turrets. Thor, go over there and fight that shit. SCV count currently is 80. We're looking pretty good on that. Let's do another Hellion run by in just a second, because why not? Hellion, again, Hellions are just a buffer for my army. They're not the primary. So take Hellions and go poke his base. <coughs> Let's get building range as well for our factory units. Or for our turrets, rather, sorry. Let's go ahead and get some mules down here. Let's get another command center so we can take another base. Keep making our tech labs and our reactor units. And now our Hellions are going down. Let's also make sure we get the upgrades too. Let's get Blue Flame and let's also get Smart Servos. So we can rotate against Broodlords. We can rotate against uh, uh, Hellbats if we want to. What's going on over here? Is there a base here? We're scouting, right? Oh, there's a base starting. Again, if I lose these Hellions, guys, do I give a shit? Not at all. I don't care at all if I lose those Hellions. Let's make some more turrets on this, on this base right here. A new base is going to come over there in just a minute. Uh, and now, now... Finally, we're about to max out. We are about to max out. We have a couple more Thors on the way right now. And now we can go into finally making a couple extra factories with the final little bits of gas that we're going to get. Make another factory like right here. That's all good. And now we can make another two tech labs or so, which is all gravy. Well, the those are done. Now let's group my army up. And now let's actually push. Now we have mostly Thor tank. We can unseat our tanks and we can bring them with our army. It's all good. Let's hell bat our Hellions at this point. And now let's go push. Let's actually push the Zerg. So we know where his bases are. We have an idea, right? Oh, look, he's pushing this base. It's okay. Not a big deal. We'll just, it'll, it'll die. We have more bases to work with, though. Let's have these SCVs get ready to repair if we need to. Looks like we do need to. So get ready to repair this turret. Okay, he's got a lot of mutas, guys. He might have too many mutas. If he has too many mutas, you know what you can do? Again, our, our, our main army is, is going to attack him. Our new Thors that are still coming out of the factories can go defend ourselves we can just remake scvs lift this off land that over there take new turrets one two three turrets shift command one two three turrets over here shift command to the mineral line this army's still pushing this army's fucking a problem for zerg as well i'm gonna tell you right now the zerg is not gonna look at this army and be like oh that's gonna be easy to kill that we're killing his creep and we're just pushing Okay, let's siege our tanks, the little few tanks that we have. And now here he comes. Let's go ahead and throw down some auto turrets or something. And keep making units, keep making hellbats, keep making SCVs. And that was a really good fight for us. Keep getting upgrades. <coughs> let's get our gases over here. <coughs> Excuse me. And take our gases again over here. Again, this is kind of a gas expensive style, so we need a lot of gas. And now, how'd that fight go? We just won that fight. So, we again, we can go back to this using this army. Let's scan that, or we could have sent a unit over there. It's all good. Now, let's go push even deeper into his base, and let's push onto his creep again. Unseed our tanks as well. And SCV counts back in the, like, the 70 range-ish. We're looking great. Let's kill a lot of creep. And even, here's the thing too, even if I don't kill his natural right now, guys, even if I don't kill his natural, you want to know what? I am still taking a lead because if I kill his creep and I kill his third and his fourth, you know what's happening at his main base? He's fucking mining out. You know what's happening at his natural? He's mining out. This is where a lot of people, again, feel the need to go, I gotta push the fucking main. No, you don't. You don't. Now he's going into fucking ultras. You know what we do now? Let's start adding in some tanks as a mixture to our army. He is now going into ultra. So we can go into uh, Hellbat. And now we already have a lot of Thor again. 
Let's make fucking tanks. Let's just make tanks. We could also make liberators or something. We could go air at this point. There's a lot of options that we have here. We don't have to... Like, we should not feel threatened or pressured by the Zerg right now. Being like, oh my god, we need to kill him or we're dead. We don't. We don't, we don't feel that way at all. We could also, at this point, make a couple sensor towers. Make one on the left. Make one on the right. And now we have tanks coming, again, with Hellbats. We're spending our money pretty well. And we're going into... Uh, we can start getting, like, again, like I talked about before. How about we make a... Uh, how about we go into uh, a, another factory here for another tech lab and we make this an, uh, a reactor and we can start going into Liberators to fight Ultras. And now that our weapons are done on the armory, let's start getting uh, weapons for air, wep for air units. Now let's take two Hellions and let's go like this. Hey, one Hellion, go left. Hey, one Hellion, go right. And let's find out where our opponent is located in terms of his, uh, his, his base setup. Transfer some SVs to a different base. Like, you guys can go over here and mine that base properly. That's now looking good, looking good, looking good, looking good. Fix this. Looking good. Take another base over here. Make these all orbital commands, because we have a lot. We had a lot of extra money, so we could just easily do that. Now we know there's no bases on the left side. This is his newest base. And we know that this base exists, so what should we do? Let's work our way down the right side of the map, guys. Let's just go to the right side. It's all good. Take our existing army and go right now. And we can make a couple turrets here just in case he goes into Mutas again. We don't know that he will or won't. But now I honestly think the Zerg is going to die to this push. He's going to die. I do not see Zerg living here. Make some uh, orbitals there. Transfer SVs to the new base we're making. Make a couple of gases as well. And let's push right here. Get our army together and let's go, go, go. We can also scan ahead to see is Zerg there in the area? Is he, gonna, is he about to attack us? And yes, Zerg is about to attack us. So what are we going to do? Get up on the high ground. Get on the high ground. And get our tanks all sieged up. Because what if the Zerg pushes us? We want to be ready, right? We don't want to be unsieged. And now that we know Zerg is in the area, are we going to unsiege all of our tanks? No, we don't have to unsiege all our tanks. Why? Why do I have to unsiege all my tanks? Let's still push him, but let's leapfrog our tanks. Like this. Oh, he's attacking me. Let's back up for a second to my tanks. And now take the fight. And that was a fucking destruction, right? That was, that was death. GG. So we make the, we, here's the thing, right? We still have an advantage in the engagement because we still have tanks active, but we make the Zerg react by showing him that if he doesn't, we're going to push his base repeatedly. So a lot of Terrans out there that would unteach all their fucking tanks there and go, YOLO, fucking go. You know, not, not, the, not the kind of fight you want to take. Because if he engages us with the Ling Ultra and Muda, and we're currently unseaged on all of our fucking tanks, which is the majority of our army, and then our opponent gets on top of our... Let's say our opponent got on top of our Thors with his Ultras and his Zerglings, and then my tanks finally start sieging his tanks... Or sorry, my, my tanks finally start shooting their shots off as he's all over my Thors. There's a chance... That my Thors might die to my own splash damage then. Because now all the shots are hitting my Thors. Not just the remainder after most of the front line is dead for Zerg. Because tanks obliterate Zerglings like crazy fast. Uh, but they also obliterate Thors crazy fast too. If a bunch of Thors are on top of your army. Or a bunch of Zerglings are on top of your Thors. Um, so if, if I waited to, because I was like, oh, let's siege everything at once. Because now he's engaging. And then suddenly all my Thors start taking a fuckload of damage. I might win the ground fight, sure, but what if all my Thors die and then his mutas are left over and then his mutas kill all of my fucking units over here? That would suck. I'd be, well, I mean, that's, I'm still not going to lose, though, because, I mean, we still did great damage to this base. And even if I lost this army, we could just make another one because it's a 1, 2, 3, 4 base Zerg versus a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 base Terran. And not only that, but now I have extra orbitals, which is extra money to just throw at the fucking the expansions. I could be like, cool. Now I have six orbitals instead of three. Mule dump. Like, mule dumps like crazy. Throw eight do mules down right there. Throw, like, eight mules down right here. Suddenly my income is, like, 5,000 minerals a minute, which is insane. When the average about of, like, 80 workers is, like, 3K to, like, 3.5K. So we just get ri ridiculous income. Like, super, super high income. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's uh, ideally how you wanted to set that up, right? And that game...
I feel like at this point that game was pretty. I feel like that game was super self-explanatory. If I if I go through it again, it's literally just going to be repeating everything I already said. Uh, I I feel like that was a really good one for how we explained it throughout the game. We make the armories in case he goes mutas, but if he doesn't go mutas, we can just keep making tanks with upgrades. Like if he goes Roach Ravager, Hydra Lurker, something like that, we can just keep making tanks for a while. And then, no matter what, here's the last thing we didn't talk about with that last build. No matter what, regardless of if he's going ground or air, we always want to have Thors in our army no matter what. It's just if he's going air, we want to open Thor. And if he's going ground, we want to open tank. And we also, we, all, we do still, like I said before in that game, we make tank at first. For the first unit we make out of the factory, we still make tank because it's, you cannot make a Thor first because you have to wait for an armory. So we make a tank just to make something, and it will help a lot against uh, any type of weird attack that our opponent can do to us. Uh, but yeah. <clears throat> so we make Thor regardless at the end, of, towards the end of the game, and we're going to try to go for at least like maybe four or five Thors in our army to support the rest of it, just in case our opponent goes air, and we don't if we don't realize that he's going air, because Thors are they're versatile, they're multi-purpose, they deal with ground and air pretty well. Uh, but if you have no anti-air in your army at all, and he makes mutas, you just die. So at least if you have some Thoris in your army, you don't just get fucking owned. <coughs> Hellions suck. Hellions don't suck. They're good at harassing economy. That's what they're good at. But you don't want to have mass Hellions in your army late game. Because they don't, they're not really worth their value of supply in terms of power. Hellions are a mobile harass unit. They're not a power unit. It would be like the same thing as Zerg saying, I'm going to just go max Zerglings. Like, they're really good at harassing bases, but they're really fucking terrible at taking fights in a big army versus army battle. They just die. Okay, this game will go bio. This game will go bio. We won't go mech again. This game will go bio. Make Widowmines vibe. Sure, we can do a Widow Mine style. We haven't done a Widow Mine style yet. We'll do Marine Mine. Marine Marauder Widow Mine Medivac. Wait, what? I'm only mining with two? Whoops, I did not realize that. That's not good. Uh, my Reaper's a little bit, like, all my gas is now a little bit late. I did not realize I only had two on that. I wasn't looking. I was reading fucking chat. Shit. I'll make my second factory now a little bit faster, or my second gas a little bit faster now than I otherwise would have, because now my build's a little off. And we can fix it by just making it faster gas. Okay, so he's got a hatchery already done. We don't need to go into the main. It just confirms that we don't need to, to play defensive with the Reaper, and now the Reaper can go in the main. So we can get our SV home defensive faster now. Okay, now let's make our factory. Okay, he's got lings. We can kite backwards against them. We can push forward against them. Kite backwards against them. Pressure the lings. It's all good. Maybe we kill one. We killed one. Nice. Okay, now just back off for like a quick second and regenerate that reaper just really fast. Regenerate his ass so he doesn't get owned really easy. And now we need to jump in the main base and I need to confirm, is this dude taking... Uh, uh, Rochorn, right? Let's get a tech lab on the factory. And the answer is no. He's not. He's not mining gas too crazy either. But our Reaper's gonna die again. So our Reaper died the exact same way as last game. It's all good. Not a big deal. Let's go ahead, this time. Let's go ahead and make a faster third command center. And again, the reason why we're gonna do that is because we're never actually gonna attack the Zerg this game. We are never actually going to attack the Zerg this game. We are going to play defensive, and we're, we're going to only harass him. We're not going to attack him, okay? Now, you, just know, you can be aggressive with this playstyle. You can. I'm not saying you can't. But if you are aggressive, it puts a lot more pressure on you again, which is what I keep talking about all the time. Why the fuck do you always feel the need to have to be so aggressive when you don't have to be 
that aggressive. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and make a starport. Let's go ahead and siege our tank on the high ground. And let's go ahead and now rotate our barracks off with a reactor and a tech lab now. So we have some marines and we're just being we're just playing it safe with one tank. We're not making mass tanks, we're just making one tank, and we'll probably leave it there almost the entire game. Now let's go ahead and get stim pack, let's get marines. And we're getting a starport and we're making widow mines. Okay. And now behind this, we're gonna make more racks in a minute here. Again, this is a this is. A, do you have to do the build this way every time? No, it's just. I'm tr again, I'm trying to explain something. This is. This is the hardest thing to to get people to be on board with. It's not about having an exact build order. We'll do. We'll worry about build orders in fucking Masters League when people get super fucking try hard. It's really about understanding the concept of if your build makes any fucking sense or not. Does your build make sense? If it doesn't, well, you gotta fucking think about that and be like, why does my build suck dick? So now we can go ahead and make another barracks. Because again, we're going into Marine uh, marine Marauder Widow Mine. We'll open up Marine first. And now we have four Widow Mines. And we have Marines and a tank guarding my base in case this guy plays aggressive. Now our Medivac is going to pop out. We can make a reactor behind this. And let's load up four Widow Mines into a Medivac. And let's fly to his base. Yeah, let's go ahead and get our gases at our natural. Also, let's go ahead and get our uh, engineering base like we always talk about. Let's go ahead and burrow more widow mines in the front of my door. Keep making widow mines. Keep making marines. And now let's boost into his third base if he has it. And let's drop widow mines onto his drones. So, widow mine drop. Okay, load up. Get in the medevac and leave. Nice. That was a good drop. That did a lot of damage. Let's make another like three racks right here. Okay, we're chilling again. And now, keep making medevacs, get combat shield, keep making widow mines, uh, take our gases here. Sorry, I forgot to do that. Oops. It's all good, though. Let's keep making depots. And get our, our armor upgrade and our weapon upgrade. And now, let's go ahead and get an armory as soon as we can in just a second. Once we have 100 gas, we're about to have it, and we have it right now. So this allows us to get 2-2 upgrades, and now it allows our Widow Mines to stay permanently cloaked every time we attack his base now. So let's do it again. Widow Mine drop. Widow Mine drop right here. Put our last Widow Mine, like, right in the fucking heart of the Zerg's drones over there. And load up the Widow Mines into the medevac. Okay, and now let's fly away again. See how fucking annoying this is for Zerg right now? So now we're making 2 tech labs and 3 reactors. Let's also go take our third base right now. And now let's actually start making Marauders with Marines and Widow Mines. And now let's take another Widow Mine drop. And let's go like this. <laughs> now we have cloaked Widow Mines as well, guys. So now they're even more advanced Widow Mines. Let's go ahead and make more depots. Let's make Marauders and Marines. Let's make Widow Mines and Medivacs. And now let's do this. Hey, Medivac over here. Go drop Widow Mines on this base. Drop Widow Mines right now. Widow Mine, Widow Mine, Widow Mine, Widow Mine. And now we don't have to pick them up anymore because they're cloaked forever. This this base over here, drop Widow Mines on this side. Widow Mine, Widow Mine, Widow Mine, Widow Mine. They're cloaked forever. It requires more effort from Zerg now to clear them out. It's annoying as fuck for Zerg. Uh, we never got to land our third base, so let's go take that now. Let's actually go push out, take our third, rotate a bunch of SVs to it, and get ready to take our fourth base as well while we're at it. Just like go to the fourth command center as well. Hey, let's go kill that overlord. Drop a bunch of mules here. Transfer more SVs. Build some depots. That will just like help guard our command center a little bit here. Uh, again, we can like lower them and raise them. It just gives our SCVs more of a risk or more of a chance to not be so risk uh, their lives being so risky. Let's do another one of my drop. We're doing another one. We're just being ultra fucking annoying with these one of my drops. Let's also get uh, weapons. Instead of getting weapons, let's get armor because it upgrades the armor of the one of mines and the armor of the medevacs. Here comes another one of my drop. 
take our gases. Let's also take some more barracks because we're getting a lot of money now. Okay. And now let's drop his main base. Do a fucking boosted medevac. And oh, just kidding. He's got a hydras. Let's boost to the fourth. What's he got here? Not much, right? He's got units. See what we can do. Okay, Zerg's, Zerg's dealing with it pretty well. Honestly, Zerg is actually dealing with this better and better as time goes on. He's getting better at handling the Widowmine drops, which is totally fine. Does that mean, is this our whole, is this our whole strategy? No, it's not our whole, no, 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 it's not our whole strategy. It's just a piece of it. I like how I said the word no there. No, no. We can still just go right back into actually pushing him now. And now what we're going to do, we're going to rotate it. Now we're going to rotate it because we're about to max out. And we're about to be 2-2 two -two, or soon-ish. We're taking another command center. We're getting another planetary. Blah, 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 blah. Our base is looking like it's setting up really well. We have a good SCV count right now. We have 76 at the moment, which is fucking juicy. And now we're making Marauder Marine. And we're seriously like seconds from maxing. Now let's do this. Hey, select all army. Let's go attack. Now let's grab some Marines and Marauders and put them into two medevacs by themselves. Those two medevacs go to the other side of the map. Main, my main army, let's go to the right side. And let's put my Widow Mines by themselves on like group three. Just like literally, they're in group one as well. We just put Widow Mines by themselves on three. And why did I do that? Because now I can make a sequence to go every time I attack the Zerg, I can literally go three burrow. And go, cool, now I have all my Widow Mines burrowed, so I don't gotta like fuck around with uh, trying to micro them. Let's go kill some creep. And now the second the Zerg engages, we're gonna get three burrow. Three burrow right now. Looks like we're getting ready to engage. Two, get ready to drop. Kill some creep. Also, don't feel like you have to engage the creep right away like crazy. Let's drop this base because he's expanding there. Kill this base. My widow mines are still there. They're super annoying. Kill creep in this area. Okay, cool. Let's get three, three upgrades. Let's get level two armor on our, uh, on our fucking things over here. And how's these drops going? Okay, they're dying. Fly away. And now that I know he's over there, guess what we can do now? Three unburrow. Oh, he's got lurkers, so. Now he's got lurkers, okay? So that that's a thing, right? Uh, it's all good. Let's go ahead and try and uh, get rid of these rocks. And let's give ourselves a better engage here. Let's give a big con game to ourselves. Scan and stim forward. And try to group my army, or like, or spread my army out a little bit. And so now let's stutter step it. Stutter, stutter, stutter. Three burrow. He's engaging us. Get rid of those lurkers. Make units the whole time behind this. Widow mines, medevacs, all that shit. Now let's boost this base again and drop it again. Now back up, run, run, stutter, 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 stutter. Go back to the drop, stim pack it, and kill this base, and go back to this base. Army, oh, this army, stutter, stutter, stutter. Probably just evacuate now entirely because it looks like we're getting fucking owned. So load in that medevac and leave. Let's try to get the fuck out of there. Make new units the whole time. We're still macking the whole time, guys. So look at my new army. It's not nothing. It's not like we have nothing there. Let's go ahead and make a couple more racks because we have a lot of money, right? Let's make racks, 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 racks. Take another planetary. Take another base. How's group two doing? Oh, we killed an entire fucking Zerg base over here. Let's also kill some creep while we're at it. They're just kidding. The Zerg arrived, so we can't kill creep. Let's boost and go to his main. Let's be annoying. Go to the main. Let's also now make a second factory because what we can do with this as well now is we can add in uh, tunneling claws to our pushes, which would make our widow mines even stronger. Let's go ahead and step back our marines. And our Marines are all going to die. And now it's a bit of a reset again. But look what happened when it's reset. We have max supply. So we're, we're happy about this. We can also make... Uh, we also need to make another starport. The reason why is because if he ever kills my starport units, my start, my, my medevacs, it's going to be hard to replace all of those really fast. So let's definitely... Uh, okay, now he's pushing us. Let's, let's deal with this first. Let's go ahead and uh, put our medevacs, our Widow Mines in Control 3, and go ahead and get ready to attack this shit. Hey, Zerg, how you doing? Okay, let's go ahead and make this new command suit here because he killed it. Make like two more tech labs and a bunch of reactors. Okay, he's killing this base. Let's go ahead and repair it. Let's leave Widow Mines here. Here, think about this for a second. He's only pushing with lurkers, guys. Okay, he's right here, so run our Marines boy. Stim, stutter, 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 stutter. Let's go back and try to kill the lurkers now. Okay, is he over here? Lurkers need to be scanned. These things are fucking scary. 
Get this starport uh, control group. Get this factory control group. Tech lab on the factory, reactor on the starport. We want to be able to make widow mine drilling claws, and we want to be able to make, uh, what's it called? More medevacs than two at a time, because we need our medevac count got kind of reset. So we want to be able to fix that. Okay, he's got a lot of lurkers there. Let's not engage that. Am I rushed to engage this right now? No, I'm not. You want to know why I'm not? Because I can once again do the same exact thing as we keep doing before. So my opponent now, the game has reset again, right? This is no longer back and forth. Now he's going, I'm turtling, and you attack me. And I go like this. Okay. Medevac, load up. Medevac, load up. Control our army on control one. Two medevacs with marines and marauders in it. Alt two. Go down here. Now, because I'm going to the right side with my medevacs, let's go to the left side with my army. Grab all my widow mines. Control three, so I can hit three burrow, and we're good to go. Meanwhile, fix my SCVs while I'm waiting for my army to relocate on the left side. Fix my SCVs while I'm waiting for my army to relocate on the left side. Drop some meals while we're at it. We can also, at this point too, do what we did similar to last game. Let's go for like command center, command center, command center. And let's make extra orbitals for more vision. Now I'm on the right, the left side of the map a bit more. Now see how he's, I've lured the Zerg into this area. Okay, three burrow. And then go back with my Marines and Marauders and stutter step away. Medivacs, go drop this base right now. Okay, uh, Widow Mines unburrow, go up here. And it looks like the Zerg might attack us on this side, I don't know. Let's make some sensor towers. That'll also help it seeing where he goes. And yes, he is attacking this base, so let's get our army located to go defend that. How's this going? Oh, this is a dead Zerg base, right? See how when the game resets, you can do so much more. Burrow those Widow Mines right now. And stutter step, stutter step, stutter step, stutter. Go forward now, because he's backing up. Try to repair this command center. How's this going? Load it up and drop the next base. Go back to this army. Stutter, stutter, repair this shit. Up burrow our widow mines. Make units, make units, make units, make units. All my units are in production again in all my buildings. Make SCVs because we just lost a bunch of SCVs. How's this going? It died. It's okay. Not a big deal. We still we still are applying pressure. Let's get drilling claw widow mines because now that's going to make our widow mines burrow fucking fast. Uh, get building armor and building range. So uh, he's attacking us with lurkers. So let's go ahead and push that now. Hey, lurkers. No, 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 no. Let's go ahead and scan his creep. Kill his creep. Kill more of his lurkers. Kill more of his creep. Okay, let's not engage. Why am I, why am I not supposed to engage right now? Because we're unorganized. This is where Terran players shit their pants and they go, fuck! Fucking Zerg, this game is chaotic. Reset the fucking game, dude. It's okay. Go like this. Once again, same thing. Marines, marauders, load into two medevacs. You guys go once again on the right side because our army's already on the left side. Hit my rest of my army. Control one. Make sure these are on alt two so they don't take any units from us. Widow mines by themselves. Control three. Let's push left side while dropping right side. Give yourself momentum on your side on your favor. Lurkers, maybe we can kill them. No, let's just kill a creep tumor instead. And let's push left side. Three V, step pack backwards right now. And widow mines were burrowed. They didn't really get much connections, but we're step packing, we're stutter stepping. And we can make units while we stutter step away. And now there's a there's a lull in the combat. We can go ahead and drop a base. Now we're maxed out still, so now we can push again. And we have an initiated drop here. So let's stim pack this base down now. This makes sense to do this attack now because there's nothing over to defend it. Let's scan ahead and let's push this base. Stim pack backwards, backwards, stim, stutter, 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 stutter. Make units, make units, make units, make units. Stutter to a planetary. Stutter, stutter, stutter. Grab SVs to repair this planetary in just a second. And attack the fucking banelings here. Stutter, stutter. We can load in medevacs too if it gets a lot, like no resort anymore. Let's lift and land and drop over here. He killed the command center. It's okay. Let's lift one of our other command centers up over here and drop it at the command center again. Okay, let's bring our new army over here. Select our army, bring the rest of our new units that we made throughout this whole process. Oh, I'm almost maxed again, guys. We're macroing during the fight, right? So, go ahead and get our units over here to defend this base. Hey, Zerg, what's up? Get out of here. Go ahead and repair these bases. What's our drone count look like? Or SCV count? Looking kind of shitty. Let's make more. Let's also take another base over on this side so we can eventually take that right there. Let's go ahead and scan this and step back forward. We can burrow our widow mines. That's a lot of dead Zerg again. Keep making SCVs. Let's make SCVs for this base now. Make a turret here. Repair that command center as well. Let's make like two more command centers again in this area. That way we can get more orbitals. 
Make a turret over here. Drop some mules at this base. Drop some, a couple. Of, oh, we don't have any more mules anymore, so we just drop the rest of our scans. That's just all, which is fine. Okay, let's grab my army. Let's do it again. All my Marines and Marauders, load up in like two medivacs. This time, let's switch it up. Let's go these guys on the left side, and let's actually push our main army on the right side. So, alt two of those medivacs, and then grab our Widow Mines, put our Widow Mines on control three by themselves, and let's push again. Vibe sounds like he's having a stroke. No, not at all. I feel great. Okay, and uh, yeah, we're chilling, guys. Our money is blowing up like crazy. We have tons of fucking economy right now. Repair that command center. And now, we're pu again, we're pushing the right side. We're pushing the right side while we are going to drop the left side. Okay. Transfer some more SCVs. Let's push this base out or this overlord or whatever. Drop a command center over there. Now we're getting attacked by a bunch of ultras. So now we're going to... The game turns into a bit more aggressive style. Let's drop this base. And let's push this base with a big army. If he leaves, rebuild the base. Okay, so we're pushing the bottom right. Stim pack this base down. There's a lurker here, so scan that and kill it. This base is going to die, so go ahead and load up the medevacs and go to the next base and drop the next base. And let's get our widow mines burrow because our opponent's getting ready to engage us. And here we go. Scan ahead, see what's going on. Zerg is sandwiching us right now, actually, with two sides at once. Let's stutter step away from his army a little bit. And let's take our medevacs over here and step back through his main base. Again, we're always doing the same sequence. It's a fucking pattern. Notice how every time I attack him, it's the same concept again and again and again. Let's load up these medevacs. He's here right now, right? But what happens if he's here? Means he's not here. Means I can kill this base now. What's up, Zerg? And now what can I do over here? As soon as he leaves, I can drop this base again. Let's drop right here. And now what's going to happen here? Let's go ahead and scan this. Kill that lurker that we saw in Burrow. And what's happening here? Back up to our widow mines. And we put one more time pressure all over him again. And now he comes back again, right? Now that he's coming back, let's push again. Load up the medevacs. Go away. Scan, scan the army. Or the, sorry, the creep here. Kill a bunch of creep. He's engaging us. Let's go ahead and burrow our widow mines. And get ready to kite over them when he engages us. Let's kill all of his fucking creep here right now. What's going on over here? Is his army still here? No, it doesn't look like it. Drop it again. Keep making units at the same time, right? This is so fucking annoying when you play this way against Zerg. For Zerg. Okay, he's back again. What do we do? Let's load up the medevacs. Let's, this time, let's go drop a different base entirely. Let's like drop up here or something. Run back to the Widow Mines. And now, if we want, if we think about it for a second, let's take a fucking, let's take a chill pill for a sec, because look at this. My army's been pushed for the, to the brink for a while now. This drop is still doing fantastic. Let's load it up again and go somewhere else. But look at this army up here. I have a brand new army that's just waiting to be used. So let's regroup ourselves. Let's just regroup, guys. Okay, load up these guys. GG. We just regroup with a new army because we don't have to push this army till it dies. We can always take a moment to go, well, we have a, light, a lot of momentum right now. Let's regroup and make a new momentum push once again. It's And then, you, again, you're just... You're always doing it in a way where you have a drop going somewhere else and your main army is pushing somewhere. And then having your Widow Mines having the ability to go, Burrow, is super nice because when the fight starts, you can just be like, stim pack and run away from Widow Mines. He runs over Widow Mines. <laughs> Shit just blows up for Zerg, right? So again, this is another game where I don't really feel like we have to go fully into the replay. This is a very standard game. I feel like throughout the process, we uh, we explained it pretty well. Um, I guess I'll just go through it on like times four and just... See, show you guys what it looks like from both perspectives, like what the supply looks like and things like that. Uh, but yeah, uh, we're not going to go super deep into the re-explaining the shit we already talked about here. Because it's a lot of repetitiveness at this point if we keep doing that. Okay, so times eight on the early game. We're scouting to see if we're getting Roach all in. We don't see a Roach all in. We're like, cool, cool, awesome. We know we're not getting all in by some Roach bullshit, so we can uh, not worry about that. And then, uh, going into the mid-game, we have our third base. We, the Zerg has his fourth base, whatever. We're starting to do Widow Mine pressures. Because this is a Widow Mine build, so we're doing Widow Mine drops as well. We load up the medevacs and fly away, and just, we're, again, we're trying to be super annoying, right? Ha, 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 ha. 
And all we're doing to Zerg with these Widowmine drops is we're making him play more uh, more safe, less greed. So we're making him do things like make static D. Look at the economy right now. It's not... Like, it's actually still pretty good for Zerg. I'm not going to lie. But it's not like Zerg has, like, 80 fucking drones or 85 drones. And we have 51 SCVs or, like, 45 SCVs. Which I'm not going to lie, guys. Zerg can totally get away with that kind of shit if you don't pressure them with Terran at all. If you just fucking sit there and let Zerg do whatever they want... They can drone like crazy fast compared to how fast Terran can make SCVs. So we're trying to keep the Zerg more realistic. Less greed. Trying to make it play a little bit more of a real game, not such a greedy game. And now this is when we have uh, the armory as well. So these Widow Mines don't die unless revealed by detection anymore. Which is extra annoying for Zerg. And now notice how by the time the Zerg has 80 drones, it's not... A situation where Zerg has 80 drones and Terran, again, like I said before, has like 50 SCVs, 45 SCVs, whatever. We have 68. We're actually really close to Zerg and workers, which is why we actually have a crazy economy. Because Terran has mules. Terran should be behind. That's normal. But we're actually keeping the distance between how behind we are more realistic and less ridiculous. It's not fucking 40 versus 80 or 50 versus 80. It's now almost 70 versus 80, which is way closer. And it's because we're harassing him. And then we're still harassing him, right? We're just being annoying. And he sees it. He, he sees it with overlords and shit. So he's good at dr dealing with it. That drop did nothing. So now he's got... A, now at this point, we stop Widowmine dropping him because he's doing a great job defending it. Also, now at this point, we're getting really high supply. So now we can start switching into the other style we're going to go for, which is actually going to be bio drops with Widowmine support to our army. And now that's when we start doing the, the the actual bio drops, right? And now this is our army pushes. So here's our first army push. We do a little bit of damage. We kill a base. We kill some creep. This is fucking huge damage already. Not only did we kill a base, which is going to be future income for the Zerg, but we actually reduced his creep in two areas. This takes... If, I'm going to tell you guys something right now. If the Zerg does not have the ability to push this army away and then fix the creep right away... We just slowed the Zerg's creep down by at least like a minute, maybe two minutes already. Right there. Super fucking easy. It's really hard for Zerg to replace creep once this happens. The only way Zerg can jumpstart their creep really fast, if they get fucked like this, is if they have speed overlords that fly out here and drop creep and then they put like creep really far in the open. Or if they like nidus it and then fucking it spawns creep in the area and then you spawn creep timbers around it. And you start spreading creep both ways from like the middle of the area. But again, that's more expensive to do shit like that, and it's more risk as well, because if I catch that, if I catch overlords in the open, or if I, if I see a nidus that's just there, that's expensive to fix your creep. It's not as cheap as just spreading it initially. It costs money to do that. You're investing more money now to fix creep, which is not free, right? It's, it adds up over time. So if we're a Terran player and we go, cool, we kill creep now, that's amazing for us. That's that now Again, it pushes the Zerg's creep back, which puts more pressure on Zerg because he needs to retake it, and if he doesn't retake it, it just make, it makes him more blind against what we're doing to him repeatedly. Not only did we kill his base over here and kill a bunch of creep, we also killed a base over here with our marines. And then we can just load up and leave. Super annoying, right? And then now I can push the next base. And now against Lurker, all you got to do against Lurker, guys, all you got to do against Lurker, no, there's two things I did here. Two micro things I did here. Number one, I went, oh, it's Lurkers. I'm not going to fucking walk into a choke point. That's stupid. I'm going to open the rocks up because it creates a bigger opening. So I gave myself more surface area to open up rocks here, which is nice. Secondly, how do I engage lurkers? I move my units to the left up here. I also move units that come into the right side. I move them down right here. Again, I want to make a big concave against lurkers so that his lurkers don't, don't AOE juicy stacked up clumps of bio. So now when I engage him, notice how I, I move these before the fight starts to give me a nice concave on the top side. And then when the fight does start, I move these guys in the front down. So they create a bigger concave going down. So I engage right now and watch these guys go down. They will not stop and shoot and block the guys behind them, which AOEs everything. I will move them down. So these guys in the back fill in the spot that is here. And these guys create a new spot, which is down here. So notice how lurkers are way less intimidating when you do that. I didn't just lose fucking... Like, all my bio just went... And just died because I engaged into a small choke point. 
I created more surface area and I created more concave. And suddenly the Zerg is like, oh fuck! This bio is strong. Lurker is suddenly not as good anymore. The only way to, the only way Zerg defends that properly is if their army is there as well. And now what are we doing at the same time as this? Dropping, right? It always happens. It's going to happen every time. And then we always kite. When he wants to take a fight against us, do we stand there and just hold our ground and die? No, we kite, 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 kite. We continue to kite over and over and over away from the Zerg. So we bleed the Zerg's units out while we, you know, it, it, uh, it makes him fight off creep. It gives us better odds to take better trades. And then meanwhile, while we're doing that, we make units the entire time. And there's a process behind this. We're just holding down Marines, Marauders, Tab, Widow Mines, Tab, Medivacs. And we killed another base again. And this sucks ass for Zerg. And then, you know, the drop is over. And now what is this? This is a reset. We now play defensive until we're ready to attack. And now he decides to attack, so we attack instead. Or we, we defend now. And now that he backs off after attacking right here, because he, he doesn't attack and it kind of fails. Again, we you know, we're just defending our bases. We're running around defending ourselves because we're getting ready for the next round of attack. The next round of assault on the Zerg. And it resets back into exactly what it was before. Again and 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 again. So right now, I have an army on the right side of the map. Does it make sense? Yes. Should I have something else on the other side of the map though? Yes, I should. So right now, I should actually have... The fact that I don't have drops right now doesn't make sense. So this shouldn't be an attack. I should immediately stop this right now and set up a drop. And there we go. Now we set up drops on the right side. And now we're going to rotate back to the left. You always rotate. You don't have to rotate left or right, left or right with like, I'm going to drop the right. Now I'm going to drop the left. Now I'm going to drop the right. You can do that if you want to. It's not required. You can go right, 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 attack, 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 and then attack the left side all of a sudden. But you do need to alternate. Or I mean, you, you do need to multi-prong whatever side you attack. There needs to be a drop on the other side. Because what it does is it pulls the Zerg max distance, and then it pushes the Zerg max distance. It increases the chance that this is going to get damage done or this is going to get damage done. And this is a very tiny investment. But it's so fucking powerful if not defended against. <laughs> so we killed another base. Again, Zerg is running out of money, guys. Zerg is starting to have a money problem. And we're just poking and prodding repeatedly. Our medevacs ended up dying, so what are we doing? We're sending more medevacs over again. And now we're going to poke and prod again. The front of his base. That was a good fight by the Zerg, because he actually killed all the mines barely before they went off, which is good by him. And but we're killing another base on the right side. Actually, he had lurkers there, so that was a good defense as well. Zerg actually played a pretty decent mid-game. He actually held on for a while. Oh, we, again, we, do we, like, if he defends one time successfully, does that mean the game's over? No. We just continue the process as, as it's been going the whole time. And now the game just went into a phase where, where it reset because our attack failed and we played defensive. Now we're getting ready to max out again and we reset again. Do the same fucking thing again. Medivacs go left, now our army goes right. With the rest of our non-loaded medivacs that are going to heal my army. And eventually, if you do this a few times in a row well enough, you break the Zerg. The Zerg actually played pretty good, though. I'm not going to lie. Like, he, this game was closer than it might have realized. And now, at this point in the game, if someone loses their bases, the game is over. And the reason why is because this base has no money. This base has no money. This base has no money. Again, we, do, we talk about this all the time. So now when you get to the late game, when it's harder to defend your expansions, if you understand how to attack someone... It only gets harder to defend properly against the style we're doing to the Zerg. It's only harder over time to defend this because his bases are further exposed every time he expands to the next base. So now it's, it's harder to keep his new economy alive, which means if we ever kill his bases at any point now, he's dead because he just has no money anymore and he can't keep it going anymore. And now look at the Zerg's income. He has 90 drones, guys. But he's got less than 500 income now. And now he's got a bit more because he's actually uh, long distance mining a new base over here with all of these fucking drones, which is fine. But our medevac comes back up in a second here and they start killing those drones and they're long distance mining in a second. Like right now, we just, we're like, oh, look at all these fucking drones, right? Cool. And suddenly that mining is going to go way down again. 
And then we ended up loading because Ling's came there, but that was a bit of an overreaction because it was just two Ling's. But you get the point, though. And our army on the right could have been pushing the entire time, and we could have just... Until we, like, want to re-merge our army together, right? Like we talked about. Ugh. So hopefully, hopefully, it's making sense, guys. Hopefully, it's making a lot of sense for you. Hopefully, everything is making a lot of sense. How many workers does the Zerg make? We had 232. He also played at almost 400 APM, by the way. Goddamn. But again, Zerg should always be a little bit higher just because of the way you make units with your larva. Uh. Alright, let's go uh, for a battle mech game. Now, again, this will be an aggressive style. We'll go into the aggressive side of things again. Well, well, I'll show you a way it does a really annoying, effective style against Protoss. This is an effective, annoying way to play battle mech against Protoss. And there's, you can be more committed by making two proxy raxes, or you can be less committed by making just one proxy rax. We'll just do the one, because we will maybe not commit as hard. Okay, so let's make our barracks over here. Let's get our gas. And again, this is battle mech, guys. This is going to be battle mech. Battle mechola. And this is annoying. This, this version of it is very annoying for Protoss. And the reason why is because we get vision with the barracks. And well, I'll explain it when we get there. Yeah, let's make another depot. Well, this guy's going to start smelling something's up right now because he's going to be like, are you proxying me? I don't like that proxy bullshit. Now let's bring our SCV that's building the barracks back. Let's make an orbital at our na at our main base. Make one Reaper for now. Again, we're not going to go crazy Reapers, guys. We are not going to make crazy amounts of Reapers. This is not about Reapers. It's about battle mech. So we're just going to make probably like two Reapers and call it a day. Okay, let's use this SCV to build a command center. Oh, he actually blocked it. So let's just build, let's just build it on the high ground. It's not a big deal. Build it on the high ground. Take our gas with our other SCVs. Second Reaper's popping out of the barracks. We'll go to either two or three, and the way we'll, we'll gauge that is if we're doing great damage or not. So run into his main base right now with that Reaper. Make a factory behind this. And let's start killing probes. You can also focus fire. If you have the, the mouse accuracy to do that, you can actually focus fire his probes too to get more damage done here. And now that the adept is out, I would say let's not fuck with this anymore. There's an adept. Let's stop at two reapers because we're probably not going to get much more damage done than we just did. Like this dude already has adepts and shit. Let's not fuck with that too hard. Now behind this, let's make a second factory. And let's also move this barracks to like the high ground uh, open airspace area because we want to use it soon. Not yet, but soon. Let's make a tech lab on that factory we just made. And let's have our Reapers try to poke him again. If we can. Poke any probes we can at any point in time. Okay, there's a stalker there. Can we jump in the main base? Did this guy wall properly? No, he messed up the wall a little bit, so we jumped in the main base. Nice. Try and kill a probe. Throw a grenade at that stalker. Okay, it looks like our Reapers are probably going to die. It's okay. It's not the end of the world if our Reaper dies. Okay. Let's go. Oh shit, dude! 
So here's something you need to do. You need to throw a grenade at yourself just before the adept spawns, and you might be able to launch it in the air. It's really fucking hard to do that. You can see we barely fucked it up, and yeah, it's super hard to do that. If you don't land that properly, it's not a big deal. Okay, let's go ahead and get our... Uh, let's go ahead and get a third factory now. And let's start making cyclones, and we're getting mag field accelerator right now. And let's use our first cyclone to knock out this pylon. And keep making SCVs to come down to our natural now. And we can also uh, get ready to take our third base because we're going to get a lot of money here. Serious questions. What's the best race to learn to micro as a Platinum 2? Uh, no micro in Platinum. That was not a serious question. Yeah, let's go ahead and get a gas at our natural. Again, this is a all-in, guys, so we're doing a gas priority build. We need more gas faster. And why does it make sense that we're taking gas? Because we're going to play aggressive. So we're not going to be super aggressive just yet. We're waiting for Magfield Accelerator. And we also need a couple more Cyclones. We don't want to throw units away really fast. But now let's get ready. Let's control group our barracks here. Thank you for the bits, by the way, Cam. I appreciate the thousand bits, dude. Uh, let's get our army ready to go attack. Keep making Cyclones. Let's get more depots started now. And... Now we have Magfield is about done. We have three Cyclones, and now we have a Barracks ready to go. Now let's go attack, because we have Magfield. And now what the goal is going to be is to lock onto him and just wear his army down. Oh, wait, I don't want to make those there. I want to make those there. Okay, Barracks, go give me vision of the high ground. See that now I don't have to risk my Cyclones going on high ground. Now I can fucking be aggressive and be super fucking annoying. Now I'm like, hey, what's up, Perdos? I can either stack a lock on or I can spread it. Let's stack a lock on on that adept just to kill it. And that's a dead adept. And now let's do another. Let's bring more cyclones over here. Bring more units. And let's do another lock onto something. Let's go ahead and uh, lock onto a couple units. And let's try not to get caught. There we go. We just killed two stalkers. We lost one, one cyclone to kill two stalkers. Let's make another orbital command here. Let's take another gas right now at this base. Let's take another depot as well in just a second. And now let's push again. Grab another lock-on. Let's stack a lock-on on that immortal. Okay, he's going to line of sight me. So that was maybe a bit of an oversight right there. That's okay. Go ahead and get ready for your next lock-on. This is all... You're just literally going to pressure him like this and just break him down over time. Lock-on, back up. Barracks gives us vision to make us kill more shit. It's super fucking annoying. Now he's going charge lots. So let's go ahead and literally back up to more units. And now fight them in the middle of the open here. We can kite a little bit here. Okay, he just recalled. And now let's go ahead and make another couple of factories. And the reason why is because we have a lot of units still. So let's, uh, we, are, we have a lot of production in our, in our factories still. So let's make a couple more factories right now. Why didn't you guys make it? What the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, my barracks died. Oh, shit. My barracks died. So, oh, that's that's an oversight. We should have probably uh, thought about that. <laughs> barracks is a tech path requirement to a factory, so we just fucked that up a little bit. It's okay. Just remake the barracks. And, yeah. And now we don't have a barracks anymore, so let's actually scan ahead and make sure we're not going to run into death. And we're okay. Let's go ahead and lock onto some shit and back up and use our lock-ons. Go forward a little bit. And we almost killed like four zealots right there. Okay, now he's going really aggressive, and he's got a lot of zealots, right? His army is so fucking zealot heavy. So you know what we should do? Just back up to our base. And and also, with these new factories we're going to make, let's make maybe some more reactors so we can go into a crazy amount of Hellions. Okay, let's go ahead and lock onto him again. Back up. And we just killed this whole army. Now let's play defensive. because He's getting really aggressive as a response to this now. So let's play defensive for a second, which is fine. Let's make a few more factories now. We'll make three instead of just two because we have more. Uh, we had more time now to wait until we can make those factories. Let's make a couple more depots while we're at it, and we'll go ahead and make like maybe two more. Oh shit, we need to unrally un un that shit. Let's make like two more tech labs, two more tech labs, and another reactor. Okay, so let's also because again, cyclones are the focus here, but we still want to have a good amount of hellions. Okay, let's go ahead and make depots. Let's get an engineering base so we can make planetaries. Let's make it there or some shit. Who cares? Let me get there. 
Take our gases. Take our gases. Make one reactor and then make two tech labs. And what did we just see? Our opponent has a third base. Does he have a third base here? Nope. Okay, so now we know our opponent's on three bases. So automatically, we already know we're ahead from this point in the game going forward because we're on four bases, not three bases. Add on complete. Okay, and now we have all of our next factories that we just made are coming online. Let's get armor upgrades on the, uh, fact on the armory. Okay, now let's let's get our army moving out. Let's, again, uh, we're gonna play conser if we're gonna attack him, we're gonna play conservative. We're not gonna fucking stand there in calm cave and be like, I gotta kill him. Let's send one hellion to the right side, and the reason why we can do that is because we can see is our opponent gonna attack us before we attack him. Like, is he gonna be like in the middle of the map and we're in the middle of the map? We don't want to be surprised. We just wanna we wanna make sure we don't get fucked here. So we also wanna make sure we don't get surrounded. So this hellion's gonna guard for this round in case he comes this way, and now let's poke him, scan up the ramp. We know he's not there. And now let's go ahead and get ready to fight some more Protoss here. Lock onto his ass and back up. Lock on and back up. Go forward. And we just killed a bunch of units. Now we can back up and wait for the lock on to cool down again. Let's also look at my money. It's getting high again. And I'm making all my units. Let's make a few more factories. Now let's go ahead and abuse lock on again. Scan ahead. And now let's go ahead and push. Hey Protoss, I'm here again. Go ahead and back up with our scans. Or with the scan, with our backup, and then now we kill a bunch more units, and a lot more Protoss shit just died. That's it. Feels great, right? We're just now our, we have no highlands anymore, so we should probably be careful. These no longer have cover, so they could very easily fucking die. How about we go? Hey, whole army now, group up. Look at my new army I just made. It's humongous. This Hellion can still sit here and guard us in case we get counterattacked. Let's get building armor. Let's get some anti-Dark Templar action going on in case he decides he wants to go DTs on us. Let's just make some turrets around our base. Let's play it safe. And let's make a turret in front of our next planetary over there. And now he hasn't moved out of this side of his base yet still. So let's do it again. Does he have this base right here? He has an observer right there. I'm not gonna, oh, just fuck that though. Who cares? We'll just pretend we didn't see that. Uh, let's just push into his base. What do you have right here? Scan ahead, go forward and set up another fight. Now I can lock onto the Nexus because his army's not here. And now there's his army. Let's go ahead and fall back. The Nexus dies. And we fall back. And we're just kiting him again with making more Hillians, making more Cyclones. And we're just kiting him back to our base. Behind this, let's make another reactor, another tech lab. Let's transfer a bunch of SCVs to the new base we just made. Make our gas there. How many SCVs are we on in total? We have 82. That's more than enough. Let's get an armor upgrade again. Let's maybe make like just two more factors and we'll probably call it good with that. And uh, as a Terran player, I'm scared that this process is still alive. Why? Why are you scared? What is there to be scared about? This is, again, I'm trying to explain this to you guys so much. This guy's on three bases. I'm on fucking five, soon to be six. I don't have enough money to tech switch and I'm already making an expensive army as it is. So what can this guy do? Nothing. This is, this is not time to be scared. I can tell you right now, this Protoss' supply is probably like 110. Let's go ahead and scan for the ramp. Let's push forward with our uh, lock-ons. And now we're getting a big army, so he's super dead. And now he's just going to lose the game. What? Oh, Sad face. <sighs> you can tell how much we frustrated him right there, right? Get a fucking life. Hey, Hellion Cycle, I'm pretty good if you know how to use it right. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, was that an annoying game for Protoss to deal with? Definitely, yeah. But again, that's that's that m exact moment in time where someone's like, I would not be safe here as a Terran. Why would you not feel safe? Like you said that right at this point, right before we attacked, right here. You said that right here. And how do I know that I don't need to be worried if this Protoss is still alive? I scouted every base on the map. The only reason why you should actually be worried is if your scouting is fucking atrocious. If your scouting is really bad and you just don't fucking know how many bases your opponent has and you just never look at it, then yeah, you should be scared because you'll be like, for all I know, he could have all three of these bases and he could actually be on six bases when I'm on five. Then yeah, that's scary, right? Then that's scary. But I already scouted the bases and they don't exist.
This guy has no fucking expansions. So if he has no expansions, and we keep trading units with each other, and I keep forcing trades, you know what's happening then? Yes, he does have a third. And I also killed the third before as well. You remember that. It made his economy even worse. But if our opponent's on three bases, and I'm on five bases, my opponent does not, I repeat, he does not have an economy that's as good as ours. And it's the exact same concept I said a second ago with the Battlecruiser thing. Where, uh, what if I was like, what if this guy's got mass carriers? What if he's got mass carriers, guys? He does not have mass carriers. And how do I know that? Because he has less money than me, and it's no way I can afford mass BCs right now. We're ju that's just the economy side of things. If we're talking about the aggressive side of things, if this guy actually throws down like five Stargates right now and stops building units... Because Stargates are expensive. And then he makes a fleet beacon. And then he starts making carriers. He starts making carriers, which is tying up his resources to make the unit. I'm going to fucking attack him and be like, where's your army? Why doesn't it exist? And then I'm going to kill his third. And then I'm going to kill his natural. And then maybe by the time I get to his main base, his carriers will pop out and then just die. Because it's like five carriers trying to fight 25 Cyclones. Right? Like It's just not going to go well for Rodos. Like There's no reason to be scared here. We have the advantage of economy. That's how you need to read a game. If you don't read a game through economy, you don't know how to read a game, period. And that, that's where the, the worry comes into play. And you're like, I don't fucking don't know, bro. He's Protoss. They're cheeky. Uh -huh. And notice how when our Hellions dies, we just send another one out there to confirm if he is or isn't pushing. And then we go, oh, he's over here, guys. Cool. So we kite him backwards. We kill a bunch of Protoss. And then we scan ahead to kill more Protoss. Like, there's not much he can do, right? There's not much he can do here. He's super fucking dead. His army is too small. So, anyways, I hope that game makes sense. Uh... The first part of that game about the uh, the barracks thing, again, all we really did with the barracks is it was, instead of having to scan, and you know, here uh, here's the thing to note. Notice how every time I go up a ramp, I always scan. And the reason why you need to do that is because Hellion Cyclone does not want to overcommit. Because if, if he, for instance, if my opponent is standing, if he is literally standing on the top of the ramp and just fucking sitting there, I do not want to run my entire army into melee range of that. Because that's going to increase the chance that my army is going to die. Because Hellion Cyclone is not a, a melee army. It's a ranged army that needs to kite. It's a very weak army if it melees and it gets in the concave and dies. It is very papery. So if we scan ahead, we always get a lock on at max range. And then we start kiting and getting a good fight. And the reason why we use the barracks early game is because scanning every time I want to engage with like just two Cyclones or three Cyclones. We don't have much money there. We don't have a lot of money there. And if I have to fucking scan every time I want to take a fight there, it's going to be so much more expensive than floating a barracks in his base. The barracks is not going to die very fast either because he doesn't have enough stalkers to stop us. So, if we have a barracks that is less... Uh, the Making a barracks is less expensive. It, gives you, it costs less minerals than what a mule gives me. Like, one mule gives you like 200 plus minerals. One barracks costs only 150. So we don't need to worry about the fact that, oh no, we lost the barracks. It doesn't fucking matter. It's, it's cheaper than a mule. A mule gives you more money than what a barracks is worth. So a mule has more value, which means we shouldn't be scanning at that point in the game. And if someone were to ask, well, why, why don't you make barracks late game then, huh? A smart guy? Because his army is so big then, because if uh, our barracks would just die. I float a barracks over to fucking like 40 stalkers and it just literally gets one shot. And I'm like, oh, well... Now, and now scan can't be killed, so now scan makes more sense at this stage. At this stage of the game, so that's why we use barracks early to maximize our money, and then we use scans later. But you always need to have vision of the high ground, either way. Okay, what are we gonna do this game? We're against a Zerg. Uh, what should we do? This game, let's go for. Yeah. 
We did traditional mech already. This I know. I I have an idea. We're gonna do. I know yeah. we're gonna do. Let's go uh, Sky Terror in this game. Let's literally go Sky Terror in this game. Thanks for the educational stream. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Zufi. Zufi. Thank you, man. We'll go Sky Terror in this game. Sky Terror. Different concepts again. So what is Sky Terror? What is that? What does that mean? This is a style that is going to take a while to come off the ground. It, it takes a developing stage that is longer than other builds because it's a lot of tech. So what that means is is we should be defensive. We can still harass him, but we're going to be mostly defensive. And we're most likely going to see a game where I'm going to either win the game while, while the Zerg kills himself on my base. Because he'll attack me and I'll defend and he'll die if we win the game. Or we'll wait until we have maxed out BCs and then we'll go kill him. So that's how this game is ideally going to go. And I still can attack him. I'm just not going to attack him with, you know... BCs unless they have a teleport ready to go like I'm never just gonna attack him and be like well fuck I can't move my BCs around anymore that sucks like you never attack unless you have the intention to be able to play defensive as well like it's conservative attacking right, let's go ahead and make a second depot what is killing my CV zerglings already so we need to play defensive we don't even need to see the fact that there's a hatchery here or not here. We already know he's being super aggressive. But now that we see there's no hatchery, now we should make a fucking tank. Now we make a siege tank because this is super aggressive. Let's also make a bunker on the high ground. Because if he doesn't want to expand at all, there's a very high chance he's going to be super all in with banelings or with roaches. So we're probably going to have to retake our natural a little bit later. Which is fine. And now that he's also doing this, now that we know he's not even expanding and he's being really aggressive... Let's not make a reactor, and let's just make more marines for now. This already tells us he's being aggressive, though. Like, crazy, crazy, crazy hard aggressive, uh, the aggressive side of things. So we can make a reactor on our barracks once we have our, bar our bunker full. Again, we're playing safe right now. We're not playing stupid. Yeah, let's also get our second gas. Let's get a tank ready to go here in a second. We can start our orbital command. If this guy attacks us and he really pushes into the natural, we can always cancel it and move it. So yeah, he's, he's pushing right. So we're going to have to move it now. Cancel it and move it up. And now let's rotate our barracks away. And let's put it back here. And now let's go ahead and uh, make a couple more depots. Because I can't stop him from killing my depots. Let's unload our reaper and have our reaper go to his base. Meanwhile, let's have a couple SCVs repair that bunker. Repair that bunker before he kills it. Okay, don't let my SCVs die because he's going to try and kill them. And now let's leave a couple SCVs just to be in the area to repair it repeatedly. Let's make a starport behind this. Okay, and now let's start hitting his drones with our Reaper. Let's also siege our tank now. In an area that's safe, but it's going to shoot his ravages whenever they try to siege us as well. Now, look at our Reaper. Watch our Reaper. This is I'm, I can make units at home. My defense is set. I don't got to look at my defense anymore. I, I know I'm getting attacked, guys. All we got to do is periodically make sure these guys are still repairing. And we can even move our tank a little bit far forward now. Because he's actually slightly out of range. So let's slightly move our tank forward. So we can shoot his ass when he stands there like that. Okay, now he's got a queen. Now I can fall back with my Reaper for a second. And we can go over here and just it'll be annoying. Now let's go ahead and make a fusion core. And let's, uh, you know, get ready to retake our natural. A great way we can retake our natural as well is, um, I would say, if we make two tanks, we can leapfrog the tanks very, very methodically and very safely. And then we can retake our natural and we're good to go. But this game, I'm going to tell you right now, we both have very similar economies. But I have way better tech. So I'm already really far ahead this game. Okay. Let's go ahead and attack his drones again. With our, I'm still making SCVs. Cool, I killed a drone. Let's go attack another drone. Let's use our grenade to defensively get out or away from the queen. Okay, let's use our grenade on the queen. Hey, queen, fuck off. Okay, we barely missed it. A reaper died. It's, it's okay. Is it into the world? No, it's not into the, the world. It's totally fine. Let's retire. Let's put our factory now on the on the reactor and put our uh, put our factory on the reactor and put our. Uh, starport on the tech lab and now let's make a bc and let's retake our natural now let's take another tank and let's siege it forward siege the next the next tank forward let's use the marines to push forward let's make hellions and bcs and scvs at the same time right now and now there he is right but look i'm leapfrogging tanks i'm leapfrogging tanks right now guys 
So now what can I do with this tank? Let's move it forward. Now here's the one time, about one of the only times I would ever say, do not siege your tank on the low ground, because if you siege it, he's going to show up and bile it, and then it's going to die. Also, siege tanks aren't the greatest against Ravagers. But if I use its auto attack like this, I can dodge the biles, and I can always fall back to my tank on the high ground. Okay, we need actually more supply, so I need to do that. Transfer SVs to the natural right now. Put some of them back on the main because we took too many. Drop a bunch of mules here. And then we can start making depots as well on the front of our wall here. And now I'm going to tell you something right now. The second our BC gets into his base, he's going to get fucking destroyed. This might literally end the game right now because he played so low economy, so aggressive. So I can play aggressive now. I can fly away from that spore crawler. And I can target drones like we talked about in a previous Terran video. Target drone. Target drone. Target drone. Target drone. Now they're out of range so I can kill the queen. Let's go kill the other queen. And he's probably fucking dead right now. Kill that queen. Let's kill this queen now. And now let's go down to his natural and kill more drones. Now is he going to push me? Probably. The only chance he has now is to all in me. So notice how I'm pushing my opponent into a, into a situation where he has to all in rather than the other way around. Or no, he's playing defensive with the Ravagers. Let's just avoid the Biles. And let's just fly around and pop at drones like crazy. His economy right now is getting fucking owned. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna push my BC till it dies. I will just make units in the meantime while I'm micring this. I will now take my gas at my natural. I can take some more depots in front of my base. And we'll just be annoying. And when it comes down to it, if my teleport comes all the way back on cooldown, I can stay here until my BC is literally about to die, then I can teleport away, because the teleport can just happen. But if my teleport was not ready to go, I would fly away early, but now you can see teleport's ready to go again, so now I don't have to give a shit about that anymore. Let's go ahead now and make a couple armories. Keep harassing him with my BC. This BC is just flying around willy-nilly around his base all day. BC is doing damage like a boss. Keep making units. Fly around his base. Make Hellions. Make SCVs. And now we're getting pretty low, so let's just teleport home to repair it. Teleport home. And now let's repair our BC. Keep making our depots. And now I'm walled off here. So now I can totally siege our tank here, and we don't have to be worried about Ravagers pushing forward and like just running into my tank and killing it right away. Okay, let's make another command center, because this one's done, and this base is really highly saturated already. Once these SCVs come back, it'll be super highly saturated. So we can easily have a very saturated third base now. Let's go ahead and get... Let's sell that bunker, because I don't need it anymore. Oh, yeah. Let's get building... Or let's get our ship, weapons, and armor. Thanks on behalf of Chobos everywhere. No worries, dude. Thank you. Thank you for the support. Let's make an injury bay in case this guy goes for a spire at some point. And now I got three fucking battle cruisers, guys. Now I got three battle cruisers that can attack his ass. This is very scary for Zerg to deal with. Let's take this base. Let's rotate this tank now and this tank. Let's put this tank in between our, uh, like, just kind of in the front of our uh, natural like that so we can cover just more of the area because I'm now moving the bottom tank. And this tank can cover the third base. Lower that wall and, uh,. You know, put SCVs on this base now. Put more SCVs on that base. And how's our BCs looking? That's fucking scary. Now we have a lot of money, too. Let's go ahead and also, while we're at it, make more starports. Let's make, like, three more starports. Because I can afford this. So go back to our BCs. Let's uh, kill the third base. Looks like it's the creep timber there. It looks like there's a, there's a third there. Because I see a bunch of creep there. So now we're going to overpower the third. And now check this out. I can take my Hellions... While I'm doing this, because now I have way more threat here. Let's kill the base. Let's fly to the queens. Hey, queens, what's up? Okay, let's go like this. Hey, BC, you're almost dead. Get out of the army. Okay, let's fly away from the spore. And look at my Hellions. What can I do with these bad boys? Put my Hellions over here. Put them right here. Put them on whole position. They'll do. They'll, they'll deal with drones all day. Let's take this BC out of the army. It's almost dead. You guys teleport home. Go back to my last BC on this side, and let's have this last BC fight until it gets in the yellow, deep yellow to red. And then when it's in the deep yellow to red, you know what we can do? Teleport him home. Meanwhile, these aliens. Can, if these aliens die, I don't give a fuck, guys. They're, that's what they're supposed to die. They're supposed to just kill drones. Behind that, I can make more tech labs on starports. I can make another base again. 
I can transfer SCVs to that base. And now I can be on like 80 SCVs already, almost, while I'm taking my next expansion. Meanwhile, look how many BCs I have now. Now I have four BCs instead of three. And if I just repair these bad boys up, they also are going to have two, uh, one one upgrades done now. And they have Yamato Cannon. So now my now I have even more BCs than I had last time, and I'll do the same fucking thing again. Now that uh, I'm ready to go again, I'll fly across the map and teleport them back home as soon as they're almost dead. And I'll do fuckloads of damage in the process and th and while I'm doing it. Right? And now this base is fully saturated. This base is almost done. Uh, we're at 80 plus SCVs. We can now go into building armor and building ranges while we're at it. And just t keep taking more BCs while we keep peppering on more Hellions. And then when you get to a really crazy stage of this game where you have a lot of money and you have a great BC count, you could be like, cool, command center, command center, command center, command center. And just be like, let's make a bunch of fucking orbitals. Bunch of orbitals. That way you can just drop mules for fucking days across your base. And, uh, you know, have a lot of money. So. Yeah, the, the only reason why, to break it down... The only, the only reason, the only reason why I teleported my very first BC at his base is because he was so far behind. I teleported this first BC to his base because he's so far behind. And how do I know he's behind without fucking scanning his base and going, what do you have? Because I know for a fact he went pool first. And straight into Ravagers, because that's how, the, again, remember that staircase I made and that paint thing? I don't have it anymore. But remember that staircase? I remember the early game sets the pace for the late game. So if I know for a fact he Ravager opened and did not do any damage to me, he killed two supply depots. That's it. That's not worth a Ravager opener because he has fucking terrible economy as a result of that. Okay. So I defended myself with a bunker and tank, and we didn't take any damage at all. And if I know my opponent, also this, uh, this is important to know too. Again, I just want to make sure you guys understand. We'll come back to the BC thing in a second. You really don't want to siege this tank here. If I siege this tank like right here or something, or like right there, if he runs the route, if he sees that right as I siege it, I can't actually cancel siege. The tank has to siege and it, it can be corrosive biled by these ravagers and it will die before it shoots and it can't dodge the bile. Whereas if I just leave it unseaged, it's enough damage as it is anyways to pepper damage onto these Ravagers to pressure them more than what the Marines can do by themselves. And I can always fall back to my other tank, which is sieged. So if he actually, if he just, let's just say, for instance, what if he, like, had an Overlord right here? And what if he, like, ran all these Ravagers down into this tank? I could, in theory, kill all of his Ravagers by the time he crossed that tank, and this tank would die, but all of his army would die, which is still a good trade for us. Uh, whereas if I siege right here... He could cross the vial from max range and maybe only get shot by that tank one time, which is not going to kill any Ravagers because it only does 40 damage and they have 120 health in total. Uh, and it would only kill that red one if it hit the red one, but it's in the back, so it probably wouldn't get shot. And if that tank dies, you know what If that happens if that tank dies? He could then stand right there and then it's a fucking problem because then I, I what do I do then? I have to unseage that tank and now if I unseage that tank... If I re-siege it as well, it's going to die just like the first tank did. But if I don't siege that tank and I try to fight him with an unseaged tank, I have no tank cover from an actually sieged tank. Which means I don't have enough damage overall to overpower them. So un not sieging this tank is great for the second one. Because again, all we do is we drag him, we poke him, and we drag him back to the tank whenever he's in our base. If, he, if he's not in our base, I don't want to fight him out here. Fuck that shit because I can't drag him to this tank. It's going to take forever. But I only stay within like the radius of my natural. And if he comes in, I poke him back up, poke him back up, and fall back to this tank. That's all it is. You do not want to siege the second tank against Ravagers until you have a depot wall. And uh, yeah, going back to the BC now. So you can see the second he leaves my base, right? Like as soon as he leaves my base, he's done attacking us. Like right about six minutes. He's like, all right, I've had my fun. And we're chilling. And he's still here. We still see him. We poke him a little bit. And he backs off. And now it's right about six minutes and he finally leaves. Look at my BC. It's so close to finishing. I know that for a fact that this guy is not going to have Hydras. He's not going to have spor uh, like a Spire with Mutas or Corruptors. He's not going to have any of these things. The only thing he might have is a couple Spores and maybe a couple Queens. And you want to know, you know, you know what will happen if he has a couple Spores and a couple Queens? 
let's say hypothetically i teleported directly on the spore crawler like i did that happened that was like he guessed where the spore should be and it was perfect i teleported right on that spore and let's say he had both let's say he had two fucking spores and two queens in this spot i want you to know for a fact that my battle cruiser could teleport directly in the middle of all of that and then it could fly away and still not die guaranteed it would probably get away from the spores and it would have about half of its health left still it would have like 275 health left or something a lot of hp still left and then i could fly around and still kill the queens while doing that if there's only two queens so i'm not intimidated by anything because i know what his opener has been because of the ravagers i am only scared to teleport my bcs aggressively if for all i fucking know i'm about to teleport into like eight corruptors and i'm like oh shit that was a bad idea that bc's dead but I know he doesn't have corruptors because he doesn't have a fucking layer because he doesn't have tech because he, he made all of his gas with a pool first with ravagers, which is so expensive. <clears throat> so we teleport this one aggressively because his build has been so all in up to this point. But notice how after this BC, I never teleport another BC aggressively ever again. And the reason why that is, is because I can clearly see with this BC as I get to his base that he's not about to all in me again. But instead, he's going to he's macroing. So he could very well, after this BC leaves his base, he very well could have a layer. And he also could have uh, Hydra or something more. And more Queens. But this BC is getting so much fucking damage done. Because he has no prep, uh, preparation for this. So not only is it killing a bunch of stuff, it's also making his economy suck ass. Because it makes him run off the middle line entirely. And it stays so long that it, its teleport cools down again, which means the species has been in his base for over a minute, killing shit. I killed 24 units over a minute, and I wasted a bunch of his mining time. That was a great attack, and it made sense to do it. But now, notice how I have a second BC? And uh, now I have two BCs? I will not teleport into his base anymore, because now it's much later in the game, and now he actually could go into more defense, more queens. I have a higher chance to lose my BCs if I just teleport in there. Now, if I wanted to be really aggressive, I could teleport in there, but it's kind of silly to do that, because why? Why do I not teleport in there? I am not all in. I am macroing. So if I give myself more time, I have a higher chance to win the game, because I, will not, I don't want to win the game on three BCs. I want to win the game on 200 out of 200 supply of BCs. I want to go to full-fledged, maxed-out Sky Terran. So now it makes no fucking sense to teleport. If my goal is to expand and expand and take more bases and take more money off of one starport. If I wanted to say two base the entire game and go to three fucking starports and make BCs as fast as possible, then sure, aggressively teleporting would make more sense there. But that's playing it like an all-inner. And we're playing it like a macroer, which means now we're saving our teleport because now he actually could act, he could actually have a little bit more defense in his build. <laughs> Vibe, what would be better for the Zerg? I'm gonna tell you right now. If a Zerg player goes for a failed one base all in, and I go for a I go for zero damage taken battle cruisers. There's not much you can do there. It's not like, oh, well, if Zerg played this a little bit differently, after he failed an all-in, he would have been fine. No. It's like saying, I put myself at a handicap, and now it's a hard position to come out of in the entirety in the entirety of it. And I'll tell you right now, the way this guy tried to deal with it going out of it was actually correct. He tried to stay on, on Hatchery Tech longer. He did not rush gas. He stayed Hatchery Tech for a very... He's like still got a 10-minute hatchery, guys. And what did he do? He made queens and drones. This is the best thing he could have done here. Well, in my opinion, the way he defended this was probably the best thing he could have done. But the problem is, is he invested into a fucking one base Ravager attack that did fucking nothing. It literally did nothing. It made me make a bunker. And it killed two supply depots. You have no idea how far behind Zerg is. Because I expanded right away when he did that. And I did not lose any SCVs or the expansion. And I was making SCVs the entire time. So Zerg is like in a massively negative position because he does... It's Again, it's a position where if you're aggressive and your opponent's defensive, 
you need to get damage done to not die. If you don't do damage, you're fucking dead. Like, it's really hard to come back from that. The Zerg need a spire. Yeah, oh, later on. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You guys are missing the point, though. Again, this is this is the point. I'm, I, I feel like this is Twitch chat, and I'm not going to argue with Twitch chat a whole lot because I feel like Twitch chat is like people who come in and out of the series and they don't even pay attention to any of it. But if you're someone who's actually been watching the series from the, from the beginning to now, you should know by now that if your economy sucks fucking cock and your opponent's economy is good, you don't really have options anymore. It doesn't matter if you say, oh, Spire's good against BCs. Because if you don't have enough money to afford it, two Corruptors doesn't beat 10 BCs. Doesn't work that way. So he's already put himself into a bad economy, and the result of that was he needed to do damage with the Ravagers, and he just didn't do any damage with the Ravagers, because our defense against Ravagers was really good. So he was in a really hard spot. Making queens and drones was a good choice, and going into a spire later on could have been nice as well. But if we understand how to also use BCs in this particular game, there's not much the Zerg can do here, guys. He literally did about the best he could do for himself after failing the Ravagers so hard. But you cannot go for a one base LN, fail that fucking hard at it, and then go, oh, let's play a normal macro game now. Yeah, sounds good to me. No, 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 I'm not behind. There's no reason why I should be behind right now. No. It, it, it would be like this. It would be like saying this. He's playing the macro game appropriately how he should play it. But it would be like this. With how early of an investment of the Ravagers he put himself into and how it fucking failed, it's like saying, my opponent might as well have been AFK for the first 45 seconds of this game. And then we're both going to macro. He's super far behind from the start of actually trying the macro. He's so fucking far behind that there's not much he can do if I understand how to play a macro game. Because, again, am I trying to kill him with this? No. I'm just slowing him down more and more and more. And this battle cruiser uh, timing is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It grows. Like, look how many units I've lost this game, guys. We lost two supply depots up to this point in this game right now. We lost zero workers. We lost two supply depots we lost our bunker uh because we salvaged it and what else fucking died uh did a marine die at some point i don't even i think a marine might have died to the ravagers when i was poking him around like he's killed nothing really realistically and that's that, that shows you that his attack was not ideal right his, his ravager opener it just didn't get any damage done the bunker the only thing i really lost was scv mining time to repair the bunker and resources to also cost that you cost to repair the bunker. Yeah, I mean, if you guys, you guys have to understand by now, hopefully, that oh, it, the game yeah. StarCraft Two is literally a staircase of 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 events where you can't fail Ravagers, and then also suddenly just fucking make Corruptors to kill BCs. Yes, Corruptors are good against BCs on paper. Yes, that's correct. But if you can't afford it, oh, it doesn't yeah. matter anymore. If his economy can't afford Corruptor. Like, if, if he would have went one base, for instance, he would have had Corruptors in time while failing Ravager attack. If he would have gone one base Ravager, failed oh, miserably, yeah. and then immediately went one base Corruptor, he probably could have had Corruptors barely in time to fight my BC. But you want to know what that would have been? That would have been, like, two Corruptor fighting one BC, and then it would turn into... I would kill the two Corruptor, because oh, one BC can still beat two Corruptor. Yeah. I would kill those two Corruptor, and then let's say I teleport away, because he's got a spore or something. And then it would be, once again, like two more Corruptor, now fighting two BC. And then it would be like two Corruptor again, fighting like four BC, if I haven't just killed him by now. Oh, yeah. Like, he's never going to have enough money to make Corruptors and enough numbers of them to stop me from killing his base, because he's fucking broke as a joke. It's like an economy of, like, 22 drones for Zerg fighting 70 SCVs plus mules for Terran. Not to mention, even if you go rush his Corruptors like that, how the fuck can he handle the Hellions? How is he going to do against that? He'll just die. And now the Hellions, the reason why we micro the way that we did here is we just ran away from the Ravagers. We ran away from the Queen mostly. And I held position my Hellions there. And the reason why I did that is because I didn't have to micro them anymore. And they're going to kill drones like crazy. And I can go back to my what is important, which is my battle cruisers, because I, I don't care if these Hellions die, guys. All they all these Hellions are is they're supposed to, if they can, 
If they slow the Zerg down even more, thumbs up for us. What we care about is our BCs, and what we want to do is we want to never lose BCs, and we want to continuously grow the count of BCs over the game. We just this is just this, like we want to trade our minerals investment of of Hellion to slow down his mineral and gas investment of Zerg because we're gonna kill his drones. That's all we want to do. Uh, so it makes it harder for him to then defend future BC attacks. So our Hellions again, all they do is they walk to the side of the mineral line and then they hold position and look at what they do when I do that. So the Queen's out of position mostly. The Ravager's out of position mostly. The Hellions on the side will probably attack towards the Queen and, and Ravager that are in range there. But most of the Hellions that are out of range of these units will only kill drones. And they're being told to hold position. So they're not going, oh, a Queen's attacking us. Let's all go A-move that Queen. And now his drones just get fucking roasted. And now same thing again. He has Ravagers in the front attacking the edges of my Hellions. And if my Hellions are within range... A, Hel a Ravager has six range though and a Hellion only has five. So the fact of that is, is uh, my Ravager, a Ravager will attack my Hellion, and a Hellion will not attack back because it's out of range. But if it's on the whole position, it'll attack anything in range, which is going to continue to uh, to be the drones. So, the whole fucking mineral line just died, and that's pretty important to know. To that's impactful right now, because again, if I lose like eight Hellions and I kill sixteen drones. I'm okay with that trade, guys, because he's already behind, and I'm putting him even further into a hole, because losing Hellions does nothing to slow down how fast I'm making BCs. You mine minerals faster in this game than you mine gas, and I have more than enough minerals to make my BCs at a steady pace with my gas. But I have an excess amount of minerals that I can also dip into Hellions with, and all I'm doing when I kill his drones is I'm slowing down how fast he can mine gas, which is going to effectively be what's going to deal with the BCs late game. So, if the Hellions do damage, it fucks him over even harder. It's not even needed to happen, but if it does happen, it's even worse. And the BCs are still doing more damage and stuff like that. And now suddenly, we're again, we're going to be now going, instead of one BC at a time, we're going to four BCs at a time. And why does that make sense? And we're also getting two, two upgrades here in a second. And why does this make sense? Because we have not one, not two bases, not three bases. We're going to have four bases in a second here, fully saturated. And then I'm going to take my fifth base, and now suddenly our economy is going to explode like crazy. And I'm going to have way more fucking gas to work with. Also, we already got one-time upgrades as well. Or, like, one-time investments. Like, where, for instance, we made the armories. We don't have to make more armories now. That gas cost is gone. We already made the four-star ports. We don't need to make four-star ports again for the initial four. That's, that cost is gone. These upgrades that we get on them... They're one-time investments. We don't have to get them over and over and over every five minutes. That cost will be gone once we get it. Once we get it once, it's over. Obviously, we have to get 2-2 two, two after this, but you get the point. It's a permanent thing. Once we got Yamato Cannon, that gas cost is gone. Once we made a Fusion Core, that gas cost is gone. So the reason why we stayed one starport for so long is because we did things with it, like made Fusion Core, made Upgrade, make Armories, make Upgrades, make BCs still while we're doing it, made our Factory to make our Hellions, make our Add-ons... Uh, get ready to make our uh, engineering bay upgrades. Stuff like that. Like Those are costs that are one-time things that tie up our resources a bit. But now that all these gas costs are mostly gone, now we're, and we're also mining way more than we were before. Fucking way more gas available to make more BCs faster with now. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that made sense, guys. There you go. There you go, dude. And Terran is now Diamond Uno. Ooh. So, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully that made a lot of sense to you. Hopefully you are learning what's going on. Um, and uh, I'll give more credit to people on YouTube because people on YouTube, I bet you guys are probably going to go through the series like, you know, you're going to study the series as you go through it. But a lot of times when I answer questions on Twitch, a lot of, a lot of times what happens is, is I'll get someone who has not watched like more than 10 minutes of the series and they're joining in on Diamond League and they have no idea what we talked about in previous leagues and they ask questions that if you've watched the series are very relevant and very easy to know the answer to. But yeah, it's, I don't know. Sometimes I answer those questions, which is why, you know, I try to, I try to keep it relevant to where we hearken back to like a little bit what happened in the past. But again, we're not in fucking bronze anymore. So, or like silver. So we don't have to answer all the simple, simple shit is all the time repeatedly nowadays in these leagues. But yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, that's why sometimes you'll you'll hear me answer questions that seem obvious if you're watching this through YouTube. But it's always nice to have a reminder, I guess, which is why I answer them as well. Uh, whenever I feel like it's a good time to answer it. But 
Either way, hopefully you guys are uh, feeling more confident by the day with your Terran. And I will see you guys in the next Terran video, whatever that is, for the Terran viewers out there. Um, you know, for the Terran, for, Di for Diamond 1 to Masters 3. So until then, have a good one, guys. Good luck in your own games. And thanks for watching. Peace, guys. See ya.